The story begins with the fact that we are transported back seven years from the main narrative to that very ill-fated day. Day of the Cataclysm. It was a beautiful sunny day outside, nothing foreshadowed trouble, but suddenly all the people see a huge flash in the middle of the city and are very surprised by it. One of the girls standing in the crowd turned to look at the flash and was puzzled. Just on this day, a terrible disaster called opening the dungeon occurred. All over the city, red gates began to open, and hundreds of different monsters were crawling out of them. They all looked terrifyingly creepy. On that very day, many people died. Behind all the people who were in the city at that time, these monsters were running, and they were running away from them with cries for help. The most terrible thing is that the parents of our main character also died on this day. You can see their family photo, which is completely broken and covered in blood. The hero shed tears of blood from the pain of loss. He shouted that on the day when he was robbed of his dearest in the blink of an eye, shedding tears of blood, he swore an oath. He swore that he would definitely become a hunter and tear all the monsters to pieces. After seven years, we are transported back to the present. In front of us are memorials of people who died in that cataclysm. The hero was sitting on a bench with his things, his head bowed, and he'd just been kicked out of the hunter training center. He raised his head a little, tears welling up in his eyes. In front of him was a teacher who approached him, saying that he didn't want to beat around the bush, the hero better not come to the hunter training center. The hero's name was Han Sung Yoon. Song looked very upset, so he looked at the teacher and asked what he meant, what was the reason for his expulsion. The teacher rubbed his head and closed his eyes, telling Sleep to listen to what he was saying because he knows very well that usually a cadet only needs to spend a few months in the center to awaken their abilities and become a hunter. The teacher looked at him with displeasure, and his eyes were purple. He added that the problem is that the period of its preparation is as much as seven years. The dream looked at him and was negative. The teacher's eyes lit up, so he lowered his head and said that since they were having such a conversation, he decided to be honest. He called Sun a real weakling. Dream was very upset to hear this. Therefore, his facial expression is hard to describe in words. The teacher went on to say that if they continued to train him, the reputation of the hunter training center might suffer greatly. The crowd of kids who were studying were standing next to each other and talking about Sion, saying that they were amazed at the willpower when they watched Sion come to practice every single day. They thought he was very pathetic. Another replied that pity is out of the question, because the one who does not understand where his place is and continues to stubbornly stand on his own, a weakling. They don't understand how it's even possible that after seven years of hard training, their stats haven't improved. Dream squeezes the jar in his hands with all his might. He was shaking all over and there were tears on his face. I bit my lips and thought about that, not to mention discovering unique stats and acquiring skills. How could one not raise even a single stat? How is this even possible? The dream calmed down, so I just sat on the bench, but suddenly I heard a voice that asked if her daughter remembers her story about how her father died. The little girl started jumping up and down, waving her arms and saying that she remembered everything word for word. Putting her hands on her waist, and also with a big smile on her face, she told her mother that at the moment when the monsters just attacked everyone, and the world was not ready to fight back, her father did not run away and died, continuing to save people. A mother with a smile on her face, looking at her daughter, asked what she should do if she faced difficulties in the future. The girl raised her fist up and said that she would look at the difficulties with her head held high, and also never give up. These words touched Sung to the core, so his eyes lit up and he raised his head. The mother started hugging her daughter, telling her how smart she was. But then they both turned to look at something, and there was a dream that bowed low to her. Then, he just started running away at a very fast speed. He was running far and very fast, and his only thought was that he had somehow managed to hold his own for the past seven years. There was sweat on his face from exhaustion, but he kept running and knew that he couldn't give up everything, or rather, he just couldn't give up for anything. Sleep was running in the middle of the street, and clouds were beginning to gather in the sky. And then, after a while, it started to rain, and Dream was standing at a door and knocking on it. The door opened, and there was a bright light behind it. The same teacher who asked him to leave came out, because the head only once. Before he could finish, Song interrupted the teacher in front of him, asking him to just help him pass the hunter exam one more time, because he can't just give up. The teacher tilted his head towards him while it was raining outside, and then made a very angry face and shouted at him why he couldn't understand what they were trying to get into his head. Song was startled to hear such words, so he stood there with his eyes wide open. Then the teacher started coming up to him and poking his finger, asking that he came here because he felt sorry for the money invested in training. The teacher said that he would return half of it to him. Dream was shaking all over, starting to say that he wasn't here because of that at all. And then I gathered my strength and shouted in his face that he wasn't here for the money at all. But the teacher didn't believe him, so he slapped him across the face with all his strength. That the dream has already flown away. The dream flew into garbage cans and a huge puddle. 
The teacher started walking back in with an evil grin and said that he could see from his eyes that he was there for the money. Song bowed his head and closed his eyes, there was a bruise on his cheek and blood coming from his mouth. He was sitting in a pile of trash with his hands at his sides. His eyes were empty as he stared down, rain dripping down his hair. He only thought about what if he also had unique characteristics. He was sitting in a pile of trash and a puddle with his hands at his sides. He thinks that he shouldn't have asked for much, but if he had been given even a little bit of talent, then he wouldn't have ended up there. We see a drop of water dripping into the water, and then a notification appears that the Tower of Trial praises his unwavering will. Dream looks at this notification in complete shock and doesn't understand who exactly is praising it. There were air bubbles all around him. Then he started drowning in that puddle and screaming in fear. He didn't understand what was happening to him right now. His eyes were wide open in surprise. A cry for help could be heard all over the street. The teacher, hearing this, rushed out from behind the door and started yelling at Sung to leave already. When he went out into the yard, the mountain of garbage was empty, and he kept shouting that he was already sitting in his liver. But he was surprised when no one was there. The teacher lifted his cap and looked around, wondering what had happened to him. Garbage was sticking out of the tank, but it wasn't a dream at all. Dream was drowning at the bottom of the same puddle. He fell deeper and deeper. Sleep held his breath, but he was drowning so long that he couldn't get enough air. And suddenly he fell out of the water on the other side of the puddle. He was flying in some void, and a notice appeared in front of him that the trial tower had selected all the strongest on earth. Song Chiding already thought that a second cataclysm had occurred. His hair fluttered in the wind, and he was very surprised when he read what was written there next. In the notification, he was asked to choose a difficulty level, because the higher the difficulty, the higher the reward. He bit his lips a little and thought that he didn't understand what was going on here at all, but his inner instinct screams with all its might that he needed to seize this opportunity. In front of him was a window where you can choose three difficulty levels. Dream presses his finger on one of the levels with all his might. There was courage in his eyes. Then, after he chose the difficulty, he started to dissolve and something pulled him up. The notice said that at the end of his difficult journey, he would be satisfied with the challenge. In the next couple of seconds, the entrance to the first floor of the tower will be completed. Dream was in shock, his mouth hanging open, and the entire space around him began to hang somehow. The space began to manifest, and then in the notifications it wrote that all his injuries began to heal. Dream began to teleport to the first floor of the tower. He was asked to prepare for the upcoming challenges. We are transported together with sun right into the desert, where the sun shines. Dream was shocked to see that he was in the desert. Suddenly, a sword began to appear in the air, and notifications said that weapons were being issued. This sword fell right in front of Sun. He was told that the theme of this challenge is survival, and the reward for overcoming it is the discovery of unique characteristics. Dream looked up with his eyes wide open and was shocked because he would discover unique characteristics. He recalled how hard he had trained, strapping on a tire, punching in the air, as well as doing push-ups and practicing with a katana. He was thinking about that unique characteristic that he had been longing to obtain for seven whole years. And working hard on himself for this, he will be given a characteristic as a reward. The dream looked crazy, but very happy. He thought it was a jackpot, so I immediately ran after the sword stuck in the sand. Suddenly, right under his feet, the sand began to move, which startled Sun. He started to run away, and someone started to climb out of the sand. Dream didn't understand what was going on. He was very scared when he saw what came out of the sand. Meanwhile, the training test began. The difficulty level that he chose was high. A huge sand golem appeared in front of Sun. He looked up, his eyes full of fear, and was confused. He was told to survive despite the sand golem's attacks for the allotted amount of time. And they gave him 10 minutes to survive. Dream started running right out from under the giant golem's feet and screamed in terror. The golem kicked the ground with all its might, so it made the entire ground tremble, so Dream was already falling off his feet. But another notification appeared in front of him, which scared him even more. He opened his mouth in surprise. It was written on it that the penalty, in case of failure, is death in real life. Song kept running away from that golem, shouting, and then he decided to keep one eye on his back and thought about how if he kept running like this, he wouldn't be able to lose the chase. The golem still continued to run after him, the sand flying in all directions under its feet. Dream was thinking that even though the golem looked slow, because of its height, it moved much faster than he thought. Dream was also running, and the sand was also crumbling under his feet. Sleep looked very tired, his mouth even steaming in the desert. He held the sword so as not to drop it, not to fight. He was looking at his remaining time, and it said there were nine minutes left. He knew that with his stamina, he wouldn't be able to run in the desert for a full nine minutes. He remembered that he had a sword in his hand after all, so he thought that it turns out that he needs to fight with a sword in his hands to survive. He thought that the meaning of this test was obvious. The golem was getting closer to him, and Sleep was running away and screaming. 
and he understood this test in such a way that you need to run away, meet death, or fight to face it face to face. Sleep was fleeing, and drops of sweat were flying everywhere. He didn't understand how he could fight such a monster. He remembered the students who had laughed at him when the teacher had kicked him out. He remembered them saying that anyone who doesn't understand where they belong and continues to stubbornly stand their ground is a weakling. Song started to cry out in resentment. He was representing his teacher instead of this golem. It was as if his teacher was about to crush him in the sand. Song thought that wouldn't he die such a useless death if he kept running away like this without doing anything. Song gritted his teeth with a grunt, then turned sharply to the side. The golem noticed this and was a little surprised. Song held the sword in his hand as he ran and kept one eye on the golem. He thought about how for seven years, all he had done was challenge the hunter exam. As for the theory, he can proudly say that he knows more than any current hunter. Song guessed that if running away wasn't the answer, then he should try to find the answer in his theoretical knowledge. The golem's eyes shone, and a yellow trail appeared behind them. There was a bright red light near the chest on the left. Song understood that monsters like golems would stop moving with the destruction of their core. As he ran down another mountain of sand, he looked at the golem and realized that the core was located in an inaccessible place. Dream began to run up the sand to the highest point. He ran as fast as he could, and then as soon as he reached the edge, he jumped off it, so the golem flew after him. Song realized that since he couldn't reach out, he needed to create conditions to reach out to the core. Dream started to flip in the air, so he stuck his sword in the sand to slow down. He began to fly down through the sand, holding onto his sword. And thanks to this, he was able to slow down, but the golem just fell straight on its face, so Song ran up to it and looked at the golem very confidently, and then jumped away from the sand. Dream was able to land directly on the golem's body, right next to the core. He was so happy to see it that he looked like he was going crazy. Song slammed his sword into the core with all his might, thinking that he had succeeded. Suddenly, as expected, the sword flew off with bright sparks from the core. Dream was horrified to see this. The sword flew right behind him, and his hands were shaking from the impact. He was able to cut this core a little, but he wasn't able to crack it. The golem began to scream. Dream jumped back, and thought that the core was much stronger than he had expected. He bared his teeth and sweat ran down his face. There was a sparkle in her eyes. Song decided to make a second strike to win for sure, so he swung his sword and ran straight for the core. But suddenly, the golem was able to catch him. He grabbed it and squeezed very hard, so that blood flew out of his mouth. Dream screamed in pain. He opened his mouth wide and tilted his head back. Dream again imagined that instead of that golem, it was his teacher. It was now made up of muscle and teeth. Dream thought about how everyone was telling him again that he didn't know where he belonged. He still held the sword in his hands as blood trickled down his arm and he was trembling all over. Song once again decided not to give up, so he grabbed the bloody sword and started shouting that he had had enough. Willpower and courage could be seen in his eyes. Song, being squeezed in the golem's fist, threw the sword that was dripping with his blood. This sword was able to directly hit the golem's core, causing sparks to appear everywhere. The golem began to scream in pain, and red lightning flashed around it. In its core was that sword, and the notification said that the core of the sand golem was destroyed. They gave him the remaining time, which was seven minutes. But the training test is complete. The golem began to crumble into pieces, and sleep began to fall down. The golem was just another mountain of sand, and Dream, rising from the sand, sat coughing up blood and wondering if he really could kill the sand golem. He was smiling, covered in blood. He knew that he was one step away from losing, but in the end, he was able to win. He got to his feet and looked up, a big smile on his face. The notice said that he had passed the first floor of the test tower. He received a lot of notifications, which said that as a reward, he received unlocking a unique characteristic, and also as a reward, he received a thousand points. As a bonus reward, he received the accelerated regeneration skill, as well as 500 points along with them. Song was very surprised while there was blood on his cheeks. He was in a kind of void, holding his sword hand. As he stared at the notification, his emotions were running high. He looked down at his hands and thought of those laughing students. Dream thought about how literally he'd spent the last seven years mixing sweat and blood, and all he'd gotten in return was ridicule and scorn. He shone all over because a unique characteristic was revealed to him. It was necromancy. Song thought that now he could definitely become a hunter, but he also knew that all his efforts would only be fulfilled if he survived. So Sung's eyes were a little blank. Suddenly, he opened his eyes wide in surprise. A red substance appeared in front of him. He didn't understand what it could be. Song still held his hand with his other hand and looked at the matter, saying that the black mist was formed in the place where the golem died. The dream decides to touch this matter, so the notification said that it activates a unique characteristic. He was asked if he wanted to absorb the spirit of the sand golem. Dream was very surprised and fascinated by this. He was thinking that he could devour a ghost, which means that this black mist is a unique characteristic of him. Dream agrees to absorb the spirit of the sand golem. 
This fog started moving towards him, and then all the way to Xiangwu's mouth, which made him scared. He was notified that he had absorbed the spirit of the sand golem, so his skill is increased by 7%. The mist began to enter him, and he stared at his hands in surprise. And then I saw the mist coming straight out of my chest, so I started screaming in fright. The fog was still gradually passing through it, and when the core entered his body, it was written to him that he now owns one soul out of five. Song wondered if he could sense the spirit of the sand golem. When it consumes a ghost, how does it store it? He closed his eyes and thought about how he didn't know how to use this golem anymore. The dream began to glow and rise into the air. The notification asked him to increase his stats by using the spirits he possessed. At this moment, his strength increased by three points, and his stamina increased by two points. Song was looking down very surprised, and there was a red aura around him. He could feel its power growing. He was very happy that his stats had actually gone up. He remembered standing with his sword, all tired, in front of the battle dummy. He was glad that a stat that had never been raised in seven years of hard training. It turns out that it is possible to increase the characteristic. The notice told him that he only owned 7% of necromancy. This was his unique characteristic. Dream looked distraught again, looking down at his palms with a strange look. Song knew that if he came back with this ability, he could also become a hunter. Suddenly, a large blue portal appeared in front of him, and a notification said that he would be moved to the waiting room. Dream saw this and was covered in blood and even beaten. But he decided to go there, saying that he had no choice but to go inside. After passing through the portal, he simply collapsed from impotence, dropping his sword. Dream was lying on the ground, and his blood was everywhere. It turns out that his injuries are much stronger than he thought. Suddenly, it started to rise into the air, and there was a green aura around it. Song was surprised by this, but then he got to his feet as if he hadn't been injured. Song was very surprised by this arrangement, so he began to examine himself, because all his wounds had just healed. He thought it was something like his body needed to recover after the trial. And then he noticed the bed he was heading for, but he wondered how it was possible for such a large room to have just one single bed. But then he thought better of it, because he should already be grateful that it was there at all. Placing the sword against the wall, he fell back on the bed and then stared at the ceiling, wondering what he would do in the future and whether he would be able to get out of the tower at all. He couldn't understand why the tower had summoned him, but then he was very surprised to see a notification in front of him. So he got up from the bed and decided to read what was written there and the notification told him that from now on, he can use five commands, such as information, shop, community, inventory, and challenge. When it says a command, it is automatically executed. Dream thought about it. Then he started slapping his cheeks, saying that right now all he had to think about was how to survive. Dream spoke the command, test the notification said that the second floor trial would start in 23 hours. He can't choose a challenge yet. Sun sat on the bed and read the notification. He said that this was to be expected, there are still so-called tests ahead of him. Then he uttered the command, community they wrote to him that he had entered a high difficulty community. There was a chat with people, they were all unhappy that they were there, many of them had their stats taken away, and some of them weren't going to be a hunter at all. Dream understood what was meant by community. As he read all this, he was a little tense because the chat rooms were chaotic, and besides, as he realized, the trials involved not only hunters, but also ordinary people. When suddenly the admin logged into the chat and it texted everyone. He banned correspondence. Song was very surprised by this, and the administrator wrote that he has a message for those applicants who have passed the training test. Song was sitting on the bed with his hands folded, and I thought about what might be told about how to get back. Therefore, he needs to focus so that he can remember everything that is about to be said. The administrator wrote that he would teach them how to use the points they received for completing the training test. Points are the main currency of the tower and are mainly used in the market. Points can also be transferred and exchanged in the community. There is a message that made sleep alarmed. This is that in the challenge tower, they won't be able to get even a drop of water without points. The administrator added that these points can only be earned in challenges. Dream was terrified that they could only be earned during the challenge. He imagined walking through the desert, completely dried up, looking like a demon, and I knew that he must somehow adapt to life in this tower. Saying that he won't even be able to get even a drop of water without points means that he has no choice but to challenge and take part in the challenge to earn those very points. The administrator wrote that this is the end of his abs. Therefore, he left the chat, and just the ban on correspondence was lifted. Song started holding his eye, and he was very angry. After all, if he returned, he could immediately become a hunter. But then he noticed his sword, which was placed against the wall, and he realized that the fact that he had only one sword in his hands did not please him at all. Sun decided to enter the store using the command. And so, we see that the dream is already standing with a shield in his hands, and also poses beautifully with a sword, and then jumps somewhere. 
He was thinking about how the hunters who had been sucked in with him had lost all their stats because of the tower, but they need to master the skills they once learned much faster. Sleep bounced from side to side, sweating profusely, and he knew that he shouldn't think that he was on the same level as them. After all, if he didn't train regularly, he would never be able to catch up with them. After a while, Dream is already lying on the floor, both sword and shield scattered. But then he lights up again with a green aura, and all the sweat on his face flies into the sky. He needs his shoulder with great joy on his face, because thanks to the healing effect of the waiting room, he is able to devote enough time to training. And he decided that maybe the next test would be surprisingly easy. But suddenly, his stomach began to rumble violently. Song was a little upset that he was hungry right now. Song opened his inventory and examined the items, saying that he didn't understand why the waiting room didn't relieve the feeling of hunger. His inventory was full of everything, but not food. He stared at his inventory with great displeasure and gritted his teeth as he thought about how he had bought all sorts of unnecessary items and ended up with only 40 points left. If it wasn't for the extra reward for completing the training challenge, then he wouldn't have dreamed of getting a shield. Song decided to see when the next test would be, and it's already been a long time since he was in the room, so the second floor test starts in 17 minutes. Dream stood in the middle of the room and reflected that even in the chat window, where communication did not stop for a second, there were fewer messages as the hour of the second test approached. He stared at the notification in frustration and wondered if he could survive again. But then, with a very confident look in his eyes, he decided that he would definitely stay alive. The notice said that the second floor trial would start in 10 seconds. The report went on for one second, and then he was written that the test of the second floor begins right now. He was asked if he was ready to start it. Song clicked on consent, so the portal he entered appeared in front of him. Behind the portal was a picturesque forest and nature. Song ran out there very happily with his arms outstretched. The sun was shining brightly on him, and his gaze was filled with delight. Dream asked if there was a forest right after the desert. The notification told him that the subject of this test was murder, and he was asked to kill the orc chieftain in the allotted time. The orcs were green in color, with fangs as well as weapons. There were a lot of them, and they all looked creepy. Song was standing on the edge of the cliff and noticed something. Ahead of him, down below, was a settlement of orcs, too numerous to count. Song was very scared, looking at them, because he knew that he would have to go down to a place teeming with orcs and kill their leader. Orcs walked around their settlement with spears and armor. The dream looked at them with a spark in its eyes and a slight fear. The orcs in the settlement made strange noises, apparently it was their language. The dangerous orcs that were the guards there stood with bright yellow eyes. Song sat in the bushes and watched them, he looked like he was very puzzled. His thoughts were that in normal dungeons, if there was a sentry in the orc tribe, then it should be considered that there was also a huntsman. That orc looked very angry, with red eyes and an evil aura around it. Song thought about how he wasn't sure if he could even defeat an orc Jaeger, let alone this whole mob of monsters. He knew that in order to defeat the orcs, hunters of at least E rank would have to form a group, so his chances of winning were close to zero. Song looked at them with determination in his eyes, but he was thinking about how he could defeat them. As he lay in the bushes, he thought that first of all, he should retreat and think about a strategy, and then act. But suddenly, he came up with a plan, so he smiled and looked sideways. He thought that there was only one way that he could overcome the challenge. He took the torch in his hands, looking at the notification window, he said that he had collected enough logs. Looking at the torch in front of him, he decided that now he could act. So I reached out with the torch through the notification window. And just the same, the torch was placed in the inventory, and the dream was very surprised by this and was glad. After all, his plan really worked. The sun was still visible outside, and Song knew that even though the orcs looked like pigs, they were actually a conscientious race. The orcs were walking through the forest, covered in mud and carrying weapons, and Sun was hiding behind a tree, watching them. He knew that the huntsmen were supposed to go hunting in the morning and return by sunset, so he had plenty of time. The orcs were standing behind each other and had red evil eyes. Dream thought that there was only one thing he could do that would help him break through the numerical superiority that was the biggest obstacle on the way to the goal of this test. And it was fire. The orcs at the entrance were communicating with each other, making strange noises, and Song was watching them intently from behind the tree. He reflected that according to the Hunters Association, an orc sentry doesn't stand guard all the time, but returns to the village during a meal or rest break. So Dream waited for the right moment and started throwing torches all over the forest. I threw it at one bush and then at the other, and at this rate, the entire forest soon burned. The orcs were scared, so they pointed at the fire and ran around with buckets to put it out. In the middle of the village, everything was on fire, and the village was in the middle of the forest. Song knew that once the village was completely engulfed in flames, he wouldn't have to worry about running into the orc hunters returning from hunting. So before the flames engulf the settlement, he needs to catch at least two orc workers. Three orcs were running through the forest with buckets of water. Two of them took water and immediately ran back, and the third was just coming up. 
but while he was filling the bucket with water, sleep was behind him, which scared him. Immediately, he stabbed him right through. The orc let out screams of pain. Then, he used his necromancy skill and consumed the spirit of the orc. The blood mist went straight into his chest, and he said with a smile that he was waiting for this. As soon as the fog reached the end of his chest, he was told that his skill had increased to 9%, when suddenly behind him was a very healthy orc, which is twice as tall as him. Dream noticed him, so he immediately turned around with a trace of his eyes, and the orc sentry hit him with all his might, but Song was able to protect himself with his shield, so he just went into the ground. Song watched as the sword pressed him into the ground and shouted, Engulf. A blue aura began to appear around Sun, and the orc wasn't very happy about it. The notification said that his strength was increased by 4 and his agility by 2. Song immediately started making a counterattack, and his eyes were as bright as ever. The village was still burning, and Dream had already defeated the huge orc and started to consume its spirit. He also activated the accelerated regeneration skill, and he knew it would be risky to let his guard down. Song clenched his fist with all his might and his stats are well increased from sentry, stamina increased by 4, strength increased by 2, and agility increased by 3. He realized that now he didn't risk dying if he met another sentry. Out of the burning forest comes Dream with his sword. The orcs notice him and shout, their faces showing that they are scared. Dream began to look at them all with his own eyes and counted that there were 3 orc workers and 1 sentry. There was also the old chief, and it turns out to be 5 in total. The huge orc was covering the old man's orc with its arm to prevent him from going into battle. The old man looked down sadly and said something in his own language. Sleep was thinking that if he carefully bypassed the sentry, he would be able to reach the chief without any problems. Dream instantly killed three orc workers, moving from one to one. Thanks to the absorption of the sentry's spirit, the worker orcs posed no threat to the sentry. After he killed the third orc and there was a lot of blood around, Song noticed something. And it was a huge orc sentry, right behind the one Dream had just killed. The sentry struck directly at Sun with all his strength, but he managed to defend himself thanks to his shield. Because of this blow, his bone broke. Dream wondered if the sentry was distancing himself from the chief, or if he had decided to give up his duties as a bodyguard. The chief shouted something to the sentry, but the sentry continued to fight off Sun. And Sleep knew that, in fact, the sentry was the last obstacle. Suddenly, Song found the moment and decided to use it by launching his sword strike. His eyes shone and left a trace. The dream was able to pierce the sentry's orc through. At that moment, the warchief started to create a whirlwind of flames, and Song, standing on top of the orc, pulled out a sword from it. The chief created a huge vortex of fire, and the dream, seeing this, was very surprised. And the leader decided not to waste time, so he shot flames directly at the hero, but he defended himself with his shield. The warchief looked as if he was confident of victory, but then he noticed that the smoke had cleared, and sleep was behind it. This frightened the chief very much. The hero, standing all burned with blood on his face, received the achievement, the one who withstood the flames, for which he received the skill of resistance to burns. Dream was so angry that he even bared his teeth. He said the chief was finished. He started to approach the chief, who, out of desperation, began to create another vortex of fire, and the chief also screamed. But lo and behold, the dream just cut off his hands that they flew into the sky. Pretty brutal. The chief began to squeal in pain, and then he just stared at his severed hands, which were dripping with blood. The chief just ran to his room, and the dream looked very terrifying. But he wanted to avenge his parents, so he followed him to the ward. Dream cuts open the cloth that covers the entrance to the ward, and then he is shocked by what he sees. And there the same chief embraces the little orcs who cry and hold on to him. Suddenly, one of the kids approaches Sun with trembling hands and holds his leg. He looks up at Sung and cries. Dream reflected that they also cared about their family. Song almost burst into tears at this, so he just kept quiet. He remembered how his parents had been killed. They were shouting at him to get out of here, because at least he had to survive. But the little orc pulls out a dagger from behind his back, and then throws it at him along with the dagger. Song has time to react to this, so he hits him on the head with the lower part of the sword and says that the monsters are completely different from what he was thinking. This little orc immediately died from such a blow, but after it, the leader and the second kid rushed at it. Song knew that even if there was a chance that they would become ghosts following him, he would still exterminate them all. So the dream cuts off the chief's head. The notification says that he has cleared the second floor of the challenge tower. Sun's shield was completely scratched and smashed. He looked at it and realized that the shield had fallen into disrepair. But it was thanks to him that he was able to survive. Sleep watches two notification windows with one hand and the other with the other. And he says that this time he was on the verge of failure again. Then he started looking at the chat and read that someone wrote that there were half as many of them. Suddenly, he was very surprised, because there another person wrote something that he figured out how to get back to Earth by sending a letter with a question. The dream represented a planet where all the people were having fun without him. 
He was glad that there was still a way to get back to Earth. He activated the information window, where it said that with each floor, he gets another question ticket. Sun realized that he could not use the right to send an email with a question of interest to him. Sun was very hopeful after this information. He imagined that some bright ray of light was flying into the Earth from outer space. And he says that the chat naturally formed an atmosphere for exchanging information received during sending questions to the administrator. He put together the key points, minus some small details. And after overcoming the fifth floor, temporary return stones will be available for sale, with the help of which it will be possible to return to Earth for several days. And from the eighth floor, as it was said, a large-scale expansion of the system will be made, and items will be available for sale that will allow you to finally return to Earth. The dream lit up with this desire, so I read all this with bright eyes. After all, if he returns to Earth with just the skills he has now, then by improving his stats, he can become an A-rank hunter. He looked at his stats window, where it says that his necromancy skill is at 65%. Then he held his head, knowing that on Earth such abilities would be called a jackpot. He looked down sadly, saying that it was only with grief that he made it halfway to the second floor. The eighth floor is still like the moon. He was looking at his stats window, where his stats, strength, agility, and so on were recorded. He knew that in any case, he needed to think positively. His stats, which had always been at zero, were now close to the average of 20 points. He took off his burnt clothes, saying that first things first, he needed to absorb the five spirits that he had obtained by risking his life. Then, a light shone in his chest, and a blood mist appeared around him. Song looked at his stats, and his strength grew very much, as did his agility. Dream was very happy when he saw this, and there was a light in his eyes, and there was a red aura around him. The power overwhelmed him, so he ran around his room at lightning speed, and he also realized that he was beyond the limits of human capabilities, which he could only read about in a book earlier. Because of his speed, he was able to run on the ceiling. Jumping away from the ceiling, he ran across the floor, still at lightning speed, but then he started screaming and trying to stop. But before he could, he flew into the wall, and there was a lot of smoke all around. His imprint was left in the wall, and he fell on his back. Wiping the blood from his face, he said that due to his rapid growth, his body wasn't used to the new sensations yet. Song opened a shop and then purchased the dead giant shield for 2,000 points. This is a shield created by a dark sorcerer from a dead giant tree. He opened his inventory and said that now was the perfect time to use the rewards from the previous challenges. He picked up a black iron sword imbued with dark magic. He also took the assassin's cloak, which has a magic use effect that increases movement speed by 15% for one minute, but takes 24 hours to cool down. Song put on all these clothes and weapons. Then he exhaled and thought about how he would be able to get used to the new equipment before the next challenge. So he flew around his room like a bolt of lightning, leaving a trail of his eyes. He swung his sword and looked ahead very confidently. He knew that he would become so strong that no one would be able to catch up to him. We are transported to a cave where the drippers are dripping, and the dream comes out of the portal to this very cave. The notification said that he had entered the third floor, and the subject of this test was a duel. Song pulled on his hood and stared ahead with his mouth open. Then he stood in the middle of the light and looked up, asking what kind of cave it was. The notification said that the Dark Guardian would appear in 10 seconds. Sleep was very alert. He raised his sword and defended himself with a shield, because like the Sand Golem, it can appear from anywhere, so it needs to be alert. The notification said that it appeared. A shadow appeared behind Sun, wearing exactly the same equipment. Dream noticed him, and there was a spark in his eyes. But all of a sudden, that shadow pierced right through his back. It was red-eyed and had sharp fangs. Xiangwu was in a lot of pain, but he was looking at him. The notification told him to defeat the Dark Guardian. Han looked to the side and kicked the guards of darkness, and they bounced off each other and stood in the cave from which the light from the hole was coming. They looked at each other and Hana activated fast recovery. He thought about it and realized that if he hadn't turned around at the last second, his spine would definitely have been finished. He looked up and noticed the strange posture the Guardian was in. He took a closer look and realized that the Guardian was imitating him. He was standing in exactly the same position. He headed forward and thought that there was only one way to find out for sure. He ran forward and then came up behind the guard. The guard turned around in surprise, and then there was a thump and a spray of blood. Han jumped back and looked ahead in surprise. Han didn't notice that the Guardian had begun to writhe and repair his wounds. Han looked at him with a smile and realized what he also had on his mind. Guardi immediately moved towards the smaller one, and Han held up his shield, then stepped aside. He kicked it and realized that the monster was copying its every move. She pushed him with her foot and the opponent's kick missed. Han walked towards him and realized that he had an advantage in this case since he knew how to counter his own techniques. He ran up to the opponent and started hitting him, and he dodged and jumped back. Han continued to press him, and then he was shocked when a smaller one was pointed at his face. There was a thud, and they jumped back. 
Han's neck was cut and he was standing there and didn't know what it was. After that, a punch rang out and the opponent began to press him in exactly the same way as Han had just done. Han had a hard time blocking all of these attacks and realized that it wasn't just a coincidence. He realized that they hadn't fought for long, but his opponent was already quite well developed. He jumped out of the way, and the other man looked at him. He noticed that Han had struck a pose and was exuding a stern energy. The notification said that the assassin's cloak D skill activation has been activated. The movement speed has been increased by 15%. Han looked sternly ahead and realized that he couldn't drag out this battle in any way and needed to end it in less than a minute. He looked at the snarling monster once more and the notification started counting down. Han headed towards the opponent and quickly closed in on them, then a punch rang out that Han was able to dodge. He walked under the blow and found himself in an advantageous position to strike. He stabbed his opponent in the neck, thus piercing it through. Han smiled and said that he had succeeded, and the monster started screaming in pain. Han happily raised his sword, then his arm was torn off and it flew to the side. Han looked at his hand in shock and started shouting. He was in terrible pain, and his arm was bleeding profusely. He looked to the side and his face was covered in blood, he knew it wasn't over yet, he needed to focus. He looked at the monster that had almost recovered from the previous attack and realized that the monster wasn't moving. Even though it had a recovery tax, it probably needed time to recover completely from its last attack. He looked towards his hand and realized that this was his chance to defeat the monster, but he didn't have a sword hand. I wrote that Khan had a positive effect 15%, the time was 11 seconds. He desperately looked ahead and held up the shield that was in his hand. He realized that even though he was grasping at straws, it was much better than just waiting for his death and doing nothing in this situation. He started forward and then ran off, shouting. The master was surprised to see such determination. Han was closing in on him, then he also started growling and swung his arm to hit Han who was heading towards him. Han punched him in the body, sending him flying backward and falling to the ground. He lay on the ground and continued to growl in pain. Han stood over him and climbed up and told him to die of pain, then he started to finish him off with his shield. The monster's head flew off, covered in blood. I wrote a notification message. She was congratulating Han on reaching level 3 of the challenge tower. The system message said that the entrance to the waiting room on the fourth floor was made, exposed from all negative effects and injury. Immediately afterwards, Han's hand recovered and shone brightly. Han looked at his hand in surprise as he held it and then placed it against the wall. He clenched it into a fist and swung it. He hit the wall, and it just crumbled into small stones. Han smiled and said that it was just a flawless healing. The system message said that the number of souls in possession was a fifth. The soul of the monster he just defeated, I am at a red light. He realized that the spirit of the doppelganger that he had obtained after passing the third floor trial. As he stared in surprise at this soul that was emitting a lot of energy, he realized that the consistency of the spirit was incredibly dense. It was so good that it couldn't be compared to the monsters he had absorbed earlier. The system message wrote that the skill and unique characteristics of necromancy had been reached 100%. The level of necromancy was equal to rank F. Then the rank of unique characteristics of necromancy increased and the level became equal to rank E. Han looked at all the skills and their unique stats and was shocked when he realized that he could absorb other people's skills. Additional effects when absorbing the spirit of the deceased, there was a certain probability that one of the skills imprinted in the soul could be acquired. He recalled the moment when he was walking on the field injured and there were bodies of dead monsters around and realized that it was just like how he was able to get accelerated regeneration only after he had to come within a hair's breadth of death several times. Han realized that skills could never be obtained at the snap of a finger. He smiled and realized that in all his life, it had never occurred to him that he would be given such a passable unique characteristic. Of course, he realized that it wasn't worth missing out on. He noticed that the description said that there was a chance of acquiring a skill, then realized that he just needed to check how lucky he was and that was it. The system message wrote that the difficulty of entering the community was high, and the community of four floors was 880 out of 1508. He waved his hand at the system screen and said that it was already his third return to the waiting room, so the environment was already so familiar to him, as if he was just at home. He thought about it and clicked on the system screen. He started looking through the messages and realized that here was information about the next test. He counted everything that others wrote and realized that on the fourth floor he was waiting for a combined test. He stared at the system screen and thought. He suggested that there will be a joint test with the form teams of players. Kim wrote that maybe he was exaggerating a little, but they sent him a reply saying that the topic of the next test will be competitions. And since they're also talking about a competition between hunters, wouldn't that mean they have to kill each other? Han had calculated the situation and was horrified. He assumed that in the next trial, they would actually have to kill people. The system message says that the selection of applicants has been completed and tests of the fourth floor are starting. 
The remaining time is 24 hours. The condition for successfully completing the joint challenge was to defeat the Goblin King within the allotted time. After we see the gate of the castle that stood in front of us, the condition for failure of the test was the destruction of all applicants selected for the team or the expiration of the allotted time. The penalty for failure was death. I miscalculated this and found myself among the other participants. They were standing in front of him in full armor. He looked at the whole situation and realized that it was awkward. He realized that he had only crossed paths with monsters recently and had no contact with other players. He looked to the side, and the other person told him that since they were part of the team, they would have to introduce themselves to each other. He took off his hood and it was a girl. She wore a long blue cloak and carried a long weapon, as well as dark hair and bright eyes. She revealed that her name was Lee Ha Young. She looked to the side and said that she specialized in providing support to the team, and also on the outside, she was an E-rank hunter. She turned to the side, and Han said they didn't think their team was a complete bunch of scum. Then a huge guy who had a huge sword and was wearing armor began to speak. He said his name was Lee Sung Hoon. He said that he specialized in close combat and was a D-rank hunter outside. Han was standing in the hood and didn't understand why he was trying to poke. On Earth, D-rank hunters were always polite. He stood in front of them and greeted them. He said that his name was Han Sung Yoon and said that he also specialized in close combat, but outside he was not a hunter because he was taking a training course. Song looked at him and asked what that meant, he said that he was just a cadet. Khan was very surprised and listened to the insult in his direction. The dream said that he was a fool and that he should not dare to get in his way. Han looked at him and said that even so, he was still confident that he was good at fighting and could handle the role assigned to him. Song looked at him and said it wasn't a fighter. He looked at him with displeasure and said that he would warn him in advance if he decided that he was only harming the team, then he would simply interrupt him. Han stood and listened to all this. He remembered other people laughing at him, too. He had long since gotten used to this kind of look, and for a moment she forgot that nightmare. Then he was called out and Song, holding his sword in his hands, told Han to just stand behind and take care of small opponents who would cause problems. Han looked at him and said that not only did he make him mad, but he could also say that his ability was enough to give him back what he'd said. Afterwards, they stood in front of the castle, and Han realized that in the Tower of Trials, it was all about being able to use your skills. The system message says that the topic of this test is competition 3 to 3. There they wrote that people should cooperate with their team members and complete the tests before the other team. The gate began to open and small goblins ran out with axes. They immediately pounced on Sun, who began to defend himself with his sword. There were small cuts on his face, and he looked and wondered how the goblins could move around with such a battle formation. He looked in Han's direction and asked what he was doing, then asked if he was going to fight. Han looked at him with displeasure and he had already defeated several goblins, saying that he didn't even look in his direction. The girl in the back began to cast magic, holding out her spear in front of her and said that the spell would be completed any minute. She asked to hold on a little longer. Song told her to stop talking, and he asked her to concoct some positive effect for him, preferably as soon as possible. Ha said that she had already used all her supporting spells. Song tried to fight off the goblins and listened to them laughing. Han approached the girl and called out to her. He assumed that he needed help. He said that he would not leave the girl for a long time and go help him. Ha looked at him and shouted to him to wait. Han immediately rushed to the man and Ha said that if he just left like that, no one would be able to cover her from the rear. Ha pondered and looked back. There were many goblin corpses in the back that had already been neutralized. She couldn't believe her eyes that this was actually real. The goblins continued to attack Sun, who was barely holding back. They went on the attack and started attacking him with their weapons. Song couldn't keep his sword in his hand and dropped it to the side. The goblin jumped to finish him off, then Song started shouting that he was unlucky to be teamed up with a cadet. After that, Han easily took out a lot of goblins with a single swipe. Song held his hands to his head. I looked ahead and the goblins started screaming as their brethren died. Han stepped in front of Sung and then called out to him. Han told Song to stand on the sidelines while he dealt with the monsters. Song looked at him in surprise, and Han confidently told him to stay out of his way while he was doing this. After that, he went to the crowd of monsters and began to kill one by one, deftly swinging his sword and chopping everyone into pieces. He had beaten a lot of monsters and the system message said that Han had obtained the Goblin Hunter achievement. Song opened his mouth in surprise when he saw what the cadet was usually capable of doing. After Han dealt with all the monsters, he walked straight towards his team emitting a terrifyingly strong aura. As he walked, he thought to himself that the black aura that he radiated from his unique stats was invisible to the eyes of his teammates, so he could absorb the souls of the monsters he killed as much as he wanted. I wrote a system message asking him to increase his stats using the souls he has. His strength was increased by 3, agility increased by 4, stamina increased by 2, and stamina increased by 7. Han was very surprised when he saw that one of the goblin's skills had been absorbed. 
This tax was sensitivity, and it was equal to rank F, skill was at zero, and the effect was the overall field of view expands and it becomes easier to notice approaching subjects. His eyes shone, and he activated this skill. As he stood there, he could feel everything around him. He is very surprised when he realized what it was like to see the world from a big wide angle. He smiled and said that he had hit the jackpot again. He walked up to his partner and Song started laughing out loud they say that the cadet had incredible luck on his side because he only managed to resist weak goblins, but, whatever it was, he said that he did a good job. Han and Ha Yu listened in silence as he laughed. Khan put on his hood and said that from now on, he would lead the operation and move in the vanguard. He thinks that this formation will be of the greatest benefit to their team, so he looked at them confidently and asked if they had any objections to it. Song looked at him in silence and told him what would happen your way. He asked if there were any other instructions. Han had said that he was just supposed to protect Huntress Ha, and so nothing was required of him. Ha brightened up a bit when she heard Han say that she would need to provide support and provide guidance on the terrain. One in short, she would need to do the same thing that she did before. After that, he offered to work productively together for the rest of the time. Ha stretched out his hand, and it started shining a bright green color. A large crowd of goblins rushed towards our heroes, shouting in anger. The system message said that all the goblins' soul had been absorbed, the skill was 11%. Han gradually defeated all the goblins that came towards him, and he raised his skill level time after time. After the system message said that there were 14 hours and 37 minutes left. After that, we see old houses and how our heroes walk through an abandoned village. Ha said that even though the goblins were attacking at different intervals, it was too quiet right now. Han hesitated, then moved quickly forward. His partners were wary and asked him what had happened. Ha looked forward in surprise, and in the distance, there was a fountain with defeated goblins inside. Han leaned over one of the goblins and examined it. Dream was surprised and guessed whether they had rocket turbines instead of legs or not. Han took the shard and said that it was still warm and if they hurried, they could catch up with their competitors. Han began to imagine the whole fight as a chessboard battle. He knew that if the other team won, they would simply die if they failed the test. Han looked ahead and said that they should hurry or they might be late. In front of someone, there was another group of goblins who were laughing and were about to attack them. Some guy was standing in front of them and white than the bill. The goblins started walking forward, then a man stood on top of them. He stood on his shoulders and held two swords in his hands. The other goblins hesitated and turned to look at him. The man with the displeased face said that he was already sick of hunting goblins. He asked if this was the last fight before going to the boss. The goblins immediately charged at the man who was standing over the other goblin, then he chopped off the goblin's head and jumped up. He came at them with rage in his eyes and said they were stupid things. He cut through the entire group of goblins in a second and stood on the ground. The other guy looked at him and said he did a good job. The mage guy also said that Hyunnam was peerless. The guy who dealt with all the accumulated money looked at them and said that it was a stupid hunt because he had to do everything alone. He started hitting on other guys, and the guy with the black hair told him to stop talking like that. They then stood in front of a gate that radiated a terrifying energy. The guy started walking towards the door and told them to finish up completely and get a good rest after that. The other guy said he would open the door immediately. He went to open the door and said something about the man treating him like he was some kind of dog. The system message said that the conditions had been met and all members of the challenger team had entered the Goblin King's spire. The guy went to the door and opened it. There was an intimidating red energy on the field and the system message said that the boss battle wouldn't start until only one of the two teams remained. And at the moment, ejection from the current location will not be possible. The guys stood and looked up at the top in complete shock. The territory was covered with a red cube and it covered a huge area. The guy looked up and asked what kind of nonsense it was. Others started to panic and one of them noticed a group of our heroes. Han and his team slowly approached the other guys. They stood in front of each other and watched. The guy from the opposite team said that he wanted to finish this one as soon as possible. The Khan stood in front of him and told him that he would fight alone. And secondly, he asks Ha to give him a positive effect that increases dexterity. He said that she could have provided all the other positive effects to some. Ha listened to him in silence. She said that she had seen with her own eyes that he was very strong. She looked at the opposite group and guessed that perhaps the people there would be more terrifying than all the monsters they had already encountered together. Han looked over and said he heard her, and if he judged that he was in a dangerous situation, then he would immediately give the signal. Until then, he would count on Ha's support. After that, she held out the spear in front of her and started applying a positive effect. She said that everything would be done. Han headed into battle, and he started to shine brightly and the system message said that his agility was increased by two, and the effect of increasing agility lasted for ten minutes. Han walked forward and thought about it. 
he was completely convinced that he had already surpassed the skill level of the average hunter. On top of all that, he had just killed more than 30 goblins. The guy stood up in a crouch and said that he was coming to them all had to prepare for battle. Han said that he was strong enough to handle this challenge now, and then he furiously rushed towards the opposing team. It furiously rushed forward, leaving behind a huge cloud of dust that it leaves behind. The guy looked at him in surprise, and he yelled at Jai to use his shield at full power immediately, otherwise he would blow them down. The guy agreed and started activating the shield. It started to shine brightly with a white light, and Han jumped up to strike. He swung and slashed at the shield and easily severed the shell that his opponent had just created. The opposing team jumped out of the way from such a force and Han rushed forward towards them. He threw several punches at the enemy. Sung and Ha watched it all and they weren't shocked by what Han was doing. Han moved forward to the leader of the group, who glared at him. Han threw a punch and he blocked it. Han, when he tried to attack him, didn't understand one thing. The opponent's skills were clearly inferior to Han's, but it was very strange that his opponent could easily deflect all of his attacks. He looked at him with a confident look and realized that in this case, he should have acted more decisively. He abruptly got behind his opponent and threw a punch with the thought that he would come to an end. Han threw a punch, but the opponent was able to block it. Han was completely shocked that he was capable of this. When his opponent blocked the punch, Han noticed that his eyes were glowing. Han realized that the man could see the mark of his blade pointed at him. The man jumped back and a shield flew at him. This cheat closed his eyes, and he did not notice the attacks you can do. After that, Han immediately closed in and started swinging to strike. He had pierced through the enemy, and his enemy didn't understand what the situation was. A system message said that she was congratulating Khan because he had completed a special task. D the reward for completing four floors will be awarded bonuses. Khan stood in front of the defeated enemy and his comrades slowly began to approach him. They noticed that Han's body was shaking. Ha thought about it and noticed it. She looked at Hana, who was standing there silently watching the people he had just killed, and she asked if he was okay. Han coolly said that he was perfectly fine. Ha looked at him and assumed that he was in shock because of the murder he had just committed. She thought that Han was a strong and cold-blooded person. Han turned around and said if they don't mind if they go fight the boss now. They looked at him and said that they were quite ready to enter the room to fight him. After that, we see how the boss was bleeding and how Han was on his back and stabbing him through. System messaged the target of the challenge, the Goblin King, has been destroyed. Han descended to the ground, and behind him, the boss was also defeated. Song watched in shock and wondered if Han was a monster. The system message was written congratulations, you have overcome the fourth floor of the test tower. As a reward for breaking through, all stats were increased by four, and the D-rank instant acceleration skill was obtained as a bonus reward. Then I moved them to the waiting room. Song awkwardly looked at his companions and said that he would leave them one. Han stood in front of Ha and they looked at each other. Han said he hoped she would return safely. Ha asked him to listen to her. Han turned to her and Ha said that maybe her words were out of place. She started remembering that battle and said that Han was just doing what he should have done and someone would have had to kill the opposing team anyway, and if he refused to take the fight, then she would have gone. With a surprised face, I listened to everything that she said. He looked down and said that her words made him feel much better. She extended a finger and pointed towards Han. Han looked at the system message that said that candidate Lee Ha-young had sent him a friend request. She turned to look at him and said that the fourth floor trial had been completely completed with Han's strength, so she felt as if she owed him a favor and felt a little uneasy about it. She looked at him and said that in the future, when he returned to Earth, let him find Lee Ha-young from the White Guild. Han was embarrassed and left, and the girl went into the portal. Han looked to the side and realized that with one left, he had to make a decision. Tam looked at the soul that was in the dead people that he had just killed and thought about whether to absorb the human soul or not. He was facing a difficult choice and was enveloped by the black energy that came from the dead bodies. When he was fully convinced that he was capable of something like this, he postponed the absorption process until later as he felt that he was about to come to an irreversible line. He stood up with a big smile in front of them and looked at them. He raised his hand and said that he had made up his mind. He had captured a person's soul and understood that although he had no intentions of killing people, but to become stronger in a situation where there was no choice, he was willing to commit murder. He grabbed the demon's soul and started absorbing it. He understood that in addition to his own desire to become a hunter, new ambitions were already beginning to sprout in his soul and the Tower of Trials gave him such a chance. He will take full advantage of it and he wants to continue climbing to the top of the challenge tower. I entered the portal and entered the waiting room on the fifth floor. After the system message, I wrote that the system expansion has started. A system of ranking applicants and summing up the results of the test was created. Han thought about it when he saw it. The system message asked you to enter his name. Han thought for a moment, then pointed. He thought that such a gentle word would do and wrote Hunter instead of his name. On the screen was a summary of the fourth floor. 
Han was surprised that everything was clear. He started flipping through the pages and wondered if he'd gotten lost somewhere in the list, too. After that, he was surprised when he saw statistics about himself. He was ranked 16 and was in a rank hunter. The breakout time of the fourth floor trial was 11 hours, 14 minutes, and 51 seconds. The process of breaking through the fourth floor trial was equal to SS plus rank. The total summing up of the rank 4 trial was equal to rank a hand calculated all of this and was surprised that his ranking was much higher than he expected. Applicants and those in the top 50 will be rewarded as trailblazers, and those who have gained the status of trailblazers will receive benefits on the 8th floor. If you continue to hold the trailblazer status up to the 8th floor, these people will receive the halo privilege. Han was surprised and assumed it was something like granting a skill. He started scrolling through the system notes and said he'd get the details when the time came. A system message asked him to select a soul to absorb from the souls he currently has. The number of souls was 4 out of 15, it was the player Li Shen, Li Jai Hu, Im Sang Yun, and the Goblin King. Han started absorbing all of this inside himself, and the system message told him to increase his stats using the available resources. Han said that now he feels that he has finally crossed the boundaries of human capabilities and has become much stronger than before. Han bought the return stone and the system message said that it was an F-plus rank stone, which allowed Han to leave the Tower of Trials for three days and return to his original location. Han grabbed the stone in his hands that was emitting dark energy and said that it was worth checking if it could move with his equipment anywhere. The stone began to be absorbed and Hanu began to redirect to the destination Earth. Han smiled and said that he was going back to Earth. After that, the system message wrote that the President of Ukraine confirmed his intention to return, after which a bright hole formed under him and he began to fall through there. The system message wrote that the takeover process was starting and the final destination was Earth. Han started to get sucked down, and he screamed loudly. The system message wrote that Challenger Han has returned safely instead of his original residence and in three days he will be relocated to the Tower of Trials again. After that, Han's room was bathed in the sun and the curtains were blown by the wind. Han woke up on his bed and stared at the ceiling. He got up from the bed and looked away. He saw a computer and notes hanging on the wall. Han realized that he really was back. He lay back down on the pillow and thought that he needed to get some sleep to get off to a good start. Compared to the bed in the waiting room, his sleeping place was a real paradise. However, his peaceful rest was interrupted by an unpleasant smell that came from him. He got up and said that the smell was unbearable and that the first thing he would do was go and clean up. He looked down and noticed that he had stepped on his shield, which was lying with his sword on the floor. He picked them up and said that he decided to check just in case but it turns out that they really could be taken with you to Earth, or rather you could take items from the Tower of Trials. This meant that other applicants could also take their own items with them to Earth. He looked ahead and realized that he needed to act as quickly as possible. After all, soon the number of people returning to Earth will increase many times and this will lead to a sharp increase in the number of items and a drop in the price of hunter equipment on the market. He stood up and realized that he needed to get rid of the equipment as quickly as possible. The problem was that only those with hunter qualifications could sell items in the market. He looked at his notes on the wall and realized that he had originally only planned to apply for the hunter exam and pass it on his next return. He picked up his phone and looked at it. He realized that he had a lot more to do than he really thought. Next, we are transported to the place where the man practiced blows with his partner. Another man was watching, and then his phone rang. He came over and answered the phone. He introduced himself as a Chuang Man Ho and said that the instructor of the training center was listening to him. Han also introduced himself and asked if the instructor remembered him. The instructor nodded his head and said that he remembered. He offered to apply for a refund online. Khan said that they may not refund the tuition fees inflicted on him. The coach stood up in surprise and asked him if he meant it and if he would regret his decision. Han said that he would not regret it and in return, he would have one request for him. The coach closed his eyes and said that if he was going to ask again for permission to resume training in his center, then he would be refused. Han told him to help him pass the hunter exam. The coaches fell silent, then he looked at the notes and it said not admitted to the exam. He said that Han had apparently already forgotten that his previous midterm assessment was a failure, and he was given an F rank by a stretch. Khan said that he knows this perfectly well and the coach said that if the exam is taken by a person without unique characteristics. Khan wouldn't let him talk and said that they wouldn't be able to help him even though he refused to give them a refund. Khan said that he could safely change his mind, because money was never superfluous. Han offered to make a deal with him, and all he had to do was arrange for him to take the hunter qualification exam today. Then Han went to wash up and put his own in the basket, and he went to take a shower. He looked at the mirror and saw his slim, toned body. He was surprised and said that in proportion to his progress, his body had changed too much. After that, he went out and started to get dressed. He said that there was no time to enjoy himself now, as he had made an appointment to take the exam, so he needed to hurry. 
He opened the door of the apartment and went out, he saw a neighbor who came into the apartment. He looked at her and realized that the normal daily life that he missed so much was very much fun for him, it was even nice to see the neighbors just passing by. He met a neighbor and Da thought about him that Han was a neighbor who had been trying to become a hunter for 1000 years. She also greeted him, and Han walked past her with a smile and wished her a good day. The neighbor looked at him and noticed that he had grown up and was not so tall before. Then we see Han waving his hand. He tried to stop the car to deliver him, but no one stopped. He looks ahead, and then we see him skipping nimbly across the rooftops. Han said that running to your destination was also a very good option. He jumped up high and said he would be there soon. After that, we see the Hunters Association. It was a huge building that was located in the center of the city. Han goes there and sees in front of him two men who met him. Han said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time and called out to Instructor Mana. Man laughed and said that it wasn't like it had been so long since they last met. Han stood in front of him and realized that he had brought so much in the past few days that it felt like 100 years had passed. Man looked at him and asked if there was a lot or if Tom had to bring it, Han said that it was just like that, and it wasn't an easy day. Then a man in a suit came up to them and said hello. He introduced himself, and it was Kim, the Inku. He said that she would be his examiner, who would monitor and evaluate his test. He looked ahead and guessed that Han might have known that an instructor man's request, he wouldn't need to take the theory proficiency test and interview, then he asked if Han had any other questions about the exam. Han went ahead and said that he was well aware of how the exam would be conducted. Ying said it was great, then said that in that case, they could start the exam. He told him to follow him, and then we see Han standing in the middle of the room with a sword in his hand, and the instructors watching from above. Nan called out to Kim while watching the process and told him not to forget about his request to eliminate him as quickly as possible. Kimmy said that he didn't need to worry about it, monsters were prepared for testing for their best compatibility with the examinee. Kim looked ahead and told Han that as soon as he was ready, he should please choose the difficulty of this exam. Khan could choose any difficulty from 1 to 10. Han looked ahead and saw a goblin standing in front of him. He used to always choose the first degree of difficulty in this exam, and every time he lost to a normal goblin. I remembered how he held onto his shaking hand and wondered why he was so weak. Han stood there and tried to say something, and then Man grinned and said that it was natural to choose the easiest one. Man looked to the side and he saw that Han was choosing the tenth degree of difficulty. Man was shocked by what he heard. Han looked towards Na Man's side and saw his smile. Man said he was just a fool. The alert system wrote that the exam had started, hunting the firebird. After that, a huge bright bird appeared in the room, which was ablaze with fire. Han stood in front of him and was completely enveloped by the bird's aura. His movements were slowed by 25% thanks to the predator's roar skill. Han's sword started to crack from the temperature. Man stood there with a grin on his face, remembering how he used to pick up a gun. He knew that this piece of trash would never pass the exam, because he had tweaked his weapon a little and made it look terrible. He looked at it all with a malicious smile and realized that the man should know his place. Man told Han to take a sip of water from the puddle. Then, a huge hot bird flew up in front of him and started flying all over the room. Han looked at her with a confident gaze and didn't doubt his strength in the slightest. After that, we see the memories and the final list of people. There were a lot of people who were happy that they were finally able to reach his goal. Han recalled that when he finally became a hunter, he thought that he was the best, but gradually the gap with his peers began to widen, his acquaintances left and slowly began to become one. And in the end, he gave up trying to fill this gap. Man stood there and understood that the world of hunters was based on innate talent, he accepted this fact and stopped trying to change anything in this life. It was as if he was standing behind a closed door that had been boarded up. He thought that people were forced to give up when they felt a wall they couldn't overcome, and not just him, but everyone else did. He looked at all of this and realized that this was why Han Tong had to give up. He stood holding you in front of the huge birds and when his sword broke Mana realized that he had to give up. Han noticed that his sword had split into two pieces and he jumped away from the bird. He realized that even if it was a low-level weapon, there was no way it could crack so easily. He looked to the side at the smiling Mana who looked at the whole situation and couldn't believe that he was trying to frame Han. He looked at his snide smile and wondered what he should do. The bird started charging a huge fireball and aimed it towards the smaller one. Han watched coolly and realized that he was even glad that everything turned out this way, because it was an ideal situation to test his skills, which he managed to get on the fourth floor of the Tower of Trials, anatomy of a foot in the floor and used instant acceleration. He leaped high and dodged the fiery gusts that the bird was creating. He planted his feet on the ceiling and got caught. He smiled and realized that it was much better than the increased movement speed when using the positive effect of the assassin's cloak. The bird started charging the sphere of fire again and pointed it in Han's direction. Han immediately started rushing towards the bird and attacked it with his broken sword. I'll stick it right in the bird's head. He fell to the ground and the ground cracked under him. 
Looking ahead as he expected, the sword was too short to defeat the bird in one go. He picked up a slab from the ground that he had just smashed and started swinging to throw it. He threw the stove and Bird B began to roar loudly. The stove flew in next to the instructors and Nan shouted out what Han was doing. The bird fell to the ground and died. The exam was completed. Han waved at the instructor and asked in order of influence. He said he didn't expect the stove to reach the instructor. Han with a malicious smile looked in the direction of the instructor after a joyful woman gave him a document on which it was written that Han was a hunter of rank C. His tea was close combat. She congratulated him on passing the exam successfully. Han thanked her, and the girl said that since he was registered with the Hunters Association, he could now officially engage in hunting activities. Han took the document and asked if she meant entering the dungeon and selling items. The girl said he was right. Then we see someone hitting the table. It was Instructor Man who called out to Kim and asked him to explain how this could have happened in the first place. Kim sat with his eyes closed, thinking. Man was reminded that Kim had told him that he would fail within 10 seconds, but in the end, he managed to pass the test in that time. Kim said he really could make a joke. Kim looked at him and said that he had done everything in his power and based on the stated data, a hand cadet would never have been able to pass this test. Mang gestured with his hand in displeasure and asked couldn't we at least give him a lower rank. Kim asked much lower. He recalled that Han killed a monster in 10 seconds, which is aimed at cadets who received the D rank in the intermediate certification, and if he gave him this rank, he could appeal. Han came into the room and interrupted their conversation. He said that he had received an ID card. Kim told Han to accept his congratulations. Han approached instructor Monhee with a smile and said that he didn't look very well. He asked if something was wrong with him. Han stood and watched Man Po, who was smiling and laughing. He said they were congratulating him. Han said that if memory serves, he reached the rank of S before retiring. Man asked what Han meant by that. Han turned his head to the side and said that he just briefly remembered how he said that he thought he was trash. Mang gave him a satisfied look after Han said that it suddenly occurred to him that Mang might actually have been the scum. After that, the instructor jumped up and started calling Hana names. Mang headed towards Han with his fists. Kim stood up and told him to calm down. Man started swinging his arm to hit Hana. Han stood confidently and as he had planned, Mang easily fell for his provocation. Han dodged and swung his arm to strike. He hit Man right in the stomach and said that he was acting in self-defense right now. After that, he slapped him across the face with his palm. He said it was his response to aggression. Man flew back and didn't understand how Han had such incredible strength. Han then stood in front of Kim, and Han asked if Kim had offered him a job as a direct employee of the Hunter Association. Tim said that Han's salary would be 1 billion won, if he wanted more, it could be negotiated. Kim said that if he accepts his offer, it only seems to be a win. Kim looked at the document and thought that 1 billion V was a good start. The team smilingly said that he was just able to discern Han's potential. Han called out to Kim and said that it seemed that the difficulty level of the exam was adjusted arbitrarily. I was surprised. Han looked at him and told him that he wouldn't give away the problem, but it wasn't in his nature to make a deal with someone he didn't trust at all, so he threw Kim's business card away and left. After that, we fast forward two days. According to the news, it was rumored that a mysterious phenomenon called the Tower of Trials had been observed among the hunters recently. Everywhere it was written about the Tower of Trials. Han said that everyone had finally found out about this tower. He looked at the phone while holding the return stone and said that he got rid of the equipment at a very good price. He said that after all, these three days were not wasted and he spent them very productively. He said that his time on Earth was coming to an end and he had to leave. The system message wrote that in a few seconds less will be moved to the test tower. Khan said he would love to have his time, too. He was returning to the Tower of Trials. Han began to sink, and he realized that he was once again looking forward to making further progress. He was beginning to disintegrate into particles, and he knew that when he returned, he would be busy again. Space began to distort, revealing a bit of sun. And then he appeared in the room at a height, so he fell and was surprised, flying with his mouth open. Falling on the bed, he sat down on it and said that here he was again back in the tower. Then he turned around, and there was a crystal and a chest on the ground, and Dream said that this was to be expected, that he could freely move objects between the tower and the real world. Song put the chest and crystal in the inventory, and then lying on the bed decided to jump off it, so he jumped very far. Stretching his arms and with a smile on his face, he decided to stretch his body a bit and waste no time challenging the fifth floor. When suddenly the notification says that he has received an achievement, first return. He has created a skill, Eye of Truth. His eyes glowed purple, which surprised him a lot. The fact that his eyes have turned purple is due to the fact that the effect of this skill allows you to use mana to get information about the target that he is watching. Even ordinary items, looking at them, you can see information about them. 
and also determine whether the opponent's words are true. Around sun, false people are introduced with a fake smile. Sleep pokes its finger at the inventory window, which means that in addition to receiving data about the object of observation, it is also able to distinguish between lies and truths. Song looked at it with surprise and laughed that it was a jackpot of pure water, he was very lucky. Song purchased a thunder sword, for which he gave 5,000 and a half points. I also bought a hunter scout shield, which I paid a little less than 3,800 points for. Song immediately decided to wave the sword, saying that even though he gave a lot of points for this sword, but he really liked its options. The sword began to glow with a yellow aura, and lightning struck around it. This was his ability, because with a 10% chance, he could apply the lightning effect when hitting an enemy. Sun believes that this sword will be very useful with such options. Then he decided to start the test, and the notification asked him if he was ready to start the test on the fifth floor. Dream didn't hesitate to jump into the portal that appeared, saying that after all this time, he would finally start the test. A large number of notifications appeared, which indicated that the Dream had entered the fifth floor, and the difficulty was high. Also, the subject of the test was hunting, which takes only 24 hours to complete. The condition for successful completion of the challenge is to defeat the werewolf boss located in the Wolf Gorge. The condition for failure to pass the test is the death of the applicant or the expiration of the allotted time. The reward for a successful breakthrough is a patch on the head of a werewolf. The penalty is death. Dream appeared right in front of a huge rock that was very sharp. Around it were rocks shaped like spikes. It was night outside and the weather was overcast. Song, holding the new sword and shield in his hands, looked very confident. Around him, the wolves that were standing on the high ground began to climb out. There were a lot of them, and so they all decided to attack Sun at once, jumping on him in a crowd. Song calmly began to cut through one wolf after another, running forward. They were all barking in pain. Dream, running through the next wolf, kicks him with all his might, throwing him very far away. This wolf was rolling on the ground, leaving a trail behind it. The hero didn't understand why they were all so weak. And now the wolf is stopped by a huge white paw. Dream notices this and is surprised. And behind the wolf that had flown away, there were huge white werewolves. There were three of them. The wolf was trembling and whining from weakness. But then one of the huge werewolves opens its mouth wide and then bites the little wolf in half. They were joined by another huge werewolf. They all decided to surround Sun while one of them had blood all over his mouth. It looked pretty creepy. Dream looked up at them because they were too big. But then his eyes lit up and then there was a strong sporting excitement. He said that the Tower of Trials never disappoints him. The werewolves charged at him. Song leapt off the ground, rushing straight at them. Dodging the werewolf's bite, he flew into the other's mouth, saying that it was even getting fun to pass now. As he cut one of the wolves in half, he smiled and wondered if he was just going crazy. And then he performs a series of kills, just like he did with those little wolves, cutting down one by one. The notification said that the skill proficiency of Hunter's Dagger has reached 100%, so this skill has been upgraded to rank E+, and the accelerated regeneration skill has been upgraded to rank D. Dream landed on the ground while there was blood all around. Song, looking at his dagger, thought that the Hunter's Dagger skill that he had obtained on the third floor had also almost reached its growth limit. He needs to get a new swordsmanship skill. More werewolves jumped on him as he stood there thinking. But then he held his dagger out in front of him and with a malicious smile told them to keep attacking without stopping. After a while, a blood mist was coming out of all those werewolves, and he was standing in the middle of them. Sleep consumed each of these souls, thinking that he had already hunted three times, and it turns out that the sword's lightning effect is even rarer than he thought. Standing in the midst of this blood mist, he was told numerous times that he had absorbed the mad wolf spirit, and his skill had increased by 16%. Song, holding the sword in his hands, looked at the notification window and said that the skill of the unique characteristic is also steadily growing. If he gives 100%, he will be able to increase the rank of his unique characteristic. Then, he started walking somewhere, thinking that he was almost in the middle of the wolf gorge. Suddenly, he notices something that makes him wonder. It was that there were a bunch of dead wolves around him, and they were all covered in blood. He didn't understand what was going on and assumed that there was a conflict in the pack. And then I sat down next to one of the wolves and realized that the cut was too smooth, so it was made with a sword. Then, he turned his head to look at the stone that had a cutout on it, also made by a sword. He thought that the footprints left nearby only confirmed his assumption. Song decided to use the Eye of Truth, so his eyes shone with a purple light. The same cut on the stone also lit up because of his ability. The notification said it was a D rank or a trace. The mark left after a rather skillful aura neatly split the wall. All traces of that aura around Sun were glowing with purple light. He was beginning to guess that this was another skill. His face looked a little strained. He thought about it, thinking that there were too many nuances that didn't make sense to him. He felt uneasy at the time. But suddenly he hears a heart-rending growl, 
which makes him afraid. Song realized that it was somewhere close to him, so he started running, causing his hair to flutter in the wind. He abruptly ran into some creepy cave. When he noticed something, he kept running. Song guessed that the roar was coming from the cave a little further away. When suddenly a huge red werewolf flies out of it, he was covered in blood. This werewolf did a few somersaults due to being thrown very hard. Song stood there with his eyes wide open, terrified. In the middle of these sharp rocks, a notification appeared that the werewolf boss, which is a condition for passing the test, has died. The cause of death was investigated and analyzed. The dead body of the werewolf boss was lying in front of Sun, and he looked at it and thought that it couldn't be that the target of the test, the werewolf boss, was really dead. Dream turned his head, and sweat was already running down his face from fear. The notification said that the analysis was completed. Challenger Han Sung Yoon's office was discovered to be invaded. Someone who was wearing metal armor started to come out of the cave. The notification said that the goal of the challenge has changed, now Sun will need to kill a challenger from another dimension who has invaded his test. It was some kind of huge knight, fully clad in armor, with bright purple eyes and a huge sword. The knight and Song met face to face, and Song thought about the notification that he was able to invade, and in general came from another dimension. Four towers of different colors were located in the Eternal Void, and Dream thought that this probably means that the Tower of Trials exists simultaneously in several dimensions other than Earth. Dream stared straight into his eyes, not understanding how he could be there. This knight put his sword on his hand and asked Song that he was still alive, he didn't expect something like this from a challenger from an underdeveloped world. He asked if Song was the master of this trial, then, he pointed the sword directly at the hero, his eyes glowing with a bright flame. The knight asked why he was silent, calling him a barbarian. He assumed that Sun was shackled by the fear of impending death. Song placed his sword to protect himself, and it was clear from his face that he was really scared. He wondered if this knight had also gone mad. The notification repeated that he was to kill a challenger from another dimension who had invaded his trial. The knight was pointing at him with his sword. Song stood with his sword in his hands in a battle stance, thinking that he never thought that there would be a situation where the target of his trial would be killed by an intruder from another dimension. Then Dream began to look at him, but the smile on his face was gone, and he thought that he was very lucky that the test was not failed. The knight started using his magic on the sword so that it glowed with a purple light, and then he said that Song was so scared that he couldn't speak. In that case, he decided to end his suffering. Song looked at him very angry and focused, knowing that he was about to attack. The knight ran to attack him, and then suddenly made a jerk, which was already followed by a purple trail from the aura. Song placed his foot under the body of that boss, and then kicked it directly at the knight who had invaded the trial. The werewolf's corpse flew straight at that knight's stomach, but he instantly cut it open with his huge sword. Suddenly, he noticed something, so he started looking away. It was a dream that flashed past him. He looked at him with burning eyes, and as he struck, he shouted that he was caught. Sleep hit him squarely in the back, sending sparks flying all around. But suddenly, he was startled when he saw what had happened. His sword just slid across that knight's armor without even dealing a drop of damage. Song planned to cut the armor in half. The knight was standing in front of him, charging the sword with magic and said terribly that it was a dream caught. So he hit him with all his strength, but he was able to defend himself by holding up his shield that he had recently bought. This shield shattered into small pieces, and the dream itself flew very far away and with great speed. The dream flew into the wall, leaving a huge dent in its wake. The impact caused him to bleed everywhere, and his face twisted in pain. Song held his hand, because it was broken from such a blow from the knight. In front of him was his sword. The knight looked at him and said that he was able to block the aura, but if he allowed himself to be cut in half, he would meet a quick and painless death. The dream started shouting at him that the system had recognized him as an intruder, that he was even like this, because the dream was seeing him for the first time. The knight stood in front of him and laughed, saying that a barbarian couldn't possibly know what a storyline was. Song asked, startled, why exactly something like this had happened in his trial. The knight glowed with a purple aura and told him not to hold grudges because the tower was originally such an unpredictable place. He decided to give up long conversations because it's time to know the honor already. Sleep started to stop him, gesturing for him to stop. Then he clutched his hand and, holding back the pain, asked me to tell you what a floor introduction is. The knight calmed down a little, so he looked at him in silence, but then said that since he was a dead man anyway, he could tell him. The dream looked at him as if it was planning something. The knight began to tell that among the options of the system, expansion occurs from the 8th floor, there is a so-called floor implementation. This is a small notification window that says that this is a ticket for a floor implementation. After all, if you buy a ticket for a floor introduction, you will be able to interfere with other people's tests. And he explained that here he stands at the top of the floor and then just gets to the bottom, embedding. It was Sun who got it. Dream looked at him and asked that he called this place an undeveloped world, so it turns out that he came from another dimension. 
The knight looked at Sung, who tilted his head in pain, and asked what it meant that Sung thought that he came from some other world. Dream replied that it looked like it was, and then he looked up with his eyes and used his eye of truth skill. The entire night was covered in a purple aura, and the notification said that the opponent was completely honest with him. The dream was silent and empty, but all it could think about was that this knight was telling the truth after all. The knight pointed his sword at him out of anger, reproaching Sun for having just committed an extremely unpleasant act. How dare he even judge his words and actions? Song looked at him with a smirk and determination, saying that there was nothing he could do about it. The knight was even angrier because of this, so he was ready to tear him apart, asking how dare he even be impertinent to him. Song looked at him and said that he had obtained some valuable information, so maybe he should also share a fun fact. The knight asked what the fact was. Song showed his hand that he was holding in his hand and said that thanks to the pain tolerance skill, his injured hand is practically not in the way. In other words, he wasn't holding her down because he was in so much pain. Dream started to let go of his hand, and it was shaking and covered in blood. Just then, the accelerated regeneration skill was activated, and the arm was healed as if nothing had happened. Song added that if he let go of his hand immediately, it would automatically heal under the effect of the accelerated regeneration skill, but it seemed to him that the knight would only share information with him if he looked pathetic. The knight was very surprised by this, and then began to prepare an attack, charging the sword with purple mana. He asked me what it was, that Song was just testing his healing skills. But, he decided that no matter what, if his strength was only what he had demonstrated earlier, then he would not escape death. Song kicked the ground, causing his sword to fly into the air, which he caught. And then he placed it in front of him and shone with a red aura, saying that his strength continues to grow rapidly. The notice said that he could raise his skills with the souls he absorbed, but he hadn't used the souls of those werewolves yet. Therefore, his strength, agility, stamina, mana, and durability increased quite a bit and the dream itself looked even stronger than before. It shone with a blue aura. The knight is shocked, because looking at him, he asked that in addition to the healing skill, he also has a unique characteristic. Dream activated the exclusive effect of the assassin's cloak, so his speed increased by 15%, just for one minute. He put one foot forward and then used instant acceleration. There was a blue trail behind his eyes. The knight was already sweating in terror, as this fifth floor challenger had so many skills. Dream made a sudden dash for the knight before he even had a chance to look. Song attacked him, but he was able to parry his blows, but after a series of blows, Song was still able to cut his armor. The knight held his sword in front of him, defending himself with it. He didn't understand what was going on, because it was only the fifth floor and he had such exorbitant stats. The knight got angry, so he shouted at Sun and started using his magic. He aimed his punch at Sun, who realized that the knight had activated his aura. And after calmly dodging his strike, the knight's sword stuck into the stone, and then he calmly began to cut the stone. Dream noticed this and started running away from him. The knight was able to cut through many rocks in a row with a single blow. Dream dodged these blows, thinking that aura is a high-level skill, so such a blow can cause serious damage to him. Dream jumped away from the impact, as if he had frozen for a moment and thought that he was definitely ahead of him in terms of stats, so he easily manages to avoid critical hits. But the real problem lies in his armor. The knight drew his sword across the stone, cutting it in half. His equipment is high level, impossible to destroy with Sun's current abilities. Dream bounced off his punches and didn't deal any damage to him at all. He ran behind him and kept hitting him, knowing that if he kept hitting him endlessly, one day he would get what he needed. Just during one of these strikes, a bolt of lightning began to strike the knight, causing that knight to feel pain. He screamed and didn't understand what it was at all. After all, Sun's sword is a thunder sword that can summon lightning with a 10% chance. Song was glad that this effect had finally happened, so he watched with a smile as his sword flashed from the lightning strike. The knight fell to the ground, blood streaming from under his armor, and his hands dropped to his sides. Sleep came to him as he coughed up blood. Song looked at it and looked puzzled, thinking that if the armor had the function of a lightning rod, it would add to his trouble. But fortunately, his risk was justified. The knight was trembling all over with pain, but then he leaned back and looked at Sun with a dying look and said that initially he should have won. Because in front of him there is only a challenger from the fifth floor, he does not understand how this is even possible, how he has so many skills. Song pointed a sword at him and said that he was strange if he relied entirely on his only high-level skill and armor. Dream started swinging his sword at him, saying that it was finally time to meet his end. The knight was very scared, so he covered himself with his hands and shouted at him to stop, because he can give answers to all the questions that interest him. Sleep, with a chill inside him, replied that there was no need. The knight started screaming, and Song just stuck a knife in the middle of his armor, killing him. His blood was flying everywhere. He made his last move, raising his hand, and then it just fell. Dream turned around and thought about how it was getting easier and easier to kill each time. 
Then he turned back to the knight and brushed the blood off his sword, knowing that if he felt uncomfortable piercing someone else's flesh, it would be a much bigger problem. The notification said that he had passed the fifth floor, and that night just started to disappear. The dream saw something and was alarmed. It was that the blood mist had appeared, so he activated its absorption as quickly as possible. The night disappeared to the end, and Sanu wrote that he had absorbed the spirit of the challenger, Keita Drax. Because of this, his skill had increased to 15%. Song was a little worried, as he had almost missed the opportunity to devour this guy's soul. He realized that if you die in another dimension, you just disappear like a mirage. Song stood in the middle of these rocks, holding out his hand and wondering why he didn't get a reward message. When suddenly a notification appeared in front of him, which said that the difficulty level and reward did not match, so the content of the reward was completely revised. Song was very surprised by this, so he waited for them to tell him what his reward was. The notification said that as a reward for breaking through, the skill 3 absolutes, rank as a bonus reward, he received 7,500 points, and as an additional bonus reward, he received 3,500 points. He presented awards in the form of cups, where he was small and large. Song was very happy that instead of the promised C rank reward, he received an A rank reward. So he looked ahead with a smile on his face and thought that the invading knight must have been quite strong, since the system considered that the difficulty of the test he passed was much higher than the original one. However, he still can't believe that he was able to hit the jackpot in the form of an A rank reward. After going through the portal, he was informed that he had passed the fifth floor, was cured of all injuries, and information about the challenger Han Sung Yoon would be displayed on the test summary board. Song started to take off his cloak, then put it in his inventory. He sat down on the floor, leaning against the wall, and began to think about how he had somehow encountered an invasion from another dimension. The Tower of Trials can really take you by surprise. His gaze was too mysterious, and he was thinking that he had agreed to save the tickets for sending questions up to the 8th floor as much as possible. He opened the information window, where he had 5 tickets for the question. Dream touched the information window with his hand, thinking that he needed to ask about what a floor invasion was and whether it was even possible to find out about the impending invasion. After some time, he sent his request, and sitting in front of this window, an answer immediately came to him, which made him wonder. He started to open the email, not understanding why the reply came so quickly. The letter said that the floor implementation is a system that allows him to enter the tests of an applicant with whom he has a gap of no more than 10 floors. However, it can only invade personal trials, and special and joint trials cannot be penetrated. This is a system that expands from the 8th floor and is currently unavailable. Dream touched the window with his finger and realized that it was like breaking a ladder to climb. Suddenly, a red exclamation mark appears on the screen, and the notification says that this information is not available on its floor, and since the question is only half satisfied, the ticket for sending the question will not be used. I was afraid of this, because it turns out that even a ticket for sending requests is not omnipotent. He flipped open the information window and was glad that his ticket was still intact. He opened the inventory window with a smile and said that it was time to use the items that he had brought with him from Earth. Poking his finger at the inventory window, the same chest and stone appeared in front of him, as well as the broken shield. The chest glowed with a golden aura, and the notification said that he could use the croc and magic tower recovery chest to restore the shield of the secret hunter. The shield has fully recovered from the shards, and the notification says that the remaining number of uses of the croc and magic tower recovery chest has been exhausted. He was surprised that the performance exceeded all his expectations. After picking up the crystal, the notification said that he was using a purity stone. He said that to be honest, buying a purity stone might seem like a waste of money, but he stood there and groped himself, saying that he felt that the feeling of freshness and vigor that comes after bathing is not a pity to give a couple of thousand won. After a long time, we see that the test of the sixth floor will start in an hour. Sun looked at this notification and said that he still has time, and thought that it might be worth checking out the test summary board and looking into the community. In summing up the results, he was in third place, which made him surprised. Song looked at it and was glad that he had taken such a place. He knew that he had risen quite high from the 16th place. Then he started scratching his chin and wondered if this was getting him closer to being able to get the trailblazer benefits, but decided that he would have to go all the way to the 8th floor to learn about those very benefits. Sun then decides to log into the community chat. There was complete chaos, people selling ways to get the mental resistance skill, which would be very useful in killing and looting. He claimed that people can earn money by killing players. Song stood there and read the chat, but he knew something wasn't right. Other people in the chat told him to stop looking for a way to make money from killing people. They tell him that he still had to kill a person on the fourth floor, so what is he doing here from being a saint? Dream was reading all this, and all around him were like demons, from a field of chaotic madness. 
He knew that what he was looking at was literally chaos and disorder. He didn't know what had happened in this chat at all. The dream represented a mental resistance skill that is now being actively traded. They have an attractive effect of reducing shock, but at the same time, it's like a double-edged sword. Even if you use a skill every time to let go of your heartache, it doesn't change the essence of the problem. Just then, he noticed something that made him wary. This is one of the chat messages that said that the person who had so suddenly released information about the fourth floor trials had changed his name to Sudi Gong Yu. His avatar was very creepy, and that message suggested that since they were talking about a competition between hunters, it might mean killing each other. Song looked at this and wondered if this wasn't the same challenger who had ruined the atmosphere in the fourth floor community chat. He remembers feeling like he was deliberately inciting everyone to fight each other. Song looked very displeased, asking if it would be the same this time. He swiped away the window, saying that it was worth remembering Sudi Gong Yu's nickname carefully. And so, at this moment, the portal just appeared, and the notification asked if he was ready to enter the sixth floor. It said that the theme of this test is occupation, the time for this is 50 minutes. The condition for successful passage is to capture one of the strongholds in any direction within the allotted time and the condition for failure of the passage is death or the expiration of time. The reward for successful completion is a random chest, rank B dream, after passing through this portal was a little surprised. After all, there was a huge sea in front of him, which was completely filled with various platforms. And on the platforms there were portals of other players. Song looked ahead and was glad that this time he had the sea. There was another portal on his platform, and the notification said that the selection of applicants is over, everyone needs to work with their teammates to pass the test. Dream noticed that his team members didn't show up for so long, maybe they fell asleep altogether. Sung walked up to the portal, and then a spear flew out of it, right into Sung's face. Song managed to dodge the spear and grab it, and then abruptly pulled a boy out of the portal by it. He looked very scared, so he flew with his mouth open. The Dream threw him out, so that he rolled on the platform. And then I went up to him and told him that he was attacking his own team, what he was doing at all. The guy started to get up from the floor, yelling at him that if he went to the community, then he should also have known what was going on. After all, killing is the easiest way to get achievements. The dream of hearing this just wilted. Standing right in front of this scoundrel, he asked what he wanted to say, that the most important thing for them is to earn as many achievements as possible, and it doesn't matter at whose expense they do it. The guy looked crazy and said that his hypocrisy goes beyond all bounds, and before he starts playing the role of a conscious and honest person, it's better to look around and there were people on the platforms killing each other. One guy is lying on the ground, covered in blood, shouting that they are the same team. They all just kill each other by cutting each other in half with their swords. The guy said it wasn't his fault, and if anyone was to blame, it was the tower. One of the contenders had no qualms about stabbing his teammate to death with a mad face, saying that he needed to earn an achievement. Standing in front of this guy, he could hear screams of pain everywhere. Sitting on the ground, he asked, so he understood what was going on here. I called him a hypocrite again. Asong was completely disappointed in people, it could be seen from his face. Someone swings a sword and then kills another guy. Everyone was killing each other. And here we see two people shaking hands, and one of them says that in such a difficult situation, they should join forces. The boy smiles and says that he is glad that he met someone who is of the same opinion as him. And the girl, looking at all this, replied that this is a disgusting betrayal. The guy waved his head, saying that they should have come to their senses. And suddenly the girl pierces him right through with a smile on her face, saying that you need to assess the situation with a sober mind. Her eyes turned red, and she said that even without really understanding what was going on, he shakes hands with the opponent without a drop of doubt. How was he going to draw his sword now? A notification appeared in front of her that she had received achievements, Bile Assassin, and its durability is increased by one unit. The guy just dropped dead. Song watched her do it, and the guy sitting in front of him with a smile on his face said that he should be honest, because he also wants to get achievements. Dream was looking sideways, and he was telling him not to play the holy fool. And then he took out his sword, thinking that he was finally distracted. He threw his sword straight at Sun and shouted for him to die. His sword almost touched Sun's eyes, but it instantly moved behind him and pierced him through with a spear. The guy was bleeding profusely and was surprised what kind of instantaneous transfer it was. Sun was given an achievement, traitor, and the strength has increased by one unit. Song watched the blood spurt out of him, and I knew it was pretty weak. He turned his head and took a stance, thinking that this was a special test, a joint test. They're all just a joke to the chickens. But at the same time, this test can be safely called a kind of event, special for him. While his cloak fluttered in the wind, he stood still and thought that here he could improve the skill of his unique characteristic, and if he was lucky, maybe even add a couple of new skills to his piggy bank. 
He looked ahead very confidently and understood that however, he wasn't going to specifically attack to kill the other challengers. It will simply fulfill the test conditions and fight those who first decided to attack it. Some guy raises his hand up and performs some kind of spell. It was an iron dome, a dome that covered everything around him, preventing him from doing anything. The dome completely covered the entire platform, and the magician who created it is very happy because this is the perfect test for him who studied water magic. He turned his head and saw Dream running across the bridge, sending water flying everywhere. Suddenly he jumps off that bridge and goes straight to that magician. Song noticed him and looked angry. The boy looked at him and wondered who he was. Dream flew into his dome with all his might, and the guy started laughing at him, shouting at him that it was an impenetrable iron dome. But then Sleep breaks through the dome and kicks him in the face with all his might. That this magician is already starting to spin, and there was a lot of blood around. The magician flies very far away, and his dome collapses in an instant. Song stands in front of the corpse and thinks that even though his actions were a little cruel, but the main thing is the end result. Suddenly, the two guys who wanted to attack him realized that he was a guy from a high position on the leaderboard, so they should move away from him. One even said that he really looks like a monster. Song sat in the middle of the platform as the others ran away from him, thinking that by doing so, he could instill fear in his opponents. To be honest, even though he wants to earn achievements, he still doesn't want to make unnecessary kills. The notification said that he had captured a stronghold, but the capture is also interrupted if someone from another team is on his territory. He must not allow his opponent to capture the stronghold. His remaining time is 10 minutes. Song sat and read what was written on the notification and realized that he only needed to hold on for 10 minutes. Then, he thought that the high-ranked challengers who immediately confirmed on the fifth floor to participate in the next trial without using the return stones should already be outside the sixth floor. Most of the people around him are low-ranked challengers, so perhaps breaking through the trial would be easier than he imagined. After all, the test on the sixth floor makes you think about a lot. This distrust of people is the reality of a low-ranking contender. The dream imagines these words as two people with their backs to each other and red eyes, and also represents a lot of people killed just for nothing. This is the darkness and gloom nurtured by the Tower of Trials. Song looked ahead with a twinkle in his eyes, realizing that the false sympathy was the real hypocrisy. Even if he managed to turn his opponents away from him by switching their attention to another strong point. In the end, someone will die anyway. The notification wrote to Sun that the enemy had entered the territory of his stronghold. Capture is suspended. Song noticed this and turned around to see who was there. There were four people coming at him with guns. Apparently the main one, with yellow hair and a haughty look, says that Sung has such a confused expression on his face. In this test, the team consists of two people, and on its territory suddenly appeared four. He asked sarcastically, probably wondering how it came about. Sun looked at them and said that without explanation, everything is clear. He smiled and said that it must be that the four rascals gathered together and formed an assassin squad to earn more achievements. The yellow-haired man began to laugh, saying that the dream had caught the whole point right away, and now they would bring his sentence. He said with an evil smile that the dream should die. Two guys, the biggest ones, jumped on him with guns. Awesong placed the weapon in front of them, defending himself. Suddenly, one of the people standing behind the attackers started doing heart fusion magic. Suddenly, Song felt something appear inside him. The notification said that he would now feel everything the conjurer felt. After that, that guy took out his dagger and started slashing at his own arm, crying out in pain. Song dropped his sword, for he too was beginning to feel pain. The sword fell to the ground as he stared at his hand and activated pain tolerance. He is attacked by a bald man with armor, and then he pours water from a bucket on sun. Sleep closes his hand from this water, but the notification said that once he touched the water, then his strength, agility and endurance are reduced by 10 units, the penalty will last for 2 minutes. Sleep was covered in water, standing with his mouth open, he realized that it turns out that there will be a penalty for contact with water. While he was standing, two warriors were flying at him, and the other two were standing behind them. They both started attacking Sun, and he knew that this was a really bad situation. But then he smiled and looked at them with burning eyes, saying that he was only bad for a normal player. They started swinging their swords and were about to injure Hana. Han looked down and his hand started to glow red. He said that the strategy of depriving the enemy of weapons and reducing their stats was quite good. But they made one fatal mistake, because of which they will now receive. Han reached out and grabbed the boy's face. He started swinging and said that they had chosen the wrong opponent for themselves. After that, he put the guy down on the ground and because of this, the ground started to crack into many pieces. The people who were there, they were completely shocked by what Han just did. The con tore off his head and he stood and watched in silence. The system message said that he had received the kill achievement of one hit. 
created a skill called Contempt for the Weak, which had a rank of F. The system message said that the skill Contempt for the Weak had 0% proficiency. Effect if the opponent can't surpass any of the user's stats, then the strength increased according to the difference in stats. His partner became angry and rushed towards the Khan, swinging his sword. He told him to die and called him a fool. The system message said that all of the enemy's stats were lower than the user's, so the disdain for the weak skill was activated. Powerless was increased by one. The guy struck with his sword, but at the place where Han was, he was no longer there. The guy looked ahead, and Han then hit him with her knee. The guy jumped back, then Han finished him off with his foot. The system message said that he had obtained the Merciless Assassin achievement. Han smiled and his dexterity increased by one once more. Other people stood and watched as I killed their allies. The yellow-haired guy looked ahead with displeasure. Han walked slowly towards them, unfurling his cloak. The guy looked at the other comrades and asked what they should do in this situation. He asked if they would attack at the same time. After that, the yellow-haired guy chopped off another guy's leg. He started to scream loudly in pain. He fell to the ground, and his leg began to glow with a bright light. Han got down on one knee and was also in pain. He looked ahead and realized that they were literally connected and they shared one pain between them. But fortunately, there was no real damage, the only problem was that this pain limited his actions. The guy who had his leg chopped off screamed that he was a bastard and continued to lie on the ground. He asked if he considered himself human after that. After that, the guy stabbed him through with his sword. He told Han not to approach him. Han stopped walking and stood up from the pain in his body. The guy who was being stabbed was lying on the ground and begging to stop. The yellow-haired guy said that if he took even one more step in his direction, he would cut that jerk's throat. Han stood there in terrible pain. He knew that with the speed tolerance skill, he was still able to move around at least somewhat. But the problem was that it was difficult to react properly to the opponent's attacks and actions in general. He looked ahead and realized that, as expected, the answer was only one. He looked at the guy in terrible pain and realized that he had to kill the challenger who had activated the heart fusion as soon as possible. The guy threw his weapon at him, and it cut off the head of a friend. The yellow-haired guy was indignant at this. After that, Han stood in place as if petrified. He put his hands to his neck and fell to his knees. He was in terrible pain in his neck as he had just chopped off another guy's neck. The yellow-haired guy started swinging as he realized that if he didn't kill him now, he wouldn't get another chance. He started swinging at Han. The Khan deftly took and stopped the sword with his palms. He looked at him holding the sword with his bloody hands and said that he felt like his throat was literally cut. He said that it permeated his entire body and he asked if the other guy was curious about what it really felt like. The yellow-haired guy started to tremble and smile. He said that the Khan is just crazy in the head. Han picked up his weapon and went to attack. He cut off the head of the guy with yellow hair and the guy managed to say that Han was crazy. Han stood looking ahead, his face covered in blood. The system message said that Han received the achievement Cold Blood and Shredder, which earned him 1,500 points. After that, time ran out and the stronghold was captured. Other people started cheering and hugging as they survived and cope. People cheered everywhere and whether it was the instigation of someone that many people were thrilled to kill at the beginning of the trial, but in the end, the final winners were those who kept their team. Han looked away and began to ponder. He looked at the people who had lost their minds and realized that there were some exceptions. The guy was sitting up and his hands were covered in blood. He said he didn't do anything wrong, he said it was all the fault of the fool who couldn't dodge his punch. Han looked down at his bloody hands and wondered in the eyes of the other contenders if he looked like a monster like any other guy. The system message congratulated him on this and he was able to overcome the sixth floor of the Tower of Trials. The random draw box was sent to his inventory as a reward for breaking through. As a reward, he also received 8,000 points. He started moving to the waiting room from. A blue space appeared. Han looked at the field where there was a large number of people's souls. The system message said that he had absorbed the spirit of player Lee Sung Joon, Kim Jin Hyun, Wook Sung Jin, Han Seok Joon. It absorbed all of these souls and the mastery of the unique necromancy stats was reached to 100%. The rank of unique necromancy stats has been increased by another one level. Necromancy was equal to D rank. The entrance to the waiting room on the seventh floor was made. Han entered the portal and moved to the waiting room. The event viewer function has been activated. Han was surprised by this and I opened my list of achievements. There were a lot of achievements, but he was interested in achievements that were equal to the S class. As Han had imagined, returning wasn't a simple achievement. He started tapping on the system screen and decided to take a closer look. There was a kill achievement of one hit which was equal to class C achievements were awarded for killing an opponent with one hit as a reward, the player received sideways contempt for the week. He also looked at the merciless killer and it was class E achievements were awarded to those who made consecutive kills of challengers without hesitation, as a reward, dexterity was increased by one. 
He also received achievements Cold-Blooded Shredder whose class was equal to D. This achievement was awarded for killing five or more challengers in a challenge. The quality of the award was awarded 15 points. Han noticed that he really did get a lot of credit for those murders. He looked at the disdain for the weak ability and realized that it meant that if a player earned achievements, they would receive various rewards such as self-skills, points, or stat boosts. He looked in his inventory and found a gift. It was a random draw box of rank B. The system message said that in front of him was box C, which was tied with a yellow ribbon and from which he could randomly select one item. After opening the box, he randomly received one of the items from both rank F and B. He took the gift in his hands and realized that it was a slightly ambiguous reward for breaking through the sixth floor. If the rank varied like this, then it probably wasn't worth waiting for much time. After that, he pulled on the ribbon and said that he would just pull out the item and start absorbing souls. He opened the box and it started shining brightly. Something jumped out and she did a somersault and landed on the ground. It was a green animal with black eyes and fangs. Han stood in front of him and didn't understand what was going on. Then he smiled and asked what kind of Pokemon it was. He wondered if he should catch it. Han immediately rushed to meet him and tried to catch him. He reached out to grab it, but it jumped up and dodged Han's attack. He jumped back and Han tried to get close to him and catch him, but he couldn't. Han pushed off abruptly from the floor and grabbed it with two hands. Han smiled and was glad that he was able to catch it, but the animal decided to open its mouth with sharp teeth and bit Han's hand. Han was surprised and started shouting, he threw the little animal aside and it stood up and glared at it. Han started to give off an evil aura, and he started sneaking up on him with a malicious smile. He said that the animal was cute enough, so he tried to go easy on her, then he jumped and went to catch it and said that now let him not expect mercy from him. Han started chasing him again for quite a long time and trying to catch him. Then he looked up and jumped. The animal was surprised at what Han was up to, and Han then pushed off with his foot and found himself behind the animal. Han started swinging his arm and was about to punch the animal. He hit him on the head and the system message said it was a critical hit. The bubble's head was pierced, after which it broke into many parts and inside it was some kind of glowing thing. The system message congratulated Hana and said that he had drawn the item corresponding to the highest class in the random draw box. Han looked in surprise and realized that if it was said about the highest class, it meant that there was a class B item in front of him right now. It was a B-grade wrought iron pendant. It was a steel pendant imbued with the soul of a blacksmith who had spent his entire life working with this iron to forge it. This item increased the effect of metallurgy and swordsmanship skills by 7%, and also activated an exclusive effect steel defense when adding mana. Since mana was consumed when activating an exclusive effect, there was no time to recover. Han picked up the pendant and looked at it. He was surprised by the steel protection and decided to test it. The amulet began to shine brightly in his hand and the system message said that the B-rank wrought iron pendant activated the exclusive steel defense effect. Han was covered with the pendant's aura and his skin became stronger and could now absorb 10% of all physical damage that Han received. Han was surprised by this ability. Also, the effect of the sword skill has been increased by 7%. Han said that this pendant's parameters were much steeper than most of class items. He looked at the amulet that was shining brightly, and he realized that it was equipped with both attack and defense and it was truly a very powerful item. Han put it on himself, and he said that he did not expect anything from this prank, but received such an amulet. Khan said that he had clearly hit the jackpot. After that, the effect of the amulet disappeared, and the aura of the air also stopped radiating. Han didn't understand what it was and the system message said that all mana was lost. The exclusive effect of the grade B steel defense wrought iron pendant has been disabled. Han looked at his amulet and said that it was an exclusive effect that absorbed mom at the speed of light. He's tucked the amulet behind his shirt and he realizes that he should have saved enough mana to use it at a critical moment in battle or whatever. After that, he turned to the other side and wanted to check the status window of the unique characteristic that was recently assigned a D rank. The system message asked if Han was ready to start the test on the seventh floor. Han looked and asked what it was. Wasn't there usually a waiting time allocated before the next floor was challenged? Han looked at it and said that if there was an opportunity to start testing a little faster, and then he didn't see anything wrong with it, so he would agree no. He wondered if the time allotted for waiting had also disappeared or not. A system message warned that logging into the community was very difficult. Ghost of the Tower wrote, Did you guys know that the waiting time is gone? Han took a look at all of this and thought that now everyone could immediately start completing the task. The manager and spirit tower started discussing it in the chat. Han started flipping through the system dashboard, and he realized that it didn't matter that the waiting time was gone and no one was particularly interested in the benefits of a trailblazer. There was an atmosphere of desperate desire to go home in the community. Han wondered if it was due to the fact that most of them were low-ranked hunters. He looked at the chat and realized that compared to the sixth floor, the manner of communication on the floor had changed a lot. 
He recalled the monsters and was sure that all these maniacs had long ago quieted down and were taking the test personally, since they obviously would not gain anything by entering into a dialogue. He looked ahead and had to be wary of maniacs and murderers who used the lives of their comrades as mere tools to gain their own benefits. Han started flexing his fist and said that the most important thing was that he needed to develop his skills, which would not be shaken by any changes. After that, he said that he should now check the status window for rank D unique necromancy stats. The unique D rank necromancy stat was 0%. If the effect was this, the Khan could absorb the souls of the dead to enhance and supplement their stats or simper an additional effect. The Khan could continuously increase their stats, and the numerical value would be directly proportional to the rating and quality of the absorbed soul. Two, an additional effect allowed you to do that the soul could be stored and used if necessary, and the storage capacity limit was proportional to the rank of unique characteristics. Three additional skill allowed when absorbing the spirit of the deceased from added the chance that one of the skills imprinted in the soul could be acquired by hand. 4. An additional effect allowed the Khan to use the souls of the dead to protect the body, but at this time, the amount of energy consumed by the protective shell was proportional to the impact force. Han calculated all this and realized that the description of the basic effect was much more specific than it had been before. He realized that whereas before the main focus was on strengthening its characteristics, now the soul could be used both as a magic power and as a protective shell. Han imagined the entire diagram in his head and understood it all. Bisha took two steps forward and opened another one system window. Han really hoped that there would be something like an increase in the probability of getting a skill. Then he realized that his train of thought was wrong and anything could happen, so the ability to protect the body would never be superfluous. He took out his weapon from the inventory and tossed it up. He thought that it was time for him to test how effective the spiritual shield was. Han held his hand out to the side and realized that he had to take the risk, because even if he cut off your hand, the waiting room was equipped with a healing positive effect anyway. The sword began to spin in the air and gradually fell on his hand. He was about to touch her, but when he did, there were bangs and it was all swallowed up by the red aura that was emanating from Han's body. The system message said that the spirit had absorbed the damage that had just injured the user. Player Wook Sung Jin's soul disappeared and the number of souls in possession became 3 out of 30. Han picked up his sword and looked at his hand, which wasn't injured. Instead, the soul that he had was gone. Han was very surprised by this skill. He smiled and realized that the efficiency of the car exceeded all expectations. He looked at the number of souls and realized that it is better not to absorb all the souls that were with him and always have a couple in reserve to ensure their own protection in a critical situation. He looked ahead and opened the test summary board. He was ranked 4th and had an S rank on the 6th floor. He looked and realized that he had slipped to the 4th place. He felt a little sorry, but it wasn't so critical because to get the title of a trailblazer, he only needed to enter the top 50. He started to warm up and realized that he was very tired while testing both. He realized that there was no time to pull the cat's tail and look towards the portal that led to the next challenge. The system message said that the tests of the seventh floor were starting and the difficulty was high. The topic of this test was proof. The remaining time was 40 minutes. Conditions for successful completion of the test were to pass three tests in the allotted time. The conditions for failure to pass the test were the death of the applicant or the expiration of the allotted time. Reward for successful breakthrough of the A Rank Wind Grace skill. The penalty for failure was death. Han found himself in a dungeon. He looked ahead, and I wondered what the corridor was like. He felt an atmosphere that was completely different from the previous trials. He started to walk down the hall and realized that he literally wasn't aware of anyone's presence, which was extremely annoying. After which, he looked ahead and his hair started to move. In the distance, he saw a bright light that was tearing him down. He held out his hands and a bright flash appeared in front of him. The system message said that Han had entered the first test zone. He had to prove that he had overcome all his fears. He found himself in an open-air desert. He didn't understand what was going on here. He looked around and was surrounded only by sand. He stood still and realized that everything was as expected. The sand in front of Han began to fall asleep and a huge monster began to rise from the ground. I didn't stand there and watch it all. He realized that it was a sandy beach. He realized that this space was now a reproduction of the training test. The system message contains a condition for successful completion of the test. Break through three trials in the remaining time. Han realized that everything turned out exactly like this, that during the passage of this test, three tests that he had already passed would be recreated again. He realized that he could now defeat the sand golem with his eyes closed. Han wondered if this meant that he would soon be on the eighth floor. The golem started to rise in front of him and eventually stood up and looked at little Hana. Han realized that the sand golem wasn't originally as huge as it was now standing there looking at it. They stared at each other, and Han realized that his size had now been tripled. Galen raised his hand and sand began to fall from it. He started swinging at Han, and Han pulled out a sword and shield from his inventory. 
He said that he would try one time to hit him directly on the empty head. He went towards the golem that had thrown the punch, but hand dodged and headed straight for it. It ran down his arm and got to his head. He jumped high and somersaulted over himself and realized that his weak spot was the core, but he couldn't see it anywhere. He assumed that the more massive the golem was, the more the core was located deeper in its body. The golem started shaking its head, and Han hesitated. He started to fall and the golem grabbed him with its hand. Toe started to squeeze it in his fist, but energy was released from the fist, and Han broke free of the golem's grasp. He looked ahead and realized that if he couldn't deal with it in one hit, then he would just chop it into pieces and find the core. He started attacking the golem in different parts of its body and the golem started falling apart. Han realized that, as expected, he was only cutting sand and needed to find and destroy the core at all costs. The golem suddenly stopped and started shouting loudly. He raised his hands and was about to attack Hana. Han realized that his tactics had only made things worse and infuriated the enemy. The golem started swinging towards Han, and he threw a punch. Han dodged and was surprised at how strong the golem's power was. The golem leapt high into the sky, and Han leapt after it. He realized that dodging the blow wasn't a problem, but if that sand wave fell on him, he would have a lot of problems. In the way, he turned to the side and started running to the side. Han tried to run away, and then the sand began to fill everything that was there. The golem sat and was covered in sand. Han was also completely swallowed up by the sand. He looked ahead, and he said he was furious. He looked at his opponent coming out of the sand and took out his weapon. He looked directly at his opponent, and he used the three absolute skill. The three absolute skill was equal to the A rank. The skill level was 0%. Base effect using little to boost three sword attacks. Additional effect when using the skill, each attack increased the cutting power of the sword by one and a half to 2.5 times. Han used this skill, and I landed three hits on the opponent's body. The golem lost its limbs, and Han looked at it. Han realized that he had taken his arm off with one punch, and when he faced the so-called floor level, he was angry. Han went ahead and smiled, realizing that now he probably should have thanked the knight, but Tatarstan had intruded on his trials. The golem started to recover its limbs, after which it looked, and Han told it to try to recover from its hit now. He slashed a few more times and chopped the man apart. He said that he would finally cut him to pieces. The golem began to recover, and Han, looking at it, did not understand where its core was located. Afterward, he noticed that the golem had become quite cute. He told him about it and he was embarrassed. He realized that the resource that was called sand and that the enemy was made of couldn't be extracted endlessly from the environment, so it must have shrunk so much in size. Han looked ahead and realized that in that case, he would know what to do. He picked up his sword and asked with a smile if the golem wanted to get some sleep. The golem looked at him and started shouting. He started swinging his arms and hand, deftly dodging, dealt a crushing blow to the golem, he beat it into many parts and it fell to the sand. He got to his feet and the sand on his back disappeared and the core was visible. Han looked ahead and said he had found it. The core was located on his back, the body was so thickly covered with sand that he initially couldn't see or reach it. He took the sword from his hand and realized that about 10 minutes had already passed, and 40 minutes had been allotted for completing the tests of the seventh floor. He said it would probably be right to speed up. After that, Han noticed the golem start attacking him. Han dodged his attack and his other enemies. Han said that after an intense diet, his opponent became much more agile and faster, and he found it funny. Although he would have liked to play with it more, he didn't have the time to do so. Han was behind his opponent and delivered a crushing blow to the golem's core. The golem started screaming in pain and its core disintegrated. The system message wrote that Han proved that he had overcome his fear and one test was completed. Han Sen stabbed his sword into the core and the golem completely disintegrated. After that, a bright light rang out, and Han took the golem's soul with him. He pulled it until it was moved to another location and the system message said that the spirit absorption failed. Han was indignant at this and realized that the skill boost had also gone down the drain. The system message said that he entered the second zone of the test, and was told to prove that he was much wiser than before. He appeared in a strange place. He looked to the side and saw the goblins. He took a closer look and realized that this was location 2 trial, an orc settlement. Everything was burning and chaotic. As he thought, there was a repetition of the previous tests. He picked up his sword and walked forward. Han hesitated and looked ahead. In the village where everyone understood, there were orcs. Han realized that during the second trial, on the second floor, he had destroyed an orc village. So it turned out that now the events that followed were unfolding in front of him. He watched as the orcs stood by their dead brothers. One of them started shaking violently, his eyes filled with rage. They started shouting and brandishing their weapons. Han speculated that they were having a bout of rage and this phenomenon is often observed about monsters who are overcome with anger. He looked at them and realized that Org in a state of rage was no longer a pitiful monster like E rank and he knew that he would have to fight them. An angry crowd of orcs rushed towards the Khan. Han stood and watched it all. 
He looked and realized that these monsters weren't supposed to show the pain of losing a family member. System message, instant acceleration skill activated, three absolute skill activated. Han went ahead and said that at least in front of him, they shouldn't have done that. One of the orcs knelt down. He could barely contain himself and tried to say something. Han looked at his dead brothers who were lying there and asked her if the disgusting feelings he was experiencing weren't there to stand and just watch his family die unable to do anything. This made Org even angrier and he got on his feet and started swinging. Han easily dodged and then cut off the head from the shoulders. The system message wrote, Han proved to have become much wiser to the test was successfully completed. Han looked away and said that this time he shouldn't have hesitated. He captured everything from the soul of the orc that he had just won and started to get sucked in and moved around. The system message said that Han had consumed all the spirits of the orc Jaegers. Proficiency was increased by 6%, the number of souls in possession was 19 out of 30. Han was able to see all the souls and happily said that it was great. E plus rank Hunter Dagger Mastery has reached 100%. Hunter's Dagger has been upgraded to D rank. Mastery of the D rank Instant Acceleration skill has been reached 100%. The instant acceleration skill was upgraded to D+, and Han entered the test area. He had to prove that he had overcome all his doubts. Han looked ahead and realized that this time it was going to be a complete brain drain. He looked ahead and realized that this was the 6th floor battleground. He looked to the side and realized that since the previous zones were on the 1st and 2nd floors, he thought that the next one would be a doppelganger from the 3rd floor, but he also noticed that the tile layout was different. He thought back to the orcs he had just fought and realized that he shouldn't have been surprised if the trials had been labeled wisdom so ignorantly, he was truly an idiot if he had hoped to see any common sense in this tower of trials. He opened his inventory and took out a D-rank life potion the recovery potion was made from special water filled with the wealth of life. When taken, the potion restored 20% of the lost physical strength and magic. Han took the potion and opened the lid. He drank it and was healed. He said it was obviously better that way. He silently looked away and threw the bottle into the water. He said he was going to get a little dirty in the Tower of Trials. After that, a huge wave rang out from the water. Tiles began to rise up from there, and Han, looking at them, realized that he had only thrown a tiny glass bottle. The system message said that the exclusive effect of the Assassin's Cloak has been activated, and the movement speed has increased by 15. 59 seconds left. Han started to run across the tiles, which were being thrown around by something. Han realized that the tests that had been replicated still repeated the existing rules, which meant that in order to pass this test, he had to find and occupy the red tile of the stronghold. Until then, he was never allowed to come in contact with the local water, he looked at the waves that were in the sides and realized that his speed was higher, at least the wave he definitely could not catch up. Han thought everything was fine, but after that, he realized that he was starting to fall. The tile he was on flew into the air, and he touched the water of the test. Han realized that the situation was very bad and his strength was reduced by 10, agility by 10, and stamina was also reduced by 10. The penalty lasted 2 minutes, 53 seconds. Many tiles continued to rise into the air, and Han realized that even the thought of the tiles remaining in the same order was a kind of hope that the Tower of Trials still had some common sense. Han was in the air, and he used instant acceleration. He stood on the tile and jumped away from it. The tiles started to rise high, and Han started running on them. He realized that he had never expected to die in such a place. He jumped on the tiles and tried not to touch the water. He noticed that there was a red tile ahead. He looked at it and realized that he had to get to this strong point tile. He said it would finally be over soon and this annoying ordeal too. After that, the water began to gather in a funnel and it rose in huge columns. Han looked at all of this and realized that now the Tower of Trials had decided to go completely berserk. He began to dodge the water that was falling to the sides and realized that there was only a little bit left. As he ran toward the red tile, the water began to rise behind him and from the side. He noticed it, and the water rammed him from the back. It began to envelop his body and head. The system message said that the exclusive effect of the grade B forged iron pendant, steel protection, was activated. The protective layer absorbed 10% of all physical damage. Han looked ahead and realized that his amulet had triggered, as well as his soul-absorbing power. It began to shine with a red light radiating its soul aura while the water rose into the air. The spirit absorbed the damage that was dealt by the user. The orc, Huntsman's soul was spent. Another one orc Jaeger soul was spent. Han was on the wave that held him. He looked to the side and realized that he had sensed a shockwave, but right before the impact could do any damage to him, the shield was able to block him. He jumped out of the wave and headed towards the red plate, but the wave left behind an aura of a devoured soul. Han ran forward and the system message said that there was zero time left. Exclusive cloak slayer effect has been disabled. Han realized that this was a terrible situation and he was very exhausted from it all. 
He realized that right now he was already at zero, and if any more instantaneous acceleration failed at B, he would definitely die here. He extended his hand to the side and a red soul appeared on it. He opened his mouth and shoved it in. He ate it, and the inside of his body began to sparkle, and his strength increased. The system message said that he had replenished his mana using the soul of an orc Jaeger, which is fine and kept running. A wave from behind started attacking him, and Han leapt forward. He looked at the red tile and knew that there was only a short time left before the end of this test, but a tile of water immediately rose up in front of him. Han realized that this was a very bad situation. He crossed his arms and decided on a desperate move. He jumped away from the tile and into the water. He almost passed Moscow, but the water pushed him out and his soul was lost. He rose high above the red tile and began to fall on the tile, screaming loudly in fear. He stared at the red tile, after which he fell and fragments from the tile flew to the sides. A lot of orc souls disappeared because of this and he was left with 12 souls out of 30. Han lay on the red tile and moaned in pain. He opened his eyes and looked at the water in front of him. He looked at her and a system message wrote that Han had proven that he had overcome his doubts and the test was successfully completed. After that, the water dissipated and it just spilled out on Hana. Meshayu sat drenched with a serene face and realized that this damned ordeal was finally over, but he didn't understand why he had to suffer until the last second of this ordeal. The system message congratulated him on this and he was able to overcome the seventh floor of the Tower of Trials. As a breakthrough reward, the Arank Wind Grace skill was obtained and 15,000 points were awarded as a breakthrough reward. As a bonus reward for breaking through, high-speed boots of rank C plus will be sent to his inventory. He started walking to the waiting room. A blue line appeared in front of him and he walked towards it. A transfer to the waiting room was made. Han stood looking ahead. He realized that during this test, he was very close to failing. He bit his lip and realized that in the current situation, it was a bit unsettling for him to go straight to the 8th floor and he didn't think that in the future he would continue to behave as much as he was lucky to be on this floor. He raised his head up and the system message said that the number of applicants who passed the tests on the 7th floor exceeded 1,000 people, the system expansion was starting, and the skill shop was open. In the test, an intersection point was created. A permanent refund was possible. The floor deployment system has been activated. Han looked at it all and thought. He realized that the constant return, the skill shop, and all this was something they were really looking forward to. But the icing on the cake was that he was the challenger who was called a trailblazer on all the previous floors, he could choose Halo. Hansen looked ahead and realized that the Halo gave him an advantage that could only be obtained if the challenger was assigned the title of first mover on all the previous floors. The Halo affected the applicant's unique stats and skills. He was asked to choose wisely. Han looked ahead and wondered if the Tower of Trials had ever given such advice. He realized that this must mean that the halo was something really important. The system message gave him a choice. He was asked to choose one of the halos. Han looked and realized that he needed to read the description first. The ruler is a halo that has different performance depending on the person. In fact, it is closer to a universal type than to a specialized one and is closely related to the unique characteristics of the applicant. The potential is greatly increased for abilities such as combat, growth, support, and production. Unique power synthesis skills. This is the most suitable halo for current challenger Han Sung Yoon. Han was surprised and realized that it affected all skills and even a unique characteristic, and the Tower of Trials openly said that this was the most suitable halo for him. Meddling started tapping on the system screen, and he decided to look at other halos and find out more information for them. Hunter is a software halo that anyone can easily adapt to. It was closely related to improving stats and skills. The effect of this halo greatly increased the skill level and stats. Unique strength is level up. This halo perfectly suits the current contender Han Sung Yoon. Han was surprised and realized that this halo wasn't bad either. Monk is a halo who is strongly influenced by talent and perseverance. The longer he invested, the stronger he became, but it took time and talent. If he didn't have the talent, then his efforts might just be useless. Unique power way to practice. This halo is not recommended for current challenger Han Sung Yoon. Han, having counted about all the halos, realized that this one was definitely in the span. He put two screens in front of him and realized that he had to make a choice in favor of one of them. He looked at one of them and realized that he should have chosen. He stretched out his finger and selected the ruler's halo. The ruler's special halo effect triggered evolutions with unique stats. Han felt something begin to glow inside him. The options are sorted by the applicant's current abilities. As a summoner, he could use spirit absorption to revive powerful skeleton corpses. Magic swordsman, talent for still and magic increases as well, and the ability to acquire the corresponding skills increases by three times. Creator, the talent for crafting items increases, and the ability to acquire production-related skills has increased threefold. 
Han looked at it all and realized that this was the effect of the ruler's halo. He realized that there was nothing to think about, so he clicked on the system screen. Unique necromancy stats, the summoner attribute has been added. Some effects have been modified and new detailed effects have been added. A unique skill synthesis ability has also been created. Front a new system window appeared, where all the characteristics of the con were registered. After that, something started to form inside Han, the entire soul started to mix, and he gained new strength. He looked ahead and a halo was created. He clicked on the system screen and started reading about the unique power of skill synthesis. Effect, it was necessary to select two necessary skills and combine them. If the skill levels were different during the use of the effect, the higher ranked skill became the synthesis center. Han looked ahead and realized that by combining useless skills, it was possible to create something new and really good. He realized that it was indeed a jackpot. The system message told Han to look at the skill list. Ono asked him to choose a synthesis material from the currently available ones. He looked at his skills and started thinking about what he could put together. He put his hand to his chin and realized that the skills he didn't use were disdain for the weak and continuing the battle. He selected these two skills and clicked on synthesize. After the skill synthesis was completed, the system window shone. He looked at it all with surprise and the system message wrote that a new skill was created. Skill synthesis was completed and the system window began to shine brightly. Han looked at all this and was extremely surprised. The force breakthrough rank D skill has been created. Han stood there in shock and didn't understand how it all came out. He read everything that was written in the system message. It said that the skill's proficiency was 0%, an effect that Han could break through unknown farm deterrents, such as skills and unique stats. However, the user's magic must be higher than the level of magic used for containment. Han thought that he would be able to breathe a sigh of relief if he got even an E-rank skill, but he added up two F-ranks to get a D-rank. He smiled and realized that it really was just perfect. He clicked on the system screen and wondered if he could try again. He chose Ranger Training Skill and Burn Resistance. He clicked on Continue Synthesis and Skill Synthesis was completed. The window began to shine brightly again, and Han looked with interest at what his results would be right now. He looked up and saw how he had made a new skill called Strong Eye of Rank E. The effect of this skill allowed Han to ensure some visibility, even in bad conditions. His vision will become sharper. Han thought about it and realized that the skill currently created was only one step higher than the ones that were selected for synthesis. He began to think about it and assumed that it was something else. He started to think back on his previous skills and realized that the previously synthesized contempt for the weak and continuing the battle went well together. But the combination of ranger training and burn resistance skills wasn't the best and didn't really fit together. He realized that with just one glance, it was obvious that they were completely incompatible. After that, he lay down on the bed and threw his hands behind his head, realizing that he had gone from holding the status of a pioneer to receiving the reward in the form of a halo but for some reason he felt somehow strange. He lay on the bed and wondered if he really had achieved everything by his own efforts, or if he was just lucky to have a unique stat. He looked ahead and thought silently, after which he got out of bed and realized that he needed to stop lying around and stop thinking about all sorts of nonsense. He realized that it was better to check the reward received. He opened the Wind Grace skill and started reading it. The effect was that when Han said the name of the skill, all the speed points increased by 10%. This effect could be summed up, and this ability could be played up to 7 times. However, when the limit was reached, a 24-hour cooldown was automatically activated. Han thought about it and wondered about the 10% increase in all speeds, because it was just amazing. He was shocked to realize that he could summon the skill 7 times. He looked ahead and realized that he could increase any speed by 70%. He began to rejoice and realized that this skill didn't use any mana at all. He clicked on the system screen and realized that the grace of the wind was, in fact, a science that had no disadvantages, but only some advantages. He looked in his inventory and took out a pair of boots. They were speed boots of rank C+. They increased attack speed by 3% and movement speed by 5%. The boots were made with magic, with small wings that increased speed. When exceeding a certain speed, its speed be instantly increased. He looked at these shoes and realized that all the rewards on the 7th floor were related to speed and he was very happy with this arrangement. The system message says that you have logged into the skill store. It started displaying a list of skills that were available for purchase. Han looked at the skill list and realized that there were bad skills such as strengthening, unwavering, monster hide, weapon enchantments, instant acceleration, magic chain, mana barrier, increased visual acuity. Not only were they bad, but their prices were also huge. Han started to review everything and realized that giving 7000 for instant acceleration was not normal. But nevertheless he clicked on the button and bought this skill, since he needed to have related skills with magic. He bought the magic chain skill and 15,000 was deducted from his account. He bought a drug called magic resistance and had 12,000 debited from his account. 
The magic resistance skill had this effect. Resistance to magic was created throughout the body, and resistance to other people's magic was increased. But if Han didn't have the magic chain skill, the effect was significantly reduced. Han looked at all of this and realized that now that he had the magic resistance skill, he wouldn't be caught off guard by something like the unique characteristic, heart fusion, which had caused him to have a hard time in the last battle. He was also given an arithmetic chain, which gave the effect that the mother's body gathered into a chain and increased the efficiency of using mana. Han Sen felt a flood of energy flowing everywhere inside him. The magic chain engraved were the beginning of Han. Han started to tense up and realized that his entire body was on fire. He started to emit bright red rays, then everything calmed down and he got out of bed. He held his hand out in front of him and looked at it, and realized that he was feeling very light. He went forward and stood in the middle of the room, he raised his foot and threw punches to the floor. A shockwave swept through the room, and Han was surprised that the mana used to randomly form chains boosted his physical abilities. He destroyed the floor where he had just struck, and then he clenched his hand into a fist and was glad that, as he expected, he had made a successful purchase. After the system message wrote that Khan could use the spirit of the deceased to resurrect the dead person nearby. At the time of resurrection, the dead person's level will be proportional to the quality and number of souls consumed. Han started reading all of this and realized that he was extremely curious and curious about what this new ability of summoning the dead was. He started flipping through the system screen and realized that it would be better to get acquainted with it in practice. He closed his eyes and realized that he now had an important decision to make. He looked straight ahead with a serious gaze and wondered if he should challenge the next floor now, or if he should just return to Earth. At the same time, a guy was sitting on a bench and looking at his phone. Ads for team recruitment were opened in the phone. Emergency portal in the Great Cataclysm Memorial Park. They were looking for a tank and a hunter healer rank D and higher. The guy was nervous and biting his nails. He didn't understand why there was no response. After that, he became alert when he saw someone in front of him. He raised his head and saw the man who had approached him. One of them asked him if he still couldn't build a team for himself. They told him that he should tell us if he was wrong. One of them smiled broadly and said that if the dungeon raid didn't start, then after the set time, the right to enter would be automatically revoked. Afterward, he asked why he didn't just charge the appropriate fee and hand the passes over to them. The guy looked and realized that these fools again decided to take up their own. He looked ahead and wondered how many more times he had to repeat that he had no intention of handing over his pass to anyone. They told him to shut up and call him a fool. There were a lot of people in this place, and he said that there were quite a lot of people in the park, but why was no one eager to join the guy's team? One of the men put his hand to his head and said that he would answer that guy directly. He said that that guy was just an E-rank hunter, and with someone like him in the first team, no one would want to be there. The guy was shocked by what he heard. He watched the dark silhouettes of the laughing boys and listened to everything they said about him. They said he was too cocky. After that, the guys were surprised when they heard that someone asked about recruiting for the team. They looked and saw Hana walking towards them. He walked up to them and showed them his C-rank hunter ID. He looked at them and asked if it was enough to join the guy's team. The guy looked at him and got up from the bench. He said that Khan fully met his requirements for joining the team. The guy who had just called the other person names put his hand on Han's shoulder and asked, was there a line of people waiting here? Han smiled, and the guy viciously said that if he was unhappy about something, then why didn't he apply to Lee Chalwan's team? The guy got angry and asked what he said. Han turned and glared at him. He told the guy to get his hand off his shoulder quickly, or he was going to break it. Han started to emit a vicious red aura, and the guy who was holding the forbidden was shocked by it. He started to pull his hand away and wondered what kind of intimidating energy it was, he wondered if Han was exactly the same hunter, with a rank like himself. The other guys looked at him in surprise and were shocked by such a powerful energy. These guys thought it was their friend's energy. The boy looked awkwardly at his companions and knew that this was not his doing. He started coughing uncomfortably and said that since there were representatives from the Hunter Association present, he would take this prank from Han this time and just leave. He turned to his companions and told them to let Han know that he was just lucky this time and couldn't take it any other time. Friends were surprised by such an act from their comrades, they left. Han looked at the guy who was holding his hair, and the guy wondered why everything had gone wrong in the first place. Han called out to Hunter Call One, who looked at him. Han said that judging by the situation, it seemed to him that he would not be able to find anyone else to join his team, after which he suggested not to drag out the rubber and just enter the portal together. Vaughn was surprised by this statement, and he pointed at each other and asked if they were really going together, after which, they had already passed through the portal and entered the cave. Han glanced back and saw that Vaughn was looking around in all directions and couldn't believe that it was really just the two of them going inside. Han said that they just didn't need to worry so much and Han would be able to deal with most of the rank D monsters. Vaughn looked in his direction and asked if it was really Han's first time in the dungeon. 
Han said that this was the case even though, in fact, the Tower of Trials and the dungeon were one and the same. Vaughn began to reason and said that at first glance, his words might seem tactless to Han, but their lives were at stake, so he had to listen to him and understand. Han looked at him in silence and began to listen. Vaughn asked Han who he thought had the highest death rate in the dungeon, an E-rank hunter or a hunter. With rank, Vaughn looked serious and said that at first glance it might seem like an E-rank hunter would probably die, but in reality, a C-rank hunter has a much higher death rate. The E-rank hunters were extremely cautious because they knew that they were weak even while the hunters were. The S-rank were too confident in their abilities, they might not expect much and eventually moderate. Therefore, the probability of death in hunters. C-rank is extremely low. The same thing could be seen in real life, because the more confident the driver is behind the wheel, the higher the probability of getting into an accident than a novice. Vaughn looked down and said that the place called the dungeons was much more dangerous than Han actually thought. Vaughn said that since Han had ventured into the dungeon without a tank or healer, he was even more concerned about Han's overconfidence. Han said that there was logic in his words, and Vaughn said that although he was an E-rank hunter, he had a lot of experience visiting dungeons, so he could take on the role of the leader of their group. Han looked at him, and he realized that he himself wanted to be in charge. He said he agreed, and Vaughn bowed to him and thanked him for his understanding. He said that he did it for everyone's safety, so he hoped that his suggestion didn't spoil Han's mood. After that, he suggested that we continue through the dungeon. Han decided to trust him first. After some time, they met the lizardman Luda in front of them, who was standing in front of them with a spear and shield. Vaughn stiffened and said that the lizard people were famous for using various weapons in their hands. He said that it was bad enough that the lizard people became their opponent. Luda lizard was standing right in front of them, ready to attack. Vaughn said that first he would draw all the attention of this monster to himself, and Han would know when to attack as soon as he opened his back. Han said that he understood everything, but then he thought about it and decided to see how an experienced hunter would deal with such monsters. The monster moved forward, and Vaughn did the same. He started swinging and punching in the air. Luda Lizard stood there and didn't understand what was happening. Vaughn just kept hitting nothing. Han, looking at all this, assumed that he was just measuring the strength of the spirit. He looked at it and realized that the temporary return to Earth only took three days, and he was now having to waste his precious time because of some insignificant lizardman. Han started walking forward and Vaughn noticed it. He looked at him and Han said he needed to step in. Vaughn said that if Han was suddenly intervened in the fight, he would be in great danger. He used instant acceleration and headed towards the monster. Han was behind the monster in just a second and landed a lot of punches, thus defeating the monster. Vaughn stood there and watched in shock. He was watching Han, who was standing next to the dead monster. Han said that he intervened because he was in a hurry and he thanks Vaughn for understanding. They were standing near the monster's severed body and talking. Vaughn said that he understood perfectly well and that he might have had his own reasons for doing so. Han said that he still wanted to make one sentence, he asked for permission to voice it, and one agreed with a nod. Han pointed at herself and asked if he could take over the leadership role from now on. After that, we see how many monsters ran headlong in the direction of Khan, but he quickly rushed to kill one after another. Han quickly moved forward, after which he jumped up and threw crushing blows to one of the monsters in the back. Vaughn, watching all this, was shocked. He looked at the concentrated Han and realized that this was just a one-sided massacre. Han continued slaughtering the monsters and walking forward. He struck out with sweeping blows and chopped off the last monster's head. Vaughn watched all of this and assumed that he might have just witnessed the battle of a super rookie who had a huge talent that would probably shake up the hunter industry in the future. Han started cutting up the monsters' bodies and taking them out into green crystals. The system message said that these were mana stones. These were magic stones that contained muddy magi gathered from the lizardman's heart. Depending on its use, it could be of great help in metallurgy and alchemy. Han loaded all the magic items into Vaughn's back. Vaughn holding the backpack asked apart from acting as a porter it wasn't of any use he said. He looked at Han and said that he wouldn't say a word if Han wanted to make more profit. Han wanted to talk about the profit, and then, at the same time, a monster came at him and swung its sword to attack Hana. Han easily dodged and hit the monster on the head, the blow was so strong that the monster went into the ceiling. Han stood and watched the monster as rocks fell from above, and Vaughn covered his head. Han looked at his companion and told them to talk about it outside, and if they let their guard down, they might find themselves in a dangerous situation. Vaughn apologized, and Han just wiped the dirt off himself. The system message said that he had absorbed the lizardman's spirit, then one more and was maxing out his skill. Han was absorbing all the souls and realized that he should have pretended to yawn and just absorb the souls that he had just knocked out. He held his hand near his mouth and realized that the boost was 0.07%. He realized that with D-class monsters, it would take him a very long time to raise the skill of his unique stat. After that, they stood in front of the red portal. Vaughn asked if he was really going to do it. 
future only the two of them were able to reach the portal that led to the boss room. Vaughn started to get excited and realized that he hadn't even thought about raiding the boss, or rather, he had thought from the very beginning that it would be a great success if they were able to overcome even half of the entire dungeon. He looked at Hana, who was standing there silently looking ahead, and began to guess that the person who was just standing in front of him would have no trouble clearing out this dungeon completely. Han turned around and said that they were going to raid the boss now. He asked if Vaughn was happy with this scenario. He said that he was fine with everything, but he thought that Han should have taken a little break before this event. Khan said that there was absolutely no need for it, he said that he was absolutely fine. After that, he offered to enter the portal. They entered it and found themselves in front of a huge lizardman monster that was sitting on a huge throne with two spears in its hands. He started to get up gradually, and Han realized that everything was as he had anticipated. Vaughn looked ahead and asked what he was going to do now. Han looked ahead and asked for some time to think. Vaughn started to get nervous and asked really, Han wanted to say that he didn't have any clear plan of action at this point. At the same time, the monster began to growl and swing its weapon to attack Hana. Han smiled and realized it was just in time. After that, the monster immediately rushed towards Han. Han looked at it in surprise and started scaring it away while the monster that attacked left behind blue rays. Han jumped out of the way and realized that the monster was very fast, which was quite surprising considering its size. Han confidently looked at him and didn't realize that even though he was fast, he wasn't fast enough for Han to match his battle pace. At the same time, Han was behind the monster and started swinging to stab it in the back. After that, we immediately reacted and attacked him with our tail. The monster hit him with such force that he flew against the wall. Vaughn was shocked by this, and he grabbed his head with his hands and called out to Hana. From the ruins, Han pushed away the stone, and it stood in front of the monsters emitting the aura of souls. The system message said that the spirit had absorbed the damage dealt to the user. Han looked at him with a smile and said that he thought it was a good way to test his new skills. Vaughn stood there, glad to the point of tears that Han was still alive. The monster looked at him, then Han started to slowly walk forward towards it and realized that there was nothing left of the boss's throne. He looked at the broken throne and said it was an ominous omen. The monster began to roar in anger and began to emit a sinister aura. Vam looked up, and he released a purple beam that shook the ground. Han took a look at all of this and the system message said that he had undergone the slow wave skill interaction. All of Han's speed had been reduced by 25%. The chains began to break around Han and he activated the force breakthrough skill. Han was covered in a green sphere and now had more than two times the magic power of a slow skill user. The monster, he looked at it in surprise, and Han realized that the analog was the result of fusion, so he had some doubts about it, but its effectiveness was simply top-notch. The monster looked ahead, and then a scream rang out. It was Vaughn's scream. He was lying on the ground and his hands were bound with chains. He said his body wasn't working properly and he couldn't control himself. He looked at Hana in a frightened way with a trembling body and asked him for help. The monster looked to the side, and Han told him to stop. The monster immediately chose its target and headed towards Vaughn. Han rushed forward and told the lizardman to fight him, because he was his opponent. He quickly tried to outrun the monsters and he realized that the distance was too great. He looked ahead and then it dawned on him. His gaze changed abruptly, and he used the summon the dead skill. After which, a whole army of undead appeared around the helpless Vaughn who glared at the lizard viciously and attacked with their weapons. Well, the monster easily dealt with all the non-life and cut them into pieces. Han looked at the remains of the summoned dead and realized that they didn't have the strength to stop such a huge monster, but he was still able to buy a couple of seconds with them. The system message says that the summation of the Wind Grace skill is taking place. All speed was increased by 60% and the current summation progress was 6 sevenths. After that, Han threw a few slashing blows and chopped the monster into pieces. Thanks to the dead, he was able to save a human life. The wizard was chopped into pieces and the dungeon boss Lizard King was defeated. The next dungeon was supposed to appear in 14 days. Han used absorption from the spirit of the Lizard King to permanently increase his stats and strength increased by 1, agility increased by 1, stamina increased by 4, mana increased by 4, stamina increased by 5. Han was surprised when he realized that he had absorbed one of the Lizard King's skills. This was the spiritual eye skill, and the effect of this skill was such that Han could recognize attacks in an invisible range when entering battle. At this time, we see a man sitting on a bench and yawning. He said that with the exception of the fact that all three portals appeared at the same time, nothing special basically happened. He looked back and called out to the man who was standing near the portal, he asked if they noticed anything unusual. The man said that nothing was suspicious. The man on the bench looked ahead and realized that everything was as usual, 
after the advance party hunters made a partial raid in the portal that opened and went outside. The hunter association's attacking team would have to break into the dungeon and kill the boss. He sat on a bench and said that everyone seems to be a member of the same hunters association, but for some reason only their team does not have a commission fee. Rotten to the core fools because of the attacking team, Envy made him want to bite his elbows. The man happily looked ahead and said that if the advance party completely cleared the portals in the first quarter, then their control team would also be able to get their share. He looked down with his eyes closed and said that this was only possible with an rank hunter. He wondered if there would be one such high-class hunter who would pull such a crazy stunt. Then I sold out and hand started going out with Vaughn. The guy on the bench looked to the side and was told that the third portal advance party had completed the sweep, he was surprised that they did it so quickly. He was shocked that these guys only went to the dungeon together, but he realized that the group couldn't even get halfway there. But his guesses were not like that, after he saw that the portal began to change its color, he realized that they had completely cleared this dungeon. He was pleasantly surprised by this, and then he ran up to them. He ran up to Han and asked if they really had completely cleared the dungeon. Han asked who he was to give them such questions. The man stood up and straightened his tie. He apologized and said that he had forgotten to introduce himself. He said that his name was Shim Woo Jin, and that he was the head of the portal control team from the Hunters Association, which had come here to take control of the sudden portals in this park. Vaughn held out his hand and asked if he could be here because he wanted to buy the rights to occupy the portal. Wu said it was true, he wanted to make offers for the two of them to sell. Vaughn looked ahead, holding a backpack full of crystals, and said that he didn't have the right to make such a decision in this matter. Wu was surprised by this, and then he asked if Hunter Han had taken over this dungeon by himself. He assumed that Han was an a rank hunter, but Han said that he was just a C-rank hunter, but he thought that wasn't the most important thing right now. Han looked at him and asked how much he wanted to buy the rights I sold. Han knew that if it became known that he was from the Tower of Trial, it would only cause unnecessary problems. Wu put his hand to his chin and thought about it, he said that if we go back to the main thread of the conversation, their portal control team wanted to buy the rights to occupy the portal from him for 120 million won. Han was shocked by the amount, after we see someone put a lot of books on the table. It was the girl who was dragging them onto the table. She said that after returning from the tower, all she did was plow like a horse. She looked ahead and took out her phone. She wondered who was calling her at this late hour. She looked to the side and looked at her seat, where it was written that she was the team leader controlling the challengers from the tower trial. Her name was Lee Ha Young. She remembered standing in front of people and without any doubt, this incident will lead to a revolutionary change. She understood that everyone at the top was really worried in earnest. She put her hand to her head and realized that even if the applicants were hiding their identity, she still never thought that it would be so difficult to recruit them. She opened her eyes and realized that she hadn't even managed to recruit 10 people, and those applicants were all low difficulty. This was not enough to satisfy the top management. She went to the window, which had a view of the city, and said that if you think about it, I have no idea what the man was doing. How strong her soul was, that it wasn't an exaggeration to say that he had single-handedly cleared the fourth floor, all of this was what she was saying about Han. She put her head to the window and realized that she should have proposed to him right away. She looked ahead after she received a message, she looked up and it was a message from Han Sung Yoon, who she crossed paths with on the fourth floor. He wrote that if she came back, she could not meet him. After that, we see 1,291,600,001 on the account. Han sat and looked at all this amount and realized that he had earned almost 130 million won and he still couldn't believe it was true. He sat in a cafe and realized that he was still feeling amazing, and he was wondering if he should have bought a house. Then the phone rang and Lee Ha Young walked into the cafe. She looked away, and Han called out to me. She walked over to the table, and Han noticed that she was running this way. He told her that you didn't have to write it down here. She sat down at the table and immediately called out to Hana. She said he hadn't even answered her message. Han was embarrassed by this and said that she had waited long enough for his answer. Hana apologized and said that he probably read it wrong as he was in a hurry. Ha pointed two fingers at him and said that he should buy her a cup of coffee and cheesecake. Han told her to order whatever she wanted. Afterward, coffee was brought to them. Ha asked if he was going to climb the upper floors of the Tower of Trials. Han said that he was going to continue his ascent in the Tower of Trials. He told her that he contacted her because he had a request for her. Ha was surprised by this, and Han said that he needed to join a guild and then he would have the opportunity to attack the dungeon during the short return from the trials. He started to say his terms. One was the right to refuse the order to appear in the guild. Two these are not meddling in his affairs related to the Tower of Trials. Three this is a permission to use the guild's dungeons at any time. Han asked if there was any guild that was ready to meet all of his conditions. He didn't look ahead and realized that there was a strange atmosphere here, he wondered if he had gone too far with his conditions. 
Ha called out to Hana and said that there were conditions that were absolutely impossible to fulfill. She said that from the guild's point of view, nothing would come of it. She took his hand, and Han said that he probably asked too much. Ha stood up, holding his hand, and told him to join their white guild. She said that she would do everything possible to make his conditions, which seemed impossible, become feasible. Then we see Han riding on the roof of the bus. She put her hands under her head and said that the raid in the dungeon before selling the right to occupy, plus joining the guild. Yesterday he put in an extreme productive day. He stared ahead, thinking. He understood that even if he had one odd task left to complete before joining the ranks, he had to clear a C-class dungeon alone, but he also had to demonstrate his abilities to make it easier for Ha to convince the higher-ups. He was thinking back to last night, and Ha said that the privilege of freely using the guild's dungeons wasn't available to everyone. Han looked ahead and realized that her words meant that not everyone could bathe in cream using the white guild dungeon. At the very least, it should be either a rising star or a hunter with high expectations. He confidently looked ahead and told Ha to prepare everything necessary for clearing the C-Class dungeon. They shook hands and Ha said that she would make sure that Han would never regret his decision. After that, we will be transferred to the Yuezhong Nakian Dong area, Chinbo Mountain. Han sat on the bus and viewed the huge building. After which, he got off the bus and pushed off from it. He moved forward at high speed. After that, we transfer everything to the portal where Ha was standing. She came over and said hello. She told me to come here to confirm her booking for the portal assault in an hour. She showed the man her ID card and he realized that she was the leader of the White Guild's Li Ha Young. He said that the appearance was confirmed and then showed her that there was still a lot of time left, so she should sit down under this awning for a while. She thanked him, then turned around to see Han just landing on the ground. Han landed, and with his sudden breaking, the wind almost blew away the people who were there. Ha watched all of this in silence while Han held things up and apologized for her. He said that he ran here too fast, so there was a shock wave. Ha along with the other people were shocked by this, and she couldn't believe that such a wind had picked up just because of her running. She said that Han came here rather early. She looked at Han and wondered what kind of person he was. Han came here so early because he just didn't have anything to do. Ha pointed to the portals and said that she had already passed all the verification procedures, then she told them to let her know when Han was ready to go there. Han said he could start the raid right now, but he said he didn't care when he started. Then Ha told him to start. After they entered the portal, they found themselves in a field. Han looked ahead and called out to Ha. He said that if she was in danger, then let him know right away. Ha said that she would be perfectly fine. Hanu was surprised and Ha told him that she was wearing an artifact that was given to her by the guild, it was in a rank empress necklace. Ha put his hand on his chest and said that this item that has a counting function and a weak invisibility effect was amazing. She looked at Hana and said that if she attracted the attention of the monsters, she would help them to some extent, so she would try to stay as far away from the battlefield as possible. Han looked at it and said it was wonderful. He said that now he could fight and not be afraid of anything. He went forward and activated the spiritual eye. He started to emit a purple aura and realized that it was a skill that he had inherited from the Lizard King. He felt that three spirit lines were approaching him from the field as well. His eyes changed color, and he realized that, and now he feels the presence of enemies invisible to his class. He realized that this was the spirit eye ability. After that, something started to move out of the field and monsters jumped out. Han jumped up or dodged the monsters that were chasing him. Ha hesitated and realized that it was the poison fisherman in the dungeon. From the class, she started yelling at Han to run away from them immediately, because this is a rule-breaking dungeon. Han took and easily defeated these monsters and the pair of whites to pieces. Ha stood there in complete shock, and she didn't understand what she had just seen with her own eyes. She realized that it was just crazy, and then she smiled and said that she knew she had made the right choice. Han swung his sword and delivered a crushing blow to the monster. He looked to the side and realized that the appearance of the Moi effect was very rare, after all, he had completely forgotten about its existence. After that, he noticed that the monster behind him was heading to attack him. Han dodged and grabbed the monster's tail. He took it and swung it at the wall. Han stood up from the portal and looked away. He started waving his hand in Ha's direction and said that he had more or less cleaned up the area and now she could safely come here. Ha looked at him in surprise and couldn't believe that he had reached the portal leading to the boss room in less than an hour, and even on his own. This was worthy of surprise. She said that the most amazing thing was that they were currently in a rule-breaking dungeon. Poison Angler, the monsters that Han had just fought were monsters that couldn't be taken lightly, because one of the monsters recommended for group attacks, for the same rank C Hunters, was just the same Poison Angler that Han had just easily dealt with and was now heading towards the portal together with Ha. 
She knew that she still couldn't believe that he had dealt with such a monster so effortlessly, as if he were standing in front of a helpless baby. She looked at Hana who was entering the portal and realized that this was far from the limit of growth and what he would be able to achieve in the future was simply hard to imagine. The system message said that they used spirit absorption to permanently boost their stats. Strength increased by 4, agility increased by 3, stamina increased by 4, mana increased by 6, durability increased by 7, Han absorbed all these souls inside himself and headed forward. He realized that with this level, even the boss wouldn't pose any particular threat to him. He entered the portals and went to the boss room. He found himself in a place where there were rocks all around. Ha looked up and realized it was strange enough that they had come this far, but there was still no sign of the monster's presence. After that, a light beam began to appear from above, which was directed towards Ha. Han noticed this and realized that it was a very dangerous place. He looked at the monster that had just attacked them with its hands. He threw punches, and Han managed to catch Ha in his arms, and they returned to the attack. Ha looked at Hana in surprise and didn't even notice. The monster started to charge a huge blue sphere in its mouth and then it released a bullet that attacked Hana. Ha shouted that a huge dragon was coming from behind them, and Han took it and jumped up. He jumped on a rock and told her that he had moved her here without her consent and because the monster looked extremely dangerous, he hoped for her understanding. They stood and watched the monster. Ha said that she, on the contrary, is now in debt to Han and Han, looking at the monster that was looking for them said that he would leave her here to deal with him. Ha yelled at him to use her power, up skill on him. She said they could test his personal abilities later. Na Han just jumped up and headed down, he said he didn't want to. He said he would be back soon and started falling down. He fell right in front of the monitor and it noticed him. The monster glared at him furiously, and Han bent down and activated instant acceleration. The ground began to shake and an exclusive speed boots effect was applied, which instantly increased the speed. Han also activated the Wind Grace skill, and his entire speed was increased by 70%, and his current summation progress was 7 sevens. The monster started charging the sphere in your mouth and Han started walking towards it. He walked past the monsters who didn't notice anything and pulled out his blade. He used the three absolute skill and landed a few blows on the monster's bodies, which simply caused the monster to be cut into many pieces. Ha was watching all this from above, and the dungeon boss Blue Flame Fisherman was defeated, and in three hours, the dungeon was going to collapse. Ha was very happy at this moment and looked at Hana, who was standing next to the dismembered monster. She said that now she was completely confused as to which of them was the monster. Han looked at it all and realized that he had shredded it too much. After that, they exited the red portal and reappeared on the field. Ha said that she didn't expect Han, being a C-rank hunter, to clear the dungeon so quickly, she looked at Han and said that he had passed the tests and could now use the White Guild dungeon. She said that the guild wouldn't be stupid enough to miss out on a talent like Han. Han looked at her and said it was nice enough. Ha turned away and she said that she would move a little away from the main topic of conversation and said that when he was called to the Tower of Trials, the difficulty he initially chose didn't matter much. She said that even on low difficulty, those who performed well in passing the test will face increasingly difficult tasks as the number of tests increases, and vice versa, even on high difficulty, if the performance is lame, then the applicant may gradually slide to low difficulty. She looked to the side and said that based on this principle, the fact that Han had achieved such impressive growth could only mean one. Han's level of difficulty in climbing to the top of the challenge tower was a killer among the top 50 participants on the summing up board. Han just stood there and listened to her. Ha Da clasped her hands behind her back and said that as such, she very much hoped that Han would try to be a little more careful and she would like to accompany him for as long as possible or ripen his amazing roses firsthand. The author of this phrase was surprised and embarrassed. Afterward, Han sat on the roof of the building and ate an apple. The system message wrote that in five minutes it will be moved to the test tower. Han ate an apple, and it seemed to him that for the past three days, he really turned around like a squirrel in a wheel. He smiled and realized that it had boosted both his stats and his confidence. Time passed, and Han had to return to the Tower of Trials. Han jumped down and realized with a smile that she was returning to the Tower of Trials. He found himself in the waiting room and walked forward. He chose the 8th floor trials and was asked to choose the intersection point of the trials. Han was surprised and realized that if he thought about it that way, he had seen a mention of creating an intersection point. He chose the intersection of the two and realized that if he wanted to increase the effectiveness of necromancy, then he should go into battle. System message all of Han Sung Yoon's challenger's personal trials were focused on fighting. After choosing the intersection point, treason was impossible. Han looked ahead and realized that he hadn't intended to change anything and now he didn't have to do anything else. The system message said that challenger Han possessed the qualifications of a trailblazer. Han was surprised by this. Now a private chat with the administrator should have opened. Currently, a search is underway for an administrator specializing in combat management. Han thought about the receptionist. 
The search was completed and he was told that a consultation was starting with Lord Steelblood, the manager of the battle crossing point. Hands started to move, and he didn't even realize it. He found himself in a field where there was snow all around and weapons were stuck in the ground. Han raised his head and wondered where he was right now. The system message said that he had entered the world of Steelblood. Han looked ahead and saw even more weapons that were there. He used the eye of the true and his eye began to see more. The rest of Blood is a space created especially for her by the administrator of the Lord of Blood, a place where they can drop in uninvited guests. Han looked ahead with a smile and realized that such a place also existed here. He looked forward in surprise and a system message wrote that administrator Lord Steelblood was unhappy that someone was making inquiries. He calculated this and realized that administrators can communicate their intentions through direct messages. He looked back and saw a sword that was levitating and burning with fire. The system message said that Administrator Lord Steelblood was telling him to stop suffering nonsense and follow the sword. He started to follow the sword that was heading forward. He followed him in silence and passed by trees and other swords. He looked ahead and saw a house in front of him. He opened the door and a system message said that Administrator Lord Steelblood was looking at him. Han looked forward in surprise and saw a man with long hair and red eyes sitting on a chair. Lord said he welcomed the trailblazer. She looked ahead and said that she was the administrator who was assigned to consult with him. The girl was sitting on a chair and Han, looking at her, realized that outwardly she looked like a foreign beauty. He looked at her and felt that she was emitting a red strong aura and was actually facing a creature that was being controlled in the Tower of Trials. The Lord walked over to it and began to examine the con. Han was surprised by this. He didn't know when she'd gotten here. He was staring at her, but he couldn't see it. The girl took the jars and said that she was very curious about what this monster looked like and she said that it was pretty good. Han looked at her and asked if she knew him. She said that of course she knew and the test on the fourth floor was quite impressive. She poured the drink into a glass and Han asked if she had been watching the whole ordeal. The girl said that she only knew about what happened from the data of the final report. She said that it was simply impossible to watch the challenge of applicants below the eighth floor. Han realized that she was an administrator, but she couldn't watch the test. The receptionist picked up the glass, and she said that from the look on her face, she thought Han had misunderstood something. She said that administrators are not omnipotent beings like the same gods. She said they didn't run the tower at all. The girl drank the drink, and Han said it was nothing. The girl said that administrators were more likely to be seen as creatures subordinate to the tower, so Han shouldn't be too nervous about her presence. Han looked ahead silently, and the girl said that as long as she obeyed the tower, she couldn't harm him. The administrator looked at Hana, and she said that all this chatter and this personal consultation was an advantage earned by him, and if he had any questions, then let him not hesitate and ask the administrator said. Han looked ahead and realized that he didn't feel any hostility, so he asked her to explain what the consultation was all about. The girl was sitting near the window, and there were a lot of things on the street. She said that as mentioned earlier, face-to-face -face consultation is an advantage that a trailblazer will get. She said that Han should not use questions to get comprehensive answers to questions through the administrator. Han looked over and said that in that case, on the fifth floor, he almost died at the hands of challengers from another dimension. He asked why exactly he came to him and it turns out a story-based implementation could be implemented from this world too. The receptionist smiled and said that there was no particular reason for this. She looked at Hana and said that this was due to the fact that when entering any floor in the other world, not only would she not be able to steal that floor's challenge reward, but she would also be unable to obtain more advantageous benefits. She said that applicants from other worlds come from places where they have been able to exist for decades and they are well aware that the reward for harming an applicant from another world is incredibly high. The girl said that they also knew that the towers of this world would one day be merged with the towers of other worlds. Han asked her what she meant by that. The administrator said that starting from the 20th floor, the main focus was on the combined challenge, not the personal one, and then he would meet applicants from other worlds. He looked at all this and didn't understand why it was like trying to eliminate a competitor in advance that he would have to face one day. The receptionist put down the glass and asked him if she had satisfied his curiosity. Khan said that if you didn't take the last question into account, you could say that. He looked at her and asked about the challenge tower. He asked me what kind of structure it was. The receptionist paused, and she leaned her elbows on the table and said that was a question she would like to know the answer to herself. Han said that she was the administrator of the tower from, but she didn't know the answer to that question. The receptionist listened to all this in silence. She said that initially, the so-called administrators were the same applicants as Khan. She said that applicants who died after passing the 40th floor were eligible to be reborn as an administrator again. She said that she used to climb the tower to see the end, but she couldn't get to the top of the tower, although it would be more accurate to say that all the administrators just died before reaching the end. And so she became an administrator when she died on one of the high floors. 
Han squeezed his hand into a fist and realized that the girl wanted to tell him that the administrators were just former applicants who failed in their task. He looked down and said that he really hoped she knew something about the tower and could tell him about it. The girl looked at him, then she ran up to him and grabbed him by the neck. She held him up and glared at him angrily, telling him that the words about the top of the tower were not something that could be said so lightly and casually. Han looked at her in silence, and the girl said that Han was not particularly puzzled by this, she asked him if he was not afraid. Han said it was because she herself said it was a personal consultation and she was his wife, and he didn't feel any hostility from her. After that, the girl pushed him away, and Han was on the street. He looked at her with his weapon in hand and said that he wasn't going to let her hurt him so easily. The girl looked at all this in surprise, then she smiled and said that for how many years she lived here, she first saw the one who destroyed the administrator's residence. She looked at Hana and said that she was satisfied with his actions. The Khan who didn't understand looked at her, and the receptionist said that the Khan's challenger, she was offering him a contract of patronage. Han was shocked by the news. The system message said that the entrance to the waiting room on the 8th floor was completed. You're messing with your nose on your bed. He opened his eyes and got up from it. He opened an exclusive shop and his contractor became Lord Steelblood. He looked at it all and realized that he had indeed entered into a contract with the administrator. He remembered the receptionist, and she told him that she couldn't miss out on applicants who were both talented and bold. The system message asked if Han wanted to sign the patronage agreement. The con agreed and the contract was concluded. The system message said that the contractor's exclusive stores will be opened, where special points will be available to him, and as a special advantage was provided by the contractor, all stats increased by one. The administrator looked at Han and said that it was fun and she told him see you soon. Han clicked on the power items and the list was Mind Purity, Steel Soul, Winter King. Han was surprised and realized that there was also a level of this category of store. He wondered if there was a difference between simple power and the unique power obtained on the 8th floor. Han realized that he needed to check the other pages first. The system message said that he didn't have enough rights to view the current list of forces and he can look in the list of forces in the waiting room on the 10th floor. Han realized that only these three powers were available to him at the moment. Purity of mind cost 1000 and in any situation, the Khan will be able to think rationally. Status and anomalies such as anger and confusion during combat are halved and combat immersion is increased. The steel soul cost 6500 and the description was as follows. This is the soul that some lords were born with, which was said to have no blood or tears. It increases the proficiency of all weapons by 2.32 times and all newly learned combat skills start at 10% proficiency. King of Winter Table 800 and the description was as follows. This is a power that the rulers of the north often received. In cold conditions, C's stats would temporarily increase, and Han wouldn't suffer from the cold. Han thought about it and realized that it was all somewhat ambiguous. He realized that it was probably better to save up a little and choose something else. After that, he immediately clicked on the system screen and bought the power of mind purity. He began to think and realized that the power that allowed him to think clearly in any situation, it was very cool. He started to play the situation off in his head and realized that it was better to raise his survival bar that way, which they didn't need to think about at all because there was a chance that he was going to run into an invasion floor right now. He stood in front of the portal and was asked if he was ready to start the test. Han began passing tests where the difficulty was high, and the topic of this section was destruction. The condition for successful completion of the challenge was, defeat the skeleton summoning lick. The conditions for failure of the test were death and the applicant's reward for successful breakthrough all characteristics received plus two. The penalty in case of failure was equal to death. Han entered the portal and looked down. He didn't understand what was going on here. He saw a lot of skeletons that were located below and did not understand why there were so many of them, and in the distance he could see a building. Looking at all the monsters, Song said out loud that it was probably an attempt to overwhelm the enemy with numbers. Standing on the cliff, right above those skeletons, he decided to launch his attack. He charged at them at full speed, and then jumped away from the cliff and landed with great force so that a huge blue beam appeared above him, and the skeletons scattered around. Then he got up and stood with his head lowered, but he was still glowing with a blue aura. The skeletons started attacking him, swinging their swords. They all started beating Sung up in a crowd, and he just stood there with his arms outstretched. There was smoke coming from him, and he just stood there and realized that they couldn't even break through his basic defense. So he started smashing them right and left, so that these skeletons were already scattered. He understood that these skeletons were so frail. For each skeleton, his skill increased by 0.08 hundredths of a percent, and so on all the time. He was very disappointed with such figures, saying that he did not like it at all. But he still had to deal with the enemies, so he took turns beating each skeleton, breaking it, and the skill also slowly increased. Song, who was standing in a fighting stance, said that it was useless to raise his skill during this test. 
Suddenly, while he was standing in the midst of a thousand skeletons, someone viciously shouted out to him who he was and how he dared to commit outrages in his sanctuary in the first place. Song turned his head to see who was saying that. He looked ahead and assumed the voice was coming from there, and then he held up two fingers and began to summon the dead. The skeletons that he killed started to rise up and revive again, the notification said that he only had 30 souls. The revived skeletons began to pick up rocks and attack other skeletons, breaking everything in a row. Song looked at them in surprise, thinking that he hadn't realized before that the skeleton soldiers were also quite usable. Then he put his hand on his neck while the skeletons flew behind him and said that they should deal with these frail skeletons while he went to get the boss's head. Dream jumped into the sky as the skeletons watched in surprise. He activated the Wind Grace skill. His entire speed increased by 60% and he also used the exclusive Speed Boots effect, which increases his speed. Sleep ran through the skeletons' heads. Then, when they were over, he got down to the ground and ran on. Suddenly, he saw a huge fortress in the distance, which was where the boss was located. He looked ahead and confidently said that he needed to go there. Therefore, he immediately rushed to him. The skeleton boss, who was holding a book, noticed a strange new guest. It was a dream that reached him in the fortress in the blink of an eye. Song looked at him with a smile and he also said that he found him. The boss with red eyes said angrily that this person dared to cross the threshold of his sanctuary. So he opened the book and started shouting that he would make him pay the full price for this audacity. Huge orcs with fangs and sharp nails began to appear out of thin air. There were stitches on them, as if they were sewn together from pieces of flesh. Dream looked up in surprise, thinking that he could command orcs as well. The boss looked down on him, saying that he now realized whose sanctuary he dared to enter. Song, standing in front of these three monsters, says that he couldn't have summoned someone stronger. The boss was surprised by these words at first, so he asked again. Ah Song started taking out a dagger from his inventory, saying that just because he didn't have any stronger items in his arsenal, he would be very disappointed. The boss started pointing at him and viciously shouting that he was crazy because these guards would be enough to tear him to shreds. The two huge orcs started running straight at Sun, and then he activates the instant acceleration skill, and in a split second he ran at the orcs. Song cut off the two of their heads and stood right in front of the boss. The boss turned to see where Song was already standing. Suddenly, Sleep cuts off both of his legs, causing him to fall on his back. Song smiles happily and holds a hand on his chest, thinking that the undead are still good at raising the skill level. The boss, sitting already without legs, thinks where did this monster come from. The Lick imagined him as a demon, with sharp fingers, evil eyes, and sharp fangs. Song started swinging his sword at him, telling him to finish, and the Lick covered himself with his hand. When he suddenly notices something, it was the boss's book, and he knew that if he looked at the situation in general, the Lick had freely summoned various monsters, and if so, he might be able to learn this skill from him. So Song watched with a malicious smile. Song threw his book directly at the Lick, which made him surprised. And then standing in front of him, he asked if he could summon those guardians, and the boss asked why he was asking him such a question. Song started to approach him, saying that if he couldn't, then they would end on a similar note. The Lick started to stop him, telling him that he could do anything. Song asked when he would finally be able to summon them, and the Lick screams in fright that a few minutes after the death of the guardians, he is able to summon them again. Dream, looking at the corpses of these orcs, asked the Lick that he was already able to summon them again. He said he could. At the same time, Song told him to start doing it already and the Lick asked why he should do it, they are not a hindrance for him. Dream came even closer to him, saying that he was already tired, so let him die. And the Lick, very frightened, started flipping through the book, shouting that he would immediately start summoning. The boss started summoning these orcs, so they ran at Sun, who just cut them into small pieces while standing next to the boss. The Lick then asked him if he was satisfied, and Song put the sword on his shoulder with a displeased look, saying that they were just getting started. He kicked him and told him to summon all the skeletons that weren't dead yet and that he would put all his strength into these guards and the Lick covered his face with his hand and said that he would do anything. Dream cut these orcs open a very large number of times as soon as they appeared and the Lick was shouting in frustration about how long he should be doing this. Dream slashed at the orc again, his face completely blank and then he smiled maliciously and his eyes were purple in color and he said that the Lick would call them until he told them to stop. Another orc pushes at Sun, but he just points a finger at him with a serious expression on his face and immediately stops him, then jumps on his hand and runs along it. After that, he simply cuts off his head, increasing his skill. Then the second orc falls to the ground, leaving no head. Sun receives a notification that his mastery of the unique necromancy characteristic has reached 100%, and the rank of this unique characteristic is increased by one level. Light started to appear from his chest, and there was a blue aura around him. Song thought with a big smile on his face that necromancy now has a C rank. The Lick called him names, and the dream turned around after saying that. The Lick sat with his hands lowered and said that he would even make the devil tremble, 
he would curse him even after death. The lick was already sitting up with his eyes half closed, and a strange smoke was coming out from under his mask. And in general, the mask itself was covered with cracks. Sleep began to approach him, thinking that the fact that he was getting more and more cracks with each summoning signaled his imminent demise. Song swung his sword, saying that he was very sorry, because he so wanted to use it a little longer. Then he cut off the lick's head, and while the lick's head was flying, he said that getting to know him was the most disgusting thing that had ever happened to him in his life. He was given an achievement, a person who surpassed the devil. His agility increased by one point, and he was also able to absorb the lick's spirit. For killing him, his skill is increased by 17%. Dream absorbed the blood mist from the lick, and then the notification again said that he had broken through the 8th floor, he had received 30,000 points, as well as 700 SP. And 300 SP is an additional reward. A portal appeared in front of him, which would take him to the waiting room. As soon as he entered the room, a notification said that the system expansion had begun, and now administrators will be able to monitor the tests. And the restrictions on answering questions have been lifted. They will also now be able to acquire C-rank skills in the shop. The Dream decides to look at its status window. He poked his finger at these windows. But the second window was a window with a unique characteristic. Song read it all with a smile on his face, saying that absorbing the skill itself is cheating, so now you don't have to download the skill skill from scratch. And the most important thing is that the probability of absorbing the skill has now opened up. It said that when absorbing the spirit of the deceased, there was a 20% chance that one of the skills imprinted in the soul would be acquired. Song waved away the window with his hand and said that the test of the 8th floor ended quite gently, but there is no guarantee that the test of the 9th floor will be the same. He clearly needed to carefully prepare for the next challenge on the 9th floor. He raised the sword in front of him and looked at it, saying that he thought the sword could still be used, but the main problem was the shield and skills. Song started reading the skill window from his dagger and thought that since he had maxed out the skill, he had come to the point where he needed a replacement sword skill. Then, he decided to open a skill shop and started looking at the skill catalog. Song was still flipping through the catalog, and his face showed displeasure, because his hopes were not fulfilled, there is nothing worthwhile there. So he looked at it with a serious look and said that since there was no skill to buy, he would have to create one. Therefore, he immediately bought a basic swordsmanship skill, which he gave 25,000 points for. The skill window said that it increases the ability of swords. Song moved the three windows around him, thinking that if he was going to increase the rank of the hunter's dagger with skill synthesis, then he should be able to predict the combination compatibility as best as possible. Among the current skills he has, the most compatible is basic swordsmanship. He chose two skills, hunter's dagger and basic swordsmanship. It was a level lower than the hunter's dagger. The notification says that the ranks of materials for synthesis do not match each other, so synthesis will be centralized around the hunter's dagger skill. At this point, there is a 75% chance that a higher level skill will be synthesized. He was asked if he wanted to continue the synthesis. Song tapped the consent button with his finger. These two skills merged into one, which glowed very brightly, and the notification said that the synthesis was successful, so a new skill was created. It shone so strongly that the dream was flooded with light. The skill was called Demon Slayer. Moreover, it turned out to be a level higher than his skill was previously. This skill allowed him to deal undead damage twice as fast. Song looked at this skill with a spark in his eyes and thought about how this skill adds attack speed when fighting non-human creatures. It seems that this skill is just created for hunting monsters. He was smiling, because his expectations were met, the ability to synthesize skills is very useful. He picked up the three skill cards in his hands, wondering if he should try synthesizing the remaining skills. He was drenched in sweat and looked strange, but he was tapping the screen to synthesize them. Then he was already smiling and still throwing skills for synthesis, saying that he had checked the compatibility of skills and the probability of synthesizing. It combined the skills of accelerated regeneration, resistance to the laws of nature, iron blood regeneration, and pain tolerance. After he agreed, he was once again covered in a bright golden light. And he was lucky, so a new skill was created, with the name, Ashen Blood. Dream was very surprised by this skill. He looked at it and thought that the triple acceleration of regeneration is already cheating in itself, but the skill also blocks pain. He took out his sword, thinking that the waiting room was equipped with healing, so he wouldn't be able to test this skill properly. However, a hundred points isn't a burden to him right now. The notification said that the waiting room's regeneration effect was removed, and 50 points were deducted from his account. Fatigue will build up and he will not recover from physical damage. He held out his hand and swung his sword, thinking that since the spirits were all consumed, the shield wouldn't activate at all, and he decided to start his check. So he swung his sword, and then he started screaming in pain. His hand flew to the side, drenching everything in blood. Then he chopped off his own hand twice more to test it. 
but it grew back instantly, glowing green, and he looked at it with surprise. He looked down at his hand, and there was a sparkle in his eyes, and he knew that this was an amazing ability, because even when he was outside the waiting room, it was basically like he was under eternal healing. He then adjusted his sleeve as he continued to ponder that in addition to this level of regeneration, he also had a spiritual shield. But honestly, he doesn't need that tin called a shield anymore. He stood in the middle of the room and said that he had to use it until it broke, because he was very attached to it. Then Sun decides to go to the community, flipping through the window, he said that there seems to be nothing there that deserves his attention. A portal opened in front of him and he started to enter it, saying that the time spent in the waiting room was coming to an end, so there was no point in dragging your feet. You said that he entered the ninth floor, and the topic of this test is wrestling. They gave him a full day's time. Suddenly, the dream notices a notification with a red exclamation mark in front of it, which means that something bad has happened. It said that Han Sung Yoon's challenge on the ninth floor was currently unsafe. It is confirmed that there was a successful introduction of the challenger from the world of Muram. He stole the goal of the challenge. Song saw a man standing on a mountain of corpses in a white robe. Song was wary, realizing that this was clearly a contender from another system. The man stood and looked at Sung, saying that he finally came. He closed his eyes and tilted his head, introducing himself as the commander of the Muram Alliance, Lee Sung Hak. And the notification said that the goal of the test has changed, because now Sanu will need to kill the challenger from the world of Muram. The man was white-haired and elderly, but he still had his head bowed. Song looked at him very displeased, and the old man asked him his name. They were in some mountains, and Song asked him why he was suddenly asking his name. Sun replied that he had already revealed his name and position. Song was getting more and more angry, saying that he didn't invade his floor with good intentions, so what's the point of introducing himself? The old man looked at him and said that there was some etiquette between swordsmen, but he thinks Sung's thoughts are clearly limited. The wind was blowing Sun's hair, and there was some kind of smoke floating around. And he looked at him with a serious look, thinking that he didn't have any words at all, he didn't understand how it was that among the challengers from other systems, there wasn't a single normal warrior. The old man took out his sword and said that it should be as he wished, since he wanted to hide his name, it couldn't be helped. The old man immediately launched an attack on Song. Sun started using magic on his sword, so there was a golden trail behind the blade. And while it was flying at Sun, dozens of golden swords were also flying at him. Dream activated the Wind Grace ability, so his entire speed is increased by 30%. Song was looking at these swords as he prepared to make his move, so with his fast speed, he was able to fend off every sword flying at him. Then he jumped away from the old man, which made him wary. He pushed the sword aside, saying that there was such an experienced warrior in this dimension. Song, who was looking at him, heard an apology from him, because the old man looked down on him, but now he changed his mind. Dream exhaled and told him to stop being a hypocrite. The old man was very surprised to hear this. Standing opposite each other with their swords in their hands, Song added that he had come to kill him and steal his reward, and since he had come there with such an intention, then why was he being so polite? Dream was looking at him with very angry red eyes. The old man opened his eyes, they were purple in color, and he replied that it was probably because they were both from different worlds, so they couldn't understand each other. Then he raised his sword up, so that the entire area shone with a bright yellow light, and purple smoke began to appear below it. He raised his bright sword while everything was in smoke and wished him a good death, calling him a swordsman whose name he didn't know. Dream covered his hands against the smoke, and the notification said that due to this old man's unique characteristic, he was blinded for five seconds. Sung's eyes were blurry, and he was standing completely in the void, disoriented and not knowing what to do, because he couldn't see anything at all. He has activated his magic resistance skill, so the duration of vision loss has been reduced to two and a half seconds. Song held out his sword, saying that it was great. Ah Sung was already right behind Sung until Sung couldn't figure out where he was running. He also activated the Spirit Eye skill, and now recognizes attacks in the invisible range. His eyes shone with a purple light, but then that old man's sword was flying at his back. Song was able to dodge that sword, but it still grazed his neck a little, so a wound appeared on him. He received the achievement, insight, as well as his dexterity increased by two points. He decided to attack blindly, just hitting anywhere. But then the blindness effect passed, and the old man jumped away from him, because he was swinging his sword. The old man took up a fighting stance, moving his sword hand away. Song activated his regeneration skill, realizing that his throat had almost been cut just now. But because of the skill, the wound instantly healed. The old man looked at him and asked how he was able to calculate the trajectory of his sword. But Song didn't respond to him, so he just activated the Wind Grace skill, increasing his speed by 50%. He took up a lunge stance, thrusting his sword forward. Then, with lightning speed, he made a dash, leaving a blue trail behind his eyes. The old man had already noticed this, so he was also preparing to take the hit. 
and I was able to successfully block his strike so that the entire ground around me was already cracked. They struck their swords point to point, but then Song decided to throw a roundhouse kick. He almost reached the old man, but the old man was able to jump away, and then he swung his sword in an attempt to chop off the old man's leg. Song dodged, also swinging his sword in his direction, but the old man stopped his sword strike with his hand. Ha Song, in turn, blocked the sword strike with his foot, and they were both standing in a very strange position, holding each other. The old man said he was using some strange techniques. Song looked at him in surprise, thinking that he was a little puzzled, because even with his incredible height, their stats were basically on the same level. They leaped up from the ground, so that it all began to crumble from their jumps. Sun opened his eyes while flying and said that from now on, he would be very serious. Then, he raised his sword up again, using the ability to lose sight of the enemies. The dream went blind again for five seconds. He was also in the air, covered in a fog of blindness, but immediately used the magic resistance skill, so he reduced the duration of this blindness and then used the spiritual eye skill. He felt not just one blow coming at him, but four at once. He took a fighting stance, and those swords began to spin. Song was very surprised, because the speed of his attacks had greatly increased. Song was dodging all the blows, but he noticed that another attack was coming at him. Therefore, he immediately used a steel shield that covers him with a protective layer that absorbs about 10% of all physical damage. Song placed his sword under this attack, but then his arm was simply cut off, causing him to immediately activate pain resistance. He looked at his hand and was angry, realizing that even the steel defense skill wasn't enough to block his punch. At this point, his blindness ends, and he notices that the old man is running at him with another attack, which he dodges, and then he jumps up with one foot and turns around, about to kick a flying rock. And after the U-turn, it hits him with all its might, so that he starts to crumble, but flies straight at the old man. Sun notices this, and hits the ground with his sword. Song jumps up and reaches with his teeth for his hand, which has apparently just been cut off. The old man notices that he is not there, but that he is flying right in the air behind him. The old man turns around to see where he is, and Song holds his hand in his teeth while it recovers completely. The old man opened his eyes a crack and said, as for his recent techniques, he thought that Song was a pretty good martial artist, but all his techniques were just borrowed from somewhere. Ah Song clenched his fist and said that the unique characteristic that the old man uses is also an ability, received from the tower. Then, he activated the Wind Grace skill again, so its speed is now increased by 70%. Dream shone with a blue aura and clenched his fist, saying that he criticizes others, but does not notice any sins behind him. Sun pointed his sword at him, saying that he was using his tricks again, because as a swordsman, relying on borrowed abilities was extremely unprofitable in battle. But then the Dream is behind him, ready to attack. The old man only has time to open his eyes and notice him, but then he was able to draw his sword, blocking Sun's blow. He didn't understand how it had happened. Song looked at him with an evil look and asked, then how about we die from the borrowed ability? The old man, blocking the blow, was silent, but it was obvious from him that it was hard for him to fight Sun. As he stood in the middle of the corpses, he began to remember everything, because he had performed a floor implementation dozens of times so far. His sword was dripping with blood, and he said that he used it to cut down opponents from different worlds. In particular, the people of the world called Earth were weak in terms of abilities in all respects. Everything is so deplorable that this place is called a jar of honey. The sword is right next to the old man's head, and he said that the challengers from Earth couldn't even touch a hair on his head, and besides, when using the unique sword-like characteristic that obscures the opponent's view, a single sword in his hand was enough to deal with every single one of them. And this time, he was sure that history would repeat itself. But then, Dream stabbed his dagger right at the old man's head, making him so scared. He was able to dodge the kick, but it still grazed him a little. The old man started to bleed, and his eyes were very displeased. There were traces of their fight in the air, they were fighting so hard that the whole air was really shaking. Dream was also covered in blood, but thanks to his skills, he was healing his wounds quickly. The old man, on the other hand, looked exhausted. He also didn't have a regeneration skill like Sun, so he was covered in cuts. Sung received notifications that Administrator White Crane Sword admired the young challenger, and Administrator Monster of the North predicted his imminent defeat. Two other administrators were delighted with the young applicant. The old man saw all this and was devastated, so he didn't say anything. But then he made a face so angry that words couldn't describe it. He started activating his skills, so now his attack speed is doubled, lightning energy is overflowing the sword, and the cutting power of the sword is doubled for the next attack, and he also increased his movement speed by almost three times for one minute. The old man was serious, and his sword felt like it was on fire. Song started laughing at him, saying that just a moment ago, he had used any techniques himself. 
After Sun's words, the old man was hit with a one-story implementation penalty, so all of his stats are reduced by 8 points and he can't use any of his skills. Sun was very angry when he saw the notification. Now, his two skills were forcibly deactivated. But then, the cooldown time for the sword's unique stat was over, so he just used it again. A purple mist appeared around Sun, causing him to go blind again. He was thinking that he was getting used to this old man's template attacks. He activated the spiritual eye. Sung was getting mad with anger, so he charged at him, yelling that he would gut his guts out. His strongest punch went straight at Blind Sun from above, who wasn't expecting this. But Dream activated the three absolute skill, so his three attacks are boosted by the skill's effect. And he was waiting for an attack from the old man, and he was also very angry that a blue aura was coming out of his eyes. Dream instantly attacked that huge beam. The blindness began to fade, and Sleep stood with his back to his enemy. Sleep was very tired, but the old man just stood there. Song then dropped his sword on the floor and walked forward. He was trembling all over and a blue cut could be seen in the middle of his body. The old man was scared and very angry, he didn't understand how this could have happened. While Song was on his knees, all tired, a large amount of blood spilled out from the old man, and he just fell to the ground, being split in two. Song looked ahead with a smile on his face, and the notification said that he had broken through the ninth floor of the challenge tower. Dream absorbed the blood mist from that old man, and the notification said that he had absorbed Lee Sung Hak's spirit, and his skill was raised by 27%. He looked sideways and was surprised that it was as much as 27%. The notification said that the difficulty level and reward are not the same, so the reward is completely revised. Song remembered that something similar had happened before, and he wondered what kind of reward he would get this time. Finally, the revision was completed and as the first reward, he was given a sixth cent skill, a rank higher than the reward before. He also received 30,000 points and a thousand ko. Song stared at the window in front of him and was surprised by his sixth cent, realizing that the rank of this skill was much higher than the beast instinct skill that was originally in the reward. He decided to go back, entering the portal and saying that he would look at the details in the waiting room. Right inside the portal, a lot of notifications popped up, saying that a lot of admins were excited about Sun's battle. He was surprised at first, and then remembered. After all, there were two notifications in front of him on the 8th floor that warned him that the administrators would now be able to observe the tests. Then he just smiled, thinking that somehow, many of the administrators were still delighted with his fight, and he now feels slightly satisfied that he has received some recognition. Then he gets two more notifications saying that the Lord of Steelblood disapproves of excessive interest in the contactor, and then she tells Xiang not to become obsessed with the increased attention. He was then informed that the White Crane Sword Administrator wanted to add power to the Song exclusive store, whether he was willing to accept the offer. The Dream at first did not understand what it is at all. He looked at it with great surprise, so he asked what it meant, was it that the Administrator was just giving him power? He is answered in a notice that the Lord of Steelblood says in a displeased tone that he can just accept the force. He said that just accept it and that's all. She added that there are times when an applicant is sponsored by a force to gain the applicant's favor. Song thought about this offer, which is a rare favor for an applicant who has already signed a contract. So he asked if there might be situations where they would have to face each other. Dream looked at the message, which said that there would be a lot of such situations in the future. There was still smoke in these rocks, and the Lord of Steelblood said that the power provided would be so excellent that he would feel somewhat burdened. Song thought that the power wasn't that good, but it was also being used to buy his favor. It turns out that he is given this power because something is expected of him. He realized that there was no need to doubt, so he began to point at the window, saying that he would gratefully accept his gift. The notification said that the power of a Kai Sword Master was now added to his shop, and the administrator of the White Crane Sword, with a smile on his lips, asks him not to forget about this kindness. Dream told him that he would be happy to use his gift. Sleep went into the waiting room, and then immediately the system expansion started. It now has access to shared areas. Dream saw this while standing in the middle of the room and was surprised when he read that he could walk in common areas. He stood there, feeling a little shy, because he was wondering if the administrators might be watching him here, too. So he asked out loud that maybe they were still looking at him. There was complete silence, and Sleep exhaled calmly. He decided to open an exclusive shop. There were three abilities on the first page, Steel Soul, Winter King, and Sword Kai Master. Song's eyes widened in surprise. He pressed his finger on the Sword Master's Power Kai. In this window, it was written that now he can put mana into his sword, charging it with this. Song was very surprised by this power and thought about how he could now infuse mana into the weapon and use Sword Kai. He said that he was told that the power is not very good, but it looks very good. And then he noticed that he could now go to the second page of the store. And there were also three skills, such as Bone Reconstruction, Steel Blood Sword, and Death Hand. 
Dream decided to look at all three windows, and in the reconstruction of the bone, it was written that now all his stats will increase by two, and using the steel blood sword, he can summon this sword, which consists of mana, but use it once. The hand of death increased the effectiveness of necromancy and black magic by half. Dream, looking at all this, understood that these are very strong abilities. But then he looked at his account, which had 2,000 coins on it, and he realized that at the moment he only had a few coins in his pocket, and the power that he could buy now was bone reconstruction. He imagined this reconstruction of the bone as being covered with some kind of yellow film, but he wanted to take the power of the Swordmaster Kai for himself. His entire sword would then glow with a blue aura. Dream looked very thoughtful, thinking that he should save up a little, or buy a bone reconstruction. Song waved his hand, thinking that the old man Lee Sung Hak that he had just met on the ninth floor was also a crazy monster. Song then pointed out the window with a surprised face, deciding that in order to avoid dying at the hands of such monsters, he first needed to buy more strength. After pressing it, one and a half thousand points were deducted from his account, and in return, he was given the power of a sword Master Kai. His sword began to shine violently, blowing off Sun's hair and clothes like the wind was blowing. He started swinging his sword, saying that the three absolute skill also uses mana, but the feeling is completely different. He imagined it as a rock with water flowing out from under it, thinking that if one called the mana flowing in the sword instantly like a wave, it was a triple absolute skill. But perhaps the power of a swordmaster's kai should be compared to the flow of water flowing through a sword, like a big river. The notifications told Sung that after a minute, his mana consumption increased by 2%, after 2 minutes, his consumption increased by 4%, and after 3 minutes, his consumption increased by 6%. Song looked at his sword and thought about how it increased its mana consumption by 2% every minute. He estimated that in about 50 minutes, the mana consumption would increase by 100%. At that moment, the dream deactivated its power, so the aura began to evaporate. He understood that he had to distribute his mana well when using this power. As he pointed at the window, he remembered that the reward for the ninth floor was a sixth sense. He started looking at the sixth sense skill window, and it said that his instincts were being sharpened to the point that they were becoming a sixth sense that could be used to make complex deductions. Song was surprised to read this and wondered if his senses would improve now. He started to rub his chin, saying that he could now draw conclusions based on his instincts, and it seemed like a pretty useful skill. After he dealt with all this, he went to the community to find out about the shared zone. In the chat, everyone wrote that there are too many foreigners there, and they are generally all surprised by this. Song flipped through the chat with his fingers, realizing that there were a lot of comments about the common areas that were added on the 10th floor. Then he notices something. It was a message from a top-level swordsman, who said that in the common area, a foreigner asked him if he would like to exchange power with his administrator. The dream was surprised, because now it turns out that you can also exchange forces. He continued flipping through the pages, saying that now there was an opportunity to personally see a lot of applicants, and also exchange forces. He was very happy about it, so he wondered if he should visit this place himself. The notification said that it is included in the general area. It was a nice place where there was no bloodshed or anything. There was a park in Mills, and also a portal in the middle. When a guy and a girl showed up, the guy happily looked ahead and thought about how he even used the ticket with questions to learn as much as possible about this place, so now he's going to get the most out of it before going back. He's walking through the woods, waving his hand forward, and there are a few guys sitting in the bushes. The three of them recognized him as the strongest hunter from Korea. They've seen his profile. One of them, with a villain's smile, said that he was a strong hunter and he was constantly worried that his behavior left much to be desired. He tilted his head and said viciously that you can kill outside the common area. This guy was still walking forward and then received three notifications saying that he was weak and his body was paralyzed. He just fell to his knees, not understanding what was going on. He was shaking all over and couldn't even raise his hand, so he was angry. He heard a nasty laugh and turned to see who it was. These three bandits were standing in front of him, and this guy asked them to stop. Their leader began to lick his dagger, saying that he is one of the strongest hunters and does not understand what is happening now. The guy is very unhappy. He understood that even though they are not on trial, but even here they are engaged in robbery. The bandit leader raised his sword in front of him, and suddenly someone told them to stop. It was the same girl who was walking with the guy, she shouted that she would write in the chat about their atrocities. The head looked at her in frustration, then put away his sword in agreement. But then he raised his head and said in a nasty voice that he would think if she undressed. Putting his sword on his shoulder, he said that if she threw off her things, he would probably let them live. The girl was very embarrassed and did not intend to do this. The head started playing with his fingers, saying that he could help her. And then the dream just passed them by. Suddenly, the head noticed him and was surprised. And the dream just passed by, not even paying attention. 
The head was confused, not understanding who was going there at all. Someone shouted at his back to turn around. Song turned his head with a displeased look, then took off his hood and asked what he had said to him. The head still stood with the katana on his shoulder and confirmed that it was his. Then they all started laughing nastily, asking him if he was Korean too. And these bandits began to throw their effects on him in order to kill him. Red effects flew at Sun, and he said that he wanted to quietly pass by. But then, he just used his magic resistance skill. Notification said that all negative effects were removed. A green aura appeared around Sun. The bandits were terrified that he was able to remove their effects. Song started to pull out a sword from his inventory, then took up a stance to prepare for battle. And he said that he didn't start at first. Song activated the instant acceleration skill and charged towards those bandits, charging his dagger with mana. The three of them were in shock, even starting to fall backwards. He killed two of them in the blink of an eye by slashing their necks, and the third activated an ice shield to defend himself. Two kids are screaming in pain because they've just been killed. Song started swinging his fist to break that ice shield. Running up to it, he hit it with all his strength. The guy who was attacked and the girl were standing with their mouths open, and the head of the bandits, sitting behind the shield, was very scared. And a dream appeared in front of him, shattering his entire shield with a single blow. The bandit began to stop him with his hand, asking him to stop, admitting his guilt and asking him to show mercy for once. But the dream just cut open his neck, which is spurting blood. There was a bloody mist everywhere, which sleep simply absorbed, as a result of which, his skill increased by 6.5%. There were three corpses lying on the road, and Song walked over to those two guys. The girl awkwardly scratched her hand and apologized to Sung, because she should have helped him, but the battle ended faster than she thought. Song told her that everything was fine, so she didn't have to worry, but just go on her way. She bowed and thanked him, and the guy who was paralyzed started to get up. He looked at Sung and turned to him, asking that he was not a ranker by any chance, and Sung looked at him and replied that to some extent he could be called such. In his mind, he was always ranked in the top 10 in the final rankings. This guy beamed with joy and thanked him, saying that it was a great honor to meet him, because it was thanks to Sung that he survived. Dream was looking at him, and in his head, he thought that they were trying to kill him, so to get rid of the problem that had fallen on him. He just helped him along the way, but he just said that there was nothing wrong with it, so now they can go about their business. He turned away from him and walked into the distance, saying goodbye to them, and the guy asked him to wait, because he wanted to say something. Song turned to him, asking him what he needed. He asked for the corpses of those applicants to be left to him. Song looked at him in great surprise and asked why he needed these corpses. And the guy replied with a smile that if he gave him these corpses, as well as for saving his life, he would repay by giving him strength. Song, hearing these words, was overjoyed, so he handed over the corpses. The guy started using his unique gluttony ability so that a mouth appeared in his hand, which began to absorb everything around it. The corpses of these three bandits also flew in. He straightened his hair, saying that it turned out well, and Song looked at him in surprise and thought about what kind of strength he had. The guy started poking his finger in the air and said that since he promised to give him power, he would do it. A notice appeared in front of Sung that said that he had accepted the power of the gourmet administrator. The power of steel wings was added to the exclusive shop, and he looked at it with a smile, thinking that he didn't expect to get another power. The guy started explaining to Sanu how his power works, imagining that purple wings appear behind his back and said that this is a power that allows you to create wings on your back with the ability to levitate, and if he buys this power, he can immediately use it. Song smiled as he thanked the guy, thinking that as soon as he entered the waiting room, he would immediately try out this power in action. Notifications began to appear in front of Sun, where administrators argued with each other, saying that no one should bother his applicant, and someone just watched the fight of these four bandits with interest. Song looked at it all and was a little confused, not understanding what kind of commotion they were making. Then he closed his eyes, peering, and kept thinking that seeing how far the competition between administrators was going. So it was safe to say that they clearly wanted something from the applicants, but Song decided that he would just get to the bottom of it step by step. After a while, Song decided to go together with that guy in the forest, and then the kid started a dialogue, saying that the common area is divided into an arena, an auction zone and a game zone, and besides these well-known facts, he can share much more interesting information. Dream then listened to his words, and he said that the worlds of other dimensions that have been revealed so far in the process of floor implementation are Ares, Gurum and Kalian, so it turns out that they can only encounter these three dimensions when it comes to floor implementation. Two knights perform the rite of passage, as challengers from the world of Ares attach great importance to chivalry. The warrior is standing with a sword, while wearing clothes similar to the appearance of a Japanese. This is a challenger from the world of Murim, he is similar to Ares, but more aggressive. Song heard this and looked around, guessing that the Black Knight was from the Ares world and Lee Sung Hayek was from Murim. 
and then the kid said that he had heard that Kalian was a world of races like elves, fairies, and beastmen. Song tilted his head and said that this guy is quite knowledgeable, and the latter smiled at him and said that he had found out everything in advance, using the right to ask questions. And so, after a while they came to the common area, so the guy standing at the entrance said that here they are and finally got. And then he handed Sung a piece of paper, it was his business card. Song took it and read what it said, so he asked him a question, which means that he is the head of the challenger control team from the Hunter Association. And the guy told him that if he had any questions, he could contact him at any time. After going a little further, the notification said that they had entered the common area, so all abnormal statuses are removed, and fights between applicants become impossible. The guy is very happy about this place, and then he would stand there and rub his hands together, looking at Sun, and say that now he needed to slowly move towards the auction area. Song replied that he also had a place where he should definitely visit. The guy leaned over to look at Sung and asked him where he intended to go. Song, with a confident look ahead, replied that he wanted to go to the arena. Song was standing in the middle of the arena, between the people who were sitting on chairs and looking at the screens. Three guys looked at the arena itself and were dissatisfied, one even held his head, the three of them shouted dissatisfied exclamations. Dream turned his head to look at them, thinking that this was indeed an arena, more like a gambling den. Notifications say that three administrators are talking about how one of them is happy, and another that the arena seems to be the same everywhere, and the third was excited because of the heat that has settled in the arena. Song looked at the chairs that were separated by partitions, he realized that he just needed to sit down at one of the computers. Song walked over and sat down on a chair, folding his arms. Then notifications appeared in front of him, which surprised him. It was written on them that the arena system was activated and he was offered to place a bet, or else a duel. He clicked on the help window. Three notifications told him about the rules in the arena, that he can make a bet, which he can double or lose. Dream read them with interest, thinking that it turns out that the people whose conversation he heard also made a bet, but they lost. Then, five more notifications explained that he could participate in a duel by putting his item, skill, or strength on the line. Song was thinking that it turns out that if the status of the duel is confirmed, then the participants of the duel will automatically move to the Colosseum, in other words, that the reward for the duel is the core of the arena. He thought of these words as items, skills, or power. Song poked his finger at the screen, wondering who to choose for the duel, and in general, whether there would be a reward that he would like. The four kids were gaping in surprise, asking each other if there wasn't a Hellfire witch named Katrin. She was from America, and some people even saw her for the first time. A girl with purple hair was sitting in front of them, and she was also poking at the window of the arena. She was a little annoyed because no one was sending her a request for a duel, and all because she had too many wins to her credit. She was looking at her stats window, and it was clear that she had never lost in 17 duels. She wished that those stats didn't exist at all, so that she could challenge more often. The receptionist started laughing at this, and Catherine just tapped her fingers on the screen, saying that there were those who were afraid to send her a call. Then she stood up, thinking of walking out of there and saying that she should stop wasting her time and leave the arena. But then she noticed something. She received a request for a duel from Han Sung Yoon. He had put his Demon Slayer skill on the line. She read his name and stats, and then realized that he had come to the arena and immediately selected it. She started to smile, and her eyes lit up. The duel was confirmed, and they were moved to the Colosseum. They were standing in the middle of the arena, facing each other. She looked at him with a smile and said that she really liked his fighting spirit, but before choosing an opponent, you should first observe the opponent. Song looked at her with a serious look and said nothing. The duel began, and the girl was already on fire. She looked at him with a haughty look and told him to let him think it was a good experience for him. She activated the power of birth of fire, so raising her hand over her head, a huge fireball began to appear there. This kind of magic caused the wind to blow everywhere, so that Sun's hair was blown out by the current of air. Katrin waved her hand, causing that huge fireball to fly towards Sun. Dream dodges this ball. He started to run away from this magic, and then this ball came very close to his face. Katrin was very confident, so with a smile on her face, she said that he was finished. Song activated the Sword Master's Kai skill, so he made a cut right in the middle of that huge ball. The fireball split into two, and the dream continued to strike. Song stood in a fighting stance, holding his sword in the air. The girl opened her eyes wide in surprise and stood with her mouth hanging open. In behind Sun was the smoke from that fireball. She looks at him in disbelief, and he tells her that now he will give her a good experience. Song pointed his sword at her with a big smile on his face. We are transported to some bamboo forest, and then we see a Japanese-style mansion. A girl drinks hot tea. She is sitting on the floor, and in front of her is a huge water ball into which she is looking. She was watching Han Sung Yoon, who was cutting through the fireball at that moment. 
The girl looked into the water ball and happily said that she didn't expect that the dream would have already mastered the release Kai energy. She patted the chick that was sitting on her shoulder and said that she made a great move when she sponsored such a great power, and in the future, he would need to gain the favor of this applicant faster than the other administrators. She got up and went out into the courtyard, where the sun was shining brightly, and she looked up at the sky and thought that maybe sleep could fulfill her long-held wish that she couldn't fulfill. We returned to Sung, who was looking ahead with a serious look. He was looking at the three flying fireballs, right at him. Then, he activated the instant acceleration skill, so he just jumped very high away from those balls. They all flew after Sun, but he started to cut the balls one by one. While Dream was breaking one of the balloons, another one flew at his back. It was able to fry his cloak while flying past him. Dream saw this and was very displeased, so he immediately landed on the ground, with his cloak burnt out. He looked at his back and thought that he would be sorry to lose the exclusive effect of the cloak due to not being able to use the Wind Grace skill. And Catherine didn't waste any time, so she started creating these balls one by one, right above her head. She was smiling very hard and asking him how long he could last. The three administrators watched this battle with great interest. Catherine threw more fireballs at Sun. Dream continued to cut them down, but it had already been three minutes since their battle, so the mana consumption had increased to 6%. Then, Dream was still fighting off her attacks, and another minute had passed since then, so the mana absorption rate was now 8%. Song looked ahead with a serious gaze and knew that if the battle dragged on, he would be at a disadvantage. At this moment, a blood mist appeared in his chest as he absorbed the spirit of the challenger Lee Sun Hack, thereby increasing his stats. He was very lucky, because he also absorbed one of his skills, so he got a lightning sword Kai. Song looked sideways in great surprise, wondering if it allowed him to perform a cleaving strike, and whether it even meant that he could launch Kai energy over long distances. Katrin began to summon another orb in her palm, telling him that he was thinking about having time to get distracted by other things. There were sparks of fire above Sun's head, and then he raised his head and saw that there were huge fiery spears flying straight at him. They fell instantly, so Song decided to just run away from them. The two spears were just inches from his head, but Song had already reacted to them, so he cut one of the spears and grabbed the other with his bare hand. After that, he threw it on the ground and began to use the regeneration skill so that the burns disappeared instantly. Song stood in front of the huge fireball and held out his sword, and his thoughts were that he wasn't sure if he could do it the first time, but he decided to try anyway. So he started charging his sword with mana so that it began to glow with a blue aura. He activated the power of the Sword Master Kai, and then the Lightning Sword Kai skill. Slashing through the air, he created a wave of mana that sliced through everything he saw. That was why he was able to cut through that fireball and let out another punch after it. Katrin, startled, began to use her shield. A curtain of fire appeared in front of her, allowing her to block the first and second strikes. She readied her magic for another attack, thinking that he would immediately counterattack. But then, all of a sudden, Dream was right behind her, holding his dagger to the back of her head. Katrin sensed this, so she closed her eyes and said that he was really incredibly strong, and she lost. Four notifications appeared, indicating that the challenger Katrin had given up and Song had won, receiving the storm skill as a reward. At this point, the Dream is on the same chair that he sat down on before. Song was looking ahead with a very serious look. He also said that he decided to take part in the duel to hone his sword skills, but the opponent was quite strong, so his robe was burned in the end. Dream started tapping on the window, thinking that he should remember the name Catherine Bennett. Then, he decided to look up the information about his skill and was confused, because he thought that it was a swordsmanship, and we are talking about the skill of stabbing blows in general. His face was displeased, because he knew that he had been deceived just now. Sun decides to look at his statistics, there was one victory added and he thought that he needed to start actively growing. So he immediately started a duel with someone. They were moved to the Colosseum. Then, two contenders appeared in the arena, Han Sung Yoon and Yuji Oiwaki. Their duel started, and Song was thinking about how his opponent was ranked 11th on the Japanese server. They were facing each other, and Sun's shield hadn't recovered. Yuji said that Song was ranked 3rd on the Korean server, so he was looking forward to fighting him. But the one who appeared in front of him looked like a beggar, there was nothing to look at. Song then started to smile widely. Yuji was not happy, so he looked sullen and asked why he was laughing. Dream told him that he found it funny that they had the same thoughts. Because of Sun's words, Yuji got really angry. Therefore, he immediately launched an attack on the hero, he also shouted bad words. Song dodged the spear attack, and then he watched the spear fly past his face and thought that this was all that a contender ranked 11th on the Japanese server could do. So he just smiled and thought that he must have gotten a little too strong, since this level seems like child's play to him. In the blink of an eye, the dream caused Yuji to bleed profusely from the mouth. The notification said that Yuji had taken serious damage, so Sun won. Ah Song started to smile a lot, 
because he came up with a plan that this way he would be able to get a hundred skills. And so, he started another fight, which he immediately finished by cutting the neck of the green robed guy. Then another fight, where the other guy was already hanging upside down in the air and another one, where the kid actually flew far away. Sun won all these fights. Therefore, Song received the achievement, Dual Master, as well as his strength increased by two units. We are transported to the central lands of Murum, where there were picturesque views of the rocks and the sun shone brightly. Then we see a man sitting on a rock in the middle of a bamboo forest, and a subordinate has come to see him. The man first sat with his eyes closed, but then as soon as he heard him, he opened his eyes and asked what he needed. The subordinate bowed, and the man asked that according to him, Lee Sung Hayek was dead. The boy replied that it was true. As he continued to bow, he said that according to the latest news that he was able to get about Master Lee Sung Hayek, it was recently possible to connect to the Earth dimension. And, as they say, he made an attempt to implement the floor, when suddenly there was a roar everywhere, so that the subordinate was already a little confused, and realized that apparently someone had come. In the middle of the bamboo forest, a dark figure began to appear. It was a huge beast that was growling in displeasure. This beast stood right above that man, so there was a shadow of him on it. The monster began to attack him, but he continued to sit there, saying that it had been five years since he stopped climbing to the top of the tower. Therefore, this man held out a hand that glowed with an orange aura. As a result, the sword sticking out of the stone began to come out and tremble. The man picked up this sword, and the monster's paw was getting closer and closer to his body. But then he jumps out from under the impact and flies up. The monster stares at him in surprise as he hovers in the air, sword in hand. The man flew down at the monster with a serious look. It landed right on his head and immediately pierced through his brain with a single punch. The beast's tongue fell out from such a blow, and lightning appeared on top of the sword. The subordinate watched all of this while the wind from their fight was around. And I thought about how easily he had dealt with such a powerful spirit creature. The young master's martial arts are so powerful that the sight of his might gives one goosebumps. The man pulled out his sword from the beast's head, asking about the earth dimension. Then he looked at his subordinate with a smile, holding the bloody sword in his hands and told him to find out who exactly killed Master Lee Sung Hayek by any means necessary. We go back to Sung, who has already entered the waiting room on the 10th floor, and then he fell on the bed. But he was so happy, because thanks to the waiting room, all his fatigue was gone so that no trace of it remained. Sun decided to open the menu to see something. He still looked up with a smile on his face and thought that in such an unexpected place, he was able to access some other powers. He opened the shop window, where there were steel wings that allowed him to fly thanks to his mana. Dream imagined him flying on those wings. He was so happy, because just thinking about flying would make his heart jump. It was an exclusive Co. 500 contract store. However, right now, he can't buy these wings due to insufficient points. Dream opened a huge number of windows, intending to do synthesis. It activated a unique skill synthesis power. So one by one, he combined the skills. And so, in the end, he managed to create three skills. Song looked at these skills with great surprise. There were three skills in total, the first was counterattack shield, the second was shadow secret step, and the last was frenetic sword play. He stretched out his hand, and it glowed all over with a red aura, and in Sun's mind, there was a B-rank shield skill among the three skills. He activated that very shield, so a huge red curtain appeared in front of him. Song looked at her with great surprise. There were a lot of notifications that said that Dream had entered the 11th floor trial, and the topic of the trial was cooperation, and they were given three hours of time for the entire trial. In the middle of a huge stone field, four portals appeared, from which players will then exit. Then there were three more notifications saying that the team members were being assigned according to their final ranking, and the team assignment was completed. First place in the ranking was Kim Seung Hoon, the guy who was wearing a mask. The other guy was wearing a magic robe and his name was Lee Young Hoon. The third is our dream, but the fourth is Sudi Ganyu, a guy in a red business suit. They were given 30 minutes to get acquainted, during which time they must rally and attack the boss. They were all standing in front of each other, and Kim said it was a combined challenge again. But Young ran to him, shouting that it was his brother, and he also went up to the Tower of Trials. Song stared at them intently, thinking that the two of them were ranked first and second in the final ranking, and it looked like they had met before. Gong Yu stood at a distance from them and looked at Sun, and then he started shouting violently, and all the guys turned around to see what was going on. Gong Yu started pointing at Sung and shouting that it was the one he met on the fourth floor. Song didn't even remember it, so he stood there in confusion as the finger was pointed at him. Kim looked at both of them and asked that they had crossed paths on the test, and apparently from his reaction, this meeting was not pleasant. 
Gong Wu started shaking for show and gritted his teeth, saying that Kim was absolutely right. After all, he and Sung met on the fourth floor during the combined challenge and this hunter is someone who strives to grow by accumulating achievements for kills. Gong Wu was still shaking, and Song just stood there and listened to the lie. Sudi Gong Wu introduces himself as the evil avatar. He stood there rubbing his beard, and it was said that for him, deceiving others was a daily occurrence, because he created conflict by turning others against each other, and used this time to get a reward. During these words, Dream imagined how the contenders were fighting with each other. Gong Yu held the crystals in his hand, and his face looked as if he had gone mad, although deception is a survival tactic he developed, which he began to use in another place called the Tower of Trials. Sharp teeth grinned from ear to ear, and drool flowed from his teeth. It was the administrator, a lying clown who laughed at the contractor's deception until the corners of his mouth were torn with laughter. Gong Yu held onto his shoulders, pretending to be scared, but actually laughing as hard as he could. Song looked at him a little confused and thought that his expression showed that he was puzzled, so he decided to add fuel to the fire. Song started to tell him that there seemed to be a misunderstanding, and Gong Yu pointed at him, shouting that it was true because Song had brutally killed his team members. But Dream started making excuses, gesturing with his hands and saying that he was cheating. One of the guys began to take out a huge hammer from the inventory. It was Kim, who jumped at him and said that instead of a four where everyone kept to themselves, he preferred a three with good teamwork, because the Tower of Trials is not a place where you can behave lightly. His eye lit up red, and then he asked that now they will find out who is telling the truth, and then the liar will be excluded from the team. Song stood in front of everyone and thought that if something went wrong, he would have to deal with all three of them at once. Song watched with a serious look, because he knew that this would be the worst option. Yunkuk held up a finger and told everyone to calm down. Then, he tilted his head and asked that earlier, challenger Sudi Gongu said that he met a hunter challenger on the fourth floor. Ganyu confirmed these words. Yunkuk spread his hands and said that it turns out that he knows the real name of the hunter's challenger, because the system with the nickname appeared in the waiting room on the fifth floor, and the two of them met on the fourth. Gongu was caught red-handed, because if he said the hunter's real name, everything would immediately fall into place. Yunkuk started to say his name slowly, and then when he said it, he divided it into two sides, one false and the other not real. And he said that his real name was Lee Kalman, knowing that it didn't make any difference since there was no way to prove his name in this place anyway. Yung pointed and asked if the hunter had anything to say about it, and Sung said that he wasn't amused at all. So he started pulling something out from under his t-shirt. It was his hunter's license, and all the information about him was written on it. After all, during the return to Earth, he mistakenly took the ID card with him, in the end it was very useful to him. That license had his name written on it, so he said it. Dong Wu was just terrified, because he knew that he was now finished. Kim began to approach him with his hammer and say that it was now clear to him who should be excluded. The administrators were laughing at Gong Wu, because he had just dug a hole for himself and he was standing with a very dissatisfied face, wondering what to do. While Kim was walking towards him, Song stopped him with his hand, saying that he would handle this matter himself. Song took out his sword and started walking towards him, saying that he was very angry right now. Kim didn't say anything at first, looking at Sung, but then replied that it should be as he decided. Gong Yu looked at this and was not so angry anymore, because Song decided to attack him alone. So Gong Yu had a wicked smile on his face, and he knew that even if they were looking at him with hatred, there was still hope of survival if he killed Sun. After all, the test is designed for four people, and if they also exclude him, then it will be extremely difficult for the two of them to pass it. Song stood in front of Gong Yu, under the moonlight, and said that Gong Yu was talking about some very funny things, so shouldn't he take responsibility for what he said? Gong Yu spreading his arms in different directions replied that he does not know what responsibility is. Gong Yu started using the book that was flying in the air and then replied in a nasty voice that he only cares about surviving in this place. And then he used his other hand to summon an ability, saying that Dream wasn't the only one with the power. Because of this ability, Sun's legs were covered with swamp spirit stalks, preventing him from moving. But he just used the magic resistance skill, so these stalks were simply destroyed. As soon as he was free, he immediately made a dash for Ganya. Song threw his arm behind his back, preparing to strike. And Ganyu summoned a shield, protecting himself from Sun's blow and saying that he also has the magic resistance skill in his arsenal. Song landed a heavy blow on Gongwu's shield, but it didn't shatter. By that time, the ground was starting to crack, so Kim started saying that they should move away, and Yung said that he liked it here, because they could fully feel the struggle between them. Kim grabbed his brother by the scruff of the neck and dragged him out, telling him to stop acting up, because there's nothing wrong with being careful. Yunkuk tearfully replied that he likes to watch everything from special places. Gongwu started yelling at Sun to die, and then started using his magic again. 
With this magic, he shot mana balls at Sun. Sleep calmly ran between them and dodged them, and then he threw back his hand, preparing to punch straight at him. Just the same, the blow turned out to be accurate, so he hit the gong, and the latter began to scream in pain. But then, with a snide smile on his face, he said that it seemed that the dream had become prey. Song looked back with one eye in utter incomprehension. Dream began to run away from these spheres as they flew after him from above him. He looked up and thought that these were the realms he had launched earlier. Suddenly, one of the spheres began to attack Sun, sending a huge bolt of lightning straight at him. Gong Yu started laughing and shouting that Sun was making such a tough fighter out of himself, and now what? When suddenly Gong Yu's face changed instantly, there was sweat and incomprehension on it. Ah Song used his counterattack shield to shield himself from that powerful blow. This shield allows you to take 25% of the damage, and then immediately release them in the opposite direction. Song was holding onto a shield that had a red hologram attached to it, and he asked Gongyu why he was so surprised, because everything is just beginning. Gongyu started to get very angry, because he didn't understand how Dream had blocked his technique so easily. And by then, sleep was already running at him, leaving a blue trail behind his eyes. Ganyu understood the situation he was in, so he started making the most of his book. Stone pillars appeared in front of Sun, but Dream just started to jump and spin, about to slam his dagger into the rocks. So as soon as he gained speed and strength, he just started hitting those rocks. So after a couple of punches, they just fell apart, and Yun watched, asking Kim if he knew who Han Sung Yun was. Kim also stood and watched them fight, but said that he had never seen him among high-ranked hunters. Yunkuk said that since he didn't know him, there was a high probability that he was just an ordinary civilian, but how would it be possible to become that strong? Kim's eyes lit up yellow and he told his brother that if Song wasn't a high-ranked hunter like them, then it wasn't easy to achieve such results. Song broke the rocks and jumped on Gongu's shield, and Kim said that the most amazing thing is that Song doesn't fight the enemy at full strength. Kim began to look at him and said that he felt that his level was comparable to his own. Yunkuk looked at him in surprise and asked him why he was so strong, but he was two steps below him in the final ranking. Kim recalled the goblin quest and said that he had a hunch that if Team Luck had so far bypassed him in all the combined challenges, then there was a good chance that he was undervalued compared to his original skills. In Kim's mind, his back was turned proudly, but in battle, Song would stab Gong while looking down, and that punch came on Gong Wu's hand, so he just cut it open. Gong Wu screamed in pain as he held his hand, which was bleeding profusely. He fell to the ground, still holding his hand, and then Song came over with a dagger. Kim looked at him in surprise, admitting that he was shocked by Sung because he didn't kill the opponent, but simply overwhelmed him with his superiority, so he also did it as if it didn't cost him anything. Gong Wu started reaching out to him, shouting at him not to kill him. Song stood and watched him as he crawled on the ground and said that if he killed him, then maybe no one would be able to survive this ordeal. He asked him to think carefully about it, because this challenge involves the top four players, right? Then he started crying and kept shouting that in this situation, he didn't think that the Tower of Trials would give such a simple task that it would be safe to pass it even if one of the team members died. Sun was a little surprised to hear these words, so he said nothing and then turned to the guys, wanting to hear their opinions about this proposal. Kim stood next to Young and said that they wouldn't interfere, let him choose what he saw fit. While Song was looking at the guys, Gong Yu reached for his body with his whole arm and an angry expression on his face. Suddenly, he pulled out his sword, wanting to kill Sun, but the latter had already noticed his movements. And then he swung his sword with all his might and shouted that he was a scoundrel. After that, he cut Gong Yu's head in half. But it was a deception, the dream cut only the fake image, and he calmly jumped away. Gong Yu stood up with his hands hanging down, which was no longer working and bleeding. He also activated the deception skill and all his stats were instantly increased by 10 points. Gong Yu was thinking that he wanted to hide his last trump card until the very end. Gong Yu pointed his sword and chains at Sun and started shouting that he would finish him off. Song thrust his shield forward. The chain slammed into the shield and flew up. Since they were flexible and controlled, they immediately flew behind Sun's back. At this moment, Dream activated the Grace of the Wind, so his speed is increased by 40%. Those chains hit the place where he was before, but the Dream had already run away from there and stopped somewhere else. He was right in front of Gong Wu, activating his shield. The Dream looked at him, illuminated by a red light, said that now he probably knows what is more dangerous. Get involved with someone like him, or challenge a threesome challenge. Gong Wu began to squeal in fear of losing and dying. The counterattack shield skill instantly releases accumulated damage, so the shield began to shine even brighter and then released all the accumulated damage directly into the gong, which already began to incinerate. And so, the dream received his items, these are clothes and a sword. The sword was also covered in Kai energy, so it's quite a useful item. Song held his hand at the inventory window and said that he would make good use of these items. Young and Kim jumped down from the rocks towards Sung. Young gave a thumbs up, saying that Sung fought superbly, 
and Kim said that he hoped everything was settled now. Dream replied that everything was fine now. The notification said that there were 10 minutes left before the test started. The three of them started to pass through the gorge in the cliff. There was a statue on a horse with a spear near the huge mansion. While passing under it, Jung asked that it wouldn't come to life, and Kim said that it might. Suddenly, Dream notices something. This is that the statue turned its head directly at the guys. He stared at the statue carefully. Then he walked past her and kept his eyes on her, but he didn't say anything. And now, the guys are already walking down some hall. Jung suddenly exclaims in surprise. They were standing in the middle of a building with lanterns shining and statues all around them. They noticed three statues, the first with a double dagger, and the second simply wrapped in chains. Yunkuk looked a little to the side and up, right at the statue sitting on the throne and said that it was probably the Lord devouring darkness. They wrote that their 30 minutes had passed, so the trial was starting, and they needed to prevent the master's resurrection. The guys got into fighting positions, because something started to happen. What happened was that the statues began to untie themselves from the chains that held them. The statues started coming at them, glowing with a purple glow. The statues just jumped off their seats, and they all landed in the arena where the guys were standing. Kim, standing in front of the statue, said that he just had all the bones cramped, and it was time for him to stretch. The dream told him that the head was there. He imagined that it was impossible for Vladika to put his head on the body. Kim started walking forward, loading his weapons with mana and said that he was glad it was so simple, so let everyone take on one target. The statues also started running at the guys, and then they all jumped at them together, preparing to strike. The three of them were ready for the fight, saying that they should wish them good luck in the fight. Song made a dash, throwing his sword back and thinking about how he should deal with a single attack with the Kai sword. But the statue also started attacking Son that there was a purple trail behind his sword. Dream started blocking that statue's strike, but the impact force of that statue was too strong, so the Dream just flew back, and the statue pointed a sword at him, so Song thought the sword was made of Kai energy. Dream began to look thoughtfully, because in his head it was that the boss now does not seem so simple, and wondered if everything was alright with the others. And Kim also flew away from the impact of another statue. He crashed into a wall that sent rocks flying everywhere. The statue decided not to waste any time, so it ran towards Kim. The statue was already close to him, but suddenly it turned its head, because something was also flying at it. It was a huge boulder that threw the statue far away. The stone was thrown by Kim, thanks to his unique ability. He looked at it and said that each of these statues has a level to match the boss. Then he picked up his hammer, which was covered with netting, and told the boys to keep their eyes open. Suddenly, a hat appears out of nowhere, and then Yunkuk says that it seems like his brother let his guard down a few minutes ago. Then he put his hand on the hat and said that he didn't like it. And while the third statue was running at him, he said that she would pay with her life for making him wear this hat. He started loading his bow with three arrows, and then I shot them, so they flew straight at the statue. The statue began to dodge the shots, closing the distance, and then she got really close to Yunkuk. Yunkuk looked up, covering his face with his hat, and said that when dealing with mages, close combat is the standard. But then he took out a huge scythe, and he began to swing it, getting into a fighting pose, and adding that melee combat is only if the opponent is an ordinary wizard. Song watched him and was surprised, he thought that after only facing weak opponents, the sight of these people would stir his blood, and as he bounced from the statue's blows, he thought that if only he wouldn't be the weak link in the team. Then, in the air, sleep began to swirl between the rocks, and he kicked at the stones with his feet so that they flew straight into the statue, which hid its hands from them. After these strikes, he activated the wind grace skill, so his speed is now increased by 50%, and so, he ran straight at the statue with a serious look. Running under it, the statue hit the ground. At the same time, Dream stepped on her shadow, thus activating the shadow walk skill so that its power increased by three points. He was standing behind that statue and was already turning to strike. At this moment, he activated the frenetic sword play skill, his sword attack speed increased by 10%, and he also activated the sword master Kai skill. So he drew sword strikes in the air that cut through that statue. The statue began to crumble into small pieces, and Kim, who still had a trail behind his eyes, said, depth charge. Therefore, an explosion appeared under his opponent, knocking him down. The entire statue was struck by lightning, and just behind him, Dream was fighting, smashing that statue. Yunkuk twisted his side so that it made a saw. Thanks to it, he dealt damage to statues by running around in circles. Then, he jumped up with a mad look, swinging his scythe. He leapt at the statue that was blocking his strike. But this did not help her, because he broke the head, which cannot be given to the Lord. The statue began to squeal. After that, all the statues started running away, Jung didn't understand why, and Kim explained that when there were no heads left, resurrection was impossible. 
They decided that they had to finish up by now, so they ran straight after the statues. After exiting the arena, they continued to chase after them. Suddenly, they heard a strange sound, so Song didn't understand what that sound was. Suddenly, they saw that the statues had fallen to one knee. Dream was very surprised by this action. All three statues stood up like a springboard, and just on this springboard ran that statue on a horse. She leapt high into the sky. Dream, standing under it, looked up and remembered that it was he who was standing at the entrance. This statue on a horse immediately jumped up to the Lord. The boys immediately ran after him. But Song was very angry, because he knew that it was too late to run after him. And that statue jumped down from his horse, taking his head in his hands. Song swung his sword like a spear. And then, with a look of genuine unwillingness to lose, he threw his sword straight at that statue, a bright trail flying behind it. The statue on the horse almost put its head back in place. But she was unlucky, because the dream was able to get right into her head, before her formation. The statue turned to see that the head had crumbled and the crown was lying on the ground. The statue filled with anger, its eyes reddening. And then he started screaming furiously. Yunkuk was very happy that Song was able to save them, and Song let out a sigh of relief. The statue started to lift the crown, then placed it on its head. She took back her spear and turned to the boys with a terrible cry. The guys turned to look at her, and they were all shocked. So they ran straight for the statue, knowing that they had to stop it. And there the statue cut off its own head, putting a crown on it. And the guys rushed to attack all at once. But they probably didn't have time, because the statue put its head on the Lord, so that a bright light shone from under the neck. When suddenly there was a huge explosion, which threw Sun and the guys into the distance. The fog from the explosion began to dissipate, and then the notification wrote that the condition was fulfilled and the Lord rose from his throne with a new head, because he was resurrected. The dream looked up, directly at the master, and knew that they were in trouble. Now they have a new special task, they need to destroy the Lord. The monster looked at them and the system message said that any damage is nullified by the power of inviolability. Also, applicants whose stats were higher than that of the Lord Devouring Darkness would be able to inflict a wound on him. Han looked ahead and realized that he had never heard of monsters being able to use the force before. The monster reached up and grabbed the sword. After that, he immediately threw a chopping blow at the players, and they began to scatter to the sides. Han jumped back and didn't understand what kind of cheating ability it was. He realized that if dealing damage on its own was impossible, then there was absolutely nothing they could do to them. Han looked ahead, then noticed that the monster was behind him, and he started swinging his weapon and injured Han. Han jumped to the side and healed the wound he had just received. He realized then that he had too many problems on his head due to the fact that they couldn't complete this mission. After that, he hesitated and looked ahead. He looked at the monsters and began to think what might work against them. The teammates ran up to Han and asked if Sung Yoon was okay. They said they had to come up with a plan to hit the Overlord, but first they had to deal with his guards. They approached him, and the Khan said that he had a request. He asked if they could detain the Lord for a while. The masked guy looked at him and said that they couldn't do any damage, so wouldn't it be more effective to clean up his guards first? Han looked at it and said that he came up with one idea. He looked at the monster and realized that it had a method that would allow it to beat the overlord. The guy fell silent, and he turned to the side and said that he would trust him. He said they wouldn't find out for a long time, so Han didn't have to pull the cat's tail. They raced towards the lord, and the Khan looked at them and decided to take action. He looked at the monster and realized that they would have to play for a while. The guy took out his hammer, which began to sparkle with lightning and struck at the lord. He used the depth charge skill. The monster stood there and gave no sign. The system message said that any damage was nullified by force and immunity. The boys ran back and realized that, as they expected, it wasn't going to do any good. The monster started to get angry and the power of the Greatness Sovereign was activated. Everyone should show respect to the master. Any action that does not meet this requirement will be blocked. The boys were surprised and dropped their weapons. After that, the master struck. The shockwave started to move towards the guys and one of them holding a weapon activated magic resistance. He began to slowly stand up and glow with a bright aura. The system message says that part of the body lock has been lifted. The guys looked up and saw a shockwave in front of them. One of the guys was afraid of this, but his friend heroically stood in front of him and covered the blow with his body. He began to grunt in pain and fell on his companion's shoulder. The guy asked if his brother was okay. They looked ahead and saw the Sovereign holding a sword right above them and was about to strike. He started to swing his sword, but Han immediately came to them with lightning speed and secured the sword with his shield. He apologized as he was a little late. He blocked the blow, and then he used absorption. He started collecting the souls that were lying nearby, and the system message told him to increase his stats using the ones he had from the soul. 
strength was increased by 4, agility was increased by 3, stamina was increased by 3, mana was increased by 6, and stamina was increased by 4. Han held his shield and his shield counterattack skill instantly released the accumulated damage of the Overlord. Han continued to stand and block the blows and the power of the Sword Master Kai was activated, as well as the Lightning Sword Kai skill activated. Han picked up his sword in his other hand, which glowed with a blue light, then he jumped up and launched a monster attack. It completely hit him and dealt him damage. Han realized that it had worked, and the monsters started shouting furiously. The system message said that the power of the Sovereign's greatness was activated. Everyone had to show respect. After that, Han couldn't control his body and he fell to the ground. His face changed and he started to try to get up, but he couldn't. After that, he activated the Force Breakthrough and Magic Resistance skill. He was able to get up, and together, where he was standing, many cracks formed on the floor. He covered himself with a green sphere and all the locks on his body were completely removed. Force Breakthrough skill mastery has reached 100%. The Force Breakthrough skill has been upgraded to rank C. The mastery of the Magic Chain skill has been reached 100%. Skill Magic Chain upgraded to rank C. Skill Proficiency Magic Resistance has reached 100%. Han blocked one more monster attack, and he realized that the situation was extremely dangerous, but he was smiling and didn't understand why he couldn't stop laughing. He looked down and guessed that it was also for the anticipation of approaching victory. The fundamental desire to become stronger burned like fire in him. The boys stood and watched as Han unleashed the monster's attacks. They realized that Challenger Han was a real monster. He said it was quite a strange feeling, because he never thought that he would be looking at someone's back. However, they should have congratulated him, because now the first place in the ranking belonged to him. Han continued to hold the shield and accumulate damage. Charging was completed and the counterattack shield skill reached its maximum damage absorption limit. After that, Han, holding the shield in his hand, began to emit all the damage. He stretched out his hand in front of him and realized that if he reduced the shield's area of effect, he would be able to increase the energy density. He directed the beam towards the monster and the skill shield counterattack instantly released all the accumulated damage. The monster looked at its body in horror and couldn't believe it. Han headed in his direction and was activated at the mercy of the wind. His entire speed was increased by 70%, and his current summation progress was 7 sevenths. Rampaging Swordplay was activated. The attack speed on which was increased by 10%, the programming level was 10 tenths. Han delivered a crushing blow and chopped off the monster's head. The Lord of the Devouring Mountains was defeated. The administrator stood in his office and watched the whole situation through the portals. She smiled and realized that it was the bitter showing off and crazy growth that was his contractor. She understood that the usual applicants who ascended the tower were carefully prepared to not risk their lives, and they would only climb the tower one floor at a time after tirelessly spending a lot of time on their training. But Han was a valuable talent that wasn't easily seen in other dimensions. She watched him smile and deal with the monster, and she thought it could be said that he was the epitome of wanting to grow. She understood that the problem was that over time, the other administrators would also start to get more and more interested in Han and she needed to establish a closer relationship with this applicant before the other administrators did. She was standing in a field where everything was on fire, and there were dead people nearby. She did all this for the sake of achieving her desire. The monster was defeated and it fell to the ground. Vladika was defeated and Khan was congratulated on overcoming the 10th floor of the Tower of Challenge. A skill enhancement potion will be sent as a reward for breaking through his inventory. As an additional reward for breaking through, 60,000 points were credited. As a reward for the breakthrough, 2,000 Ko was awarded. Challenger Han made a great contribution to completing the special task and as a reward for the special task, another 10,000 points were awarded and as a reward for the special task, 15 Ko was awarded. Han was very happy with this and realized that the reward completely paid for the difficulty of this challenge. The guy didn't understand how he even managed to pull off such a trick. Han approached him and told him that he had a skill that was perfect for this situation, and he also had luck on his side. The masked guy pointed a finger at him, and he said that Han was able to surprise them quite a lot today and he offers to talk in more detail in a private chat by adding each other as friends. The system message posted that the applicant Kim Seung Hoon sent a friend request and Lee Jong Hoon also sent a friend request. They entered the portal and said their goodbyes to each other. Participants from 1,000 applicants have successfully broken through the 10th floor and the system expansion begins. A dimension travel category has been created in the store. Travel between dimensions becomes available. 
Han was surprised by this. He thinks it meant going to other dimensions, like Ares or Murum, but he wondered if that wasn't the same as signing his own death warrant. The system message said that the Earth Dimension Administrator's observation area has been expanded. Communication with the Administrator is possible even in the waiting room. The Earth Dimension Administrator's intervention area has been expanded, and an additional contract with the Administrator and transfer to his personal ownership has become available. However, an additional contract could only be concluded once, after which additional contracts will be limited. The supplementary contract can also be terminated at any time. Han was surprised by this and realized that an additional contract is when he cooperates with the administrator who signed the official contract. And there is also one more party this is an additional contract, and he can terminate it at any time. Han wondered if the contract could be terminated at any time was I only losing one administrator. Han knew that he couldn't know for sure right now, so he opened the system window and said that first he should have dealt with what he had managed to get on the 10th floor. He looked at the skill enhancement potion, which was a specially crafted tower for creatures with skills. When taking it, Han could randomly raise proficiency level 1 from his skills by 20%. He drank this potion and was asked to choose a skill to increase proficiency with. He wiped his mouth with his hand and decided to increase the wind favor skill. The selection was completed and the favor to the wind skill increased by 20%. The skill was reached 100%, so it went to the next level. The effect of this skill was that when Han spoke the names of skills, all speeds increased by 10%. This effect could be summed up, and this ability could be played up to 7 times. By the time he reached the final summation, 1% of his total magic power would be consumed every minute. Han, I was surprised that the cooldown time was gone. He recalled the monster he had just defeated and decided to consume its soul as the next step. He absorbed it to permanently increase his stats. He was able to increase his strength by 5, agility by 4, stamina by 4, mana by 7, and stamina by 5. He completely absorbed one of the Dark Devouring Lord's skills. It was a mana management skill. The effect was that as far as using magic power was concerned, it was a step into the realm of innate talent. Remove most of the restrictions related to mana management. However, the skill's proficiency was only raised by self-enlightenment, and the frequency of use did not affect the skill. Han started thinking while looking at the screen and realized that he could now control mana like someone who had an innate talent for it. But there was no point in just standing there and looking at it. Han was surprised when he saw a lot of invitations from various administrators to his domain. He didn't understand why it all happened at the same time. Following which, an invitation came from Lord Steelblood. Han accepted it and was transferred to the world of Steelblood. The Khan was back in her domain and began to approach her house. The receptionist came out of the house wearing only a towel. She started laughing and said that she knew Han would choose her. Han stood and watched in silence. The receptionist said that thanks to Han, she won the argument. Han stood there and silently wondered why they sent the invitation at the same time, and it was all related to an argument. They walked forward, and Han asked if she was cold. She said she couldn't. The receptionist asked why Han didn't ask any questions. He looked at her and said that he had accidentally obtained the mana control skill. He asked her if she knew anything about it. The receptionist said that Han had obtained an extremely powerful skill. She held up her hand and said that before they returned to the hut, she would give him a cursory explanation. She said to use a newly acquired skill to maximize the magic power in your body. Han began to concentrate and stretched his arms out in front of him. He opened his eyes and felt like there were dots inside his body that were gathering mana. He used the skill and the system message said that the magic control was being activated and had a strong effect on the magic circuit in his body. Logic chain skills are forcibly upgraded with mana management skills. He leaned forward and was surprised, as he felt as if his physical prowess had increased several times. He decided to test it by hitting the ground. The shockwave was so strong that the receptionist started covering his face, and after the towel flew out, Han looked up and was surprised. After that, they were in the house and drinking tea. The receptionist said she didn't think Han was the kind of person who would pull such a trick. Han choked on his tea, and he said it was just a misunderstanding. The receptionist smiled and said that Han was at a loss. She told Han to activate mana using skills from time to time with mana management anyway. With this technique, he could increase his stats. She said that no matter how one's understanding of mana management changed, the skill would be able to stimulate the growth of each skill. Han then asked her why she sent him. They were sitting at a table, and the receptionist said that after entering the waiting room on the 11th floor, Han received a notification about the expansion of the system. 
The receptionist said that because of this, she was able to come here without going through the tower. Han ate a cookie and the administrator said that only the extension was not limited to such a function as the intervention zone. She said the real goal was to finally make sure that the administrator can seriously nurture applicants. Han asked what that meant. The receptionist reached out and snapped her fingers. She said that this meant that Administrator Lord Steelblood was transmitting the power of the contract using the interference zone. A new power was engraved on the soul. Han's chest began to glow, and the power of the blood-colored sword was etched into his soul. Han asked the receptionist if she couldn't have used her power like this before. She said she couldn't have had her already paid for the appropriate price of the tower. Han realized that the additional contracts feature was also open, so it might be better to find another bidder, but he didn't understand why she chose him. He asked her why she was so active in helping him. The receptionist said she did it because she saw it as a huge opportunity. Han asked what possibility she had in mind. The administrator said that other administrators were rewarded by developing their applicants, but this was by no means their ultimate goal. Han was surprised when he heard that everyone seemed to have invested in one or another bidder to fulfill their long-held wishes. The system message said that the White Crane Sword Administrator had invited him to his domain, and he had invited him many times while Han was sitting at the table. The receptionist looked at him with a smile and said that for those who were too impatient, she would finish her story there, and besides, she delivered it safely. They said their goodbyes, and Han accepted the invitation and carried out the move into the administrator's possession. He found himself in the forest and started walking forward. He thought about it and realized that the huge clearing was perfect for training. He realized that he was just curious to master the training method that Lord Steelblood had taught him. He used mana controls and threw a few punches. The mastery of the three absolute skill has been increased by 8% due to the mana management skill. The instant acceleration skill was forcibly upgraded with the mana management skill, and the instant acceleration skill's rank was forcibly changed to B rank. Han used a shield and the skill proficiency of the counterattack shield skill was increased by 7%. Han took out his sword and realized that he would now increase the power of the Kai Swordmaster as well. Han took his sword in hand and was shocked when he realized that he couldn't activate Sword Kai with mana control. He wanted to raise the rank of the Lightning Sword Kai skill through strength, but as far as he didn't try, it was all useless. He assumed that it was because the Sword Master Kai was a force. The system message said that the White Crane Administrator was waiting for his visit. He took a look at this and decided to put aside the issue of skill growth with Kai energy for now. He went forward through the forest and a system message wrote that the White Crane Sword Administrator was puffing out his cheeks and agreeing with him. He looked at the bamboo and other trees that grew there and realized that judging from the title of administrator, he must be an old man like Lee Sung Hak. He arrived at the place and saw the building in front of him, where the administrator is sitting. She looked at him and said it was a pleasure to meet Han. She was wearing a white kimono and had white hair and pink eyes. She said that she was the administrator of the white crane sword. She said that she had been waiting for a very long time for an applicant like him to appear. Han was surprised that it wasn't an old man, but a teenage girl. The girl sat there and asked if Han had a problem. Han said that he was just surprised to see an administrator in front of him who he only corresponded with. The girl said that she understood him perfectly and said that it was not very convenient to talk standing up, so she suggested that he go to another place. Han sat down and was surprised that he was very refreshed. He looked at the girl and said that he understood why she threw the chairs and sat on this floor. The girl smiled and said that she had always been watching him from here, from the moment he got into a life and death battle with Lee Sung Hak on the ninth floor until now. Han realized that she had been watching him since the surveillance was allowed, but wasn't it a waste to sponsor an applicant that she had only seen once? The receptionist said that wasn't the case, and Han should have been more aware of his value. Although Lee Sung Hak couldn't reach the highest rank of proficiency and released Kai energy, he was still considered quite a strong Miram warrior. Although he had lost some of the power he possessed after entering the tower, defeating such a challenger could be rightfully called a feat. Han was surprised that the receptionist asked him to believe her, since she was bound to Lee Sung Hak by a contract. Han looked at her and realized that if she did, she must have a grudge against him. The place where they were talking was quite calm and butterflies were flying. The girl said that there was no point in escalating the situation and he was just a good contender for points. The girl stretched out her finger, and the butterfly flew up to her. She said that she had signed contracts with a lot of applicants in her life, but she had never invited anyone to her domain before. Han looked at the butterfly and listened to everything the receptionist said. She said that everything was fine until she saw it thanks to Lee Sung Hak. 
She put her hand to her chest and said that she thought Han had already guessed what was going on, so she would tell him straight out. She asked him to sign an additional contract with her. Han thought about it, then asked if there were any benefits he could get if they did that. The administrator said that if he signed a contract with her, then she could make him an apostle of the White Crane Sword Administrator. Han asked again what benefits he would get from becoming her apostle. The administrator said that in the tower, the term apostle meant applicants who entered into a special contractual relationship with the administrator. The latter can only assign one person to the apostles in his entire life, and only applicants who have become apostles can acquire all the powers of an administrator. Han was surprised by this and realized that the contract of patronage was so important. He realized that Lord Steelblood had offered him a contract of patronage, but hadn't bothered to tell him about such important nuances. He realized that it was too harmful. The girl sat and listened to Hana. He said that in the Tower of Trials, it was said that an additional contract was a contract that could be broken at any time. Han asked why she was offering him the protection that could only be granted to a suitor once in their lifetime. On such favorable terms, she said that as this woman, she chose him to fulfill her long-held wish. She said that she needed the sharpest sword in the world, a better sword that would never break or become blunt, and she saw that Hanu had a huge potential to be sharper than any sword. She saw him as a strong man, and Han realized that the Steelblood Lord had also mentioned this wish, and it didn't seem like a simple wish. Han looked at her and asked her what a long-standing wish was. The girl looked ahead and said that the administrator's long-standing wish was memories that came from the regret of the past. And at the same time, a long-standing wish is a right given to the tower administrator. Similar tower trials, a long-standing wish was also a kind of test that the administrator could give to the bidder with whom the contract was signed. When the long-standing wish was fulfilled, the bidder would receive a reward. The administrator said that if you suddenly manage to fulfill an old wish, you can even change the events of the past. Han was extremely surprised by this. He asked if it was really possible to change an event in the past, and he said that it was absolutely impossible. The administrator said that since Han had been through the tower trials so many times before, he must have understood perfectly well that she was telling the truth or what she wanted. Han silently looked at her and remembering all the events, he realized that this was true because if it was about the tower, he asked if he could just ask a single question. The administrator agreed, and Han asked to fulfill her wish, how high he should climb in the Tower of Trials. The girl thought about it, and she said that it should be at least the last floor. After that, the system message wrote that the contract was concluded. The girl was very happy, and she said that Khan made a great choice and he would not regret it for anything. She started shaking his hand, and Han ended up making a contract with her. But even in the tower, it was his goal to fulfill the administrator's long-held wish. A system message wrote that Han had been recognized as the true apostles of the White Crane Sword Administrator. As an apostle's privilege, the effectiveness of Murum Dimension powers and skills increases by 10%. As an apostle's privilege, Mana has increased by 3%. Currently, Challenger Han is recognized as an apostle by two administrators. As a privilege of two administrators, agility was increased by three. Han couldn't miss out on this kind of advantage, which would allow him to immediately become stronger. He looked at the girl who was pulling out the sword, and he knew that he had also received an unexpected gift. Han was about to leave, and the girl asked if he could have heard anything from the woman. The girl said something about the creature that Hanu was looking for. Khan said he hadn't heard anything about him. The girl closed her eyes and raised a hand to her head. She asked what Lord Steelblood was thinking. She assumed that the woman had a strong belief in Han's power. She smoothed her hair and said that of course she believed in him too, but still felt that she should have warned him too. What she was going to say from now on would use up his tickets for the question. Whether Han agreed to this, Han thought about it and agreed. He said not to use them anyway and they just accumulated in his inventory. System message, all question tickets belonging to the challenger, Han will be used up. Han was surprised, because such a huge number of tickets will be used up in one time. He wondered just how serious a topic of discussion this was. The administrator said that there was a huge force in the Murum dimension called the Murum Ally, and Lee Sung Hak, whom he killed on the ninth floor, held an important position as a commander in this alliance. The receptionist said that because of his high position, there were people from the Murum dimension who were looking for Hana. Han realized that the girl wanted to tell him that the Murum Union would pursue him to kill him. The administrator said that this was not the case, because the Murum Union was currently in disarray due to the struggle for the vacant position of commander. Han asked who was sharpening their teeth on him. The girl said that it was the Namgoon family's dragon sword. 
After that, we are transported to Tokyo, Shinjuku, where the portal was opened. Sky Dragon Sword Namgun Hayuk. He came out of the portal and was a creature that was called a genius in the Murum dimension, where everyone was obsessed with martial arts. He was looking for Hana and using revenge as an excuse. But in reality, they're just curious. Many different hunters attacked him and tried to stop him. She doesn't know when this will happen, but if Han runs into him, then he must be prepared to risk his life, because all those who attacked him were defeated by his sword. The system message said that a move to the waiting room had been made. Han appeared in the waiting room and looked away. He thought about Namgun Hayuk and realized that a psychotic Murum Dimension killer was looking for him. He opened the system screen and started tapping on it. He started to think about going to those dimensions himself, but then realized that it was just ridiculous. The system message said that power steel wings had been purchased. 1,500 ko were spent. Purchase of a return stone. Hana held the stone of return in his hand, which glowed with a bright light and realized that he had learned something new. But this did not change anything. He realized that he had no choice but to level up like crazy before he met this Nemgun Hayuk. The system message absorbed the return stone and the destination was Earth. Han appeared in his room and immediately looked at his phone. He was surprised when he saw the missed calls from Ha and unread messages. Ha wrote him that as soon as Han read the message, he should immediately go to the Hunter Association. Han didn't know what was going to happen. The system message said that steel wings had been activated. Wings appeared behind Han, and he immediately headed forward. After that, we see the Hunter's Association and a lot of people who were there. They didn't say that they were glad that it wasn't a forced mobilization. One of them said that, judging by the video, he is really ruthless and bloodthirsty. He did not understand what would happen to Japan now. One of the men looked up and was shocked by what he saw. At the same time, Han landed gracefully on the ground in his red suit. He raised his hand and asked for forgiveness, then went to the Hunter's Association. People didn't understand how this man had just flown. Han went to the Hunter Association and saw a man in front of him who was very happy to see him. He assumed that Han had gone through a lot of difficulties in the tower. Ha also greeted him. Han greeted them and asked them what had happened and why they had to come here immediately. Ha put his hand on his chest and said that there was a serious incident in Japan right now. She said that she was very worried that Han would have gone to Japan alone if he found out about the incident, so he had to be contacted as a matter of urgency. The guy picked up the remote and pressed the button. He thinks that the conversations weren't very effective and it's better for Han to see for himself what happened here. The screen began to show videos from the body cameras of Japanese salary officers published in Japan. It showed a dark spot that appeared in the sky. The setting was Shinjuku, Tokyo. The Japanese Hunter Association formed a response team and sent seven A-rank hunters to the scene. But the person who appeared from the O-Portal shockingly killed six A-rank hunters in just a few seconds, and it is assumed that this is the first time that a challenger from another world has invaded the Earth dimensions. Han thought about it and asked about the hunters, he asked the Protect that had just left. He asked if they were trying to put together a team to support Japan. The man said that in such a situation without applicants, almost all countries focused on protecting their hunters, not allowing the outflow of hunting resources to Japan. He said the same was true for Korea. He said they did not recommend providing support to Japan. The man pressed the button and said that this body camera is the only survivor. The man covered himself with his hands from the man who approached him, and the man shouted for him to spare him. The guy looked at him with a cold-blooded look, and the guy who came out of the portal introduced himself, calling himself Namgun Hayek, Sky Dragon Sword, came to avenge Lee Su Hak. He asked the survivor to pass it all on. Han realized who the man was. He couldn't imagine them crossing paths with him like this. Han looked to the side and saw Ha tugging at his sleeve. She asked why Han had such a serious expression on his face. She said that it wasn't a forced mobilization and that it was the first time they had met after such a long time. So she suggested that they all have lunch together first. Han looked ahead and tried to say something. Ha interrupted him and asked if he was going to go to this mobilization. Han said that he would respond to the Japan call and go to the Shinjuku area of Tokyo. She asked him why he always acts so recklessly, because he should also be able to think a little about other people's feelings. Han put his hand on her head and said that he thanked her for bothering him, but it was a problem that needed to be solved and it had to be done by him. After that, he turned to the side and walked forward. After that, we see a young boy holding a sword that glowed with a bright fire. There were also three teenagers nearby who were holding one injured person, and he called out to the young master and told him that it was just sparring, but he was hitting hard enough. After that, another person came up to them and said that at the age of 13, 
Mastering the release Kai energy was simply amazing and his achievements surpassed even all of his own. A man stood in front of them and was greeted. It was the swordmaster who put his hand on the boy's head and asked him to listen to him. He said that martial arts is not meant to harm people. Martial arts are the path to excellence. The boy stood and listened in silence. The man said that it was impossible to hurt people just for no reason. After the system message, I wrote that the test tower was selecting the strongest players in the Murum dimension. All the people were cheering that their young master had already reached 20 floors of the tower. Already grown up, the boy thought that he was missing something. It was damning that climbing the tower on his own didn't satisfy his desire. He went forward and such an incredible feat was accomplished in just 17 years. He apologized to his mentor. He has committed the right to spatial invasion countless times and is killing people with incredible ferocity. He said that what he expected was nothing more fun than just killing. He was sitting in a car where everything was burned down and said that he was no longer satisfied with the death of ordinary idiots, and in the Murama dimension, he couldn't kill whenever he wanted. For some reason, he felt that that fool named Han would be able to dispel his doubts. After that, we see Han walking forward, and a plane flies over from above. In front of him, the girl pointed to the car and said get in there. After that, he and the guards rushed forward, and the girl escorted him into the building. She asked me to go inside, as other hunters would be waiting there. He looked inside and there were two guys with whom he passed the 10th floor. One of them said that after the trial on the 10th floor, fate brought them together again. Another said that the con came later than he thought. Han stopped by and said that he had heard in the Hunter Association as well of their possible involvement. But they really came here. Han asked if these were all the hunters who responded to Japan's summons. One of the guys said that one more applicants from America should arrive any minute. Han looked at the whole situation and realized that it was safe to say that each of the three of them had the skills of an S-rank hunter. But the challenger from the other world that appeared in the Shinjuku area was a real monster that even the three of them might not be able to defeat. He confidently looked ahead and hoped that the challenger who was supposed to come from America would be just as strong. Then the door started to open and Han looked away. He was surprised to see Catherine standing in front of him. Catherine came in and saw Hana. The girl who accompanied Hana asked if they knew each other. Han said it was true because they had crossed paths in the tower once. Catherine looked away and said that she didn't want to meet him under such circumstances. Han asked if they could have met in any other way. Catherine clenched her hands into fists and said that she wanted their meeting to take place in a more normal environment. Han said that they originally met in an environment far from normal. So how did she plan to arrange a normal meeting? Han asked. The girl said that he was right about that, but couldn't you have said the same thing in a milder way? The masked guy looked at it all and said it was like a love fight. Katrin was surprised, and Han said that wasn't the case. Katrin didn't know what kind of person he was, all she had to do was say no, but she didn't know why he was adding it. The girl who accompanied raised her hand and pressed it to her chest. She said that finally all the applicants had gathered and she apologized for the late show. She introduced herself and her name was Ari Chika, and she was the president of the Japan Hunter Association. Han was surprised to learn that she was the president of the Japan Association. He realized that when the girl came to meet him at the airport, it was probably because there was a full-time employee of the association in front of him. He realized that this must mean that Japan was now in despair. The girl spread her arms and said that no more support was expected. She said the situation was more serious than anticipated, so other countries were carefully monitoring the dispatch of their hunters. One guy said that even if it was about violent control, how could only four people come from all over the world? Catherine said the situation was much worse than she had imagined. The president began to tremble and said that currently no one wanted to help her. She bowed low in front of the hunters and said that you four who came here situations where everyone turned away she is sincerely grateful. Han immediately walked over to her and grabbed her by the shoulders. He told her to put her head up and said that now was not the time to bend her back. Katrin watched all of this, realized that this man named Han looked outwardly emotionless, and was about to change her mind about him, but Han told the president to make her look like they had a higher reward. Katrina did not expect such a response, and Khan put his hand to his chest and said that he really asks to increase the promised reward by two times and then they will actively support her to solve the problem. Catherine realized that everything was as she thought. Khan was just a stale cracker. Han looked ahead and smiled and realized that it was growth. He didn't come here to be a hero or to show his humanity. He said that he was only interested in the reward and growth he would get if he killed Namgoon Hayek. The president agreed and said that in such a crisis situation, she was too emotional, 
and the creature that appeared in the Shinjuku area is definitely not a standard monster, as they will have to risk their own lives and they promise to double their reward. Afterward, she pointed at Catherine and said that it wasn't just that the situation was hopeless, she said that they had chances too and Catherine Bennett's abilities could make a difference in this battle. She said that she had the power of flame suppression, and if she can touch a stronger opponent than her with her flame, then all of the opponent's stats will drop by 10, and some of their skills will be randomly sealed. Everyone in this room was surprised by this ability, and Catherine squeezed the flame in her sleeve and said that if only I could touch it, it would happen. Han looked down and said that they should create a situation where she would have a chance to use her power on the enemy. After that, they flew to the place by helicopter. The latest news was such an S-rank Chinese hunter Peng Jiwen, who single-handedly went to the Shinjuku area to provide support, had just met challengers from another world. He was standing in front of the opponent who had also appeared from the portal, and they were looking at each other. They didn't move, but they both looked like they were talking to each other. They assumed that such a situation was indeed possible. And as far as they knew, all applicants in the trial could talk to each other regardless of dimension or country. The guy who was sitting in the car asked the other if he was Han Sung Yoon. The guy, on the other hand, smiled and said that he was Peng Jiwen from China. He slapped his hands together and said that he would make him regret looking at the earth dimension so disdainfully. The guy from Mirama went behind his back and said that he didn't understand why the one who was told to show up didn't come, and they showed only bugs around. Peng then made a lunge and punched the guy in the face. He didn't expect this and realized that it was a fist technique. He was curious and opened his eyes. Peng was shocked by what he saw, but a second later there was a huge explosion, which sent up a lot of dust, because of which nothing could be seen. The hunters watched all this from the helicopter, and they realized that the Chinese hunter started acting alone. The situation was far from good, and Han asked Katrin if she would be able to land properly if she was in the air. Katrin said she didn't understand what Han was talking about. Han said that he had one good idea. He said there was a skill called Frequency Jump, and Katrin said it made her immune to all fall damage. Han said that was enough, and if the plan worked, he would be able to hit him hard enough. He said that at this point, K3 would need to activate his power immediately. Han apologized and grabbed Katrin. Katrin was embarrassed and asked what he was going to do. After Han activated the power of steel wings, he jumped off the helicopter and they flew down together. The other guys looked on with a smile, and one of them said that Han went out of his way to do everything on his own. The masked guy said they couldn't just stand there and watch, and then they jumped off the helicopter. Katrin said that Han really was crazy. She asked where it was seen that in such a situation a person would rush into flight without giving any explanation. Han said he was glad that the Chinese hunter had made Namgoon Hayek lose his temper. Katrin wondered if Han was even listening to her. Han said that as soon as it opened, he should immediately use his power. Han released her, and Katrin flew off alone. Namgoon fought against Pan. Pang was tense and his weapon was broken. Namgoon said that he wasn't even able to properly concentrate the Kai energy in his fist, but he used this fist technique. Namgoon hit him with her hand, and he was sent flying far enough away. Namgoon threw a sweeping punch, then stood up and looked ahead. After which, he noticed something approaching from the side. He noticed it and was knocked down by it, followed by a huge explosion. The dust cleared and Namgoon started to get to his feet. His arm was bruised. Han started walking towards him with his sword in hand, and he exhaled. Han said that falling from the real sky was something that could be done twice. Namgoon looked at him and asked who he was. Han smiled and said that he had been looking for him so desperately, and when he met him face to face, he didn't know who it was. The system message said that Ashen's blood skill was activated. Any pain was reduced by 40%. The Khan stood with his sword in his hands. The system message said that if he could survive the skill mastery, Ashen's blood would increase by 20%. Han smiled and said that the guy was looking for him. Namjoon said that he realized who he really was. Han introduced himself to him. The system message said that the will of the sword master Kai was activated. Han's sword began to shine with bright rays, and Namgoon raised his injured hands and said that he was wondering who Han really was. Namgoon said that Han was a weak fool who used a fake Kai sword. After that, he slapped his hands and looked at him with a vicious look, and his hands started to bleed. He said he was incredibly furious. Han asked what was wrong with that, and then he ran towards her, and then he ran towards him with his sword in his hands. He thought that since Namgoon didn't have a weapon, he definitely had to attack. Namgoon raised his arm up and waved it to the side, and the sword that was stuck in the ground flew into his hands. Han was surprised and started fighting and debris flew towards him. Han realized that it was very dangerous and it was very good that he was able to block the attack. The system message said that it was activated on the blood of Ashen. 
Han stretched out his hand and a red field appeared in front of him. He thought they did a lot of damage when they jumped off, but the counter shield and destruction was broken in one attack. Han's lip started to bleed, and he realized that it would be extremely difficult to use it at this rate. Namguno Yu's sword started to shine with bright fire in his hands, and Han wondered if it was a real sword. Namgun was surprised that Han still hoped for his skills from the tower. Hana swung and landed a punch on the ground. He activated the lightning Kai sword skill. The shockwave went towards Namgun, but he easily returned. He looked at the shockwave and when it hit the wall, it exploded violently. After he watched the explosion, two warriors appeared from behind and started swinging. They started throwing punches, but Namgun easily dodged them. He moved to the side, but was surprised when he realized that behind him was a girl who was assembling a sphere in her hand. She dealt a fire suppression strike and directed it at Namgun. This sphere, when used on an opponent, reduced their stats by 10 and blocked some of their skills. There was a huge explosion and Catherine looked forward with hope. She wondered if her will had worked. Yunkuk pointed to the side with his finger and said that he was on top. Namgun was standing in the streetlight, holding his glittering sword. He said that not all insects should not interfere with his fun. His skill began to sparkle more and more, and he said that the instincts of hunters who had been through many battles screamed about it that this attack could not be blocked. He started shouting furiously as his eyes filled with light. He told them all to die and delivered a chopping blow that everyone in the area began to dodge. Together, where he struck, there was a strong beam that blinded everything that was there after someone shook hands with an unknown person. It was a girl and she said it was just a normal mana injection. Han was holding her hand and everything was glowing. Han was surprised by this unusual injection that built a connection. A bond formed between them, their hands held together. The girl said if he could tell the difference. Han looked down at his hand and said that one really didn't feel normal, but two felt like it was inside him. The girl smiled and said that he should do the same with the sword, but not use it in her world. This might not have worked due to admin intervention. Namgun looked at his explosion and was surprised. The system message said that skills and wills were not used through Sword Kai, but through its perception. He used the first Earth Dimension Kai sword, and the Tower of Trials was hit by player Han Sungong. The achievement teamed up with a sword was obtained. Due to the increased mana consumption of the Sword Master's Will Kai, the restriction was lifted. Han held onto the sword realized that it was a completed sword Kai Han looked to the side and asked have you ever seen Katrin alright? She said she was very grateful to him. She said that at that moment, Namgun used an attack of the same strength. They were both monsters. All the hunters looked away and Namgun started laughing with a furious look and said that this is how he should respond. He said he was almost disappointed, and the harder he tried to build the castle, the more fun it was to destroy it. He threw a punch at Han, but Han blocked it. Han was holding back such a strong blow and knew that all the players from other worlds annoyed him, but this one was a real nut. Han bounced back and landed on the ground. He apologized and asked if you hunters could go to a safe place. He said that if he had to defend them again, he wouldn't be able to fully focus on the battle. Kim Soon Hoon said it was a pity, but he was absolutely right. Catherine grabbed his arm, but he wouldn't let her go. He knew that he couldn't help again after the last trials, but when the opportunity came, he would definitely attack. Using the fire plan, they told Han to be careful, and then they started to move back. Han fought Namgun, and they crossed paths. This caused a lot of destruction, and they fought in the air rising higher. After the place where the bird was and everything was calm, a huge explosion rang out, and the warriors who were watching all of this started covering their faces. They understood why Han asked them to step back, as he was fighting alongside him and he was extremely strong, but Kim Soon Hoon said that he felt that Han was a little behind Namgun in his pace. He knew that Han would probably die. Han blocked the opponent's punch and in his head, he thought that he would be able to fight him after upgrading the sword, but everything was even. He recalled a meeting with the receptionist and she said that his swordsmanship was about a rank, but Han at that moment was a rank scene and Jun was looking at him and suppressing him with his joke of energy. Han knew that he should have just forgotten about his skills because his opponent was incredibly strong. Han landed on the ground and Namjoon asked if that was all Han was capable of. Han was a little exhausted and he realized that he had used up too much stamina. He knew that if he got more tired, this battle would be his last action. After which, Katarina threw the potions towards Han. He caught it and knew it was a great opportunity. He opened the potion and looked in surprise, and Namjoon immediately kicked him and the potion fell out of his hands. He grabbed a potion and said he would drink it. The hunters who were standing on the side were shocked and realized that it was necessary to send it to the inventory. Han held onto his body and knew that everything was going badly. Namgoon looked at him with a smile and said that people always hoped for something better and Han was the same. The system message said that his stamina had recovered a bit. Han said that it was okay to fight and if he tried hard, he would eventually be able to defeat him and then he would be able to survive. 
Namgoon was standing there, holding a hand to his face. His body was shaking, and he knew that destroying such thoughts at a time when optimism was turning to despair only made him more happy. He looked at him with an abnormal look and a wide smile. Namgoon continued to dominate Han and continued to hit him, destroying everything around him. He looked ahead and realized that he didn't like it. He knew that the hope in Han's eyes still lingered. He clenched his teeth tighter and threw a strong punch that sent Han flying backwards and bouncing off the ground. He landed in a pile of rocks and tried to stand up, but his body was still shaking. He looked up and saw Namjoon's furious gaze. Namgoon knew Han couldn't move, but somehow his eyes still didn't change and there was still a bit of hope in them. Namgoon threw a punch and told him to feel desperate. He gouged out Han's eyes and blood came out. Khan started shouting loudly and says his eyes were gouged out. He held his hand up to his face and there were cuts all over his eyes. He understood that his stamina was at its limit and if he gathered all his strength, then he would still have the opportunity to launch an attack. But he didn't see anything, this caused a huge amount of problems and the attack definitely wouldn't work now. The opponent started swinging with a furious look. Han clenched his teeth and was in pain. He didn't know what to do. The other hunters immediately rushed towards Han. Han knew that they were going to die if he interfered in this fight. He held out his hand and told them to come to him. Namgoon exhaled and looked at his companions with a big smile and realized that Han wasn't desperate for them yet. Katrin charged a sphere of fire towards her opponent, but he easily got behind her and stabbed her right in the back. The other hunter called out to Katrin, and he immediately rushed towards Namgoon to strike. He missed, and Namgoon landed a blow to the head, sending the hunter crashing into the ground. Han sat there and couldn't see anything. Namgoon took Katrin by the hair and presented her with his sword. He pulled her neck through and she began to gasp. Han started yelling at him to stop, but his opponent said his friends were a little fried. He was laughing like a psychopath and realized that this was the emotion he had been waiting for all this time. The other hunter was invisible, and he approached the enemy to launch an attack. He extended his hand and performed the ice grip skill. Damgoon was surprised that his hand was freezing. He took Catherine and began to lead her to another place. He knew that he had to give her one help or she would definitely be finished. The opponent was angry at the fact that such a pitiful creature was able to stop him. He jerked his arm and almost crashed. He immediately rushed towards them, and the hunter used the Zorb Orb and Katrina was a transparent sphere. He wanted to send him as far away as possible, because that was all he could do in this situation, and then hide somewhere. He used the stealth skill and was about to leave, but Namjoon's hand grabbed his hair and stabbed him in the back. His companions were lying on the ground and couldn't do anything. They were defeated. Han knew that everything was exactly the same as it had been seven years ago. There was nothing he could do right now, but he was in pain. But suddenly a mouse squeaked. A lot of mice started walking towards Han and squeaking. It was an absolute disaster. Countless mice who recognized this battle as a disaster ran to the surface, and on the surface there were ruins all around. Han decided to make his last attack, and he started collecting the souls of all the mice that were there. He absorbed them inside of him, and the entire soul was used to restore his stamina. Namgoon stood and held his hand, one of the hunters who was screaming in pain. He was telling him to calm down. Han absorbed the souls and said that his opponent was a Murim pervert. Namgoon looked to the side while holding his hand and said that it wasn't like that and he liked his emotions so much more. Peng charged all his might into his fist and used a dash. He got close to the opponent with lightning speed and hit him on the body, and the opponent didn't expect anything. The system message said that due to the ability to suppress fire, the stats of those who have touched fire will be lowered and the sword Kai will be blocked for 10 minutes. Everyone except Namgoon was immune to fire. Peng looked at him and said that he was a hero of China and he was still alive. He said he used Catherine's fire. Namjoon glared ahead, his body still burning. He realized that these insects were fighting to the very end. The system message said that he couldn't use sword Kai because it was blocked. We had this one in anger or after raised his hand and said it was a forced measure. Many blades appeared in the sky, and they began to fall to the ground, emitting bright rays. The system message said that due to the unique ability forced battle, a barrier within a 30 meter radius was activated and no one but Han and Namjoon could pass through the barrier. A purple field appeared around them and Han stood silently. Namgoon charged up his attack and charged towards Han. He wondered what a blind fool could do. Han didn't know when all this could have happened. He stood there and dodged the opponent's attack. He realized that his soul eyes could also anticipate attacks. He thought this was the end until the end, but he was able to dodge the attack and felt the enemy around him and everything that was nearby. He could also sense the edges of the barrier. He could see every pebble in his radius. When he realized that he had lost his sight, he began to see something more and realized that he had been using the soul's eyes incorrectly all along. He realized that it was as if he had opened three eyes which he had on his forehead and was watching everything the whole time. The system message said that Han had opened the true eyes of the soul. The soul eye skill has been upgraded to B rank. In this fight, he relied on his senses. The sixth sense skill was the best up to B rank. 
he realized that the sixth sense, which he had completely forgotten about, was able to evolve and improve his senses. The system message said that he was able to survive the battle against the strong swordsman. The demon slayer skill has been upgraded to B rank. In a short time, his body had experienced many dangers, surpassing its physical limits. Ashen's blood skill has been upgraded to B rank. Namgoon looked at it all in surprise, and Han jumped back, swinging his sword. Han opened his eyes, and they shone with a bright red light as he realized that he could now fight the weakened Namgoon Hayek on an equal footing. Namgoon was looking directly at Hana and didn't understand what was going on here. He was unhappy that Han was only getting stronger and his sword was getting sharper. The system message says that the hidden shadow step skill has been activated. Han was in the shadows and his movement speed was increased by 30%. Han swung and started running forward. He activated the instant acceleration skill. The wind blessing skill was also activated. The speed was increased by 70% and the skill usage was 7 sevenths. Han headed forward and activated the chaotic sword skill. The sword attack speed was increased by 20% and the skill usage was 10 out of 10. They crossed their blades and Han, even with all his skills, was lagging behind his opponent. He knew it was too risky. Namgoon stood in front of him, his shoulders burning. Han knew that he would soon run out of steam and his opponent's abilities would soon open up again. He needed to win while the fire was still active, which was about to die down. Han raised his sword and realized that it was possible to change everything in close combat, so he threw the sword towards Namgoon. Namgoon smiled and waved his hand. He said that Khan, being cornered, made a colossal mistake. He aimed a punch at Han, but Han easily bounced back. He looked at the opponent's fist and activated the iron blood sword. Han raised his foot and pushed the sword that appeared in the front. This sword entered the opponent's stomach and Namgoon started coughing up blood. The sword completely pierced him, and he realized that he had hit the Danchen again. He realized that he needed to react faster so that he could recover. At this moment, the suppression of the fire passed and the fire died down from the opponent's body. The unique ability forced battle has been completed. The barrier was removed, and outsiders could interfere. The hunters noticed that the barrier was gone, and Namjoon threw out the sword he had just drawn. He realized that he had played too much and that next time he would put an end to it all. He picked up the return stone and entered the portal. The hunters realized that the gate had just opened and the enemy was trying to return to the world of Muram. Namgoon started walking towards the gate, and at that moment everyone knew that if they didn't kill him now, it would be a disaster for Earth. The hunters stood and realized that they needed to act, then they rushed in his direction to stop him. Namgoon looked back and saw the hunters begin to approach him. He raised his sword and delivered a devastating blow. Katrina was shocked when she saw this and in this entire place where there were ruins, Han managed to run up and use the counter shield skill. The blow was aimed at two points and the shield could not reflect the damage received. Han lost his arm and there was a lot of blood. Katrin called out to Hana and told her about his hand. Han said that it didn't matter right now, since there was an enemy in front of them right now. His body was shaking and Namgoon called out to him. He said that he could have killed him with one hit, and if he wanted to see it through to the end after that. Han said it was disgusting and he had nothing to say. Namgoon went to the portal and said that they would meet soon, and then he was completely gone. Han fell to the ground and the hunters ran up to him. Namgoon entered the portal and was greeted. As soon as he entered, he immediately fell to one knee and started coughing up blood. They asked him if he was okay. After that, the doctor was immediately called. Namgoon was filled with rage, and as he wiped the blood from his face, he thought that he would kill Han at any cost. He was going to make him despair. After this you are transported to another place and there was a huge building, this was the Tokyo hospital. Han opened his eyes, and the girl was surprised to say that he was awake. Han started to get up, and the girl started to help him. Han's body was all bandaged up. He asked where he was now. The girl said he was in the hospital and couldn't move yet. Han looked down at his hand and realized that he was badly injured. The girl bowed and said that she couldn't say anything. Han activated his blood of ashen skill, and his arm grew back immediately. He took off the bandages and looked at his body. It was in perfect order and fully exposed. The girl asked where the others were now. Then he went into Catherine's room and pulled back the curtains. Catherine was sitting on the couch, naked as she was being bandaged up. After that, there was a heavy thud. Yunkuk was walking down the hall when he met Hana. He smiled and asked what had happened to her face. Han's face was red in color and there was a palm print on it. Han told him that he had entered Catherine's room and realized that judging by her strength, she was fine. He asked if he knew where Kim Seung Hoon was. He said he only saw him this morning. He said he was in a bad state right now. Kim Seung Hoon was on the roof right now, and he lost his right arm. Han came to the roof and called out to him. Seung Hoon said that Ghost Sword also came here. Seung Hoon said it was incredible that he healed his hand with his skill. He said that Khan never ceased to amaze. He pointed to his right hand and said that it couldn't be saved. Han said he was sorry. He said that if he was stronger, it definitely wouldn't have happened. 
Seung Hoon told Han not to worry as he had a suitable skill. He used it, and instead of his arm, a sturdy steel arm appeared. He took out a cigarette and Han stood by the roof. It was as if he was only conquering the tower for the sake of strength, as if he was possessed by something. Seung Hoon held a cigarette in his hand and said that it wasn't so bad and he was sure that it made him very strong, but the strong should help the weak, and he believed in that. Han said that he understood a lot after this battle and he forgot something very important. Seung Hoon took off his mask and said it was an incredible relief. He said that such a strong person wasn't the most evil psycho, he couldn't understand what Han was thinking when they first met. Seung Hoon snapped his fingers and secretly lit a cigarette. He asked if Han wanted it, but Na Han refused. Afterward, he was shocked to see Seung Hoon standing there without a mask. His eyes were bright yellow. He looked at me with a smile and said that he had forgotten to introduce himself. After that, we see a lot of people sitting on chairs, and Han was standing with the other hunters. They were filmed on camera, and then Khan gave interviews to other people on camera. Han stood up and held it out to Catherine. Catherine put it around her neck and smiled softly. Instead of waving at each other, Han put on the suit and walked forward. He held out his hand and realized that the tailcoat's design had been improved. He picked up his sword and realized that the pieces of equipment had been cleaned to a high gloss. He realized that from Japan's point of view, he had averted disaster, so this attitude was not out of the ordinary. Han lay down on his bed and realized that the three days he returned to Earth were filled with endless chaos. He didn't want to become so famous. He took out his phone and realized that a video of their battle was already playing. And the shooting took place from a helicopter, the Japanese Association of Hunters. People wrote the following comments. Are all the contenders for that much insanely strong? He's a real hard carry, didn't he basically handle it all by himself? I think I know who this person is. There is one White Lotus training center and he trained there for about 7 years. Many comments were surprised by Khan. Someone wrote that Han was really damn good at fighting and the person thought that such skills were enough to be called a ghost sword. After that, Han understood why he was called that. He never expected that Kim Seung Hoon himself would be the Lightning Emperor. Kim Seung Hoon really was, and even among the 30s rank hunters, he was rightfully the strongest among them. He defended the portal with a speed that other S rank hunters couldn't even dream of. He was standing on top of a mountain and many hunters were delighted with him. He was a true hero of Korea. Zing Hong reached out to Han and said that if he needed Han's help in the future, then let him call him at any time and he would be honest. He said he would like to recruit him. He said that Khan could have contacted him for any personal matter or for any other reason. The system message wrote that time and glass and Han, while sitting on the bed, realized that he needed to become stronger to earn the nickname of Sword Ghost. Han Sen looked ahead with a smile and the system message said that he was returning to the testing tower. Han knew it was time and set off. He found himself on a bed in the waiting room and the system message said that the entrance to the waiting room on the 11th floor had been made. Han realized that he had learned some lessons from his fight with Namgoon Hayek. He opened a shop and it was about his stamina. He realized that Ashblood was a recovery skill that boasted excellent efficiency among his current skills. He imagined the moment of battle when his arm was cut off and realized that this skill would not activate if his stamina was completely at zero. Han's gaze changed, and he became serious. He realized that it was time to acquire new skills that would allow him to instantly restore his stamina. Han started running his finger across the screen and realized that all the skills looked pretty good. He realized that the best way to deal with his doubts while shopping was to buy everything that was available. He bought the automatic stamina recovery skill, which automatically restored 0.07 of his total life every 180 seconds. 15,000 points were deducted from his account. He also bought the Moonlight Absorption skill. The description was that when exposed to Moonlight, the base ability restored lives and increased them by 100%. 10,000 points were deducted from his account. He also bought the skill of Absorbing Sunlight. The description was as follows, when erecting sunlight, the base ability to restore lives increased by 100%. 10,000 points were deducted from his account. He also bought excessive growth. The description was as follows. All stamina recovery options have been increased by 70%. 20,000 points were deducted from his account. He also bought tickets to the train station covered in blood. When a user absorbed the blood of a creature they killed, their physical vitality was greatly restored in proportion to the amount of blood. 20,000 points will be deducted from his account. Han looked at it all and realized that he had accumulated enough points to afford all these necessary and strong enough skills. He activated skill synthesis and was asked to select a material for synthesis from the currently available skills. He realized that he would first start synthesizing the most compatible skills. He chose to absorb sunlight and also absorb moonlight. Skill synthesis was completed and he created photosynthesis. The proficiency of this skill was at zero and the effect when exposed to moonlight or sunlight was such that the base life recovery ability was increased by 200%. The user could also absorb mana through light. 
Han realized that this was great and his rank had increased, as well as the strengths of the two skills well intertwined. Afterward, he realized that he should have added the Call of Blood to the mix for more effect. He added Photosynthesis and the Call of Blood. The skill synthesis was completed, and he created the Blood Contract skill. The skill's proficiency was at zero, and the effect was like this. Vitality, stamina, and mana could be extracted from a creature's blood, and this only applies to creatures killed directly by the user. Han realized that he had failed this time, and that the power of photosynthesis had not increased, and that the benefits of photosynthesis had simply disappeared. After which, he bought the Call of Blood skill and deducted 20,000 points from his entire account. He decided that he would buy the same skill again and it would be done from the end, because in any case, he still had a lot of points in his account. He decided to try connecting the blood contract with the blood hall. The skill synthesis was completed, and he created a new skill. Han was surprised when he created the blood seeker skill of rank B skill was at zero, and the base effect was like this. Life force, stamina and magical energy can be extracted from the blood of a living creature and gain a powerful blood management ability. Additional effects, all the blood that flowed out of the user's body was automatically gradually restored at regular intervals. Han put it all into practice and realized that he could now extract life force, stamina, and mana from the blood. I wondered if he could control the blood. He took his sword and cut his hand. He extended his hand forward and drops of blood began to rise up, and Han could control them completely. Han smiled and realized that he was now able to control the blood in the truest sense of the word. He realized that he could shape absolutely any shape of his blood. He created a ball first, and then a dagger. He stretched out a finger that was bleeding, decided to try something like that. He started controlling his blood, and it started coming out of his finger. He realized that now he didn't even have to wear a cut to draw his blood out. He realized that he would still have to cut if he needed too much blood. Think about this skill and thought that this skill would be very useful to him. After that, all he had to do was refine the Eye of Truth. The skill synthesis was completed and a new skill was created, this is the Eye of the Fire Dragon. Skill was at zero, and the base effect was the power of the fire dragon, which dwelled in the eyes, allowing it to see invisible things. An additional effect was that he could see information about things through the eyes of a dragon and become able to determine the identity of another person. He activated the fire dragon eye skill and his gaze was filled with blue rays. The system message said that the Count's old tailcoat was a vampire. The user could also create a blood shield by consuming stamina or blood. His body was completely covered in aura and the speed dog's mana-filled acceleration period would be increased. He realized that these were phrases that he hadn't seen before. He looked at his sword and a system message was written by the Blood Heavenly Demonic Blade. When a user who had reached the Flame Sword stage maximized their blood energy effect, the blade's true ability was unlocked. He recalled the battle with his opponent and realized that the Flaming Sword was what Namjoon Hayek was able to use to destroy an entire area of Shinjuku. He recalled the sword and realized that only those who had reached the flaming sword stage could awaken the truth and ability of the blood heavenly demonic blade. Han just thought that it was quite a good sword, but he couldn't even imagine that it had such a strong ability hidden in it. He reached out and decided to continue conquering the Tower of Trials. The system message wrote that the entrance to the 11th floor of the Tower of Probation was carried out. The difficulty was high, and the topic of this test was checking the instant time remaining was 7 days. The condition for successful completion of the test is to break through all 7 gates within the allotted time. The condition of failure to pass the test was equal to the death of the applicant or the expiration of the allotted time. The reward for a successful breakthrough was an ancient verification mirror. The penalty for failure was death. Han Sen looked ahead and someone stood in front of him. He welcomed the Khan to this temple. Han did not understand that this was a temple and the man who stood on one leg with his hands folded in front of him said that from now on he would pass through the test given by the god of verification. And these tests would continue until his death, and since despite the fact that he was a simple adventurer, he decided to pass through the Han looked at the man and asked him what he was supposed to do to get through the first gate. The man asked really, Han didn't know the rules of the trial of the seven supreme gods of Ares. Han said that he didn't know and thought that this was the same Ares dimension that the Black Knight had come from, invading his trials on the fifth floor. The man said that he had no idea what when such a stupid and tourist even drifted to this place. He said there was nothing he could do about it, he would have to explain everything. He said it was a test of body, faith and spirit. He said that at the beginning there was a body, and at the very end, and they don't get to the most difficult part it's a mental test. The man said that it was very difficult to break through the gate. The Khan listened intently, and the man said that a high priest would be waiting for him in every testing room, and the Khan must convince them or kill them. All he had to do was move to the next room. Han said that on July 1st, he just needed to break through the gate no matter what. The man smiled and said that he had given him enough information, so he thought Han would be able to draw the following conclusions on his own. The man said that they were getting started, then jumped up high and went to the first test. 
He flew up to Han and stabbed him. Han extended his hand, and they made contact with their fists. Han realized that this kind of strength was quite enough to become a contender who qualified as a pioneer who passed all the high difficulty tests. Hanu reached back and activated the blood seeker skill. He squeezed the blood out of his finger and pointed it like a gun at the man. Blood shot out of his fingers like a bullet and hit him squarely in the head. The man fell down and Han, lowering his hand, realized that it was just an incredible skill. He thanked the man for the explanation and then he absorbed the spirit of Priest Johan. His skill was increased by 5.8%. The administrator priest of the seven gods was shocked by his outrageous behavior, somehow accidentally saw this scene. Even the godslayer swordsman nodded approvingly at his inhumane and cruel actions. The hero hero of the ruined world looked at Hana and praised her for showing an interesting sight. The divinity seeker administrator said that he had nothing to worry about because he handled the inspection flawlessly. Han calculated all of this and realized that if the administrator's actions were taken into account, then he believed that he had attracted enough of their attention because this test was related to God. A system message wrote that Administrator Lord Steelblood was shocked by his actions. The White Crane Sword Administrator was upset that Han had gone to the trials without saying a word about it. Han didn't even know how to contact the administrators. He walked over to the man and took the item. It was a mirror that shone brightly. The administrator priest of the seven gods was watching Han's actions. The main hero of the ruined world admired his greed. The godslayer swordsman administrator nodded as if he understood him completely. Han used the fire dragon skill and blue smoke came out of his eyes. The system message wrote that the C-plus rank high priest's divine mirror was a mirror that high priest Johan imbued with his divinity on a daily basis. The user could only use this divinity to create a divine account once. Creating a divine account could shake his mentality. Han realized that this was where the basic information ended, and after that, a phrase that could only be seen through the fire dragon's eye was revealed. The system message wrote that it was possible that the divine power contained in the mirror might have prompted the user to prove their fate. Han held the mirror in front of him and didn't understand what it meant to awaken the user to prove their fate. He thought it could be considered a one-time protective barrier. He walked forward and leaned his hand against the wall. He would like to get more of something during the body check. Han opened the door and didn't expect that he was a tourist who didn't know how fast he would get to this place. The girl sat on the throne and looked at him. She assumed that Johan's glory days were over. She had blonde hair and was dressed in luxurious clothes. Han was standing in front of her, shrapnel flying around. The girl gave him a serious look and called out to the adventurer. She grabbed the desk and introduced herself. She was the priestess who was in charge of Jane's second trial. She threw a chair right in Han's direction and said it was a pleasure to meet him. Han caught the chair with his hand and said that if she used violence, it was really a test of his body. The girl ran forward and jumped. She put her hands behind her head and said bullseye. Jane quickly drew her sword and slashed right in front of Sun's face, and he was able to dodge. Then he dodges another blow, noticing that this Kai energy is similar to the one he used earlier. He looked at her with a twinkle in his eye, and then, he activated his Sword Master Kai power and Lightning Sword Kai. After that, he swung his sword in the air so that a wave of mana from the sword flew straight at Jane. She was shocked that this mana was flying straight at her, so she stood there with her mouth hanging open. Blood was flying everywhere, and Jane herself was leaning against the wall, leaning on her sword and saying that only an ordinary adventurer possessed a complete aura. Song, holding a sword that glowed with a blue aura in front of him, replied to her, since she was able to use it, what was stopping him from doing the same? She said that the divine power bestowed by the god of verification. Priests receive this power and use it. She was still leaning on her sword, looking tired. But she continued to say that even so, she was just a little surprised that a guy who didn't even have a hint of divine power possessed such a powerful swordsmanship technique. Song pondered over the words that he had a divine technique, and she instantly healed her injured hand, and she started attacking him again, jumping high, while Dream continued to think that divine power always reaches the target and probably it should have been a fatal blow. Song was able to parry her blow, so that she was sent flying back after the blow, and then Song asked that according to the priest, in order to break through the gate, there is no mandatory need to kill the priest, and asked her opinion if he is sufficiently convincing in his actions. Jane smiled and looked at him with excitement, saying that she didn't even know, because most likely it would be possible if he acted as if he was not inferior to God in anything. Song was looking at her, and the suit was too tight by the way, and he asked that after checking the body, how many more gates would he have to go through? Her eyes lit up with anger, so she said that the more she listened to him, the more brazen he seemed, that she thought he was too relaxed, that he thought he had already won. So she threw herself at him with sparks in her eyes and shouted that he could only ask such questions after he had defeated her. Her pink sword flies at Sun, and he stands there in silence. She then activates her instant acceleration skill and knocks the sword out of her hands. After knocking out the sword, he immediately grabbed her by the arms and pushed her against the wall, and then looked at her with a very serious look and said that he won. 
She was displeased and shouted out how he was able to do this, and Song, still holding her, replied that as she had promised, she should now tell him everything about the verification process. Then she looked at him with a very confused look and asked him if he was going to take her by force or something. The three receptionists watched this and waited for Sung's response, looking at him with narrowed eyes. But Song only said that he wasn't into something so terrible. Jane calmed down and left. Then the three administrators calmed down too and started to trust Sanu more. But his gaze was still very serious and he asked if there was anyone who would take such a step, having managed to reach such a level. Jane asked him if he really thought so, because he was too strong for an adventure, but one way or another, she would fulfill her promise and share the information about the test with him. She began to tell the story, imagining a picture of seven painted people, and said that now he has two body tests left, and the test of faith will start at the fifth gate and end at the sixth. Dream asked her what happens, the mentality check is carried out only at the seventh gate, and she replied that it is. While he was holding her hands, she said that before he challenged the seventh gate, she would advise him to think about giving up once. Dream asked why that was, and she replied with a mad look that no one had passed through the seventh gate yet, everyone who entered it went crazy or died in agony, bleeding to death. Dream activated the fire dragon eye skill to see if she was lying, but it turned out that she wasn't. She was smiling and had a blank look on her face, saying that this was the end of her life, and as a final word, she wanted to say that she had enjoyed fighting for a long time. Dream slowly said that if there was a way to pass the gate without killing the priests, then she should tell him, and she replied that with his current abilities, it was impossible. At the same time, he asked her if she was afraid of death, and she with a very crazy look, and even joy on her face, shouted that she was not afraid at all, because in any case, even if she died, she would only be next to God. At the same time, Dream killed her with his sword, and her blood flew everywhere. In his mind, the longer he put it off, the more disgusting he would feel. Then, he absorbed her spirit, thus increasing his skill by almost 9%. Sleep went on as the blood mist flowed out of him and he was in a terrible mood. But then, he opens the door in front of him, and there was a man with a sword, which he leaned on. Then the man started to raise his sword and pointed it directly at Sun. He stood in front of him and said that his name was Resilient, and he was the one who would become the sword that the god of verification would wield. The sword was still pointed at Sun but it was starting to glow, and Resilient added that from now on, he would be testing his martial arts skills, so he had to prove to him that he was worthy to enter the next gate. Resilient raised his sword up, then covered it completely with fire as he cast the spell, or a blade. Song noticed this and opened his eyes wide, which reflected the fire, and then he tilted his head and realized that although the stage was not stable, it was clearly a flaming sword. Resilient's sword shone more and more. Song started giving his sword mana, so it also shone and he was thinking that he had to deal with the flaming sword in the third trial, so it was likely that he would have to risk his life now. And at that moment, he charged at Resilian, and their swords created a bright flash as they collided. Song instantly dodged his attack, and something about this fight seemed strange to him. Song looked at him with a confident gaze and reflected that not only were his stats related to his physical abilities, but also the power coming from the sword was clearly inferior to his own power. Resilian charged at Sun again. But Song was adept at fending off his fiery attacks, and he couldn't believe that it was his Kai energy that was the loser. Then he remembered the Nam gun Hayek he was fighting and thought that after seeing how Goon used the flame sword earlier, he certainly thought it was a high-level sword skill. Perhaps it was because Nam gun Hayek was simply too strong, and the so-called flaming sword might not just be a high-level sword skill. Song noticed something, so he kept a close eye on Resilient. And every time he tried to break his sword, all of his Kai energy seemed to shatter into small fragments, and the tip of the sword shone like the sun. Song then looked up and realized that no matter how much he attacked, only his Kai energy was affected. So he just started dodging Resilian's punches. Then, after walking a long distance away, Resilian started to approach Sun, saying that no matter how strong his aura was, he still wouldn't be able to break this sword. After all, only the true one can break it. Resilian stood holding the sword with both hands and was very serious, and then continued that the true one is the one who is able to deal with what is invisible to the eye. Song stood up and began to ponder over his words, realizing that even though he was weaker than him, he could still wield a flaming sword. Song was really angry, so much so that a vein was sticking out on his cheek, and he thought that it was like someone who did worse in school but passed the exams with the best result. Song clenched his sword handle in his fist and thought that since he said that you need to deal with something that is invisible to the eye, well, in that case, he will definitely break this sword. And right after that, he launched an attack on Resilian. He struck the sword blow by blow, and shouted that he would break the sword. Resilian also strikes at Sun, who dodges them, and then Resilian says that only someone who can handle the invisible creates a sword that pierces all things. But Dream just kept hitting the flaming sword. Resilian added that this is how he gives birth to a magic blade called Aura with Absolute Power. 
And at that moment, Dream swung his sword, with glowing eyes and thoughts that he would break the sword. And then, in another blow, he breaks the sword and pierces Resilian, and the latter is in complete shock, as it happened. Song, who was covered in blood, thought that this was the difference between the released Kai energy and the flaming sword. He picked up his sword and placed it in front of him, and the sword glowed with energy, and Dream continued to think that the principle of activating the flame sword was willpower that was dense enough to be expressed in actual physical strength. There was a huge pool of blood on the floor, it was the old man who spat blood out of his mouth, he was wiping his mouth and laughing. Then he held out his hand to Sung and was genuinely happy, saying that it wasn't the imperfect flame sword borrowed from the god of verification, but the real one. He's glad that Song really did make it, and Song didn't know what he was so happy about. Sleep stood facing him and reflected that he was more interested in the achievements of others than in his own death. He understood that he seemed to have a mission of his own, but he didn't know if it was faith or madness. Resilian held out his trembling hand to him and said that he knew the whole point at once, and this fact makes his heart flutter with bliss. He believes that Dream has passed the test of his martial arts. Resilian bowed his head, and through his tears, he said that Sun should continue in this spirit. And then he began to say his last words, but the Dream instantly cut off his head, sparing him the torment, and saying that he would not feel pain. Then, a blood mist began to enter his chest, and it was the mist from Resilian, and his skill increased by 14%. The notice said that the mastery of his unique attribute, necromancy, has reached 100%, so now the rank of this unique attribute increases by one level. Now necromancy is level B. Song looked ahead enthusiastically and wondered what kind of ability would be added to his arsenal this time. Then, he started to look at the notification that says that additional effects, when absorbing the soul of a stronger opponent, then after evaluation, he can get the ability to extract power. Song was very happy to look ahead with a spark in his eyes, thinking about this skill, because every time a necromancer raises a level, new skills never disappoint. He stood proudly as the sparks of fire spread around him, and he knew that this was only B rank, and huge opportunities were already revealed, and he was very curious to know what was waiting for him at the ANS ranks. Then he opened the status window, and after reading what was written there, he reflected that even the stats were already close to three digits, and when he was studying, wanting to become a hunter, he considered it something unattainable. He then decides to absorb all three souls that he has absorbed before. Song stood and looked down as his stats grew, his strength increased by 8 points, his agility increased by 6 points, his stamina increased by 7 points, and his mana increased by 8 points, as well as his stamina increased by 9 points. By increasing his rank, he had absorbed one of the skills that Resilian possessed. This is a skill of indomitable will that increases strength due to the fact that the opponent is stronger than the user. Then the dream began to go somewhere, and as he passed the broken mirrors where Jane was standing, he opened another door. Suddenly, he saw something behind the door, which surprised him very much. It was that in front of him was a completely empty hall that had no one in it. Dream began to look at the details, not understanding how it was that no one was there. When suddenly a guy with wings appeared above his head, an angel who said that Resilian had left this mortal world, and the Dream did not expect such an appearance. Angel crossed his arms and looked sleepy, adding that he expected the situation to go against his expectations. Four notifications appeared in front of Sun, in which the administrators warned him that he was facing a real opponent, so he should not be arrogant. Song started swinging his sword, and the angel flew back, saying that apparently the dream is not going to waste time on empty conversations. And with a blank look, he said that then they should start testing the fourth gate. The angel spread his wings so that a wind current appeared in a circle and introduced himself, his name is Chiron, a candidate for the apostles, and from now on, following the law of verification, he will begin to check his body. Notifications appeared in front of Sun again, which said that he was facing a strong opponent, which, as a user, would be difficult for him to cope with, so the indomitable will skill was activated. Dream was very wary and thought that the huge power of the energy that does not go to any comparison with the one that the previous priests had. Kirin magically picked up the glass dagger, then threw it directly at Sun. This glass developed such a speed that it was like a huge laser beam. And the Dream still managed to dodge it. But suddenly, this laser beam started bouncing off the mirrors behind Sung and flew straight at his back. Song was very scared, so he activated the fire dragon eye skill and knocked the glass away. But when he turned around, with magic in his eyes, he thought that these rays were reflected in mirrors and very annoying. Song leapt from the ground directly at Kirin, thinking that he should attack him before he could endlessly attack him with those beams. Song leaped and swung his sword. But Kirin started flapping his wings, so much so that the dream tumbled backwards. Kirin immediately took out another dagger that shone bright yellow and attacked Sun, but he was able to block the blow. Song realized that he now sensed a flaming sword. Then Kirin flew up again. Ah Song looked at him with a concentrated gaze and thought that this was probably his guaranteed method of winning. 
Dream imagined it as it was before, that he was standing with the beam flying straight at his back, and he began to unravel his tactics that Kirin attacks with the beam from a distance. Even if the enemy dodges the beam, the mirrors installed around the perimeter reflect the beam at an angle where the enemy has a blind spot. In close combat, it uses its wings to create a gust of wind to disrupt the opponent's sense of balance, and then counterattacks with a flaming sword. Dream dodged its beam and then flew away from its wings, and didn't understand why it had such a bad pattern. And then Dream blocked the flaming sword strike, knowing that despite the small-mindedness of the scheme, it would also be quite difficult to deal with the mirrors in a hurry. After all, breaking into smaller fragments, the mirrors will further split that beam, so it will be simply impossible to evade all of them, although it may be possible with the Eye of the Fire Dragon. Three notifications appeared in front of Sun, in which the administrators doubt Kieran's strength, they believe that he is just wasting his time, and the third administrator even wondered how Sun would die. The Dream saw this and was silent, but thought about this question. Then two more notifications popped up, where the admins were excited about Sun's actions. He confidently clenched his sword fist and realized that the administrators weren't worried about him at all. Kieran took the piece of glass in his hand again, then looked directly at Sung and said that it wasn't going to be easy for him this time, so he had to try hard. Kieran made four pieces of glass that had already turned into rays. They flew around the room, bouncing off the mirrors. And in the end, all four beams flew straight at Sun. After they hit it, there was a strong explosion. The notification said that charging was complete, and Kieran was scared, so he opened his eyes wide. Dream put up his counterattack shield, which reached the maximum limit of damage absorption. Dream said, release, with a confident look in his eyes. With these words, a bright red beam instantly shot out from the shield, which contained all the accumulated damage. And that beam pierced right through Kieran. Blood flowed from his mouth, and he was in shock. Kieran's mouth was covered in blood, and he gasped as he asked who he was, because he clearly didn't have any traces of magic training if he was using the power of a god. Song stood and looked at him, saying that he had no idea what this power of God was. Kieran, still flying in the air, but with a hole in his chest, said that he didn't run away from the battlefield and didn't lose the battle, so in accordance with the law of verification, they announced that all physical checks are completed. Kieran began to fall to the ground, saying that he recognized his victory, and that he passed the test. Dream started absorbing the blood mist from Kieran, so his skill level increased by almost 9%. The notification said that when absorbing a spirit stronger than the user, a power extraction score is made. After the assessment was successful, it was confirmed that Kieran was stronger than Sung, and therefore strength would be extracted from him, and Sung was a little surprised to see all this. Then, a golden circle appeared in front of him, and the notice said that the divine power was engraved on Han Sung Yun's soul. Dream looked at this circle and thought about this power, so it turns out that we are talking about the power that the local priests use like mana. He started to bring his palm directly to his heart, thinking that he felt like some kind of energy had entered his heart. Only it wasn't circulating at all, and the ways of controlling divine power and mana were obviously very different from each other. They wrote that the two administrators were at a loss as to how the divine power had entered Siang's heart, since there wasn't a single trace of God on it. Dream had read their messages while in the blood mist, and he felt that having divine power was something extremely significant and then he absorbed the spirit of priest Kirin, thereby increasing his stats. Strength increased by 4, agility and agility increased by 3, mana increased by 4, and stamina increased by 5. The dream passes through another door, looks ahead and hears a greeting. An elderly man was standing there, saying that a dream is someone who is caught up in the madness of martial arts. Song stood in front of him, pondered what it meant to be caught up in a martial arts frenzy, and then asked what he meant. Grandpa bowed his head and said, victory and victory again isn't his goal to grow endlessly to become the strongest. Song looked at him and thought that it was true that he wanted to become stronger by continuing to grow, but wasn't he exaggerating too much when he said that he wanted to become the strongest? Grandpa was at his side in the blink of an eye and replied that he wasn't exaggerating, but simply stating the conclusion he would come to at the end. Song was very scared, so he immediately started to turn around and strike with his sword, but there was no one there. And after the blow, he noticed that the old man was standing on his head and said that Sun shouldn't get so excited because this gate doesn't check his body. And then, in the blink of an eye, he also got off his head and continued that the test of faith was waiting for him here. Dream continues to strike with his sword, and then he gets angry because the old man's movements are beyond imagination. The dream started to go crazy, imagining so many of these old men behind it and thinking that it had penetrated right into his mind. Han started reaching out to Xiangwu, and then they grabbed him, and he thought that the power had completely left his body. Hands began to grab at his face, but he was grinning and trying to get out. But in the end, those hands were pulling him towards the old man's mouth. And at some point, the old man just ate Sun. And then, with his usual face, he said that this is how it tastes after all. Sleep started to come back from that space a little bit, being confused. 
The old man said he passed. Ha Song turned around with his eyes full of surprise and asked how he got through, what he was even talking about, and the old man added that he said that the fifth gate was passed by him. Song was standing in front of the old man, and the old man told him that he could go to the next gate, and Song asked how it happened. The old man began to explain that the fifth gate originally began with the contemplation of mental images, meaning in other words, only those with an unshakable will would have the right to look into their own world of images. The old man was filled with terror, but he didn't show it and said that he felt this unshakable will in him, this fierce will to cut the throat of anyone to become stronger. Then the old man raised his hand and added that he felt very clearly that desire to kill and become even stronger, all these feelings are hidden in the depths of his consciousness. Song stood and listened to him as he told him that if he wanted to, he could kill him, a feeble old man, but let him do it faster, because fortunately, he would be able to find himself in the arms of God before the old man's problems hit him. The old man pulled his hands up, but then he was surprised, because Song said that he wouldn't do it. Then the old man asked why. Song looked at him with a sword in his hand and said that he had already said that the test was passed, so he didn't see the point in killing a person without any reason, so why would he ask about something so obvious? The old man looks ahead with his eyes closed and says that this is really an unexpected turn. But then Song got scared, so he swung his sword at the old man while he was saying that he thought Song would have made it even if he had officially granted him the fifth gate test, but he decides to repeat that Song passed this test. The old man tapped Sanu on the shoulder, telling him to move on. Dream began to move forward, and the old man wished him to successfully pass all the stages of the test. Dream was walking forward and noticed something. He walked into the darkness, and then, standing in the void, he thought that the surface of the mirror was swallowed up by darkness, and soon he found himself in a void where there was not a glimmer of light. Suddenly, a girl whispers in Sanu's ear. Song was very scared, so he immediately started swinging his sword. He was trying to look for her in the dark, and he thought they'd started checking again. The girl replied that everything is so, because he is already in the world of mental images. Song started to grin as he was very angry. A small sprout appeared on its back, and she noticed that the priest Henir had planted the seed so that it could enter the world of mental images. Sun put his hand on that seed and remembered the old man that it was his name Henir, and the girl said that he guessed right. Then, in the blink of an eye, sleep was wrapped in strange ropes, and the girl was hanging next to him, telling him not to worry too much, because she would take good care of his physical body. This girl was looking at the sleeping sun. Dream was in a dark space and thought that her words on the contrary made him more nervous. The girl held a knife to his throat and said that people are so cruel, and why did he even allow such a rude comment about the girl? Because if she only wanted to, his neck would be pierced through. Song was starting to get a little worried, so he mentally asked her how he should get his faith tested now. The girl started laughing and said that he suddenly became so polite, and this is even cute, and decided to explain to him. The moon was shining in the middle of the void, and she was saying that the space he was currently in was the world of his mental images, here he just needed to be able to see his own world of mental images. Once he has completed the task, the sixth gate will be completed. Dream decided to ask what it means to be able to see your own world of mental images. He was blindfolded, and the girl said that the world of mental images of a person largely depends on his beliefs, and it is created on their basis. However, no one can contemplate this spectacle, because the world of mental images is like when you close your eyes, a person sees only a solid black curtain. Dream stood in the middle of a sea, thinking that this was her way of saying that he needed to be able to see the essence of this world of mental images where there was nothing. The girl was standing right above him, being a hundred times bigger than him and said that he had hit the nail on the head, and then introduced herself. Her name is Eileen, and she announces the beginning of the sixth test. So sleep began to fall into the very sea on which it had been able to stand. And so he fell deeper and deeper. He was falling down, holding his breath and panicking. Eileen went to his body and asked him that he was surprised, because the pain is similar to the real one. Then she added that he needed to find a solution to this problem as soon as possible, or otherwise. After saying this, she approached him with malicious eyes and continued, saying that he would be drowning without any water around. Sung's body started to glow, which made her wonder, but he just activated the serene mind power skill. Dream was in the water, and thanks to this skill, he can't lose his composure, and he realized that this is much better, because as long as he is not prone to panic, then he can hold his breath underwater. Song stared at his fingers and moved them, realizing what was more important was that for a moment he seemed to feel a tingling sensation in his fingertips. He was looking ahead, and Eileen said that his willpower was really impressive, because she did not expect that he would not only break out of the bonds of mental images, but also be able to move his body. She held her neck to cover the cut and thought that sleep was able to protect itself even on an unconscious level. Song was holding a sword in his hands and stabbed her, and she didn't understand what kind of person he was at all and decided to keep it a secret that his actions almost left her without a head on her shoulders. Dream, being in the water, began to twist his hand, realizing that he was gradually beginning to feel his body. 
Eileen was a little surprised and even sweated, saying that in the world of mental images, he should not feel anything, and in general, in just two hours, he was able to completely regain control of his body. What kind of monster is he? Sleep's eyes widened at the words, and he couldn't believe it had been two hours, but it hadn't been more than a minute since he'd been here. The girl replied that in reality time moves much faster than in the world of mental images. Sleep almost let the air out of his lungs at these words, and he knew that it was very dangerous, because if he spent most of the remaining seven days in these six gates, he might die from the penalty for failing the test. Dream in the middle of the ocean began to move, thinking that he needed to see the world of mental images as soon as possible. Song activated his eye skill, thinking that since he was able to feel his body again by using the power of serene mind, it means that activating the eye skill is also possible. Siok spread out his arms and activated the fire dragon eye skill, so that all the water turned red. The water around him began to recede, and he began to see everything. He was looking up, and there was a huge water column that was colored red. Dream looked out over these waters and wondered if he should call what he saw a sea of blood. Eileen held her head, shouting that it was impossible. How did it happen? Why did the world of mental images open up? And then she was so shocked at all, because there were steel wings on Sung's back. She was sweating profusely and asked what exactly a human being was, why did he have steel wings on his back? And Dream just flew up from that ocean as he used his steel wings skill. It flew so fast that footprints appeared behind it. The entire planet was made up of this red water, and Dream thought that this was his world of mental images, which he saw with the help of the eyes of a fire dragon. Although he doesn't have a single clue what that means at all, the surrounding environment looks extremely sinister and worrisome. Dream flew in the midst of the red swords. He saw one of these swords next to him and reached for it. He grabbed that sword, and it glowed with a red aura. And after all that, he landed on the ground, leaving a bright trail behind him. Song looked ahead with a confident gaze, and then he noticed that Aileen was standing in the distance and was scared, so he asked if this was all his doing. Aileen didn't understand why her world looked like this. Three notifications in which administrators were happy that Sleep was finally able to wake up, and someone was even surprised that Sleep woke up so early. Dream just stood there and dusted off the dust, asking what it was that he was able to pass the faith test, but how does this have anything to do with faith? Aileen leaned in, saying that the test of faith is the way to recognize yourself. Dream asked her again. She imagined him saying that he was standing in front of a mirror, and then she said it was amazing that people didn't really understand what they believed, and they never even tried to think about what they believed. The goal of testing this gate was to encounter a world of mental images created through the processes of faith, thought, and action. Dream began to move forward, and she continued to say that Dream would overcome his pathetic past and become stronger without losing his humanity. This is what she read in his mental image world, it's all very simple. But even with such simple desires and thoughts, staying true to them at the same time is another story. Ha Song started to open the door with his hands, and after opening it, a bright light shone, and Eileen wished him luck. Walking on some bridge in the void, he was told that he had entered the seventh gate. Some bright substance hovered in the void that sleep looked at and the irises of his eyes began to shimmer with rainbow color. He was looking up, and that stuff was looking at him, and the notice said that God was watching him personally, and he immediately remembered the words that no one had ever managed to pass through the seventh gate before. Song immediately dropped to one knee, not understanding what was happening. The God was still looking at him, and the notice still said that his gaze was directed at Han Sung Yoon. Song was scared, so his breathing was very heavy. Dream began to close his eyes, thinking that he was beginning to feel sleepy, and then came to his senses, realizing that it was more like a situation where, faced with something insurmountable, the body turns to stone and completely refuses to take any steps to survive. He imagined the snake and mouse situation. Song then began to breathe even harder, breaking out in sweat and realizing that an eye had just appeared in front of him, unless it was a god. He began to grin, shouting that he would never give up again. He remembered sitting under the window, covering his ears and watching his parents being eaten. He was crying with madness and fear, so it gave him motivation, so he was able to stand up and start shouting while raising his sword up. And he instantly pierced through his palm, activating the Ashblood skill, thereby reducing all types of pain caused to the user by 17%. He continued to shout with a spark in his eyes, and he decided that he would not stand there helplessly and watch as he was trampled on. Then, he pulled the sword out of his hand and thought about how he lived to break through any ordeal that befell him. He put the sword away, and blood flew after it, and his arm began to heal, and he was sure that this training place was built on this principle. And he began to walk toward God, covered in sweat, not knowing if he would ever be able to sever that pupil. Then he started running at the God while the God was looking at him, but he decided that if there was even a small chance, if he could get even one more centimeter closer to him, then the blow would be dealt. Song started swinging, his face full of determination and he threw a punch that sent a wave of mana flying towards the god. This wave flew straight at the eye, 
but then when it got close to the god, it just disappeared. Sleep was very tired and did not believe in everything that was happening to him now. God was looking at him, and sung Woo wrote a notice that the verification god was happy to see the challenger with such high spiritual power after a long time, the verification god would tell him to prove himself by looking into his confident eyes. Dream stood under it and was surprised. The notice said that the god of verification remembered the existence of the challenger Han Sung Yoon, and these words made him very surprised about it, so he stood there with his eyes wide open. The eye began to slowly disappear, and the god himself announced the beginning of the trials of the seventh gate. The god just disappeared, and the dream stood on the edge of the bridge. He looked down as the sweat dripped off him and realized that the god of verification had disappeared. Did the so-called god really exist? A mirror appeared in front of Sun. He walked over to it, and in the mirror was his reflection, but already in the future, and the notification wrote that he should establish contact with himself in the future and start sinking. Song touched the mirror with his finger, and then a bright light appeared in front of him, which surprised him. The notification said that the mentality check is starting, so the rate of assimilation with him inside the mirror is slowly increasing. And the mirror began to engulf Sun. Then two notices said that he should prove that his beliefs will not change in the future. Dream was surprised by this again. And then he fell into some temple with vintage windows. A guy with blue hair was sitting in front of him, looking around. This guy was crying and looking for his mirror. Behind Sun, the space started to close up a little. He turned around and saw that the space was really starting to close up. He looked at it with sparks in his eyes, and then he appeared in the middle of the city and recognized the place, it was South Korea, and it was Christmas. Then he saw himself in the future and didn't understand what was going on. Then he flew to the future self and saw that he was cutting his hands. Dream was very scared from what he saw and did not understand what he was going to do now. All the people around them began to writhe in pain, because right from them alive, a bloody mist was coming out, along with their souls. Dream started yelling at him, and the notification wrote that the rate of assimilation with him inside the mirror is forcibly increased to 10%. Song clutched at his chest, writhing in pain. He bared his teeth, feeling as if his chest was bursting with pain, as if someone was ripping chunks of flesh off him alive. And then there's this disgusting whirlwind of mixed emotions. The three feelings are guilt, madness, and anger. Suddenly the guy with the blue hair grabbed him by the shoulder and asked him why he had taken his mirror. And then he grabbed Sun's head with both hands and started using magic on him. A mask of some sort appeared around Sun's face. The notification said that from now on, all skills and powers that interfere with the spirit of challenger Han Sung Yoon will be sealed. Dream abruptly turned around and cut the head of this guy, and while his head flew, he repeated about the mirror. Sleep took hold of his head, realizing that the power of the serene mind was blocked, although it was needed. Then, he turned his head, still looking at the blood mist. He from the future absorbed everything and absorbed the souls of people, saying that if he had known from the very beginning, he would have crossed the line long ago. The notice wrote that assimilation has increased to 20%. Dream was startled to see this, and then another notification said that Song was suffering from an abnormal condition called Kai intoxication. So sleep spits out blood. He looks ahead, wiping the blood from his mouth, and doesn't understand why he decided to do this. He was looking at himself in the future, and he still couldn't understand why he did it, because he was really obsessed with the force, but he would never do it. Five notifications had written that if he failed to remove the Kai intoxication, the magic chain skill would drop by up to 10%, so it started to slowly decline. Song clutched his chest, realizing that the magic circuit was working at its limit, and then he saw a man with a ponytail and a kimono. This man stood in the world of Miram and told the people who were there to bring their head. His hair was long enough to cover his eyes, and he added that then he would save the lives of those who are now there. The headman came out to him and told him that he had heard that a madman called the Sword Ghost had recently appeared in Muram. And now, when he saw him in person, he said that he was worthy of this title. The headman came closer to him, face to face, and asked him his name. But he didn't respond, and immediately launched an attack, and it was a dream in the future. The head took out his katana, and they began to fight until the ground cracked around them. And so, after a while, all the people were killed, and the head was lying on the ground. He knelt down in front of Sung and said that he killed everyone, even though he said that he wouldn't do it, isn't he ashamed? Sleep said not a drop. He looked blank-eyed, saying that they were all just a resource that kept him from getting tired. And then he just cut off the head of the head. And Dream began to vomit blood as assimilation increased to 30%. And while the location in the mirror changed dozens of times, he, who became infinitely stronger, destroyed thousands of enemies. A dream in the future once again destroyed the race. And then it pierced through the head of the head of the beastman world, killing everyone first. Dream calls himself a monster who never loses. He even came to mind the bandits who didn't understand what he had forgotten in such a weak spot. After all this, sleep would start screaming in pain, and assimilation would be at 40%. The dream from the future was simply insane, its eyes shining with a red light. 
assimilation was at 50% and sleep was already just holding his head. And then there were just tears coming out of his eyes and a smile on his face and he said that's what it felt like and he thinks it's a real pleasure. After that, we see a huge building with a bright glow coming from it. Soon Hoon went to Tiver Leg and asked if he was going to get away with it after what he had done. Han Sung Hoon stood and held Young Hoon's body. Ha put her head down and started crying. She shouted out why he was killing people to become stronger. Han looked at her and dropped the hunter's body. He asked why she was asking such a useless question. He started laughing and said that he killed people because it made him stronger. He started walking forward, stepping on puddles. Soon Hoon's gaze changed and filled with lightning. He was very angry and said that in this weather, it was better for him to prepare for death. He swung and jumped forward, emitting lightning. He told him to die. Han spread his hands apart and said that he shouldn't even consider him an easy opponent. He smiled and said that if he wasn't Han Sung Woon, he would have been finished. He hit the hunter's body and the system message said kill him cut him in half. Ha looked at the whole scene and cried. She started screaming and begged Han to wake up. Han was almost engulfed and he understood that one mistake from him and he would be completely engulfed. He felt like his brain was already 50% bursting. He knew he had to find a solution before it was too late. The system message says that the percentage of protein assimilation has been increased to 60. Skill is an analog, and the deception scheme was reduced by 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.2. Khan began to expectorate blood and began to loudly shout rubles to all his balls. The system message said that the percentage of reflection assimilation was increased to 70. He stood still, knew he couldn't take it anymore, and he couldn't distinguish between pain and pleasure. He looked away and said that it was too good and he was completely engulfed. A man appeared behind him and asked if he had taken his mirror. Han recalled how I obtained the high priest's divine mirror. The mirror that priest John filled every day with divinity is he. One time it was possible to use divine power to create a barrier. When using the divine barrier, the percentage of assimilation will be reduced. Han looked at the mirror while holding it in his hand and the high priest's divine mirror was activated. A divine barrier protected his mind. Han looked ahead and completely removed his shackles. The system message wrote that the Kai rejection was being cancelled. The Khan stood swinging his sword, and after it split into two parts, I went out there as a normal Khan. He said he wouldn't let himself be consumed. The system message said that he had received a steel mind. His stamina was increased by one, and he was able to prove that his faith wasn't broken. The system message wrote that the mind confirmation was completed. Han realized that he had been here all along. The administrator of the Iron Blood Monarch was glad that he was fine. Fallen World Soldier laughs, they say they didn't expect this from him. The White Crane Administrator was happy that the Contractor had regained consciousness. The God of Verification is satisfied with his ability. The God of Verification wants to meet him. Han began to sink down and saw a bright light all around. The system message said that the God of Verification was forcibly summoning Han to the Divine Region. Han was shocked and didn't understand what kind of Divine Region and forceful summoning it was. The system message said that the God of Verification used Divine Power for the sake of power in the tower. Administrators will no longer be able to monitor Han Sung Woon. The challenge tower allowed summoning as long as Han Sung Gung was safe. It said that Han was part of the Divine Region. Han started shouting loudly and then he found himself in a calm place where there was a blue sky. He looked ahead and realized what kind of place it was. Something began to sparkle brightly in front of him, and a man appeared in front of him whose body was dark, and the hair and markings on his body were bright. The creature asked who Han was, and it wondered why the divine power was coming from Han. Han immediately realized that it was the god of verification who was standing in front of him. God flew over Khan and told him to stop looking at him so intently. God had assumed that what Han was seeing in front of him was just a blob of white light, but it was strange to see it in front of him. The god asked Khan if he was the same divine copy that the tower had created. Han thought about the divine copy and what God had said. Han said he didn't understand any of this. The god said that the divine copies are called administrator and he asks if Han received divine power in the contract with the tower. Han said that he was not an administrator, but just a regular player. Han stood up and silently looked ahead in surprise when the god said that he was different from the divine copy and had his own divine power. God said the tower got interesting while he was away all that time. He thought that they had accepted that they couldn't create the present using divine copies. They decided to use the divine copy apostle. The god said that he understood everything and he told Han Sung Woon that he was an unusual creature. Han stood there and listened in surprise. Han realized that the god was speaking as if he had done something incredible, but he had just killed Kirin and accidentally obtained divine power. Han recalled all this and asked if this divine power was so important in this world. God asked if it was true, but Han didn't know even though he was able to devour it himself. He thought that Han had cleared the tracks because he knew everything, but it seemed that Han knew absolutely nothing. Han said he was just lucky and that was it. 
The god placed his hand on his hips and said that Han was just lucky to perfectly clear the boss traces from the divine power he gave to his followers. God told Han that he might not have known, but it wasn't just a coincidence, and he feels cause and effect. Han was surprised and thought about cause and effect. Han was surprised when God said that the Tower of Trials still expected a lot from him. Han couldn't believe it. He was standing in front of a god and didn't think that the Tower of Trials expected anything from an ordinary player. God said he made a mistake and he doesn't think it was worth talking about. The god looked away and said that the Tower of Trials was angry. He said that it was time for them to say goodbye and said that he would watch Han Sun Woon. Han called after him and said that he had a lot of questions. He asked what would happen to him in the future and what the divine power and cause and effect was. But after he finished speaking, he felt sick and clutched his head. His eyes became blurry and he stood still and silently watched all this and then said that Han looked too deep into his future and when you look into the abyss for a long time, the abyss begins to look into you. Han stared into the abyss and couldn't tear his gaze away. The god said that the abyss had always wanted to enter his mind and Han always needed to remember that. Han stood silently, holding his head. God said that the Khan will soon return to where he came from. On regained consciousness and looked around in surprise. He called out if they could talk again. The god said that he was sorry, but that was all and he had no choice, and it was difficult for even the gods to cope with the tower. God said that if the Khan came to the Temple of Verification, he would answer all the questions that pleased him. The god gave him one last piece of advice and also he told him not to trust other gods as they would consider him an opponent. The system message said that it was congratulating Han Sung Woon since he entered the 11th floor, sent an old S rank verification mirror reward. He got 70,000 points and also 3,000 ko. He also received an additional 1,500 ko. Moving into the lobby began, and Han found himself in the waiting room. He clutched at his tie and thought about God. God is the being who told him everything and that Kieran's divine power was not an accident and he felt cause and effect. This meant that the tower wanted him to take his power for himself. Han thought that was the real cause and effect, plus the tower expected a lot from him. He assumed that even if it was all the tower's idea, his contracts with the administrators, and obtaining divine power, why would the tower need all this? Han didn't understand this, so he started to list it all in his head. He remembered that God had told him not to trust other gods. Han sat down on the bed and lowered his head. He didn't understand anything and it was disgusting. He realized that at the very least, even if the gods considered him their enemy, they couldn't harm him because of the tower. The system message wrote that the system was expanding and the earth was registered as an official dimension of the test tower. This creates protection from intruders and now punishments will be imposed on players from other dimensions. Now all players can get a halo. Player Han Sungun is once again visible to administrators. Administrator Monarch Ironblood is happy to see him. Administrator White Crane Master sniffs and examines Han. Han looked at it all and smiled. He remembered that the divine copy was a god, and then he understood. Administrators were also associated with divinity. Han's expression turned grim, and he didn't know if he could trust them or not. He started biting his lips and realized that he couldn't trust anyone right now. It was very bad and then the system message said that Han had entered the world of iron blood. Han was walking forward on a snowy path where there were a lot of weapons and the receptionist ran out to him. She called out to him and wanted to ask him, but Han took out his sword and stabbed her. The administrator dodged and didn't understand what was going on here. She called out to Han Sung Woon and Han asked if all the administrators were really cooperating with the tower just to use it. Han's gaze was blank. The receptionist looked at him and realized that Han wasn't out of mind verification yet. Han cut his hand and charged forward, swinging his sword. He threw a vertical punch at the receptionist and she jumped out of the way. She noticed that Han had cut his hand. She told him to get ready as he was out of his mind. Han directed his blood, which turned into sharp points, towards the administrator, and he asked if the administrators and the tower were connected. He said that they all used players, just as you might think. The receptionist stepped back, holding her sword in her hand, and asked what this nonsense was. She swung her weapon and told Han to get a grip on himself. Han asked why she kept telling him to come to his senses. His sword started to glow with a blue light, and he started to smile widely saying that he was completely fine. The receptionist shouted for him to stop, but Han continued to strike. She said that if he hit with all his strength, it would be bad. Before she could finish speaking, the shockwave from that impact sliced her house in half. She glared at Han with her fierce gaze, and Han noticed that there were daggers on top of him. He was surprised, and they headed in the direction of the Khan. Han dodged to the side, but the receptionist appeared behind him, grabbing his head and asking where he was going. Han didn't understand, so she slammed his head into the ground. The snow began to fly away, and Han continued to lie on the ground. But then, he raised his hand and slashed out with his sword. The receptionist noticed this and dodged it, and Han got up from the ground, but then daggers appeared near his hand. The receptionist stretched out her hand, and Han was lying on the ground, unable to move. 
Afterward, Han hung upside down on the edge of the ruined house and apologized for what he'd done. He begged to be untied. The receptionist sat on a chair and watched the scene while sipping a hot drink. She said that of course she would untie him, she was afraid that next time he might destroy her house. She put her cup down on the table and began to think. She said that when Han came here, there was still some darkness left in him and she would always be a part of him. Han listened to everything she said, and the administrator said that even though Han saw himself from the future, it was still him, and thus his suspicions of the administrators were not entirely real. The receptionist reached to the side and pulled out a sword. She said that no one knew what the tower wanted, and the other administrators couldn't know it. She took the sword in her hands, and Han knew that the tower didn't expect anything from him. She threw a punch to the side, and the shockwave went towards Han. She cut the rope, and Han was free. Khan said that the tower never showed its wishes to the players. Therefore, the tower definitely didn't expect anything special from him. Han sat down at the table and drank tea with the receptionist. She said that judging by his doubts, someone should have told him about it. Han said that the god of verification told him that the tower would expect something special from him. The receptionist looked surprised and smiled. She realized that the reason for all Han's doubts was because of the god of verification. The receptionist got up from the table and reminded Han that she said that she and Han were subordinate to the tower. Han said he thought so and asked if there was anything else he could learn about the tower. The receptionist got up and walked over to Han. She said that she was glad that he liked her tea as it was made from the black dragon's urine and it was very rare. Han looked blankly ahead and started to spit out his tea. Han wiped his mouth and remembered that the god of verification had also mentioned that the administrators had also received divine copies thanks to the contract with the tower. The receptionist placed the desserts on the table and said that she couldn't tell Han anything about the divine copies just yet, and in any case, he would soon find out all about it himself. Han said there was something else he wanted to ask. The receptionist took the dessert and started eating. Han said that she had some kind of heartfelt wish. The receptionist closed her eyes and listened to everything Han said. Han said that the White Crane Master had mentioned to him that they received their most cherished wishes from the tower and that players who signed the apprentice contract must fulfill them. The Steel of Blood administrator said that this rascal had told him everything about his heart's desire. Han asked why she had revealed her heart's desire to him. The receptionist said she did it because she was scared. Han asked what that meant. The Steel Blood administrator said that Han underestimated himself and she had seen with her own eyes how Han was obsessed with his height, so for the sake of his height, she thought that he would immediately want to pass the wish test. Han realized that he was obsessed with growth because he didn't have the talent. The receptionist said that she didn't know what was considered a talent, but it wasn't long before Han realized how much he underestimated himself because the challenge of the 12th floor was waiting for him. Han appeared in the waiting room on his bed. Talent is a gift from heaven that cannot be changed. In the hunter world, it was divided into three parts, getting skills, improving stats, and abilities. They were called three gifts for the hunter, and he didn't have any of them. And he couldn't even get skills, hand stats didn't get any higher, and he didn't have any unique abilities. But after entering the tower, many things changed, all but the truth. The Iron Blood Monarch was wrong and didn't have the talent. Han sat up in bed and realized that if he had the talent, he would have become a famous hunter without the tower. He remembered the words of the Steel of Blood administrator, who said that Han would soon realize how much he underestimated himself. Because the test of the 12th floor is a battle with himself, and in the test of the 12th floor, you will need to fight and defeat yourself. Han realized that he shouldn't have just sat there and thought about it. He opened the system screen and realized that the essence of the test was an objective assessment of his skills. Han decided that this would be considered one of the chances to improve his combat skills. Han opened the inventory and selected Zelf to increase the skill proficiency of C-plus ranked skills. This is a potion created by the tower for those gifted with skills, and when taking, and when taking, the skill proficiency of one of the skills increased by 10%. Han realized that this was one of the rewards from the Japanese government for helping with Namjoon Hayuk. Han remembered that Catherine had given him her potions and now he had three of them. Han used a skill augmentation potion and a system message asked him to choose his skill to increase. Han said magic management and the selection was complete. Han realized that the skill obtained from the Dark Monarch from the 10th floor of mana management was the foundation of the rest of the skills, so the most profitable investment was to improve this skill. The system message said that the mastery of the magic control skill was increased by 10% three times in a row. After Han opened the reward from the 11th floor, it was an old S rank verification mirror. A mirror that can only be obtained by players who have passed the God of Verification tests. If you put magic in the mirror, the unique effect of thinking about the past will be activated. 
Pan activated the dragon's fiery gaze and his gaze was filled with a blue haze. The system message said that only the first time Han used it, he could get the skill of thinking about the past, but the player could not choose the skill. The verification god changed part of the effect specifically for one player. Han pondered the thoughts of the past and activated the old S rank verification mirror, thoughts of the past. Han looked in the mirror and realized that everything was as he thought. The system message said that the old S rank verification mirror was activated. The player gained the skill from thinking about the past. The A plus rank battle concentration skill was obtained. The combat skills of thoughts of the past are sealed into a plus rank battle concentration. Thanks to this, the skill was increased by 11%. System message concentration in an A plus rank battle. The skill was 11%, and the description was, it helped to be focused on the battle to the limit. The effect could increase Han's concentration and now the limit has increased to 20. Han smiled and realized that it wasn't bad. The system message wrote that the test subject was like this. It was necessary to exceed their limits. The test of the 12th floor begins and there are 48 hours left. The conditions for passing were as follows, you had to kill your copy in the allotted time. The conditions of failure were as follows, end of time or death. The reward for this trial was this, the ashen crown of an ancient a rank emperor. The penalty for failure was death. Han went ahead and the system message said that the blessing of the god of darkness had sensed an outsider and started creating guardians. Han stood in front of the strange dark energy that was gathering in the air. The system message said that the intruder should have considered whether he knew himself well. A copy of Han with red eyes emerged from the dark energy and headed forward. The system message said that the item old tailcoat of vampire counter was copied. I should have killed my copy, created by the god of darkness. Han remembered the administrator's phrase that the copy would be perfect and even have all of Han's experience from all the battles. Han realized that, in other words, the copy would know all of his techniques and the copy would also get his talent. Han will definitely come to an end if he underestimates his talent. Han understood the full meaning of those words and decided to start just believing. The copy headed towards Han while swinging its sword. Han wondered what his real talent was. The system message said that the blessing of the god of darkness we sensed an outsider and created a guard. The intruder should think about how well he knows himself. Copied the item old tailcoat of the vampire Count A. The clone went ahead and the system message told him to kill his copy created by the god of darkness. Han looked at him and thought about the god of darkness. He didn't understand why he constantly crossed paths with the gods. Han wondered if it was a clone or a copy of him. He looked a lot like him. He recalled the conversation with the Steel of Blood administrator and realized that judging from her words, the copy could only have copied one item. Han's copy stood in place and looked ahead. Han thought of the vampire Count's old tailcoat and realized that the copy had chosen a protective item. Han took out his sword and pushed off from the ground. He realized that if the copy was of sufficient quality, it was a good opportunity to objectively evaluate all the skills he had with him. The system message said that Han had activated the instant acceleration skill. Wind blessing skill activated. All speed increased by 70. Using skill 7.7 .7, Han headed forward and realized that he just needed to believe in his talent. System message, the battle concentration skill has been activated. Han's concentration was doubled. Han looked ahead and was surprised by his feelings. He realized that it was as if time had stopped around him. He would run forward and swing his sword with a smile on his face. He understood how this skill worked and liked it very much. The system message said that the flaming sword skill was activated. He struck from above and a bright light rang out. The clone blocked the attack and stepped back. He drew his sword and looked ahead. Han realized that it was an iron blood sword, but he wasn't surprised because it was obvious enough. She looked ahead and realized that the clone was creating a counter shield. The clone put his hand out to the side and then a red shield appeared there. Han realized that using the iron blood sword and counter shield was his only choice, but his thoughts were interrupted by his surprise. He looked ahead and saw a sword that was emitting a red aura. The clone took the two swords in his hands and crossed them. Han realized that his clone had turned the counter shield into a sword. Han realized that this was a two-sword style that wasn't even used by himself, but his clone had used it in their actual fight. Due to the fact that such a transformation used up a lot of mana, I didn't use it. Han didn't understand why his clone had chosen such an inefficient method. Han had thought about it himself, of course, but he had never dared to use it when his life was on the line. The clone moved forward and started swinging. Han looked ahead with displeasure and didn't know if his clone considered this fight as a training session. They crossed their swords and began to fight. Han attacked him and dodged him. Han realized that he was losing a bit to his clone and combat skills. His clone lunged with his sword, and Han leaned back. He didn't understand how this was possible, so he assumed that it was the unyielding will skill. The system message said that the A-rank unyielding will skill was equal to 27% proficiency. The description was as follows. Han will not give up and will not fall into despair fighting until the very end. 
The usual effect was that during a fight with a strong opponent, concentration and physical abilities increase. The additional effect was that when a skill was activated, it would be easier to learn something new and a mental shield would be activated. Han realized that he had the advantage in items, and so the unbending will was activated. The clone threw punches, and Han tried to block them. He realized that if the clone's physical strength was above his own, then he would have a hard time. The system message said a plus rank battle concentration skill. The skill was 11%, and the description was such that it helps to be focused to the limit on the battle. The effect can increase your concentration, currently the limit of increase was x20. Han realized that if the clone was able to maximize its concentration, it was possible. He gritted his teeth and realized that the real problem was both his sword and technique. The clone stood holding the swords in two hands. He started swinging at Han, and Han realized that he had used two balls and that these were definitely his techniques. Han jumped back, dodging the attacks, but it didn't work. He flew into the wall and crashed into it. He stood up and watched as his clone walked towards him. I realize that you have a blue sky dragon without a doubt, this is Namgung Hayek's technique. He saw it in his bias. He recalled that he had only seen it once, but he remembered it very well, and its incredible strength made it clear why he looked down on skills. He realized that it wasn't a skill or ability, but a true technique, and he really thought about it. He wondered if these techniques could surpass skills. Namgun Hayek's techniques were not dependent on skills, and he thought that he would never be able to master them. He recalled the conversation with the receptionist, and she said that Han would soon find out how much he underestimated himself. He understood what she was talking about and the system message said that Han had met a strong opponent and the unyielding will skill had been activated. The clone headed in Han's direction, and Han realized that the system didn't think he had the advantage, even though he was still ahead in subjects. He looked at the clone that jumped up and realized that it had become stronger. He gritted his teeth and activated concentration in battle. Its concentration increased by 10 times. He looked forward and threw a vertical clone punch. They missed blows and when they met, Han was surprised. He missed one punch and bled. He jumped back and wondered if his clan was exactly level 1. He realized that his enemy was simply monstrous. The system message said that his concentration was increased by 15 times. Han took up a stance and abruptly stood behind his opponent. The clone wasn't expecting this, and Han threw a punch from above, slamming it into the floor. The system message said that wings of steel and maximum speed were activated. Han headed forward, and his concentration increased by 17 times. Han started shouting and said that his enemy was caught. The enemy began to control his blood and inflated his arm. It burst and started pouring blood all over. Han was surprised and blood got into his eyes. He struck out, but his clone was no longer there either. Han looked around and realized that he had torn off his arm and escaped. He realized what was going on and something began to glow behind him. It was the clone who pointed his sword. He started to emit a bright beam towards Han, and Han wondered if he was going to die. He looked at the beam and was able to dodge. His concentration was increased by 20 times, and he exceeded all his limits. Han got to his feet again and put a hand to his head. He said he felt bad. The clone looked at him blankly. Han laughed and said that he almost died. He looked at him with a crazy look and said that he was just a pathetic copy and he didn't dare to interfere with him. The system message said that he had exceeded all his limits and he would experience a mental recoil as a side effect. The clone moved forward and lunged with his sword. Han didn't notice it or its meaning with the shock wave, so he flew into the stone completely destroying it. Han clenched his hand and began to control his blood. He pointed his fingers forward and let the blood flow. It began to fly into the walls and destroy them. The clone noticed this and started growing. He turned his head and debris flew at him. Han smiled and asked how he was feeling. Han was standing with his arm outstretched, and he was standing behind him. After that, they jumped back and their battlefield glowed with bright rays. The clone healed his arm, and Han smiled as he held his hand up to his head. He said that his enemy was incredibly strong. The administrator sat in her world and watched Han's battle. She slammed her cup down on the table and said she was embarrassed. She put her hand under her head and knew that she couldn't even stop helping him, but she also couldn't just look at it. She turned to his head and said with a smile that she was a little worried about his reaction. The system message said that it was contacting Han Sung Woon. After that, the portal collapsed and the system message wrote that her message was temporarily disabled so that she could not tell him either. The receptionist smiled and apologized. She said she wanted to help her contractor a little. Han looked down at his hands and slapped his head. Han bounced back from the shockwave. The clone was surprised by this, and Han looked at it with a smile and realized that it was dangerous in the middle of a fight. He shouted loudly for it to stop interfering with his body. He asked him to leave it. Han found himself in the dark abyss that bound him. He realized that he was already here and started shouting. He thought that he had dealt with a version of himself from the future and this annoyed him greatly. He released his hand and something began to rise in front of him. She said that she fought for Hana when he almost died and he didn't even thank him. This was a future version. 
Han said that he was a fool and asked him to just leave his body right now. Han from the future said that he was an idiot and asked if he didn't understand yet. He asked him to think carefully said that he had been training for so long and reached the 12th floor but he couldn't even look at himself. He called himself a pathetic idiot and Han got angry. He started shouting and swinging his arm to hit himself from the future. Han from the future held up a finger and blood rods appeared in front of him. Instead, they did not close the con and he began to beat them. He asked if he was going somewhere and asked me to come here. Han from the future said that he was disgusting and he would tell him something. He said that if Han always relied on skills, he would never be able to use real techniques. Han from the future went ahead and said that for the rest of his life he would just stare at he would just take control of his body and, after all, he was so pathetic. It started to go deeper, and Han started shouting. Clone Han was surprised by his attack, and Han said with a smile that he was used to the feeling. He silently looked at the screens and saw that the administrator Monarch Ironblood had sent him an item. It was a Black Dragon Potion of Rank B, a potion obtained by processing Black Dragon fluids. When used, the mental power increases and the mind is cleared. Han realized all of this and began to push the shackles apart. His hands were burning badly, and he didn't know what it was. He opened the inventory and stuck his hand in. He realized that it was that fool's business again and took out the potion. He was about to knock it out, but the tilt knocked it out of Han's hands and cut off Han's wrist. Han was able to get out of the abyss and jumped up. He opened his mouth and bit through the jar, he started drinking potions together with the glass. His clan jumped back, and he watched in silence and surprise. Han spat out the blood along with the glass, and he started laughing. He said that he was back and while he was not fighting the enemy, he felt everything. He realized that he had let go of everything because of the habit of relying on skills. He grabbed his sword and then realized that if even a copy of him could do that, then so could he. Han began to concentrate and gather everything inside himself. The system message said that his concentration was increased by 20 times. He realized that his thinking was accelerating and the ego of his psychotic version was rising. He looked ahead and realized that with his accelerated thinking, he finally felt initiated into this endless debt-ridden moment. His copy headed forward, and Han easily dodged his attacks. He realized that he had to throw away all the accumulated skills and empty everything inside himself and adapt to this fight. He dodged smartly and realized that he had to get rid of his common sense. The system message said that due to an unknown enlightenment, the mastery of Horne's magic control skills has been increased by 10%. The clone dealt him attacks, but the maximum it could do was cut his hair. The system message said that Han had achieved enlightenment. Stamina was increased by one. Han realized that he had to rid himself of all the fake stuff. He coolly looked ahead, and Han received the trance achievement. His mana was increased by four, and he could also defeat his opponent in battle. The clone's unwavering will skill has been deactivated. Han walked forward with a smile, swinging his sword, and he knew that everything would be completely different from now on. Song ran to attack, swinging his sword and being covered in abrasions. He runs past the rocks and cuts them in half. And then, as he was throwing punches, he had a smile on his face and thought about how he was now able to use the swordsmanship of Namgun Hayek, who had previously suppressed him with his might, it was quite a strange feeling for him. He leaped up and did a flip in the air, still slashing with his sword. Then, he began to look at the opponent and think about how he had the highest speed using the grace of the wind and instant acceleration. His clone then begins to kick off from the ground and then jumps over Sun, running along the wall while Sun was stabbing with his sword. The clone swung its two swords through the air, sending two lines of mana flying into Sun's back. Ah Song, in turn, changed his position in the air so that the two lines just passed by him. And then he landed on the ground, his face filled with determination. Sun's clone stared with eyes full of hatred. And then, he instantly charged at him with two swords. Dream deflected his attacks and thought that as the battle with the clone continued, it became easier and easier for him to understand what was happening. So now he looked at the battle not from the point of view of skills, but from the point of view of technology and began to understand the principles of the technique itself. Song looked ahead with a big smile and understood the whole principle with incredible speed. Song attacked the clone and the clone blocked his kick, but it was obvious that he was dissatisfied with the situation. The clone charged at the hero with a shout. Song dodged the first sword and realized that after realizing the principle of the technique itself, he now felt the futility of using two swords. Song was looking at the clone and seeing Namgun Hayek in it, and thinking that instead of fully mastering Namgun Hayek's swordsmanship, he was just paying a lot of attention to imitating Namgun Hayek. Dream activated the Iron Blood Sword skill so that a red sword appeared in the air and he knew that in this scenario, thoughts of disbelief might weaken the release Kai energy of the flaming sword, which could cut everything in the world. Song grabbed onto this sword and continued to think about what it means to practice Nam Gun Hayek's swordsmanship, he should focus even more on strengthening the flame sword. Song used the flame sword skill and aimed it at his clone. Song threw a sword at the clone. 
and it managed to hit him in the shoulder. Then, Dream activated the Blood Seeker skill and used his fingers to pull the blood out of his wound. A large amount of blood flowed out from the clone's cut and turned into daggers. And then, Dream threw all those daggers at him. The clone noticed this and redirected its blood directly to Sun. A large explosion occurred when Sun was hit. But the clone was unlucky, because Song was able to dodge that blow and ended up right behind him. He was able to hit him again. But he immediately ran away as the clone used the counterattack shield skill. The clone was very angry, but immediately healed his wounds. He exhaled calmly as soon as the wound healed. Dream was already running to attack him at this moment, realizing that the clone instantly transformed the sword into a shield and avoided the crisis. The clone started twirling the two swords in a circle, which made Sun surprised. But he decided to attack the clone, and the clone was able to repel the attack. Song passed his sword along the tip of his sword, then moved his hand away, swinging again. He didn't understand what was going on with his sword. And his clone was standing and smoothly swinging two swords, which made Dream wonder, because only a second ago it was about rough and aggressive swordsmanship. But now he switched to soft swordsmanship, with smooth and measured movements. Sung's sword and hands were covered in blood, and he was also thinking that soft swordsmanship was another sword technique that Gun Hayek had shown us. Sung Woo wonders how far he can go in demonstrating Nam Gun Hayek's techniques, and even though he knows it's his talent, it still annoys him. After that, Song threw out his sword, knowing that I wouldn't be able to win an easy victory without taking any risks. And then, he activates the counterattack shield skill, and his main sword turns into another one. The clone stared at him in surprise. Song pointed his new sword at him and asked why he was so surprised. And then he looked at him confidently and said, if he can do that, then so can the dream. Song charged at the clone and they began to fight off each other's attacks. The clone threw a punch that Sun blocked. Because of such fights, their swords shone brightly. Song then took a closer look and realized that the clone's sword was charging faster than his own. And then he turns around and wonders if he should do something adventurous then. And then he decides to kick the clone in the stomach, throwing it to a great height. At this moment, the clone starts to get angry and uses the skill of his sword to counterattack, so a huge wave of mana flew after Sun, which destroyed everything along with it. Dream was running away from her, swinging his sword and looking at her, he realized that the clone was parrying his attack with the counterattack sword, a modified version of the counterattack shield. And after he swung, he immediately hit this wave of mana, and decided that then he would also charge his counterattack sword once. Because of this blow, his sword breaks, and Dream thinks that it will surely break under the weight of such an ignorant attack, so he just throws the sword away. The sword flew in the air and seemed to dissolve, and Dream kept thinking that if the clone was him, then now was the time when the energy release of the counterattack, the most threatening attack they had, disappeared. The clone immediately flew to attack Sun, because he knew that this was his chance. And the clone threw a punch, but Song was able to block it. And he looked at his clone with a smile on his face, because he knew that he was incredibly strong on his own. With that, the clone kicked him, sending him flying far away. Dream flew and bounced off the ground like a bouncer, and then he stopped and looked ahead. Just then, his clone arrived in time and launched an attack. Song reached out to him with a smirk and said that he was caught. Instantly, his clone was pierced through by a sword, and he turned around to see a hand made of blood that had stuck a knife in his back. Song had thought of this plan beforehand, because he had originally thrown out his iron blood sword, and then imagined the clone's face, which was impatient and bared its teeth. The dream looked at him with determination and his plan was that he used these two factors and they were extremely effective. So as soon as he plunged his sword into it, he ran to attack it. But the clone didn't want to just give up, so he got up from his knees and started shouting furiously. Song stopped where he was and looked up, completely shocked. It turned out that his clone just started turning into some kind of devil. And this devil started attacking Sun with sharp claws. Sleep just started running away from him as he beat his hands on the ground. After an unsuccessful attack, the clone began biting off its fingers and spitting them at Sun. When they hit the ground, they began to explode. Song looked back and ran away, not understanding what kind of monster it was, and he was even a little confused by the fact that his attack tactics had changed dramatically. He ran straight into the wall and then smashed it into splinters, crashing into it. And that clone's devilish hands immediately reached out right behind him. That hand started to swell up and glow for some reason, which Dream noticed. He started to cover himself, and his arm exploded like dynamite. The clone simply regrew it and made a surprised sound, because it noticed that the dream was still alive, so it also used a counterattack shield. Then Song made a sword out of the shield, he was glad that the counterattack shield's cooldown time was up. Song pointed his sword at the clone and asked him why he was frozen, if he wasn't going to attack. A clone with a furious face flew to attack Sun, and he hit him with blow after blow, so that his limbs exploded, and the dream just dodged these attacks. He stared at the clone in surprise and thought that these limb bursts looked rather strange, but as a surprise melee attack, it was quite an effective move. 
The clone looked distraught, and Song knew it, thinking that because his clone had lost his temper and was constantly making explosions, the Ashblood would consume too much stamina. And now, his clone was already walking and trembling, and then he looked like a skeleton at all, as his stamina was at zero. Sleep had thought this through, and he knew that once his stamina ran out, his attacks would stop. Immediately, the dream began to attack him, cutting off his arm. He looked at him with a confident look and said that there was no point in dragging his feet anymore, so his clone was finished. The clone was very angry, showing his teeth. So the clone realized his situation and started running away from Sun. And he, in turn, began to get angry and immediately ran after him, not understanding where he was going to run away. And jumping down from the roof, he ran along the wall, swinging his sword. Suddenly, Song noticed something, and it was that his clone started to accumulate blood in one place. And then it started attacking Sun again, turning all the blood into a huge sharp vortex. Song noticed his attack and immediately blocked the counterattacks with his shield. Such a strong blow already threw him back. Song looked tired, but he was mentally thanking his clone for making such an ignorant attack. The notification said that its charge was complete and the counterattack shield had reached its maximum damage absorption limit. Dream started using this opportunity and accumulated all the damage at one point. And then with an evil look, he looked at the clone and said that he was going to die. The clone began to scream furiously. Dream threw the damage ball, swung the sword like a bat. He hit the ball with all his might. This ball flew at a frantic speed and hit the clone right in the face. His face was flattened by the impact. Ah Song looked at it with determination in his eyes and released all the damage. The notification said that his counterattack shield instantly releases all accumulated damage. This damage was so powerful that the entire area that was there was cut in two, and also the clone was left without a head. The notices said that he had broken through the 12th floor, and as a reward, he received the Ancient Emperor's Grey Crown, as well as 80,000 points and the last resistance skill. There were also two notifications that said that his counterattack shield had reached 100%, so it had increased by one level. Song finally managed to exhale calmly. Notifications said that his battle concentration skill was deactivated, and therefore there will be a concentration rebound that exceeds the user's limit. Sung's mouth instantly filled with blood, and then he just spat it out in pain. Blood fell to the floor. Song started to wipe his face, activating the Ashblood skill, and thought that Ashblood had never let him down. But he fully believed that this skill would also heal the rebound that came as a side effect of concentrating in battle. His neck glowed green as it regenerated, and he kept thinking that if he didn't have a cheat recovery skill like Ashblood in his arsenal, he wouldn't have been able to get this far. Song then turned his head, wondering when he would finally be able to climb the tower with peace of mind, or if it was even possible. A blood mist was coming out of the clone, and Song walked up to it and laughed about how it was going to devour its spirit. When suddenly a notification appeared in front of him, where it says that the administrator's messages that were previously blocked will now be unblocked. Then, two more notices appeared in front of him, stating that the Steel Blood Lord was complaining about the sanctions for treating the challenger to a cup of tea, and so she asked to be treated well from now on. Song stood and read it, and then responded with understanding. Song looked at these messages with tired eyes and thanked them for the bottle, and also thought that he had just learned a new fact, which is that administrators are also sanctioned if they have excessive contact with applicants. The receptionist gave him the Black Dragon product, which was a red-colored potion that increased his mind and made his mind clearer. Suddenly, about a hundred notifications appeared in front of him, because all messages that were previously blocked were instantly unblocked. All these administrators were shocked by Sung's talent, and some of them didn't understand how monsters like Sung even appeared. Song looked up and was shocked, because he was being watched by such a huge number of administrators. He started to think about those notifications, because there are administrators who were shocked by its power, like the few he read. And there were those who reacted as if they were bored with him, asking if he was really a challenger who was still at the 12th level. Sun stood and read these messages, and on some of them it was written that the administrators were closely following his fight. Song peered at the messages and was a little frustrated, thinking that administrators who only said what they wanted to say and then disappeared when they lost interest in him, were they sending messages without any purpose? Sun stood among these notifications and shouted out why they were all acting like this. He looked annoyed, not understanding why he was the one out of all the people, since they already had a contract, but why they were trying to get his attention. Then suddenly it dawned on him, and he was looking with a spark in his eyes. He imagined that all those messages were connected to each other, and thought that it was possible that there would soon be an extension of the system that would give administrators the opportunity to ask him, and their careless reaction turns assumptions into confidence. He started to smile wickedly and came up with a plan. He told everyone that it looked like as the system expanded in the future, administrators not contractually bound to him would also be able to benefit, and all those messages were three dots, meaning the administrators were listening to Sun. Song was gesturing and saying that don't they think it's a little wrong when they're all just throwing messages at him. 
he looked ahead confidently and added that if they needed anything from him, they should send him power as support and then he would definitely remember them later when the system was expanded. Several administrators expressed their dissatisfaction, saying that this was out of the question, considering him arrogant. And then Song started smiling mischievously and said that this offer only applies to the three people in line. All the administrators hesitated, and immediately after that, everyone started offering their strength to him. Song tried to hide his smile, and then he turned to his clone, who was emitting a blood mist. He began to look at it and thought about the fact that his enemy not only has the same stats as him, but also skills with powers, he wondered what he would get when he absorbed it. Dream has started absorbing his clone, so his skill is increased by 28%. They wrote that the false applicant's soul composition is completely identical to Sun's, so the power of divinity is activated only under certain conditions. And then a notification appeared that shone with a yellow light, and on it was written that an attempt to extract divinity was about to be made. Song looked at it and was shocked, thinking about what was written there. Then he was informed that the extraction was successful, so the rank of divine power was raised by one level, and thanks to this, he can now transform divine power. Song looked at these two words and everything around him seemed to freeze, as he realized that all these words were meaningless to him. He remembered how he extracted this skill from Kirin, and since he didn't know how to use it, he just forgot about it. And now he started to take off, and there was a golden circle with symbols around him, and now he could experience this very divine power. Sun started entering the waiting room, and notifications said that the system was being expanded, and now not only people from his country, but also from other countries will be on the test. Song brushed the window away with his hand, thinking that it turns out that now on the combined trials, he will be facing foreigners, and he decided that this expansion is a bit pointless. But then he came to his senses and imagined that in the near future, he would be able to encounter people from other dimensions. A window abruptly appeared in front of him, which surprised him. After all, this was the window for summing up the test results, and he was in the first place there. He imagined it as if he was walking up the stairs directly to the tower and thought that he was the strongest, because that was the main reason why he was climbing the tower, that was exactly what he was aiming for. Song continued to walk up the stairs, thinking that he was now one step closer to his goal, at least for now, he was the strongest challenger in the entire land. Immediately, he realized that the Tower of Trials had existed in other dimensions for a long time. The Earth was very small compared to them, and Sun understood this, because the Earth is now considered an extremely weak dimension, which was just a few days ago, was officially registered as a dimension for climbing. Immediately, he remembered that terrible day, so they need to increase their power. Song clenched his fist in anger and thought about how he needed a powerful force that could defeat anyone. Song then waved his hand, opening the inventory and looking at the item that he had recently obtained. He stood and read its specifications, and thought that since the class is high, then the performance seems powerful, but the explanation is somewhat ambiguous. Sleep opened the window of a skill that was given as an additional reward, and the skill allows him to roughly cancel death, while spending almost all of his stamina and recovering for about a week. Song was already taken aback after reading his abilities, because this is a skill that prevents one death. Then he began to confidently look ahead and think that even though the cooldown time was a week, but considering the effectiveness of the skill, it wasn't even a penalty. Song started to smile and talk about how during the challenge, in addition to receiving rewards, he managed to shake out the administrator's strength from the bins. So he decides to look at the power store, three damage powers appeared in front of him, but he decided to open the support forces. There were three skills, the first was Blood Sky Energy, then Warrior Defense, and the third was Instant Magic Cooldown. Song stood in front of these three windows and thought about what he should buy, after all, these three skills are all effective for C plus rank strength. Then he started tapping his finger on the window and saying that he would buy them all. He bought all three skills after spending a lot of his coins on them. And then three notifications appeared in front of him, in which administrators asked not to forget about their generosity. Sleep just started walking away from them, waving his hand and saying that he would remember them well. And then he remembered how he absorbed his spirit, and at the same time, as if out of nowhere, the divinity extraction was activated. Sung's chest began to glow, and he thought that it was obvious that after the divinity extraction was activated, he felt the energy settling heavily in his heart, unlike how it was before. He thought that this must be that divine power. Song, beaming, swung his fist, preparing to strike. And then he tried to throw a punch with a menacing face. But nothing happened, so he just stood there looking ridiculous. Then he put his hands on his waist and said that this was to be expected. The result was the same as during his check before going to the waiting room. The body just shines and no special abilities or anything like that appear. He thought back to all the three priests he had defeated, and he didn't understand why he couldn't reproduce any of the recovery or strengthening techniques that the priests had used during the trial on the 11th floor. Song made an angry face and said that everything makes him angry but he was full of expectations and thinks about whether it will be useful or not. 
Then he sat down on the floor and began to breathe in and out, trying to calm himself down so that the bad personality that lurks in him doesn't come out. The administrators started writing to Sanu that they were teaching him divine power better than anyone else, and White Crane Sword invited him to their domain. Song closed his eyes and said he didn't want to, and then White Crane Sword cries because of the shock she received from the challenger's refusal of the invitation, and then she asks why he refuses and says that if he comes and learns, he can use divine power. Song still ignored her and replied that he could learn later if he needed to, and then he looked at me with a smile and bright eyes, saying that he wanted to do everything on his own, not relying on others. The White Crane Sword Administrator lowers his shoulders and says that so be it if it is the challenger's will. Sonya then raised his head, and all he could think about was that what Namgun Hayek had told him was more important right now, so he needed to focus on what he could do to become stronger right now. Song was full of confidence and thought that he needed to get stronger, at least until he killed Namgun Hayek. He remembered Namgun Hayek standing with his back to him, and he knew that Goon would definitely return to Earth again. And then he decides to look at the abilities that he bought and opens the ability Blood Heavenly Energy, which replaces all mana with internal Kai energy. Dream activated this skill and began to glow all over with a red aura and grin. Song tilted his head, steam coming out of his mouth. His eyes were turning red, and he thought that right now he felt like he was reborn as a fighter, and his blood was boiling, and he thought that this was exactly what he needed. Then he grabs his eye with a surprised face. Then he starts to smile maliciously and say that this is his way out. This was his second identity, and then he grabs his cheeks and stretches them out in different directions, asking himself that he's going to do something so interesting all by himself. Song looked ahead with red eyes and thought about what had happened to him, this crazy personality manifesting in his body at the same time, at least this had never happened before. Then he grabbed the sword and started shouting for him to die, pointing the sword at himself. Song takes the sword with his other hand and blocks the blow, saying that if he dies, then the second person will also die. And the second person just started smiling, saying that he was just going to get rid of what he couldn't get. Dream blocks the blow, but his second personality is stronger, so the sword is closer to his face, and he realizes that this is a situation that he could not have foreseen. Then a fog appears around him. As the mist started to come out of his sword, Song thought that the sword was absorbing the blood energy generated by the blood sky energy. Song decided to look at this sword with his skill, and a notification was sent to him that when a user who has reached the level of the flaming sword activates the exclusive effect of blood energy to the maximum, the true ability opens. Song grabbed the tip of the sword with his bare hand, parried the sword of his second personality, and then instantly stabbed it into his shoulder, which was controlled by the second personality. He writhed in pain, stabbing himself, but he knew it was necessary because he would feed this person to the sword. He and the second person screamed in pain while holding a sword in his shoulder. The sword was sticking up, and the other person was still screaming in pain. All sorts of runes started appearing on the sword, and the notification said that the item's name was changing to Heavenly Demonic True Blood Sword. The sword wound in Sun's shoulder started to heal, and the notification added that a new blood slot was now being created. Song raised his sword up, and three icons appeared in front of him. Dream activated the eye skill and looked at his sword, and in his description it was written that when you kill an entity, all the blood is drunk from it with this sword, which increases its strength, and three ability slots are available to him. Song looked at the three ability icons and thought about how he could seal skills in the sword, and besides, there's no cost other than cooldown. Dream stared madly at his sword and realized that it was the best item of the growing type that no one had ever seen before. Dream started to enter the 13th floor, and the topic of the test was strategic combat. They were given 14 days of time, and the failure would be if one of the team died. Song was surprised to see the inscription about the combined test, because the combined tests are associated with not very pleasant memories, all those three tests. But he was very lured by a book with a random spell. They wrote that on the map they were marked with cities that are occupied by vampires, marked with a count, and also marked with priests. Four portals appeared in the room. Dream came in through one of them and thought that instead of wasting time looking for clerics, maybe we could just invade the city and kill everyone there. He looked confident and kept thinking that he would be able to do it with the abilities he had, because he thought he could destroy at least one city. Another guy entered from the second portal, and the notification said that the selection of team members was completed and all nicknames will be displayed. A man with a red beard and fur on his shoulders said that he was wondering what the expansion of the system would be. His name was Tarkovsky. Then another guy came out, saying hello to everyone, his name was Legendary Ninja. And the last teammate was an old man with the name of the Clock Tower Wizard. Dream thought about it, because all these nicknames were familiar to him. He remembered the leaderboard that had the names of these people on it. 
The old man turned his head, saying that this place completely smelled of blood, and on the table were the corpses of some people. There was someone hanging on the ceiling above the old man, and the old man said it must have been a vampire refectory. Two vampires appeared behind him, saying that it was true. They started attacking him, saying that they would eat them all. One vampire's head was grabbed, and a ninja came in behind the other vampire. Tarkovsky and the ninja dealt with them in no time. While the vampire was falling in front of the ninja, he said that he had an idea that Tarkovsky was really the best guild leader in Russia. Tarkovsky waved his hand and said that it was true, and then he introduced himself, his name is Andrei Tarkovsky. The ninja threw his dagger and then caught it, also introducing himself, his name was Sashio Michimoto, and he is an S-class hunter. Andrei looked at him with a smile, noticing that there was only one such hunter in Japan, and Sashio Michimoto was embarrassed, saying that he could just be called Sashio. The three of them stood around each other and asked if they were ready to fight, and Andri said that vampires can sense the death of their comrades, so they soon show up in a crowd. The old man decided to say that there was no need to worry about that, since he had set up a barrier beforehand, they wouldn't be able to sense anything. Sashio turned to the old man in surprise and asked him his name. The old man, smoking a pipe, replied that his name was David Taylor, a humble wizard belonging to the clock tower. Sashio pointed at it, saying that it was the best tower in the world. Andre adds that he was unlucky to get here in his old age, and David stood with a smile on his face and said that on the contrary, he considers it lucky because the towers are an interesting subject of research for wizards. They all started looking at Sun, who also introduced himself. He looked serious as he said that his name was Han Sung Yoon and he was a hunter. They started to think of a plan, one of them had heard from the administrators that even the skills of a weak vampire could easily surpass those of a C-rank hunter. And then they started talking about the Count who was standing on the Mountain of Corpses. He was very strong, and he could also regenerate very quickly, so it wouldn't be easy to fight him at all. They imagined that they were standing in the middle of a city, and they were being attacked by vampires, and as they were told earlier, the key to this challenge is to save the clergy. Several of these priests stand with books and make spells, thanks to them they will be able to pass this test. The guys were sitting in front of the fireplace, and Song was listening to their plan, they were going to do everything quietly. Dream looked like he wasn't part of their team, as they pondered what they could get through with Sashio's help, while David used his barrier, and then they would all clear the area together. Song started to get a little nervous as the guys agreed to the plan and calculated the time for about 10 days. Song wasn't happy about it, after all, he was going to get the breakthrough reward. So he started walking towards them and put his hands on their chairs, saying that this would not work, because it would be extremely inefficient to pass the tests in this way. David was smoking a pipe and looking at him with one eye, asking him which way to eat. Dream with a smile on his face said that this is a method that boasts the highest efficiency. David was very surprised, so he exclaimed what kind of method it was. Andri and Sashio asked about his method with a smile on their faces, trusting him, because they knew that he is in the first place in the whole world, maybe he has a special method. He called his plan hit and take. The guys were at a loss as to what kind of method it was. Song then grabbed his sword and instantly cut a hole in the wall, then pushed it with his finger. The wall began to fall, and she fell to the ground, and behind him was a crowd of evil vampires. Song held up a finger as the vampires walked towards him and said that if they just shut up and attack them, they could kill them all and pass the test. The vampires were furious and wondered where the humans had come from. They began to take their weapons and run towards them, saying that they would eat with joy. The guys started yelling that he was crazy trying to kill them, and Song, with a smile on his face, said that the breakthrough operation was starting. Three vampires leapt into the room. They struck, but the guys just started disappearing. The other vampires were confused, but they knew that humans used magic. It was David who used his magic, saying that he couldn't possibly use group concealment for long. David was very angry, because at each combined test there was a guy who wanted to cause a commotion. And then, while Sun was being attacked by a hundred vampires, he said that they should eliminate Sun and retreat. Dream looked up and was surprised to see that they could also control blood. The vampires drew blood from their bodies, saying that it would make a delicious meal. All that blood turned into weapons and flew at Sun. As the boys ran away, Sashio turned around and wondered why he would make such a reckless choice. But then he saw something and turned around, shouting at the guys to turn around. At that moment, Dream also activated blood control and took all the weapons they were using against him. The vampires were in shock, they didn't understand how he was able to control blood, because if he can do that, then he's definitely one of them, so his ability is also stronger than their own. And then Song waved his hand, so that all that blood flew to pierce all those vampires. Sun's chest began to glow, and the vampires saw him as a monster and started shouting for the count. The guys stood and watched him fight, thinking that when faced with such an extremely strong enemy, it makes sense to move according to plan, since such an ignorant method simply can't work, but they don't understand how he did it. 
The old man stood there with a face full of terror and covered in sweat, thinking that it was just that he didn't have enough strength. David took the staff forward and started collecting mana. He was a high-level battle wizard. He had been on the front line for a long time and, in addition, he was distinguished by a sharp mind and quick wit from other people. In the Tower of Trials, he also gets decent marks every time with the help of his outstanding strategies to overcome the floor tests. This allowed him to firmly gain a foothold at the top of the rating. When he was on the 13th floor, Ono used his sharp mind and, as always, was able to develop a clear strategy more effective than the strategies he came up with simply did not exist. But there was one but. Han approached Andri and Sashio and told them to hit and take. I stood there and didn't understand what kind of nonsense Han was talking about. He realized that planning actions was the first thing that needed to be done to solve the problem. Han hit the wall and said with a smile that if he just shut up and attack, he would be able to kill them all and pass the test. Khan threw punches and dealt with opponents. Andri and Sashio watched it together, and we were shocked. Andri turned around and said about the failed plan. He asked if it was better or just leave it to Han Sung Yoon. David held out his hand and apologized. He looked ahead and said that he recognized that Han Sung Yoon had incredible strength, but the vampire side was literally the size of a city, it wasn't a scale that one person could handle. Han stood and stared at the many vampires who were standing on their buildings. He said that even before the tower appeared, there were many monster-like strong hunters. But he didn't understand why team hunting developed and became commonplace. The knight was hit by a barrage of swords and was wounded. It doesn't depend on how strong he is. When there was a situation of disorderly combat, it was simply impossible to deal with such a large number of variables alone. Andri, along with Sashio, watched his con through punches with the ball and dealt with the enemies. Han reached out and the vampires grabbed it. They said that even an insignificant person should die. They grabbed his arms, and the other vampires started swinging their arms to attack. Han looked at it all and his arms started to swell. The vampires didn't understand what was happening and then they flew back. They flew up and were attacked by Han's blood. They shouted loudly, and Han he activated the Ashen Blood skill and healed his hands. He looked to the side and realized that at this rate, he would have to use recovery items endlessly. He understood that blowing up his own body was a good skill, but it was worth the most money. The vampires stood without their limbs and realized that some insignificant person might have had a hand in their powers, bestowed by the god of battle. The vampires looked at the one kindred who was trembling and talking about the apostle. They asked what he was talking about and realized that it really was the apostle. It was God who protected the people who sent the apostle. God was angry because they killed all the people in this city. They asked him to bring them salvation. Han was thinking about the apostle of God. He assumed that these vampires had misled themselves. After which, one of the vampires hit the other on the head with his hand and said that he was a weakling. He pointed his finger forward and said to look at him carefully. He pointed his finger at Hana and said that he had shortness of breath. The vampires looked at him with a smile and realized that he was exhausted. They realized that now was the time to attack, or they turned on him. Han stretched out his hand and created a blood sphere. The vampires didn't understand what it was, so Han created three more of them and held them in his fingers. He picked them up and stuffed them in his mouth. He bit through them and began to fill with power. They were vampire souls. He said that these were their comrades and Han used them to boost his stamina. I also wrote a system message telling him to use them to restore his mana. He looked at them with a smile saying that the recovery was complete and he decided to start round two. The vampires looked at it all and started screaming. Han dealt with all the vampires with ease. Sashio and his other teammates watched this and he began to understand how Han was ranked number one in the rankings. He looked as if random combat was his specialty. Andri said that he completely agreed with this and Khan was not only tired, but with each time and each blow he became stronger. Andri said that he would go to his aid. Sashio turned his head and said that even though safety was his top priority, but in this situation, he felt like he should help Han. David stood and listened in silence. The system message wrote that Han had used up all of his available soul power and replenished his stamina. Strength was increased by 3, agility was increased by 2, stamina was increased by 4, mana was increased by 5. Han stood and radiated strong energy. He realized that just by comparing his height, it was several times better than absorbing the clown spirit. He looked confidently ahead and realized that if the vampire counts were also killed, it would be a very productive game. A system message said that the administrators the only ruler of the deep sea found it interesting. The ex-leader of the traders laughs at the top of his lungs, I think it's very funny. Administrator Black Devil said that the applicant was more devilish than the devil himself and shook his head as if he was already tired of it. Administrator One Dragon Slayer, born in 1000 years, laughed and said that his courage had the qualities of a hero. The administrator of the Fallen Air Church of the Blood Demons was surprised to praise his use of magic power. The administrator, a hero of the ruined world, smiled with satisfaction, saying that Han was worth being interested in. 
Han realized that this was an excellent opportunity to continue to attract the attention of the administrators. He realized that there was nothing wrong with appearing in a good light in front of the administrators. The Khan noticed that someone approached him and he said that he thought they were looking for priests. The team approached him and David said they had decided to follow his instructions. Andri said that they questioned his convictions and were not stupid. Han looked at them and said that they all finally understood the effective strategy of Bay and Barry. The system message said that I activated skill six sense and a red curtain appeared over the city. Han smiled and smiled and thought of the vampire count. Andri looked at all this in surprise and assumed that it was high magic. He hadn't expected the vampire count to have high magic as well. David said that this was just a unique trait of their race, however, the problem was that this power was so powerful that it resembled high magic. Sashio wondered what to make of this situation. He said that at this rate, it was only a matter of time before they all died. Han nodded his head and realized that he had a feeling that the hunters he once admired were now targets of protection. He wondered if he had grown so much in time. He called out to the hunters and told them to leave this place and find it quickly and bring the priests here. They looked at him in surprise and Sashio didn't understand why the priests. He thought that there was no need for that and decided to come clean. Han looked at them and said that if they were near him, they would only be a hindrance to him. Simply put, Han wasn't ready to protect all three of them yet. He took a stance and realized that in order to absorb the spirit of the vampire counts, he would have to fight them alone, and if the contributions of the other challengers increased, he might not be able to absorb their spirit. Andri turned his head and said that they would do as Han said, although he didn't feel like a burden for a long time, so he doesn't feel very well. David told them to wait, and they would gather the priests and come back. They started walking, and Han knew they had to start packing in earnest. He stood and stared at the red glow ahead of him. The system message said that the battle concentration skill was activated. The user's concentration has been increased by five times. Han's blood heavenly energy power was activated as he took up a stance and began to concentrate. Han stretched out his hands and he fully activated the blood seeker skill and he could also interfere with all blood manipulation abilities within the skill's range. The castle began to shine brightly with a red light and the count began to get angry. He squeezed my hand so hard that he broke part of the throne and realized that some pathetic person dared to resist his power. He realized that although he had planned to save the city's infrastructure for future use, now he was just going to make this place a living hell. He pointed his index finger forward and blood began to drip on the street. Han was surprised and realized that the girth of his strength was bigger than he thought. He tensed up and realized that he wouldn't be able to block his attack, so he called him a fool and continued to concentrate. A lot of vampires were standing around holding a plate that had grapes on it. The vampires took it and put it in their mouths. He had white hair and was wearing a suit. It was Sel Nair, the vampire count. He didn't know how it all started, he just fought and fought again. He climbed higher and higher, and the essence of his life was battle. It also happened frequently to those who were desperate for more. He was standing on a mountain of corpses of defeated enemies and when he came to his senses, there was a shock from it. Soon, his thirst reached the heavens. A system message has written that the god of battle is appointing Selnair as an apostle contender. He was standing there, and his eyes were covered in blood, as was his face. After that, there were mountains on the horizon, and a city nearby. The greatest wish of his kind was the destruction of the four impregnable allied powers of humanity. The name was destroyed by three powers and an incredible number of people were killed. The surrounding area was on fire, and the river became bloody. The fountain of life was rooted in the four allied powers and turned red from spilled blood. Pamplona that if the last country is completely conquered, the god of battle will recognize him as a true apostle and his peak will be his becoming the vampire king. The count looked ahead and smiled broadly. After that, a vampire approached him and called out to him. He said they were in big trouble. The count was not happy when he heard that the forces under their command were killed, or rather killed by one person. A mirror with a bat on it was brought up to him and it showed what was happening on the surface. He looked at the way Han dealt with everyone, and he didn't understand what it was. The Count was furious he was sure that he had dealt with all the fool who claimed to be the hero. He asked which country sent him those fools this time. The trembling vampires said that they just suddenly appeared on the horizon. The Count gritted his teeth and said that his precious subordinates were killed by someone who suddenly appeared. He said it was bullshit and said his people were useless fools. He started shouting loudly and said wasn't it absurd that he suddenly appeared in the middle of the city, avoiding the gaze of so many eyes. He started sucking out the vampire's souls and they were asked to temper their anger. The Count said that if he had completely conquered this city, he would have been recognized as a true apostle and all his plans would have been ruined. He said that some insignificant person dared to resist him strongly, even though the city's infrastructure was planned to be preserved for future use well, he would just turn this place into hell, hand headed forward from the Count's strike. 
Han, looking back, realized that if things had turned out this way, then he should have forgotten about the city and focused on saving the lives of his family members. Oba looked ahead and saw his teammates standing in the sphere that protected them. Han moved forward, running away from the blow, and held out his hand. He jumped up and used the shield in the sky. He started to block the blow and was very focused, but the shield started to break. Han, looking at all this, realized that he needed to hold on a little longer, but after a second, he completely broke down and began to fall down again. He fell down and ended up on the rocks. His partners ran up to him and asked if he was safe. He said he was safe and Sashio held out his hand. He said that he managed to survive because the Khan stood in front of their shield and weakened the impending barrier. In fact, Han thought for a moment that he was really going to say goodbye to his life. The two men looked to the side and saw the Count descend to the surface. He stood in front of them and realized that it was amazing to survive such a strong attack. He understood what that meant, that they had killed his subordinates, and it wasn't just a simple coincidence. He looked at them and realized that one weak barely alive boy was next to three other completely unharmed fighters. He assumed that they were key figures. He crossed his arms in front of him and spread them apart. Things made of gravel appeared near his hands, and he shouted that people like bugs should be dead, and he would tear them to shreds. They looked at it all, and Han stepped in front of them. He told them to stand back and he would deal with this count. The teammates started to move out of the way, and they said that they would retreat for a while. Andre said that if he needed help, then let the Khan immediately call them. The Count asked who gave him the right to decide, he said that he would not just let anyone go. He immediately headed forward towards them. Han stood still and felt something brush past him. The Count moved forward and didn't expect to see Hana in front of him. He realized that it was the person who had been crushed into the rock earlier. He didn't understand how the man had come here in time. The Khan asked if the Count had ever heard such a saying. Words become grains. Han smiled and said that whatever the Count said to him, he would give it back to him. The Count walked forward and said that it was a crazy person. He thought that Han had decided to play hero. A player holding two balls in front of him said that in one he should die and was torn to shreds. He charged forward, throwing many punches at the Count. The two companions looked at all this and were surprised to see Han standing over the Count. The Khan told them to go looking for priests as soon as possible. Sashio watched all this with surprise and realized that the vampire counts were dead, so he asked why the priests were there. Han asked nothing that seemed strange to them. The Count's body started to take off, and Han realized that a message about the end of the test on the 13th floor should have appeared long ago, but for some reason it wasn't there. The system message said that the side eye of the fire dragon was activated. The Count's body began to rise and reassemble itself. Body fragments of the vampire Count Selner's body was currently being restored by the power of regeneration. They looked and realized that the Count could regenerate even in this state. David couldn't believe it. Sashio said that the city was in ruins, so all the priests must have died. I asked him how about I join the fight myself. The Khan said that he would block Count Vampire, and they should try to find priests or some sacred relics and return here immediately. I apologized to him and to myself, and he said that I had to deal with the boss alone, too, and David said that since Han said so, they would go. Sashio said that you were his specialty in search, so he would try to find everything as quickly as possible. The Count's body began to recover and soon, he also fully recovered. He started shouting loudly and asking how an ordinary person dared to injure him. He started to approach Han, and Han realized that the Count had incredible strength and regeneration and it was obvious that his recovery and blood control skills were more effective than those in his arsenal. The Count moved forward and threw a punch at Han, but Han dodged it. He realized that in terms of fighting ability and advantage was on his side. I looked at him and said he was just a pathetic little rat. He started using his blood and directed it towards Han. Han noticed this and started dodging her. He raised his hands, and she began to struggle. The Count began to laugh and asked how he felt. He said that he was the best at blood management techniques. Han abruptly appeared behind the Count, and he said with a smile that he knew this and thanks to him, she mastered one more method of using this technique. The Count didn't expect to turn back and then started shouting. His body started to tear apart, and Han stabbed him right through. He realized that despite the fact that this time he was chopping it into smaller pieces, but it still regenerated and such a sight gave him goosebumps. He wondered if it was really impossible to kill him. He suggested that this test was originally intended to be impossible. He looked at the city and realized that when it was in such a terrible state, it would be even better if he found at least one living priest. The Count's blood and particles started to gather, and he regenerated again and stood in front of Han with a huge smile. Han realized that he was in big trouble. The Count looked up with a smile and asked Han if he really thought he could kill him, suggested that these were absolutely absurd actions. Han stood holding two swords and said that it was not forbidden. The Count was surprised, and Han, with a ghastly look and a smile, said that he was terribly curious about how many times he would have to chop him up to make him really die. He began to radiate terrifying energy from his body and the Count noticed it. 
The Count's hands began to tremble, and he thought to himself that he Selnair was trembling in fear of the cop. He gritted his teeth and shouted at Tom with his hand raised to not underestimate him. He said that he was the one who would become the Vampire King. He was about to swing, but Han easily cut him into many pieces in a second and said it was three times. The Count started screaming in pain and holding his head told him not to think that he would win just because he was hurting him. Before he could finish speaking, Han cut his head and body into many pieces and said that it was already four times. The Count started to recover and said it was useless and started laughing. He said that he couldn't be killed and was immortal, and then Han cut his head in half and said it was five times. The Count said that since he was a human, he would not be able to escape the laws of his own body and it would soon shut down from exhaustion. Han cut his body again and said it was six times. Then he chopped off his head and cut out his face and said it was seven times. The Count looked at him and assumed that he was the legendary player. Han punched it into multiple pieces again and said it was eight times. The system message said that he had received the Artist of the Battlefield achievement. The Art of Torture skill was created. Han stood up, raised his weapon, and wondered if he should cut it into slices or mince it. The Count started running away from Han and realized that he was a monster. He ran forward and realized that he had to get out of there immediately. But suddenly the Khan was sitting on the column and said that he would return every word he said to the Count in full. He tossed up his sword and asked him who gave him the right to decide if he would let him go or not, and the Count looked at him and I wondered who the crazy fool was. He said it was just the devil. Han cut him apart again and it was already nine times. The Count told him to stop and offer to talk to him and arrange the usual negotiations, and then he decided to make a deal with him. The Count said that he would do whatever the Khan wanted. Han Sen slashed it again it was ten times. The Count reminded him that he would do anything and give him wealth, fame. He was ready to grant his every wish. Han cut it again eleven times and headed forward. The Count begged him to kill him, as he couldn't take it anymore. Han cut him twelve times and the Count said that he was not a hero at all, but just a brutal killer who was rotten to the bone. The system message said that Han had received the achievement beginning of madness. More skills have been created to enhance. The Khan started slashing at the Count and he cried and begged him to stop, and he gave up. He only had one head and said he would give it all to him. Han asked if he could just stop running around and just die. Han didn't understand what kind of endless recovery it was. He looked ahead in surprise and started to smile. He pointed at the Count who was trying to recover with his finger and told him to come here. The Count started running towards him and bowed low to him, his body still trembling. Han said that he had a plan in mind and that if he cooperated with him, everything would be fine. The Count looked at him with his head down and asked what he needed to do. Han activated the counterattack shield and a powerful beam rang out. He said it was a modified version of the counterattack account, which was called the stuffed counterattack. Instead of a huge beam, there was a cross that came out of the ground. He was between the Count and the Khan. Han said that now the Count had to attack him until he said the word stop. The Count looked at him in surprise and Han asked why he still wasn't attacking. He asked if he wanted to live. The Count rose to his feet and began to strike the cross. His face was terrified and he knew that the sequence of events that had occurred today, from beginning to end, did not fit in his head. He thought it was like the snow had fallen on his head. He didn't understand where some madman had come from and was destroying the greatest power in vampire history. Han stood and watched as the cross was struck. The Count realized that no matter how much he thought about it, there was clearly something wrong. He was throwing attacks and assumed that this was a test of God, he looked at the cross that was glowing brightly. Han was leaning against the building's support as the Count continued to strike. He realized that from the very beginning, they had found it strange that a human had the ability to control blood. He realized that the vampire savior, who made real warriors out of his subordinates, taught them to be alert because they had long been weakened. He struck the cross and it began to shine brightly, going up into the sky. The Count was surprised and the system message said that the counterattack shield skill had reached the state of reflecting accumulated damage. Han went ahead and said it was a car and asked him to stop. The Count looked on and the Khan said with a big smile that it was time for him to die. The Count looked at it all and realized that he was no savior. The shield began to shine brightly and the Count was caught in the sphere that grabbed him. Han said that since he was constantly regenerating no matter how many times he killed him, he threw his sword towards the sphere and it pierced the counterattack shield. The system message said that the counterattack shield skill instantly released accumulated damage. The sphere began to shine brightly, and the Count stared at the horror. Han realized that he was about to break down into atoms to the point where not a single piece of flesh remained. The Count looked at it all and realized that he could finally die. In the place where the Count was, a huge beam was heard and everything began to incinerate. Han just stood there and watched. The system message wrote that they congratulate him on passing the 13th floor of the tower tests. As a reward for breaking through, a random a plus rank skill book will be sent to his inventory. As a reward for breaking through, 90,000 points were awarded. As a reward for breaking through, 4000 sauce were awarded. 
As an additional reward, 5,000 ko was awarded. The transfer to the waiting room has begun. Han stood there, smiling. He was glad that he had managed to kill the Count. He realized that by absorbing the blood cell Nair had spilled, he could do something incredible. When he killed an opponent with the heavenly demonic true blood sword, the blood feast effect absorbed the opponent's blood into the blade, increasing the item's overall effectiveness and imprinting random skills. Han pointed his sword at the pool of blood and the system message wrote that the exclusive effect of the heavenly demonic sword's blood feast of true blood had been activated. The pool of blood began to sparkle and the system message was written to absorb the blood of vampire Count Selnair the level of the item increases to a class 300 from 14 -0. Absorbing Count's blood imprinting skill blood gain with plus imprinted fleet for blood. Blood feast slot of the imprinting skill is a C plus rank blood boost. The description of the imprinting skill was as follows. Hand could strengthen the blood in the blood management area with a skill obtained from the vampire Counts of Selnair. The effect of the imprinting skill was like this. When mana is used to strengthen blood in the blood management area, the strength of the control is enhanced. Hand stretched out his hand and bright red lines began to sparkle on it. The system message said that the C-plus rank Heavenly Demonic Sword True Blood Sealing skill has been activated. I looked at all this and was surprised. He realized that he now had a blood control ability that surpassed that of the Vampire Counts. He made weapons with his own blood, and they flew in the air. He felt like he had become the Vampire King. Above him, there were many swords that were pointed upwards. He realized that this was a very good thing although the downside was that there might be a little misunderstanding in the future. The system message said that he used the absorption from Selnair's spirit to permanently increase his stats. His strength was increased by 5, agility was increased by 4, stamina was increased by 6, mana was increased by 7, stamina was increased by 5. Han absorbed the soul and he managed to discover divinity from the vampire Count's spirit. There was an attempt to extract divinity and extracting divinity was successful. Han realized that it was the same message he had seen when he absorbed the clan spirit. The system message said that the divinity extraction was successfully completed and the power rank B rank divine power was being upgraded by one level. When he accumulated myths with the power of B rank divine power, the rank would rise. Han stood on the battlefield and glowed brightly. He realized that he didn't know this at the time and realized that the condition for extracting divinity was the difference between whether a spirit possessed divine power or not. The divine power looked like a ball of bright light. He realized that considering that divinity wasn't extracted from ordinary vampires, it might only apply to those who had at least the same level of divine power as him. He realized that there were too many unknowns and every time something related to divine power surfaced, he would have a terrible headache. The system message says that one of the Count's skills has been absorbed. Han received the C-rank charisma skill Han was surprised by this skill and the system message said that when absorbing a spirit stronger than the user, it was evaluated for power extraction. Hana read all this and realized that this was an enemy that was impossible to deal with or a strong opponent. He wondered by what criteria the assessment took place. He realized that he still had some guesses, and it seemed to him that things related to such concepts as gods or apostles were considered high-ranking. The system message wrote that the evaluation was successfully completed and it was confirmed that Selnair's vampire counts had strength. Siwa was extracted from the spirit. The C-plus rank faith harvest power was engraved on Han's soul. Han was thinking about the harvest of faith when someone called out to him. Han turned his head and saw the team. Sashio said with a smile that the priests had protected the people with the protection force and that many more people had survived than they thought. The priests, along with the humans, were surprised that Han was able to defeat the vampire count alone. They said that he was also a hero and they didn't expect the hero to come to them on his own. As expected, the god did not leave them and this was the messenger of the great god. People were thanking Han for giving them a helping hand. The system message wrote that the harvest of faith was only detected by faith in the user. Many people stood and cheered that Han was able to protect them. He looked at all this and realized that these people were sending him their faith, which made him glow all over. He put his hand to his chin and thought. He seems to have realized that faith sent under the influence of delusion was also considered faith. He realized that he had to make good use of the opportunity that came his way. He smiled and stretched out his hands, leaning on his sword. The system message says that the charisma skill has been activated. It also wrote that his weight in the eyes of others once and other people were not exposed to his opinion. People were cheering and happy. Han realized that he hadn't lied once, though. The system message said that Han had received the achievement I didn't lie. His mom has been increased by one. More powerful effects of the harvest of faith power have been activated and a system message has been written for Han to reap self-confidence from others. A more powerful effect was also activated by the power of divine power. Calculation of the myth based on real results in comparison with the faith of believers. Han stood up, spreading his arms to the side and accepting the thanks of the people around him. Han thought about the myth and the system message said that the vampire slayer myth was complete. 
Medler stood up confidently and looked ahead in surprise. The system message said that the Vampire Slayer mythos was activated. An effect has been added to the divine attack, unable to regenerate. The exorcism effect was added to the divine attack. Han stood there, beaming. He was surprised by this and realized that after breaking the chain from the infinite regeneration of vampires, the effect of unable to regenerate was added, and after the mass murder of vampires in the city, the effect of exorcism was added. Han smiled and realized that this was interesting. It seemed to him that he now understood the accumulation of myths. The divine power combined with the newly found harvest and faith took on the form of a myth. Another one new force was created inside the force. Han stood there and felt his heart beating and he could see the divine power that had never been used by him before steadily flowing out. When the myth was activated, the divine power that was in his body was absorbed. He stood there, his chest glowing. The system message wrote that there was not enough knowledge and beliefs to rely on. The collected faith was saved for the next myth. Han realized that it now seemed to him that the faith that people were sending out was pretty much already gathered. A system message said that the power of harvest, faith has been deactivated. Han stood and watched as people worshipped him. He realized that this floor was cleared and his team went to the portal. David went up to him and told him that he was a childish idiot at first. He held out his hand to the Khan and asked if he would forgive him for this. Han held out his hand and shook it. He said that of course he would forgive him. The system message wrote that the god of battle realized that his potential apostle was dead. Meshayu didn't understand what it was and didn't even sense its existence. Han fell on the field, and the god of battle sensed his divine power and was hostile. David asked what was wrong with him and Han was covered in sweat and didn't understand what was going on. The ground began to crumble and people began to run away. As they started to run, fire erupted from the ground. The ground collapsed and people fell into the fire and lava. The system message said that the entrance to the divine realm had been completed. Han looked ahead with a stern gaze and realized that the trials had been completed. David was confused about people, and he was watching it all. He looked ahead and saw his portal that had separated. Han told David to give them another handshake. Han ran and threw David to the portal. David realized that the method was clueless, but it worked and David went to the portal. A lot of people were standing near the cliff, and Han approached them and told them to stand aside. He struck the ground and made a hole there. The system message said that Han had activated the counterattack shield skill. He created a large shield that was all over the field. David didn't know Hero or Han or not, but if there were still heroes in this harsh world, then they must look exactly like Han, who had just been saved by so many people. David went to the portal and hoped that Han would return safely. Han pointed his hand forward, and he said that he couldn't hold back the lava for long and people should cross the bridge as soon as possible. He confidently looked ahead and had small hopes, but there were no surges of faith. He thought he should have gone back through the portal too. The system message said that the god of battle was disgusted by the fact that a mere mortal possessed divinity. A lot of people started going crazy and getting headaches. Anai grabbed onto it and thought it was going to disappear, and then their heads started exploding. Han looked on in shock and didn't understand. He looked at all the people and their heads burst. They collapsed to the ground and lay dead. The system message said that the god of battle said that it was a pity that the dog returned by the tower had crossed the line. Han, with blood on his face, asked if he really said that he had crossed the line. He confidently looked ahead and said that the one who had just crossed the line was him, and as long as he had the defense of the tower, if he continued to hinder him, he would have big problems. He said if he had nothing else to say, he would go. The system message said that the battle god was laughing fiercely in response. Han went to the portal, and he realized that he still needed to grow up. The system message said that the battle god was telling him that he was looking forward to the mortal's end soon. Hany walked with a serious look on his face, but in order for even the gods to not treat him with disdain, he needed to grow up. The system message said that the entrance to the waiting room on the 14th floor was made. The expansion of the system began. Items designed to prevent floor intrusion will be added to the exclusive shop for the contract. Halo upgrade items will be added in the exclusive store for the contractor. Elixir items will also be added to the exclusive shop. Han walked into the waiting room and wiped the blood from his face. He looked ahead and exhaled. He realized that somehow this was the space that the tower had created, and when he didn't know whether it was fake or genuine, empathy was just a waste of energy. He realized that the one who had created all this was called the God of Battle. He realized that he was on bad terms with the gods. He recalled the past dialogue with God and he said to him they do not believe other gods and now they will consider him an enemy. Han realized that this was how it had all turned out in the end, and he needed to stop thinking about things that were beyond his control, he needed to focus on what he could do now. He picked up the blue stone and now, and his clothes fell to the ground. The system message said that he had 11,500 ko. He bought the power of the path of the ghost sword of rank s 10,000 ko was used up. 
The description was as follows. Those who have been caught in the contradiction between becoming strong in order to live, or living to become stronger by using the sword, received just such power. When it came to swordsmanship, Han could develop his own skills, and it would become easier for him to realize his own enlightenment. Han went into the woods and went to the receptionist. She looked up and said that she hadn't seen Hana in a long time. Han sat down next to her, and she said that she had heard from that woman that his enemy was a child of the Namgoon family. Han said it was just like that, and the girl said it must have been because of Namgoon Hayak. Because of him, Han used special points to buy her power. She smiled and said that then she could tell that Han had made the right decision. The girl said that, in common parlance, Han was a genius. She said that since she didn't even know anything about the paths of enlightenment properly, Han had instinctively learned the forms of swordsmanship, and it could be said that Han had completely gone beyond mere imitation, and moreover, in the trial on the twelfth floor, Han had learned the will of the sword and even improved the sword technique itself. A double sword, Han realized that he was just good at copying. Han turned his head and the administrator said that the very fact that Han had acquired some knowledge of the Namgung family's techniques and refined them showed that he possessed the qualifications of a great master. Han asked what this meant and the girl said that what she meant was that even if he founded the sword sect, it wouldn't be anything surprising. Han asked what his level was. The girl turned around and said with a smile that the strength he chose this time was a great choice. She said that now everything Han learns and realizes will be transformed into tower-approved abilities. She said that she would teach Han everything, but she had one condition. She said that a mentor-student relationship should be established between them. Han agreed and said that he would become her disciple. The girl looked at Hana and shouted that she wasn't trying to force Hana into anything, and he might think about it a little more. Han held up his hand and said that he would become a disciple. The girl said that since it was his will, she wouldn't refuse. Han realized that the white crane sword was a challenger that had risen above the 40th floor. He didn't see any sense or any particular reason to reject the doctrine of such a powerful person. The girl looked at him and said that in return, Han would not regret his decision. Han said that the administrator planned to treat him so harshly that he would regret his decision in the future. The receptionist said that everything was wrong and Han was exaggerating. She recalled the past and said that in Mirim, the mentor can only have one master for all his life and so she told Han not to regret her choice. She said that if Han was worried about something like that, then she wouldn't regret it. Han thought about it and realized that it was unlikely that anyone would want to become his teacher. The girl bowed, and she said that following the procedure, she would formally introduce herself before he bowed to her. She pointed to herself and said that she was the 17th head of the Beak Swordmaster family. She said that she was the strongest Miram master of the previous generation. And from now on, she warrior Beak Sol HWA will be Han's mentor. I was also surprised that she was the strongest Miram master. Han bowed and Sial HWA stood up. She said that if you summed up the short theory lesson, it looked like this. Martial arts were very similar in many ways and were divided into spiritual and physical techniques. The spiritual method is a technique that cleanses and stores the external mana inside the body, and the mana accumulated during the purification process is called internal energy. Physical method this was a technique that used his body, and included lightning movement and swordsmanship abilities, where body movements played an important role. These were all martial arts involving the use of Kai energy that was formed through a spiritual method. But while the flow of this information was pouring in, she had one question. Isn't the blood heaven energy a spiritual technique? Han said that he had a question and the girl was surprised when Han asked if there would be any problems in learning if he had another spiritual method that he had already mastered. Seol HWA looked at him blankly and asked if he had mastered the spiritual method. She shouted for him to explain more quickly. Han said that while listening to her explanation, he felt like he had mastered something similar to the spiritual method. The girl asked if that woman Lord Steelblood Khan was trained in aura cultivation. Han said that it wasn't quite like that and Han didn't even know what aura cultivation was. He assumed that it was taken on a concept from another world. Seol HWA said that no matter how you looked at it, she wasn't the type to break her promise, but she didn't believe it, so she would have to see for herself. Han was surprised, and the girl put her hand on Han's body. Han didn't know when she'd made it, or exactly what she'd been doing. She held Han's clothes and held her hand. Seol leaned her hand on it and it began to glow. Han flinched and asked what the mentor was doing. Seol watched it all carefully and asked him to wait quietly for a second. She said that other than pure mana, she saw no signs of mastery of any spiritual method. Han began to think and realized that in reality, the blood heaven energy was actually the power sent to him by the administrator of the fallen heir of the blood demon church on the 12th floor. He recalled that only three were in the order of the turn and activating the blood heaven energy improved his battle sense, so he often used this power. Saul closed her eyes and said that it wasn't a spiritual method, 
but a power. She said that of course it was a form of spiritual practice mastered through long training that later transformed into strength, but it couldn't be considered a spiritual method. Han called out to his mentor and asked if she could stop sitting in such an incomprehensible pose and touching him already. Saul blushed with embarrassment and immediately stepped back. She faced the wall and changed. She said she was surprised by what he said, so she unknowingly started checking inappropriately. Han said it was okay and looked at Saul, who was radiating energy to the country and said she was not happy with this kind of arrangement. She turned with an angry look grabbing her sword I said that the fool of the blood demon church dared to send such an unchanging spiritual method as a force. Han thought that he needed to reconsider his assessment regarding the white crane sword. Xiao and Han went out into the open, and Xiao stood in front of him and said that it might be better if Han didn't learn spiritual methods, since he could accumulate little without learning a spiritual method. She said that if Han learned a spiritual method in the form of power, he would be able to use various spiritual methods interchangeably. Han asked if this was really possible. The mentor said that the techniques of her martial arts were practically unrestricted by the spiritual method, so it was fine, however she had a question about the spiritual method. She said that it was an important part of the relationship between priests. She first decided to start with the sword-wielding method, and carefully asked to watch and repeat after her. Saul drew her sword and a system message wrote that the combat concentration skill had been activated. The user's concentration was increased by 10 times. The mentor took out her sword which emitted a bright pink energy and she raised it up and then started swinging the sword and finished with a lunge forward. Han watched all of this and realized that he had only seen her soft appearance and bits of aura, so he had no idea what she was really like, but as expected she was still that warrior. Saul, holding up her weapon said that she would now demonstrate one technique of her sword mastery method of the white sword technique family. She used the white sword's dissecting seas and started to slowly rise up and then she did a circular strike and her hair rose up. Han watched all this was shocked. She looked in Han's direction and said that he might not be able to see it properly and apologized for that, but that was the minimum necessary speed for the technique. Han walked over to her and said it was fine and he thought he could do it again. He drew his sword and began to repeat his mentor's movements. He thought to himself and realized that it felt as if space itself was pulling her cut in such a way that avoiding the blow was impossible. He made a circular strike and concentrated. He assumed he was doing sort of the same as her and after finishing the technique he turned in his head and said he tried to do everything exactly as she did, he asked where he had made mistakes. Saul looked at him with a shocked look and said that it just couldn't be. Geniuses existed in all times, and they achieved far greater accomplishments than others due to their innate ability to learn. They were endowed with different talents in different areas. Some were very strong, some were smart, and some were adept in science. Genius is showing the pinnacle of their ability to understand, evaluate, and master the objects of a particular field, but even geniuses could only reveal their true abilities after practice, but Han had succeeded the first time. Seol didn't understand where it was seen that someone could immediately repeat the technique of the white sword cutting the sea only after seeing it in action once. She called out to Hana, and he looked at her questioningly. Seol said that it looked like Han had no idea how amazing it was. She started to remember Namgoon Hek and said that the sword-wielding method, the seven white sword techniques, was a martial art that contained more advanced techniques than the heavenly sword forms method that Namgoon Hek used. Han asked what the heavenly sword forms were. The mentor said that there were two techniques of the Namgoon noble family that they had reproduced earlier, the flaming heaven sword and the soaring heaven sword, and were not part of the heaven sword forms. Han realized that it was something like a set of techniques used by Namgoon Hek. Seol said that like the heavenly sword forms, it was a physical method that went beyond the basic techniques of speed and destruction and included complex techniques that occupied space itself. She said that Han was able to replicate the white sword technique of the white sword splitting the sea with one time. Han was taken aback when Seol said that Han had looked at the reproduction of the lie technique once and demonstrated its execution at the level of the original. Han was trying to understand all of this and was very pleased or embarrassed or pointless to hear it. Seol said that Han was an intuitive genius. She said she had never heard of anyone who comprehended a technique not through experience or judgment, but rather through the very essence in the moment he was looking at her. Han said that despite everything she said, he didn't quite understand what she meant. The mentor pointed her index finger and said that only one day was needed and that meant that he could learn most martial arts techniques in just one day. Originally, martial arts were understood and accepted based on each person's unique path, but Han didn't need to find his own path and he could just watch and repeat after everything he saw. Han sat down next to him and Saul stepped out onto his arm to his back began to radiate mana. She said she wanted to tell him about the method of performing mana, the physical method, it's a fist-fighting method, a heavenly body art. 
Up to the golden grip technique, he had mastered everything he could, and among all this variety, the most effective method was of course the sword-wielding method, the seven white sword techniques. Han had studied all of these in the white sword technique of dissecting Mora, which occupied space itself and essentially cut through it, made it almost impossible to dodge with a strike. The white sword piercing the sky powerful stabbing technique allowing one to pierce through defenses. White sword creating void was a defense technique that distorted the space around the sword. Saul clapped her hands happily as Han studied it all, and Han stood there smiling. He said that he had learned a lot from her and he was very grateful to her. A joyful Sial realized that she didn't really look like a mentor, but she was very happy that Han was able to learn everything. Han bowed and said he would go. He turned to the side and said that he would check in on her again later, but until then, let her be in good health. Sial was very happy about this and to hide her emotions she coughed and said she wished him good luck too. She said that if Han puts an effort commensurate with his talents, his skills will improve much faster. Afterward we see a portal and a system message wrote that entry to the 14th floor waiting room had been made. Han headed towards his bed and he realized that he had really learned a lot. Although a little he felt sorry that she is current level he still hadn't mastered all seven white sword techniques. The system message was written by a B-plus ranked demon slayer. Han watched all of this and realized that although this sword technique that had served him well and had actually evolved with him, it was no longer enough. And to encompass the forms of Namgung's heavenly sword or the seven white sword techniques of the mentor, he had created a skill using the power of the ghost sword path. The description was that, those who were caught in the contradiction between becoming strong to live to become stronger by using the sword would receive just from such an attack. And when it came to sword wielding, he could immediately develop his own skills and it would become much easier for him to realize his own enlightenment. The system message wrote that the iron blood spot had been activated, the combat concentration skill had also been activated. Han drew his sword and began to strike. He realized that although with the reproduction of the heavenly sword forms, and the white sword technique family using the paired sword technique. His chances had become more advanced than before, but it was still not enough for him to develop the skill. He remembered the conversation with his mentor, and she had said that skill development could only be created with a system, and when she recognized the technique as a skill. Han realized that if he took the sword-wielding method of the seven white sword techniques as the basis, he would be able to add the techniques of the heavenly sword forms here at any time. But at the same time, he was unable to give up the concept that the attack contained in the paired sword technique was an improved defense. Countless times Han cleaved the air and countless thoughts ran through his mind in a non-flowing stream, and he was able to activate a more powerful force effect of the sword ghost path. Han marveled at this and a rank a mixed beginning sword skill was created. The description was like this, this sword-wielding technique created by mixing the sword-wielding method of the white sword technique family, and the heavenly sword forms. The basic effect was that when using the sword, positive correction was added to the techniques of the sword-wielding family of white sword techniques and heavenly sword forms, and the level of realization of the techniques was increased. An additional effect was that when using the paired sword technique, the attack speed and power of utilization of some techniques and sword techniques of the white sword technique family doubled. Han smiled and realized that he had indeed created a new skill, plus although it was good that he had, he had some adjustments to make. He presented his hand to his chin and realized that still some of the omissions were upsetting him. He opened the inventory and looked at the book. It was the reward for the trials of the 13th floor. This book was a rank a plus random skill book. A skill book that, when used, allowed one to randomly obtain a rank B plus skill. This item could only be used by the challenger and could not be given to anyone else. Han opened this book and wondered if he could try his luck, though the rank was high enough anyway. A system message wrote for him to use the rank a plus random skill book to randomly acquire a new rank B plus skill. Han activated the more powerful effect strength, warrior defense and for a while his luck increased dramatically. He created a new skill demonic blood spirit sword rank B+. The description of this skill was that it was a secret sword technique that could only be learned by a descendant of the blood demon church. The basic effect was that when using the sword blade is given demonic properties that have a harmful effect on living beings. The additional effect was that when using techniques of similar skills, the exclusive double strike effect was activated and the effect of the technique was doubled. Han realized that he still had a little more to go, a system message wrote that a unique power synthesis skill had been activated. The synthesis was centered around the sort of mixed beginning skill. A more powerful effect of the warrior's defense power was activated. His luck increased for a while and he completed the skill synthesis. A new skill was created it was the skill demonic sort of mixed beginnings rank S. Han went straight to the portal and the system message wrote that the trial on the 14th floor was starting. The difficulty was high and the theme of this test was a battle on the input allotted time was equal to 7 days. The conditions for failing the challenge were death of the challenger or expiration of the allotted time. Rewards for successful breakthrough boots win spirit rank a plus. The penalty was death. 
Pan looked forward confidently and the system message said that he was facing a strong opponent that would be quite difficult for him to deal with. Pan activated his indomitable will and stood in front of Namgung Hek, who was standing on the water near a mountain of monster corpses. He asked how long the latter was determined to keep him waiting. He said that even after he killed all those monsters, he never thought of coming, so he thought he had the wrong place. Namgung looked forward with a wide smile, and Han smiled as well. A system message wrote to activate the instant acceleration skill. The combat concentration skill was also activated. The wind mercy skill was activated, and his entire speed was increased by 70%, and his current progress summed up to 7 out of 7. Instantaneous speed was increased due to the exclusive effect of a rank C plus speed boot. Han headed forward holding his sword and they collided right on the water crossing their swords in the air, water splashes flew towards them. After they crossed swords Namgung was surprised that Han used a flaming sword. He asked how he was able to wield it. Han asked with a smile what he was so surprised about. He said that it was just his beginning. Han drew his sword and struck. Namgung was able to dodge, but he was surprised by it. Han kicked him with his foot and Namgung flew off into a rock. He planted his feet on it and was surprised when he realized that Han was able to wound him in the face. Namgun looked forward and saw three shockwaves coming his way. They flew straight into the rock and a massive impact was heard. Namgun kept his sword in front of him was able to block this attack. Han floated in the air while the rocks flew down and wondered how he had his strength. The rock was cut into three pieces and he said that it was his newly created S-rank swordsmanship skill. The description of this skill was that it was a demonic swordsmanship combining various demonic sword techniques. The basic effect was that when using the sword, the blade took on the properties of an extreme trait that continued to damage the enemy until the latter died. The additional effect was that, the power of all sword techniques increased by three times, and the special effect, double attack could activate wishes. Double attack is a sword attack that can be swung twice completely repeating the movements of the original, and with the same power as the sword itself. Han smiled and realized that this was already a kind of cheating. Han pointed his finger at his face with a smile and said that it was early on his cheek and it would torment him until you die. Namgung stood silently and watched with a frown. He held his fingers up and they began to glow. He said it was just a scratch and immediately healed it by rubbing it on his face. Po headed forward and they crossed their swords again. Namgung attacked and Han dodged. He said that the swordsmanship and movement techniques he used clearly belonged to the Miram world. He asked why Han had previously concealed the fact that he possessed martial arts. They pushed back and Han said that he didn't hide anything. He said that at the time his heart was pounding with fear and he tried his best to save his life and yet he was able to learn it all in one day yesterday. Namgung was in complete surprise at what he heard. Namgung said that even though they hadn't seen each other for a long time, he was still a cocky guy. They crossed swords again, and he said Han boldly talked nonsense about being able to master martial arts in just a day. Han strode from the bottom of the attack and said he didn't care if the guy believed him or not, because he had said his piece. They fought on the surface of the water and there were large waves from their blows. They bumped shoulders, and Han said he was a genius. They crossed glances and Han said he could do more like this, then he started attacking Namgung and Namgung tried to dodge his attacks. Namgung looked at all of this and realized that this was a martial art. He gritted his teeth and became angry. He stared forward furiously and asked how the one dared to steal the swordsmanship of the noble Namgung family. Han looked at him with a smile and said that he had actually created it and was at a loss to repeat all of his attacks. He asked if it was his fault that he was able to see Namgung's once favorite technique. Namgung was very angry about this, and Han said that rather the problem was that his swordsmanship skills were too primitive for him to be able to repeat at one time. Namgung started yelling or headed forward. Han dodged the attack and realized that everything happened as he expected. He said to himself that Namgung's techniques were simply amazing. His swordsmanship and movement techniques and non-standard lunges were very good. But now he, while striking, had no idea that he was giving him an advanced master class. Han turned away from another attack and smiled as he realized that he had to memorize everything now and then hit him back. Namgung raised his hand up and it began to glow purple in color. He said it was a battle of the strongest and a circle appeared from above where things started to appear. Han looked at it all and swords started falling on their field. The system notification wrote that a dual zone was forming within a radius of 30 meters, through the unique characteristics of the battle of the strongest. With the exception of Han and Namgung, everyone else was forbidden to enter the dual zone. They stayed jam and Namgung with a fierce smile and a look said that he was caught and he was finished, but he stood up in surprise when he saw what Han was doing. Han held his hand up and began to straighten with blood. He asked if he should tell him what they say on earth about this kind of situation. Han directed the blood towards his opponent, and he said that Namgung had dug a grave for himself. Blood flew towards Namgung, and he said that even if the latter had mastered martial arts, he had taken up his tricks again. The entire arena was covered in blood and Namgung started to get injured. He crossed his arms beside him and groaned in pain. 
He jumped up from the impact and realized he had hit the ceiling with his roast. A system message wrote that the unique characteristic, Battle of the Strongest is forcibly deactivated at the will of the user. Rena began to collapse and Namgung began to fall. Han threw a punch at him and he flew far to the side. He flew all the way through the forest and left a trail on the ground behind him. Han ran up to him and Namgung got to his feet. Han said that this kind of floundering was not befitting the title of Muram's genius. Namgung looked down and his body was all shaking. Then he raised his head and started laughing furiously. Han was surprised by this and didn't understand what was happening. He assumed that the one had finally lost his mind. Namgung clutched his face and he said that he didn't know how Han had managed to do all that. But he had really managed to master martial arts and become stronger in such a short period of time while they hadn't seen each other. He said it really was unforgettable. He stretched his arm out to the side and there appeared a pink camera. He said that Han was an amazing fighter, even if despite the fact that he used a bench tower. He said he acknowledged that, whereupon Han headed forward, swinging his sword. He asked if the man thought he didn't have a backup plan. He started to swing his sword, and Namgung clutched the stone in his hand, and Han struck him in the face. After that, there was a huge explosion and a bright light filled the entire surface. The system message wrote that the stone removing penalties for rank of floor implementation had been used. With the use of this item, the skill restrictions and character reduction that were, the penalties for floor introductions could be cancelled. The trees began to surrender the wind currents and Namgung stood in front of Han full of strength. He stood with a serious face and untied his hair. He asked Han if he was really curious. He raised his sword and a bright beam along with lightning headed upwards which created a purple dragon. Namgung asked him how Han thought why it was called the Heavenly Dragon Sword. Han looked at all the summers and his hair was blown back by the wind. He couldn't believe all that he was now witnessing in front of him. There was a strong energy coming from Namgung. He said such a fool Han shouldn't have seen it. It was amplified Kai. He started swinging his weapon and said Han was honored. Han headed forward towards his opponent and everyone in the neighborhood. He remembered his dialogue with his mentor and she said she would tell him when using Kai. She said that in other words it was using magic on a sword. People used it on their swords and the Kai of the sword would add properties to it that were contrary to the laws of the sword. The flaming sword added one more property to it. She said that amplifying the sword Kai was the next stage and it allowed all the surrounding magic to be used safely. Namgung launched an attack with his sword, and a shockwave in the form of a purple dragon rushed towards Han. Han dodged to the side and didn't think that he would meet the enhanced sword Kai so quickly. He realized that it didn't sound scary in words, but in reality, it was an amazing skill that had incredible power. He ran forward and realized that the range of his attacks had greatly increased I was now very difficult to even get close to him. The purple dragon wriggled he realized that in addition his movements were much faster, they were unusually dangerous, as if the sword had really turned into a living dragon. The shockwave reached Hanu and he blocked it with his sword, at which point his hands began to bleed. He crossed his sword and pushed back. He thought that Namgung would be a bit only stronger than the vampire counts, but that was his foolish assumption. He felt the sword enlightenment as he finished listening to the white crane master, but it seemed the people from Miram were skipping a few stages due to the enlightenment. He stepped back and Namgung pointed his sword towards Han. He asked if he wasn't having fun already. Han smiled and realized that he needed to go full out and finish off his opponent right away. He started concentrating and releasing his red aura. He wanted to learn something from this battle, but now things were getting complicated. He began to gather all the energy and the system message wrote that a will was activated. Heavenly Blood Cultivation Technique Han's eyes turned red and he told him to prepare the garden, after all, he would give his best. Namgung headed towards him with a smile and told him to try his best. They met eyes and Namgung attacked him again, sending a shockwave. Han rushed forward and blocked the attack with blue space. Namgung grudgingly asked who else Han had stolen techniques from. He said it was all useless in front of the enhanced Kai. Han looked at the attack that was heading towards him, and he activated the concentration skill in battle. His concentration was boosted 20 times and he headed forward. He was behind his opponent in a second and was about to strike but Namgung jumped back and there was a bright flash, a second later Han was on the ground and there was no one there. He was bleeding and realized it had hurt his inside so much. He got up and started to dodge Namgung's attack. He tried to run away from it and soon realized that his opponent was using two techniques at once. The system message wrote that there was an activation on Ashen's blood. Han looked to the side and the same Namgung kicked at his body. Han flew far away and crashed into a rock. He started coughing up blood and Namgung walked over to strike him. He started laughing and told him to die soon. There was a bright flash and the rock shattered. Namgung stood looking at Han's naked body. He couldn't believe that Han had actually been able to endure it. Han tried to get up from his knees and Namgung told him that he was very surprised as he didn't think he would be able to fight against him for so long. But his agony was over. Then he raised his sword and with a wide smile said that he had fun. 
hands stood covered in blood, and he realized that after all he had been through he couldn't just die like that, he put forward began to gather a bright red orb. The system message wrote that he had used the skill counter shield releasing accumulated damage. Their techniques clashed together and they began to measure their strength. Namgoon watched it all with a smile, then his sword went through the shield and he impaled Hana. His sword went straight into her neck, and he said with an abnormal smile, that expression on his face that he liked a lot. Han's head was severed, and she flew to the side. A system message wrote that the last battle skill had been activated. All critical damage was nullified, and his senses would be temporarily heightened and his skill strengthened. The recharge of the skill was one week. Han's head began to heal and he realized that the last battle was the extra reward for the 12th floor and here it was that he finally had a use for it. He didn't realize the effect was that strong. He stood in front of a misunderstanding Namgung and realized that there was one more reward for the 12th floor. The system message wrote that the exclusive skill of the ancient emperor's ash crown had activated. Magic from spirits of rank B+. When using the ash crown of the ancient emperor his mind was gradually polluted while cold reason was activated. Han, I put the crown on my head and realized that I would use whatever I could in this battle. The ash crown gave plus 30% to charisma, and the ash crown was used for rituals in the worship of the god of darkness. When used, his mind would be shaken and the item's durability would decrease. He would be able to use rank B plus spirit magic if the item's durability was not destroyed it would regenerate in his inventory. Han called for his servants and a multitude of monsters appeared behind Nemdu. He ordered them to kill him and they rushed towards the enemy. Namgoon grudgingly looked at all the summoners and realized that Han was in the necromancy department as well, and he still had the scar from that cut on his face. He said that Han couldn't defeat him and he easily dealt with a lot of monsters. He pointed his hand towards Han and grabbed his neck. He said he wanted to see if he could rise again. He pointed his sword, which came close to Han's face, but it stopped and dark lines appeared on his face. He realized something was wrong with his body. Han grabbed his arm and Namgoon asked him what he had done to him. Han stood in front of Namgoon who was on his knees and he said that his wound on his cheek would hinder him for the rest of his life. Namgoon kneeled down and the monsters came up to him and then they started eating him. The little boy is standing in the middle of the courtyard and hears someone talking about him, saying that this kid is not even able to even repeat basic steps, they can't understand how Namgoon's family could have been born such a weakling. The man points his finger at him while the kid sits in the corner, yelling at his wife that isn't his blood flowing in his veins. The boy looked upset as he listened to these yells to himself. His eyes were beginning to glow with anger, for he was just enjoying himself, talking to his sword. He remembered running and chopping up flying leaves. He waved his sword while running in the middle of the forest, and thought about how they were cultivating the path of the sword before performing any fixed movements. The old man stood opposite the kid and said with a smile on his face that he was a real genius, and the kid remembered his first meeting with his grandfather. Then they were walking somewhere, holding hands, and from that moment, his grandfather, who was considered the greatest swordsman of his time, took over his training and as a result, he showed explosive growth of unprecedented proportions. We are transported forward some time and are in Namgung Manor. From it comes a shout, Father. It was the same boy, but now in adulthood, and he was saying that he had killed the incognito arrivals, the guys from the Blood Demon Church. Namgung Heck looked at his father with anticipation, expecting praise that his son was now very strong. But immediately his face changed as his father didn't praise him at all, but told him to get rid of those heads immediately and asked him why he was so focused on killing lately so he could concentrate on improving his soul. His father turned away and Heck was upset and his father continued, saying that if he wasn't going to become a monster, he better let him take his advice. Heck was very angry and crying at the same time. He was killing monsters with tears in his eyes. The item broke into pieces and the notices wrote that the durability of the ancient emperor's grey crown was completely used up, so it would disappear. The monsters started falling down. Just as suddenly, Song noticed someone. He looked down, and there lay Namgung Heck, completely covered in blood. Sung was surprised that he was still alive, but Heck asked him to finish him off. Sung sat on a rock next to Heck, and then with blood on his face and fatigue, he said, Isn't it amazing that they weren't supposed to meet at all in the first place, but two people from different dimensions ended up fighting like this. Sun remembered how they had stood with swords in their hands, and went on to say that it had been incredibly painful and difficult to fight him, but the funny thing was that he had thought of it. Heck was looking at Sung with an angry expression, but Sung was smiling, and he felt that he was genuinely having fun. Heck's eyes lit up, he was shocked that Sung had said that if they were friends, it would be fun to share each other's accomplishments, that's what he thought. Sung kept his hands on his feet, and looked down. Heck started laughing like a crazy person and yelled at Sung that climbing up the tower, 
He still had those kinds of thoughts. Sung just stared at him silently. Heck with a smile on his face said that he too wanted to share something funny with him. In his memories, he stood with his sword in front of the giants and told Sun that the reason he stopped climbing the tower and entered the dimension wasn't just to enjoy the killing spree. Heck was blown around by the wind so that his hair was developing in the wind and he added that after acquiring something called divinity, he fell into disfavor with the so-called god and it was all because he felt his life was threatened. Sleep was standing in front of these giants, the gods, and Heck was saying that the chosen ones inevitably come in contact with divinity and the moment they embrace divinity, they become enemies of the god in one form or another. Heck looked up and said that Sun would soon gain divinity as well, but if after gaining divinity he continued to climb the tower with such strange thoughts, he would not be able to prevent the gods from destroying his land. Heck visualized these words as if a hundred meteorites were flying to the earth. Sun replied that this would never happen, so these words made Heck very surprised. Sun raised his hand, accumulating mana in it, and then said that he would wipe out all those who tried to destroy the foundation of his life. Immediately after saying that, Song clenched his fist, activating the Blood Seeker skill. Blood began to flow out of Heck, and he cried out in pain. Multiple notifications wrote that Song had overcome the 14th floor, received the Wind Spirit Boots, 10,000 points, and also due to the fact that his opponent was much stronger than him, then his reward would be recalculated, so he also received the Destructive Celestial Sword. Three more notifications wrote that a sufficient foundation for the creation of the myth has been laid, a more powerful divine power effect has been activated, and the growth of the myth is based on the actual results and faith of the believers. A bright light began to shine from Sun's chest, and in his thoughts was that the myth was once again created. A huge bright cross appeared, and notifications appeared, stating that the myth of the battle-hardened warrior was beginning to accumulate divine power. And also from now on, the indomitability effect would be added to Han Song Yun's management of the challenger's divinity. The same would happen with the reverse effect. This cross came directly from Song himself, and then Sun absorbed Namgung Hek's spirit, so his skill increased by almost 50%, and his mastery of the unique characteristic increased to 100%, so now the necromancy rank increases by one level and becomes level in necromancy. Sun stuck his sword into Hek, thinking about the fact that when challengers from other worlds died, their bodies were completely vaporized, but if you remove the penalties for floor introduction, the corpse turns out not to disappear. While his sword was stuck into the body, the notifications wrote that the exclusive effect, Blood Feast, had activated, and now by absorbing the blood of the challenger Namgun Heck, the item's level would increase to class A. His sword was filled with blood and filled one of the cells with a special effect. The notification wrote that by absorbing Namgun Heck's blood, the sealing skill seals the will amplification. Sun watched with a small smile and thought about the fact that another trait had been added that could be applied to the flaming sword. He then placed his hands on his belt and said that he would not be able to recover his clothes. Just as suddenly a window appeared in front of Sun's face, he noticed it while he was thinking about the fact that he should go shopping on the ground. The two notifications were from the administrator of the Steel Blood Lord who said she would give him a small gift of armor so he should stop by her place. Song looked at this with great embarrassment and was in a state of confusion. But lo and behold, he was already walking through her field and noticed something that made him a little surprised. There was a huge metal structure attached to her house, and Song said that now the place really looked like an Ironblood's house. Opening the door, he peeked in, and there she sat with a snide smile on her face and said that he had worked hard, and they hadn't seen each other in a long time at all. She took out a pendant and said that as a sign of overcoming a huge mountain, he could consider it a small gift, and Song looked at it in surprise. He stood right in front of her and said that didn't she say she would give him armor, and she replied with a smile on her face that if you pour a small amount of magical power into this necklace, armor would immediately appear. She started rubbing her hands while Song was putting on the necklace, and she also told him to put it on himself when he came out of the tower to be on the safe side. Sung replied that he would use it gratefully. Sung arrived at Xiao's manor, and she was sitting there waiting for him. He stood in front of her and greeted her, calling her mentor. She closed her eyes and said that she thought Sung would visit her first, but he went to that woman first, so she was disappointed. Sung bowed and told her not to be angry, but she was more upset than ever that he thought she was her mentor. And then, while he was standing in the bow, she said that he should allow her, as a mentor, to give him one more thing than the woman had given him, and he looked at her questioningly. And Xiao was very embarrassed, but said she wanted to tidy up his hair. Xiao was completely confused by such a proposal and started to ask what she was saying. Didn't she know the phrase that you can buy medicine at the pharmacy, and get a haircut at the barber shop, and she didn't even have any tools. Sial started pulling out her katana, with the words that she has enough of the seven techniques of the white sword, and if he moves he might get hurt, so let him sit still. Sun started covering himself with his arms and yelling for her to stop. Sun's screams could be heard everywhere. But then he looked in the mirror and was pleased with the result. Sion looked like a boy, but he really liked the hairstyle and said that she definitely had a talent for it. 
and Seol was very embarrassed because she had accidentally cut off a couple extra pieces of hair. She started to push out of her manner, giving the item she mentioned earlier into her hands, it was a martial arts uniform. Sleep was standing on the doorstep, and she very awkwardly waved her hand at him, saying she wished him good luck. Sleep didn't understand what was wrong with her, and it made him feel uncomfortable. As soon as he got out of there, he got a message that there was a system expansion and the quests opened up to him. And now, from now on, the admins could give him a quest instead of a challenge, and they would also assign the reward themselves. Sleep stood in front of these notifications and realized that all this time he had been wondering why the admins were trying to impress him, was it to send him a request for their own quests. He then swiped that window with his hand and said that right now he had a lot of things to do, so he needed to think things through slowly. For starters, he decided to take a look at the new mythos. A bright flash appeared again, followed by notifications that said that the myth of Battle Hardened had been activated. Also to the Divinity Control, the Indomitability effect had been added. And when the Indomitability effect was activated, then his body could show its good side in any situation. And then he activated the reverse effect, which in a more disadvantageous situation in battle, gives a stronger buff. Sun smiled and pondered that the previously acquired abilities such as exorcism from the Vampire Slayer were limited, but the abilities from the myth of a battle-hardened warrior can be immediately used in any battle, so they are more practical. And also, the unique characteristic finally reached a rank, so a new effect was added. Song opened the window of his unique characteristic, and for it, an additional effect was given in which the qualities of the God of Death blossomed. As a consequence, Song decides to test something and activates the Divine Power, but immediately he realized that despite activating the Divine Power, there was no change. And while he glowered, his face was frustrated. He then flicked down the window, saying that time will tell everything. And then he decides to look at the new sword, it was all glowing purple in color and was very beautiful. The characteristics of the sword were too strong, because when his ability was activated, it could literally cut through magic power with it. Dream visualized it as the strongest ray from the sky that destroys everything around and thought about the destruction of the sky, which represented a high rank compatibility with the Kai of the sword. And also two skills could be placed in this sword, Song thought about it, that this sword also allowed him to grow. He remembered that notification that said that he fought an opponent of a level much higher, and kept thinking about the fact that he had obtained a crazy level item. He thinks that it was because he had defeated Namgung Hek who was much stronger than the original difficulty level of the challenge. Sun stood and touched the sword with his hand, and the notifications wrote that he had reached a state of unity with the sword, so now the exclusive effect of the destructive heavenly sword, Sword Sense, was activated. He could learn the exclusive effects of items from the sword category with the skill. Song was very surprised, for he had now mastered the sword sense skill. Therefore, Song began to smile greatly, for his plan had really worked. He visualized it as one skill being divided into two more, that is, by using sword sense he had copied sword sense, so he had now learned up to three skills, while originally he could only master two. Two more notifications wrote that the exclusive sword effect had activated and now he could learn all sorts of effects. Many notifications appeared again, writing that he had fully mastered the heaven's destruction skill and also the sword sense effect was disappearing. Song held it in his hand and was very happy, you could see it on his face. But he was also thinking that if he learns the destructive sword heaven destruction as a skill, he would be able to use heaven destruction even without the destructive sword. And then Song decides to absorb Namgun Hex spirit, so his strength and agility increased by 4 units, stamina by 6, and mana by 7, while the last thing is resilience which increased by 4 units. Song felt frustrated that he was unable to absorb the skill. And then he started fingering the window, and then he noticed something. It's that Li Haen is yelling that Song Yun should have written at least one message to her when he returned to the tower, even though he wasn't a regular member of the guild, they are still partners. Sung starts flipping through her messages, saying that she was the one who was most worried about him before going to Japan, and next time it's worth leaving her a text message. As suddenly he notices something that made him wary. It's a text message from a white lotus flower who was saying that she doesn't know what the situation in the tower is, but she has some news, is that another challenger from another world has appeared. The challenger from Ares had massacred in London. Sleep heard this and immediately imagined everything there going up in flames and was terrified of another interdimensional invasion. Therefore, he immediately remembered Nemgung Hek, who was madly shouting that Song would not be able to stop the gods from destroying his land. These all facts were starting to make Song very angry, so he was cowering. Right in the middle of London, a black hole started to form, and then some balls with lightning bolts fell out of it. From these balls, monsters began to appear. There were a large number of these balls, and they just fell out of this black hole. A hundred monsters flew straight at the people who were outside at that moment. They started gnawing on them, and someone said it was the second invasion of the Earth dimension. 
The guy points his finger at what's happening on the screen and says that they have a video of the London incident that happened just yesterday. It all started when a challenger from another world created a mysterious black sphere over London. Everyone there listened to him carefully, and he went on to say that right after the first massacre, the strange magical creatures suddenly disappeared, and the challenger from the other world hid inside the black sphere, and has been sitting quietly until today. This sphere was shining with lightning, and the guy said that this unidentified black sphere was rapidly increasing in size, and it was a critical situation that could cause a second wave of massacres at any moment. The guy slapped his hands on the table and shouted that the power of the Korean hunters was desperately needed to prevent further horrible casualties. The guy stood up and decided to make a point that during the Shinjuku incident in Japan, the outflow of hunters had been blocked, but why now the Korean Hunters Association was suddenly so active? As the man stood there not knowing what to say, someone standing behind him shouted that it was because it made money. Everyone turned around to look at the brave man and he continued to say that after the Shinjuku incident, the status of South Korea had risen and it had a positive impact on the various projects conducted by the Korean Hunters Association. It was Sun who was standing leaning against the wall. Everyone sitting there was surprised, thinking that it might be the same sword ghost who was the hero of Shinjuku, some people think he looks similar but the hairstyle is different. Lee ha and also saw him and recognized him immediately. She then approached him and he said hello first and then also apologized for returning to the tower earlier and not warning her. She calmly exhaled and said that since he realized his mistake, they could close this topic, so from now on, let him treat her at least a little bit like a partner. Sung put his hand to his heart, and she asked him what was up with his combat uniform, and Sung replied that he had it right under his sweatshirt and kept it inside. A man with black hair starts yelling that now if anyone wants to volunteer for the London incident operation, they can go on a private jet. Sleep starts walking, looking at her and saying that they should slowly move out too. She grabs his hand, telling him they don't need to get on the plane this time. They went up to the roof and she swung the door open. In front of them was a squad that was going to go with them. Lee ha and said that she too had pumped up her skills while climbing the tower. They stood in the middle of the seal and she continued to tell them, after climbing up, she mastered auxiliary magic related to space. The learning process is a bit complicated, but now she can move anywhere in space just by setting coordinates. Lai Ha and turned towards Song with a smile and bright eyes, adding that she had also received permission to use this magic from the association. The entire space around them began to glow, and Song was surprised by it. Two notifications wrote that the coordinates were designated as the target for the teleport, so they would now be transported there. At the same moment, they began to vaporize and instantly found themselves on some rooftop where those very same monster orbs were. And as soon as everyone was transported, monsters started to appear from those balloons. The guys began to line up to defend against them, saying that here comes the second wave of attacks. Monsters that looked like wolves with their fangs were attacking them. One of the squad fought them off, shouting for the newcomer to focus all his attention on the portal, because if an object from another world falls into the portal, something terrible could happen. This newcomer is standing with his staff, and you can see by it that he is very worried. While he was standing there looking somewhere, a monster appeared behind his back. He immediately jumped on the newcomer, and the newcomer was very scared. The portal started to glow, apparently the guys teleported. And at that moment, the monster was right on top of the portal. And after the portal went off, the monster started to disintegrate and the guy was shocked. Sung and Lee Ha-yoon were standing across from him. They looked at it all and pondered that these were the same magical entities. The newcomer started bowing to them and saying that the preparation of the barrier was insufficient. Lee ha and started to calm him down, saying that fortunately, nothing serious had happened. And then they noticed that there were a lot of monsters, so they started running to the other guys, saying that the second wave had apparently started and Song supported her, adding that they would help them. So they came to that squad, and the head of the squad thanked them for their support in such a difficult time. But he also hoped that they were not offended that they could not greet them properly, and asked them to leave them to mop up the place and let them go to where everyone had gathered. The head ordered the newcomer to lead them downstairs, and he immediately went and told them to follow him. They walked down the stairs together, and then walked across the bridge between the buildings. The newcomer started to swing open the door, and right in front of him was a huge table with hunters sitting and waiting for the guys. Sleep looked at them with suspicion and thought about the fact that there were really a lot of hunters coming to support this time. David was sitting at the head of the table, and it seemed to Song that these magic tower wizards were acting too arrogant. Song and Lai ha and sat down at the chairs, and he kept thinking that outside, everyone was working hard and the higher-ups were just sitting at the table, and everywhere you looked, it was the same. Suddenly David was very surprised, and looking at Sona he started to say that it was them. He had a smile on his face, and he exclaimed happily that he didn't expect to meet them like this, so it was an honor to meet them again. Sung looked at him and also remembered that he was the same grandfather he had saved on the 13th floor, 
and Lee Ha Yoon looked at Sung with great surprise that they appeared to know each other. David started to talk about that sphere, saying that it was a high-level barrier that couldn't be overcome even if hundreds of wizards poured their magic into it. And at this point, Sun was already sitting in the elder's seat for some reason, and he stood leaning on the table and continued to say that although they had almost succeeded in destroying the black sphere when it was still small, Song looked at him and asked that since then, no matter what they did, there wasn't a scratch on the sphere. The elder tilted his head and said that it was exactly like that. All the guys were in complete shock. They didn't understand why their leader had handed over his seat, or who this guy even was, and someone in the crowd replied that they knew him. It was the same challenger who had been active in Japan. David looked with a very angry look at his subjects and reflected that giving up his seat at the head of the table, for the sake of saving the country is nothing, and even if it is necessary, he is ready even to kneel. He thinks that they don't know anything, but he realizes how strong this young man is. And at that moment, he looked at Sung. And then with a smile on his face, he asked that in his opinion is there any way to solve this problem at all. Sung replied with confidence in his eyes that he would destroy this black orb himself. The old man was full of surprise, so he asked if it was even possible. The guys stood there with their mouths hanging open and said that he said it with such ease, while some felt that the elder had jumped to conclusions. Sung said he would only destroy on one condition, and David shockedly asked what it was. Sun replied with a very creepy look on his face that if they gave him all the rewards of everyone here, he would destroy him. The guys started screaming and outraged, asking who he thought they were. David looked at him and realized that it was too much, but then said that about this request he needed to discuss everything with the people in charge. The sphere was already huge and Sleep said he didn't mind waiting, but at this rate, London could disappear while they were engaged in discussions. Sohn looked down and thought about the fact that if taken to the extreme, people would move even if there was no reward, but still, he felt that he needed to take care of what would be owed to him. David turned his head toward the sphere, and then instantly shouted that he would by all means get it done, and then pointed his finger at the sphere and yelled for him to destroy it. The guys started to stop him, telling him it wasn't such an easy decision. Sun pulled out a pendant of armor and said he would do it. The pendant started to glow and then in a second Sun was already wearing the armor, he looked pretty stylish. Taking two swords in his hands he slashed the wall, then he simply threw out a piece of the wall. As he was leaving, Lai Ha and called out to him and he turned around to her. She kept her hand on her chest and looked at him. Ah Song looked at her with a smile on his face with one eye and jumped out of the window and replied that he would be back soon. He then ran on the platform that appeared right under his feet thanks to the wind path skill. He ran on these platforms straight through the air and headed towards the sphere. The guys were shocked, so they stood there with their mouths open, wondering how he ended up right at the sphere, is that even human speed? By then, Song had already jumped right onto the sphere. It was so small compared to its size, even he had picked up on that, saying that it was indeed huge. He stood in a confident pose with his two swords and decided to begin. He activated the Heaven's Destruction skill and then swung his sword saying that he should find the rat. Notifications wrote that the Heaven Breaking skill had been activated, so now there was no limit to what he could break. Therefore, Song with rage in his face began to strike with his swords. Huge lightning bolts appeared above the sphere. After such a strike, the entire sphere began to crack and glow with purple light. Song stuck his two swords into it, realizing that this skill could destroy even magic itself. He said with a smile on his face that he had gotten a great skill. Ripping his sword harder, he sliced that sphere in half. Right from its top, cracks began to run down its entire length. Within the purple sphere was a complete void with steam coming out of it. Sleep immediately decided to jump in. And as he flew down, the notification wrote that he had entered the magical void zone. As he flew down, he wondered if he should consider the inside of the barrier as a completely different dimension. So he activated the spiritual eye skill, and immediately saw the huge creepy monsters he was amongst. The notification said that any entities other than the zone owner would see a horrible illusion that couldn't be dispelled by skills, and also any entities other than the zone owner would lose their sense of direction and all sense-related skills. Sleep turns around and a monster is flying at him, so he doesn't have time to turn around and the monster bites Sun's arm, so blood splatters everywhere. Among these scary monsters, Sun's blood is flying and he is surprised that the illusion is so strong that it can use physical force. Sun started to activate his skills, cancelling all the penalties time after time, so now all his skills returned and his senses returned. The brightest light that blinded the eyes resounded among the monsters. It was our dream shining. He landed on some surface and then looked at his hands, happy that this clothing that the white crane sword had given him could be restored with mana which was a very useful option. Some mage with a purple hat appeared behind Sun's back, saying that he was very surprised. His eyes were shining with yellow light and his hand was holding the hat, saying that in a dimension that was at such a low level, he had found a skilled craftsman who could break through the magic zone. Sleep didn't hesitate to chop off his head, but it immediately increased in size a hundred times and shouted that he had taken into account such a development. 
and apparently turned on a very bright light that blinded some. He began to activate the mythos that increased his power. He stood holding his sword in front of him and glowing with a blue aura. The mage moved from side to side shouting that he had divinity, is he what? Is he really an apostle? He couldn't believe that there was someone like a god in such an insignificant dimension. Sleep raised his hand up and a red light began to glow from his palm and blood flew around. The mage was using invisibility, so all of his clones began to disappear. Song opened his palm using the skill, so all the clones started sucking blood and flew straight towards Sun, and because of that, they started scattering into ashes. The mage stood in confusion and said that even if Sun was an apostle of God, he couldn't do whatever he wanted to the mage's domain. Sleep looked at him with suspicion and thought about the fact that he was fake too, the original must be hiding somewhere. Then the mage unleashed his minions on him, saying he couldn't escape death anyway. These little monsters with wings on their backs flew straight at Sun, and the magician called it an invasion of self-destructing spirits. Sung took a baseball bat in his hands, which was a counterattack shield, and he swung, preparing to strike. And with a multitude of blows, he was killing these monsters. And the mage just stood there and watched all of this, but Sung turned to look at him, thinking that this guy was going to make a protracted battle. Then the baseball bat turned into a sword, and Sung thought about the fact that the space of this sphere is quite large. It's still about limited space, even though it's a bit barbaric method, but it might just destroy the entire inside of the sphere. And Sung decided to do so, so there was a spark in his eyes, and then he struck the floor with all his might, releasing the energy from the sword counterattack, as well as reinforcing it with his will amplification skill and double attack. Everything around it began to explode, and the sphere began to crack even more than before. The smoke from the explosion began to disperse, and by then the mage was already shaking from the damage while Sun stood still in front of him. The mage was covered in blood with an angry expression on his face, asking why a monster like him was on such a low dimension. Sun came closer to him and told him to destroy the black sphere. The mage initially did not understand what he meant, but Sun repeated, saying that he would cancel the void, and the mage decided to poilil, saying that he will not do it, and in general, he has no idea how much power he put into it. At that moment, Sun activated the Bloodseeker skill and used it to start breaking the mage's bones. And immediately afterward, he activated the Pain Amplification skill, and now, from now on, anyone he hurts will feel double the pain. The mage with a broken arm fell to the ground and started screaming. Sun with an angry expression came even closer to him and repeated to destroy him, but the mage was not going to give up, so he tried to get out of it by asking Sun if he knew who the mage even was, because he was now doing the same thing to the one who would become the Archmage of the Empire. After saying that, Sun broke his other arm and the mage squealed in pain. Sun stood there and told him to cancel the void, and he was already just lying on the ground and begging him to stop. Then he started crying and screaming that he can't destroy it, he's not able to, he really can't destroy it. Sun activates his eyes skill to check him for lies, and they said that his opponent is not lying. So Sun told him to describe his dimension, his name and the reason why he showed up on earth. The mage asked him if he could make him a suggestion that he would like, but Sung started kicking him, telling him not to babble, but to talk business. And then the mage began to say that he was from the Ares dimension, his name was Sandal, and the purpose of coming to this place was to gain faith. Sleep was surprised, so he looked at him with his mouth open, and asked what he meant by getting faith. The mage was covered in blood and asked if he didn't know what it was. Sleep stepped on him again, telling him to stop talking and the mage started yelling and saying that he would tell him everything, just make him take his foot off. He gritted his teeth in pain, saying that in the hidden ancient ruins he had seen an ancient text that said that outstanding wizards and knights could break through the wall of skill improvement through faith. He imagined standing on a podium and all the people around him clapped, and he could do this through the faith of the people in his heart where the ring is located. Divine power is accumulated, through this one could reach the level of Archmage called the level of the Six Rings. Sun was silent for a while, and then asked that in order to gain faith, shouldn't he have saved people the other way around? And the mage replied that fear of the absolute is also a kind of faith, and he decided that the fastest way was to sow fear through massacres. Sleep asked why he had chosen the earth, and he presented many dimensions and said that in an ancient manuscript it was written that the status of a mage could not be enhanced by divine power that had traces of other gods, which was why he had come to a tiny dimension that seemed to have no gods. Sion looked at him with great disdain and interjected that he had massacred him to improve his skills, and the mage replied that he had. And that's when Sun started beating him, saying he was crazy, and the man screamed with all his might and asked him to stop. Sun looked at him with a spark in his eyes and said that the next question was whether he knew the god of verification and the god of battle. The mage, lying on the ground in blood, replied that he didn't even know if such gods even existed. Sleep checked with his eyes to see if this was true, and they said his opponent was lying. The mage was lying in a pool of blood, and Song looked at him and realized that he had asked this just in case, 
But this mage knows everything, clearly knows about the two gods. So he grabbed his armor with great anger and said that he understood that the more important the information, the less likely he was to share it. So Song activated the torture art skill, and now from now on he can use more natural torture methods, and it becomes easier for him to instill fear, and the effectiveness of all kinds of torture increases by 10%. Therefore, Song began to completely break this poor magician. He grabbed his limbs and said with a furious face that he would see how long it would last. By then the moon was right above the hole in the dome. And then he decides to heal this mage, and the man is all dried up and without teeth, and he asked him to kill him and not heal him, and Sion angrily asked how he could kill such a man who had lived through so much torture. Sun thought about the fact that through Sandal he was able to get a lot of information, about divinity, about magic, about the god of verification, about the god of battle and even a bunch of all sorts of information about the Ares dimension. Sleep needed his neck as the mage lay half dead on the floor. Sleep reflected on the fact that it had been about seven hours since he had entered this realm, and the long torture had exhausted his spiritual powers. His gaze was harsh, and he finally realized what divinity was. First of all, just having this divinity does not make one a god, when one opens the magical organ, called in Mirama the core in the center of the abdomen, or the heart ring, one can accumulate divinity. Droplets of magic flew around the space, and Sun realized that it was the purest energy of all, and most importantly, that by accumulating divine power, they would be able to increase their level dramatically. He stood there glowing with divine power and pondered that this power was responsive to all desires. It allowed him to reach a level beyond his own skills. Then he looked down and felt frustrated, for he still didn't know how to use it. Then a light appeared in his chest and mana flew in there, and he thought about how it takes a very long time to parse divine power one drop at a time, and the way to solve this is through faith. He remembered the red stone with runes and thought about the fact that whether it was generation or fear, if one gains strong faith, divine power builds up in the chest and that was all the information he had learned from the mage. The magician began to scream that it was a prophecy, the oracle told him that he should never reveal anything. The mage was all out of breath and teeth, with half-closed eyes and said that a priest who serves the god of battle came to him and he passed this prophecy on to him. He followed the prophecy and found in the ancient ruins a text about divinity. Sun clenched the sword in his fist with anger and thought that it was the god of battle, and he had vague assumptions, but in no way expected that he was directly involved. He remembered the words of the god of verification saying that all gods were now his enemies. He also remembered those two messages, and thought about how he had no idea why a god he only knew about through a couple short messages had listed him as his enemy. But the battle god's hostility towards him was clearly having an effect on the land as a whole as well. These thoughts made Sun very angry. It was already making him start imagining that the entire earth would be in lava and tornadoes of fire. A vein swelled on his cheek and his eyes were full of anger, and he realized that if he continued like this, the god of battle would become his real enemy. He then killed that mage with one swing and immediately absorbed his spirit, increasing his skill by 4%. His sword started absorbing blood again, increasing his rank as well as sealing in another skill. Song held his sword, blade down, and thought that he didn't feel like fighting a god. But if he wanted to at least flounder around trying to fight, he had to nurture his divinity. Therefore, his eyes were full of seriousness. Han was sitting on the couch drinking a hot drink. He turned his head and said that he had thoroughly enjoyed his two-day vacation and now he should receive word of his return soon. He remembered the conversation where he was told that this space bag was a very valuable item and therefore he should handle it with extreme care. He placed his hand on his pouch and realized that it was his reward earned in that raid. Skill Enhancement Potion, Random Skill Acquisition Books, Physical Ability Enhancement Potion and others. He was able to snatch an incredible amount of items, though for the most part they were no longer able to fulfill his needs. Han realized that this would clearly be a small loss for the UK, and even the opposite, the side benefited from it. He sat on the couch and looked out the window. He realized that if they could study that hole, it would be a huge asset to the entire United Kingdom, and maybe he should have asked for ownership of the whole thing. He looked at his Arank Hunter's license and realized that he had never even considered before that wanting to become a hunter of that rank would remain nothing more than a dream. He threw away his ID card and wondered why he didn't have an S rank. He realized it was the fault of the Dam Hunter Association with limited intelligence. He remembered how he had been interviewed and raided by the British Hunters Association and asked for a press conference, where in addition to being asked if he wanted to settle in the UK, he had been given a lot of annoying offers, just like in South Korea. They had tried to lure him with various baits like tax breaks and social benefits, but now the wealth and glory in the land was not so important to him because no matter how many of those things he got, if the land itself disappeared, then that would be the result. Han reasoned sensibly and realized what he really needed to achieve now was growth. He realized that even if a god were to focus his hands on a power capable of stopping him, it would be an absolute power. He remembered a conversation where he had been told that divine power was the result of decomposing magical power into its purest form. 
Han sat down on the couch and spreading his arms out to the sides began to concentrate. He began to gather all the energy near his chest and when he formed it into a sphere, he realized that everything was as he expected. No matter how many times he tried, the result was one and the same. As the energy dissipated he realized that he could refine his magic power to some extent, but he couldn't get it to the perfect state to transform into divine power because it was too difficult. He began to concentrate again on the already red energy in the room, but it felt bright. He realized that if it wasn't for the warrior defense power he had, he wouldn't even be able to catch the right direction. But luckily he was already someone who possessed divine power, so there was no need to get too upset about it. Hana opened his eyes while he was concentrating and realized that although he had tried to do something while in the void, no matter how much he concentrated on the divine power, he still hadn't managed to create any sword kai or magic. He stopped concentrating and silently continued to sit. He wondered about faith and fanaticism. He didn't understand if divine power was only triggered by this kind of will. He wondered if it was faith that was the basis for the creation of a battle-hardened warrior and vampire slayer. Han brooded with his head down and realized that he couldn't right now use the divine power to its fullest extent. He put on his hood and a system message spelled out that it was time and glass and Han was returning to the Tower of Trials. Han looked ahead confidently and realized that he would figure out what was what while he was climbing the tower. The system message said that the entrance to the 15th floor of the test tower had been accomplished. The difficulty was high and the theme of the challenge was war. System message wrote that they hoped for satisfactory results after supporting Han. Instead of where it moved him there were a lot of people who had gone crazy and they were heading into battle. Someone shouted for them to kill these filthy occultists who were rejecting their god of darkness. The two men stood and talked amongst themselves. Han said he felt disgusted, even though he was a mercenary there was no way he could get used to such a sight. He thought that they were more like a sect and didn't understand why Madame Raynal had accepted such a request in the first place. Afterward, a man with red hair pulled back the curtain and came in. He started shouting and said that he was a fool and had shirked his duties. He took Hana by his hood and told the same to get up. He pointed his finger in the direction and said that the order to start the battle was given long ago and he still stood. Han didn't understand what had been happening all along nor did he understand who the man even was. Han came out of the tent, and the man asked what he had such a strange outfit. He said that a holy war was about to begin, and the man was unarmed. Han didn't understand what holy war the guy was talking about. He assumed he was talking about religious wars. He looked ahead where there was a lot of fog and a system message wrote that the 15th floor trials were starting. The allotted time for all of this was 17 days. The condition of successfully passing the trial was, you had to lead to the temple to victory in the allotted time. The condition of failure to pass the test was equal to the death of the challenger or and with the remaining time. The reward for a successful breakthrough was this, a protective bracelet of an unnamed god of rank S+. The penalty for failure equaled death. A multitude of warriors went forward wearing red capes, and Han realized that the number of enemies was several thousand. A man called out to the mercenaries and said that if the temple was victorious in this holy war, great glory and honor awaited them. The man said to help Mrs. Raynal unconditionally and a lot of mercenaries went into battle. Han didn't understand which mistress was being spoken to and he stood next to a red-haired man who was two times his size. He said the mistress was the commander of their mercenary squad. He said with a wide smile that she was a consummate or a user. He said that a new stream of occultists had arrived here she needed everyone to prepare for battle. The mercenaries looked forward and he said it was time to pass judgment on those fanatics who worshipped the god of battle. The Khan stood holding his pocket and in his hands and was surprised by it all. Arrows flew into the battle and he realized that if he ordered what was going on, he was a mercenary hired by some nasty guys serving the god of darkness. He realized that this was a battle between the god of darkness and the god of battle. The occultists headed forward with weapons and he realized that they were at war with the god of battle. He smiled widely, flashing his amulet and realized that he suddenly felt wildly motivated. A system message wrote that the special assignment of the leader's path had begun. He was asked to stand out among the mercenaries and become a recognized leader. An additional reward was added to the breakthrough reward when this special task goal was achieved. Raynal had a strong desire to learn the secrets of the sword and was a commander recognized by the mid-level mercenaries. She fought bravely and for her a person with no aristocratic roots, the battlefield was the only place for her to grow. She defeated all of her enemies with ease and so, after going through many battles and having been between life and death countless times, she had finally reached the level of an aura user that only an officially recognized knight had reached until now. But as she stood on the battlefield with her defeated enemies, she realized that her actions were limited as she had never been trained on how to use her aura before. That was why she had no choice but to continue roaming the battlefield and risk her life for enlightenment. 
She jumped off her horse and headed into battle defeating all the occultists with incredible ease. She easily chopped down many enemies and realized to herself that she kept chopping and chopping, and there was no end to the enemies. She looked at the large troop that was approaching her, and she realized that even if she estimated by eye, the number of enemies was in the thousands. She thought about the numbers of her comrades and realized that including the corpses summoned by the priests of darkness, and there were about 700 of them. Behind her were the dead men who were being sent into battle. She made her way forward and realized that the picture was completely different from what the priests of death had said. She realized that if they made the slightest mistake, they would be in great danger. The summoned mercenaries shouted to help the mistress and headed forward, but the mistress was already ahead and they stood before a huge enemy who swung his arm to strike at the mercenaries. The mercenaries stood horrified as they realized it was a siege golem. One of the mercenaries called out to the vice commander and he said that the lady was cut off from the squad. The commander said that it was a dire situation and Mrs. Raynal was surrounded by many enemies. One of them jumped to strike, and she realized that she didn't quite have much strength left now. The opponent began to swing his sword, and she wondered if she was about to die such a miserable death without even being able to reach her peak. Her gaze changed and tears came to her eyes. She said that she would die like an idiot, that she would not participate in something like holy wars. But Han appeared in front of her and defeated many enemies with ease. Mistress raised her head and saw a blue light. She was shocked by all of this, and Han turned his head holding his sword that emitted blue lightning streams, and he said that he would briefly break away to block the attack, and I would already take this opportunity to retreat. Madam's face was covered in tears, and she realized that on a battlefield that could safely be called madness, where did such a calm voice come from? She didn't realize if she was asleep right now. Han headed forward, killing many enemies in front of him and Madame Raynal realized that it was a fiery aura. She watched as Han dealt with all of them with ease and the occultists told them to be careful as Han was very dangerous. Han easily threw a few punches and chopped them all to pieces. The mistress realized that it was the perfect combination of strength, flexibility, and grace. It made it feel like she was watching a work of art rather than a fight. She blushed all over and realized that it was incredibly beautiful. A red aura descended and he looked away and realized that he was very strong in such fights, and he could constantly replenish his stamina with magic power using soul and blood absorption. He absorbed the souls of the cultists he killed, but the skill only grew by a small fraction per person, it was sad, but he kept absorbing skills and the absorption was fine. He smiled and delivered a crushing blow that threw a lot of people up, and he caused colossal destruction. The cultists said they were retreating and one of them stretched out his arms and started casting sorcery. He told them to fight him alone and sent the golems forward. Han stood in front of the golems and used seven white sword techniques. He looked forward and said white sword piercing the heavens. He jumped up and all the people were shocked that he was able to defeat the golem with one strike. Didn't they wonder if he was even human? Madam stood in shock and realized that he had used that same skill when he saved her. It seemed to her that Han could distort space itself and it was beyond the capabilities of the sword. The monster's body began to fall and the cultists were shocked. They were shocked that he had dealt with it with one blow and they had never seen such a thing. Afterward, one of the cultists stepped forward. He had no hair and had a scar on his head. He asked why they were all making such a fuss if they only had one opponent. The cultists started to cheer and greeted the Mavir battle priest. The priest said to prepare a secret weapon and a group negative effect. He said that the spell that can temporarily contain the dragon should be used if they catch this fool, then victory is in their pocket. He put his hands out to the sides and a red circle appeared on the ground. Han moved forward, defeating more and more enemies in his path. He swung his sword and the cultists began to worry. The priest was shocked to see that Han was able to fend off the group attack with ease. Han headed forward and struck at the priest. It pierced through his body, and the priest didn't even see it coming towards him. Blood flew forward and attacked the other cultists. They didn't realize they were being hit. Han stood with his arms spread apart and a lot of blood all around him. He realized that he couldn't openly use blood control, so he came up with this. He used the drops of blood as a field so no one would see. Father Mabir was killed and the cultists started to run away. They realized they had to call the bishop. The system message wrote that everyone on the battlefield sensed Han's presence and he completed the special task of the guide path. The reward for the 15 floors would be rebuilt. The mercenaries stood and rejoiced at all of this. Han received the achievement Invincible Warrior and his skills were increased by 4. Han walked up to his barracks, and a man with red hair said he could occupy this barracks. Han turned around and the man apologized by bowing. Han told the man not to worry. Khan left for the barracks raising his hand and said he was tired and wanted to rest and the man could go. The men wished the man a pleasant rest. Han entered the barracks and realized that once he defeated 1,000 opponents, everyone began to respect him and even gave him the best seat. He stretched his hand out to the side and realized that a message had come to him during the battle. It said that he had killed many people and absorbed their soul, his talent from the god of death was slowly developing. 
He looked at the characteristics of the death god and an additional effect was added to necromancy. The characteristics after death gained enlightenments. Han realized that they could be obtained when reaching Ranka he stood there and didn't understand who the death god was. He didn't understand what it all meant. Afterward, he became wary and looked to the side. He struck the top of the barracks and from there fell the mistress in front of him. She stood up and said what was expected, Han found her immediately. She got up and Han asked what her business was here. Han said it was good that she had no bloodlust, for she could have died. She said she was grateful that he had saved her and Han asked if everything here was so secretive. She asked if he was a mercenary. Han thought about it and realized that was a problem, because she wouldn't believe him if he said he was a mercenary. He wondered if he stood out too much on the battlefield. The mistress said she felt a divine presence and normally mercenaries were not capable of such things. She looked at him with a hard stare and asked who he was. Khan said he was sent by the god of darkness. He said he was his apostle. Han realized he was going to have to come up with something. Mistress began to shake, and Han wondered if she believed it or not. The mistress immediately dropped to the ground and bowed. She saluted him and said that she had insulted him. Han put his hand up and said I don't need to apologize. He put his hand on her back and said with a smile that they should keep it a secret and the spies should not know about it. Mistress asked if he could tell it to her. Han smiled and said that true comrades see each other at once. Mistress blushed at Han calling them true comrades. The system message wrote that the special task of the object of admiration had begun. The strongest mercenary among the allies was to admire him and the target would be tagged. The tag will only be visible to the player after the completion of the task. The strongest mercenary can take command of the army. Additional quests will be added after the completion of the quest. The strongest mercenary among the allies was Rainily Asir. A red glow appeared above her she stood silently. Having completed the quest the way of the guide he still wondered how he would manage them. Han took his mistress' hands and realized with a smile that this floor would be easier for him than he thought. Han opened the system status window and looked at his stats. He realized that all of the stats had reached a three-digit value. He smiled and realized that it was a great one. During this fight he had absorbed a bunch of skills and earned a lot of new powers. He decided to organize the skills and open the view list of new skills. He got a bunch of skills and he realized that only the ones he could use right now were missing. He realized that in that case it was a matter of course to use fusion. He spread his hands apart and activated the unique power of synthesis skills. He activated the more powerful force effect of warrior defense. Han was surprised and it writhed to him that she time his luck drastically increased. His chest began to glow and he marveled. A bright ray came from the tent and he received an absolute attraction of rank B+. The footsteps of a darkness wolf of rank a steel jaws of rank B+. Han realized that the warrior's protections were the power that was activated last time when he synthesized the demonic sword in mixed beginnings and now it would serve him. He smiled and realized that if he thought about it, he had it all. He chose the skill Sealing Blood Enhancement, Sealing Will Enhancement, Sealing Grand Ego Soul. He clicked a button and a system message wrote that the skill imprinting Grand Ego Soul is a skill obtained from the Challenger Sandal, which allowed the soul ego to penetrate various kinds of barriers or objects created with spell magic. The effect of the imprinting skill was such and, when activating the soul ego grant was randomly assigned a soul suitable for the object, and the skill was completely destroyed in. At this time, the soul ego given to the item had the potential to grow and maximized help to the users. He realized that once the skill was used, it was gone forever. He thought that during this ordeal, and the blood feast would play with new colors. The system message wrote that the rank B plus heavenly demonic sword of blood truth ego soul grant sealing skill had been activated. Han stood in front of the two swords and was asked to indicate the barrier or item that the soul ego grant would be granted to. He looked forward and reached out for his sword. He realized that to present a soul ego grant meant to give the item a personality that supported it. And it wasn't about a one-time use, so the more natural right choice would be this heavenly demonic blood truth sword, which was the object of the growing type. Han drew his sword and the object chosen was the heavenly demonic sword. After that, an explosion sounded and Han covered himself with his hand. He looked at his sword and it shone with new colors. The system message wrote that the celestial demonic sword was imbued with the soul for example of the seventh generation celestial demon Dam Chin Wu. Han stood silently and heard someone say that he had spent a lot of time wandering in darkness. The unknown voice started laughing and it spoke of worship, reverence, and applause. It was coming from the sword and it was saying that he was finally able to return. Han smiled and realized that he seemed to have put some crazy person in his sword. Afterward, we are transported to another place and see some guy trying to fight monsters. Someone in the crowd said that was the blending technique from the corpses. They said it was awesome. Han was walking forward, and someone in the crowd wondered if the guy who was coming wasn't a killer. There were rumors about him that he had taken over 1,000 enemies off his head, and not a single muscle on his face shook. The mercenaries stood there shocked by this information. They offered to leave this place because they were somehow uncomfortable. 
Han had it in his head that he didn't want to hear it himself. Han walked forward and there was a full moon in the sky. His sword called out to Han and asked him why he was mocking him. He asked why he was ignoring him. He said that in the church of blood demons everyone was lining up to talk to him. Han didn't understand why he was the one who got caught. The sword said it was disrespect for him and he celestial demon to talk to him and Han was just defiantly refusing to talk to him. He felt his sword shaking and Han said to himself that he was talking too much. He drew his sword and Dam said he had escaped from hell and it turns out this saucy little man had become his master. Han said I'm bored, he just doesn't want to have a useless conversation. Han was walking through the forest and Dam was glad he was talking. Han said now there were no eyes nearby and he could talk to him in peace. Han's sword glowed and he asked if Han knew about the mental communication technique. It seemed to him that Han was from the same lands as his. Han looked at him and said he didn't know about the technique and Han asked if he had been a challenger in his lifetime. The sword began to shake again and he said not to get his hopes up there was no one who didn't know the heavenly demon specifically. Han asked to what floor he was able to climb up to. He said he could make it to 41. Han smiled and realized that if that was true, the information he could possess must be very significant. He realized that it was quite possible he would benefit greatly from dealing with them. Afterwards he paused and realized that if he had made it to this floor, a lot of things were known. He said that as far as he knew, starting on the 40th floor the dead challengers could be revived as an administrator. He asked why that one was not revived as an administrator. Dam started to get angry and asked how dare the one looking at him say to live like a dog in the tower. He said he couldn't live like that and this kind of unchanging existence was not to his liking. Han grabbed his head and realized that his brain had overheated. He realized that in his lifetime he had been an outstanding warrior, but now he was just the soul of a sword placed by himself. He took his sword and told him not to forget that fact. Afterwards there was an explosion and Dam asked if he really thought he didn't know that. He told Han not to worry and he could definitely help him in battle. Sword glared and he wondered if he had yet tried to establish a clear leader-subordinate relationship. He realized that Han was much stronger than he looked at first glance. He said that even without all his former power, he was a martial arts genius and a master of magic. He could help Han achieve his goals. Months into the series and everything in the neighborhood began to glow. Han was surprised by this and trees started to fall. Han said something really had good support data. Dam said the word was applied to things like tools, he said Han really wasn't from his dimension. Khan stood still and the trees in the neighborhood were cut down. He said he was from the earth dimension and he thought that one had never heard of him. Dam thought about it for a moment and realized that the earth must have still been in the secondary dimension. He felt that quite some time had passed and the current capacity of this sword could not fully contain his soul, so he could not retain consciousness for long. He said that another person is coming here and so they will finish our conversation. Someone ran up to Han it was the lady. Khan asked what I had brought to him at this late hour. She apologized for distracting him and said that they were suddenly attacked by the enemy from all sides. She said it was the elite units of the battle priests of the temple of the god of battle. Han smiled and realized that the situation was taking an interesting turn and he realized that he had to give credit to the Tower of Trials, for it would never let him get bored. Han went forward with a smile and asked for more details about the elite units of battle priests attacking. Han rushed forward and he said that he would take part in this battle right away. There was a bloody battle on the battlefield and they were shouting that if the enemies killed the priests, the necromancy magic would be dispelled. Han moved forward and realized that there weren't that many enemies compared to last time and there were about a hundred of them, but they were clearly of a higher level than before. They had mastered good weapons and realized that they were primarily enemies that used powers that clearly had divinity at their core. They were attacking the mercenaries and shouting for everyone to finish off these vile insects. Madam stood in shock and realized that a very strong aura was emanating from them. After Han put his hand on her shoulder and asked her for a favor, he said that no matter how strong enemies they were, no matter how secure the situation was, he wanted her to trust him completely. He smiled and said that he trusted her too and expected reciprocation. The lady became embarrassed and Han said they should go protect the priests. He said that a temple can only be built if the priests are present. Mistress immediately went ahead and said that she will definitely protect them. System message wrote that the mercenary Reynal Asir deeply admired him and he was congratulated, and in fact, the special task to the object of admiration was completed. The morale of the allied camp was now doubled and careful command kept the ranks from breaking up. Han was given an additional reward in case the 15th floor was breached. Reynal said she wished Han good luck and if they survived, they could see each other again and she would buy him a drink. Han smiled and said that was the nicest thing he'd ever heard. He also suggested a nice meal after the fight. The system message wrote that the skill Darkness Wolf Steps had been activated. The description of this skill was that it was a walking technique that mimicked the movement of the Wolf of Darkness, a legendary creature. The effect was that, the basic gait was greatly improved. 
When this skill was activated, all types of mobility were increased by 40% and the sense of presence completely disappeared. When walking in the dark, the increase in mobility was doubled. The doctors looked ahead and felt something pass by. It was Han who had dispatched multiple enemies in a second. One of the enemies stood in shock and his face was completely covered in blood. Han rose above him, and he realized that those who had attacked them would regret deciding to do so. The mercenary shouted for everyone to take their positions, but the enemy had already broken through the defenses and was charging forward. They crossed with their weapons and began to fight. The red-haired guy told them not to panic and to close ranks. The enemies attacked the mercenaries and the guy said that if they concentrated they would be killed after which he was attacked and stabbed in the stomach. The guy grimaced and then the mistress ran up and swung her stuff to attack the enemy. She struck and defeated the enemies who attacked her comrades. The guy looked at Mistress Raynal and called out to her. She walked past him and told him not to act sick over being impaled. He smiled and said it was like a light tickle. Mistress exhaled and shouted for everyone to line up. She said that only the tankers would remain in the vanguard, the rest would fall back. She ordered the men of the bills to take a defensive position, and that the archers would be the main firepower. She said for those people who do melee damage to protect the healers who were treating wounds. System message wrote that the effect of achieving the special task object of admiration is activated. The command is assumed by the best mercenary Reynal Asir. The fighting spirit of the allies doubled. The obligatory command kept the ranks from breaking up. They got into position, and the enemies said that the death throws were useless, for they would glorify their temple. They ran forward and the archers began to attack them. They ordered to kill the one in the center in first turn. The people of the accounts took the hit and began to defend themselves. They said they wouldn't last long at this rate and asked to be allowed to join the fight as well. The lady said that this was not the way to go and they must hold the line. She said that their purpose was to protect the priests, for if they maintain their position with faith in their hearts, this man called Khan would rush to them. Han was behind them at this time, and he used the darkness wolf step skill. He rushed forward towards the enemies, and they didn't realize when he had time to do so. He started swinging his sword and easily asked the enemies. The mistress was very pleased with this. Han took his sword and pulled forward. He bound all the enemies and Dam said he just had no words and asked somehow managed to use it not in battle but in this way. Dom said that although he was pleased with the way he mercilessly chopped down the enemies, he realized to himself that if Han had come from Murum, he would have been a great sword master of the dark or demonic path. He realized it was a pity. Han didn't realize what the thread was that was bringing the sword down. He looked forward and realized what kind of thought communication technique it was. He said that all he had to do was to transmit his voice through magical power. Dam was surprised and asked what this was all about. He couldn't believe that Han was able to master the thought communication technique in such a short time. Han looked to the side and asked was there anything wrong with that, who knew how to control mana. His sword said that if you followed his logic, half of the martial artists born in Mirama didn't even reach to be called masters. His sword began to shake, and he said that was no surprise, for if he was no genius there was no way he could summon his soul, after starting to laugh. Han looked at the column ahead and Dam said that he was starting to feel drowsy and had to leave to build up his strength. Khan said he would call him if necessary. Khan was called, and he turned his head. And the man told him to follow him, for he was desired by the chief priest. He came to the chief priest and the man thanked him for accepting his invitation. Khan said that there was no need to call him by such a huge title as assassin. He asked to be called simply nameless. The priest said that not having a name to use as a name isn't interesting. He said he was sure Han would be to the liking of the god of darkness. Han thanked him for that assessment, and the priest asked if he knew why he had called him here. Han said that he had been told in general terms by the priest who had brought him here. The senior priest said that was excellent and suggested that he get straight to the main point. He asked him to tell him what kind of reward Han was expecting. Han decided to ask a counter question and asked what kind of reward he intended to give him. Hana used the skill Absolute Attraction. The system message wrote that senior priest Kainal was falling into a normal state called fear. And for the abnormal state of fear, his judgment was impaired and he was beginning to clearly feel its presence. The priest began to tremble, and he said that he would be provided with the maximum reward he could give him. Tears came to his eyes, and he said that these were holy relics of the highest quality of the Church of the God of Darkness. The other priests were surprised at this, and they did not understand what he was saying. They told him that they would not be able to place the holy relics in the hands of outsiders. The senior priest tearfully told him to shut up and they would give everything away. He said that before him was the man who would lead them to victory in this holy war. The priest lowered his head and realized that for a brief moment, he could clearly feel the all-consuming terror and violent energy in that man's eyes. Because of that, for a second he thought that he met his gaze as if with a dragon. He realized that with that kind of power, they could definitely win and the relics were miraculous items that contained the power of a god. 
He held out the box to Han and said that these holy relics of the God of Darkness were of the highest quality, so they asked to be handled with care. The system message wrote that the Fire Dragon Eye skill had been activated. He looked at the SS rank offering seal it was a black seal gifted by the God of Darkness and the High Priest who sacrificed everything to the God of Darkness. After placing the seal on the back of his palm and hand would be able to engrave an exclusive offering effect. When this exclusive effect is engraved on the back of the hand, the item would be imprinted in the seal on the back of the hand and then disappear. However, this item would disappear when he completed the personal trials on the 15th floor as well. There was also a veil of night, absorbing SS rank planes. A veil of god, not when absorbed in darkness even primordial flames. When the wearer dies, the exclusive effect of the night veil activates without exception. When the exclusive effect of the night veil is activated, all of the wielder's divine power is expended on revival. When the exclusive effect of Night Veil is activated, the caster enters Apostle status after revival. However, this item would disappear when Han completed the personal trials on the 15th floor. Han rejoiced and realized that this was a great rank. He realized that judging from the supplement he read with the Fire Dragon Eye, it seemed like he wouldn't be able to comprehend these items above the 15th floor. But he couldn't be happy with me because nothing happens randomly in the Tower of Trials. Obtaining two items of a rank he had never seen before meant that he would face some pretty serious challenges in the future. Han smiled and took these items. He put to his side and the priest said that the Holy War had just begun they hoped that Han would demonstrate the power worthy of the bounty received. He said he was saying this just in case Han should escape, the divine darkness would punish him. Han smiled and asked why a simple man who had received holy relics would want to go somewhere to escape. He went forward and the priest started shaking. He covered his eyes with his hands and started crying for his relics. Han humming a song with a smile walked out of there and he was called out by Raynal. She asked if it was really one private conversation with the senior priest. She asked if everything went well. Han said it went well and he asked if she was here waiting for him. Mistress got embarrassed and turned away. She said she had earlier promised to buy him a drink and she also had one more request for him. Han thought about it. Afterward they sat at the table and drank drinks. Mistress knocked the cup on the table and Han said the taste was pretty good. He said he was sober as a glass. Mistress collapsed on the table and fell asleep. Han realized that if there was any alcohol in this world that could intoxicate him, it would most likely be at the level of a deadly poison, for his body had long ago exceeded the human level. Madam asked about Hanu how he managed to stay sober. She said that he really was a monster. Han said that the most important thing about this drink is the wonderful flavor, then he asked what request she had previously mentioned. The lady lowered her head and told the situation. She told how the knights took the last supplies from the people and those were left then. The knight hit one of the guys said it was a crazy prank. A girl rushed to the knight and asked why he was hitting him. The woman tried to stop the child but the knight kicked her and said this little girl is completely out of her mind. The girl fell to the floor and started crying. The knights were walking back with a smile and they said that if Ta was jealous, she could be a knight too. Raynal told all the colors and asked to be her teacher. Han was surprised at this and the little ones put the glass on the table. He thought and realized that he had secretly hoped the request would be to his advantage. But it was a simple personal request, not leading up to the next special task. He realized that he had completed the special assignment and become an object of admiration. This way he could get what he could from her. He stood from behind the desk and realized that paying much attention to the character of the world recreated by the tower was just a waste of time. He looked at her and said that he was refusing that request. He turned to the side and said she should get a good night's rest, tomorrow the battle would continue and he would go. She called out to him and said she had to get stronger at any cost. She got up from the table and fell to her knees. Han watched the whole thing and the girl pleaded with him that she owed it to him to learn from him. Han smiled and realized that he could use a little fun. The girl stood up in a stance holding her sword and Han laughed, he walked over to her grabbed her shoulders. He said that there was no need to be so serious and it was good that she was trying her best, but if you overdo it she would become too stiff and that applied to everything, not just sword training. Afterward he turned her around and said that now I lacked combat experience and she needed to strengthen her mana network. He offered to train her aura a bit. He put his two hands to her back and started to concentrate. The girl was surprised and felt streams of mana in her body. She realized that Han was showing her the way of mana as if telling her to follow him, but basically it was similar to her method but there was a difference. The difference was small and his way was more refined. The girl was surprised and realized that Han was great. Han said it was mana's personalized let and it was created based on her needs. He said to train her aura every day using this way. Han went to his barracks and decided to check the rewards. He took out a bag and pulled out all the rewards from there. He realized that this was all he got from the British Hunter Association for killing Sandal. 
He realized that it was quite a lot, however it was just a bunch of useless junk from different potions and weapons. He realized that the last three skills he had synthesized were Dark Wolf Steps, Absolute Charm, Steel Absorption, he should use them. He activated the Steel Absorption skill and Metal Teeth appeared on his head. Hanu was surprised and they closed together, making a sort of jaw. The skill was at zero. The effect was that absorbing the other items made his body stronger. The additional effect of absorbing the other items increased one random characteristic. Han picked up the staff and realized that the thing was sharply clinging to his face and he was scared to begin with. He presented the staff to his mouth and was able to absorb both the cane and the steel cloud with ease. The absorption time was equal to 10 minutes. After that, the absorption was completed. Mana was increased by one, and Han realized that his stats had increased quite a bit. He decided to try again and absorb the Heavenly Steel Stone. He was able to complete the absorption and his body became stronger. There was 0.8% Dirty Kai released from his body. He lifted his hand in the unclear liquid and wondered what this Dirty Kai was. He looked at his body and realized that he felt better, afterwards he realized what was meant in the base effect. At first Han was amazed at the appearance of this skill, but after seeing the results he was able to achieve, he was very glad he had gotten it. He started absorbing everything he saw and he never thought he would devour objects so greedily. He has absorbed 8 items and he can't absorb any more items. The absorption time was an hour and 20 minutes. Han realized that he could only absorb 8 items at a time, he realized that compared to the speed while growing characteristics, it couldn't even be called a disadvantage. He disabled the skill and realized that there was one more curious item. He took out a seal of darkness and realized that if he put a SS rank seal on his body, it was a chance that it would remain after the 15th floor. He was a little scared to instill it in himself, but it was worth a try. He raised his hand and stamped himself on it on the back of his palm. A system message wrote that the effect of the darkness seal of the offering had been activated. The item is absorbed by the mark on his hand. The seal melted on his hand and Han felt a strange energy. The wolf seal appeared on his hand and the mark on his hand would never disappear. Han was surprised to see many messages from the administrators. The administrator of the dragon slayer born after 1000 years was horrified by the offering mark. The administrator of the soldier of the fallen world laughed at him. The administrator of the true divinity seekers was telling the towers that giving him this seal was overkill. Han realized that they had been silent all this time, but as soon as he used the seal, they started writing. The administrator of the rulers without was outraged by the tower's actions. The administrator of the devour seven gods was shocked by his actions. The black archipelago hero administrator was saying there was still time to change his mind. Han, I don't understand if this item was really useless. The administrators were reacting too strangely as if the tower had given him something it shouldn't have. Han looked at it all and the system message wrote that there was an information leak. Administrator's messages have been temporarily blocked. Test Tower warned the administrator. If this happened again, they would be banned from viewing Han Sungun's player trials. Han squeezed his hand and realized that this relic was a secret, and maybe it was even bigger than he thought. He looked forward with confidence and raised his hand. He said he would find out everything once he used it. The system message wrote that an exclusive offering effect had been activated. Han could donate any talent, skill, treasure to the god. Han was surprised and wondered what the point was. He realized that he needed to figure it all out anyway and he took out one more staff from his pouch as well. He realized that among the items for steel he chose to donate treasures. He was asked to choose treasures and he tried to suggest the worst item. He was asked to choose the god he would donate the item to, and Han was surprised when a message began to blur in front of him. Han began to fade away, and he was recognized as the owner of his own divinity for when the donation would be addressed to him. Han appeared in an obscure place where the very staff was on the table. System message wrote that he donated it to himself and his chest began to glow. The system message wrote that he could transform the item into divine power. Han didn't understand what it was and realized that it was a bit confusing, however, he understood everything. Now he could increase his divine power himself but there was one but he didn't know how to use it. Though with the obtaining of new mythos he would find a use for the divine power, but for now, he could only hoard it. He took out the cloak he got from the priest and tied it on the hilt of his sword. He said he would save it for later and the tower would not let him just do that. He realized that the time to use them would still come. After three days, there were many casualties on the battlefield. They had won a few battles and the allied mercenaries with the priests were becoming more confident. They were marching with flags and gaining territory. Shouts could be heard on the field telling them to run, for it was that butcher. At all but his pretty much risked their lives. Han made his way forward and defended the path. He realized that he was worried for nothing and at this rate the ordeal would go very smoothly. After that, the multitude of mercenaries of the table were horrified when they saw a red light in front of them. Han looked to the side and saw the incomprehensible illumination. He realized that this feeling was eerily familiar to him and he couldn't believe it. 
The system message wrote that a will divine punishment had been activated. A bright beam appeared from the ground and he realized that it was very dangerous. He put his palm forward and used a counter shield of maximum strength. He started shielding people from this beam and it was such a one that caused a lot of destruction. Khan stood and there was a lot of dust in the surroundings. He looked sideways at the defeated mercenaries and didn't understand what he should do. He saw an incomprehensible wing and a man hovering in the air. He called the men with the dogs of the god of darkness and said he had good news for them. He stretched his arm out to the side and told the merciful god of darkness that he had decided to use divine punishment on him specifically. Han realized that the feeling was repeated and the god of war had used divine power to partially condescend. During the condescension, the god could not fully control his myths and will. The god condescended into the apostle Jurhan Nevaya. He could not use all his divine power. The difficulty of this 15th floor trial also increased greatly. Han looked at all of this and realized that he wasn't going to have it easy. The system message wrote that the trial tower believed that Han could handle it and the trial would not be interrupted. Han smiled and asked not wetly asking first what he thought about it before giving an answer. The system message said that today he would be able to kill this dog with his own hands. Han stood and the apostle said to die and regret deciding to challenge God himself. Han realized that if he didn't start putting his best foot forward right away, it would be very dangerous. He activated instant acceleration and wind blessing. His speed was increased by 70% and his skill utilization was 7 out of 7. The battle concentration skill was activated and his concentration was increased by 20 times. The will of heaven blood cultivation technique was also activated. Han, I put my sword forward and coldly looked at the whole situation. He decided to deal with him quickly, but without realizing anything, the god immediately approached him and attacked. He took his hand over his face and slammed it against the rock. The god raised his hand and delivered a blow to Han's body. A gasp and blood flowed and he was dead. The god of battle grabbed Sung right by the face and after that smeared him on the ground. The battle god decides to finish him off by summoning his spear, which he thrust right into Sun's chest. Sun saw the way his chest was pierced and screamed in pain. His blood was everywhere and then a notification appeared that said he was dead. The dream was falling in some kind of void, he was flying with his eyes closed and not thinking about anything. Then he opened them and realized he had died by the hand of a descended god of war. There was a hole through his chest and his armor was covered in his blood. He remembered standing before man, how he had agreed to participate in the tower, and how he had killed the goblin. He realized that in the time he had been climbing the tower, a lot had indeed happened. He remembered absolutely everything that had happened to him and was frustrated, because up until that point, he had handled everything very well. In front of him he saw all those people he had gotten to know, the very fateful connections that would be cut off here and now. His eyes were starting to go blank, and he realized that wins and losses were part of life. He looked at the hole in his chest and thought about ending like this. His eyes turned gray and there was a smile on his face, he thought he just had to accept the fact that he was dead. As he flew through the void, the thought came to him that it was probably because he had long ago decided everything for himself, and to him now even this endless darkness seems cozy. As suddenly a girl in a black dress hugged Sun from behind, it made him scared quite a bit, so he instantly pushed her away. And she said with a smile on her face that she wasn't his enemy at all. Sun looked at her with sweat running down his cheek, so he decided to ask her who she even was. The girl put her hand on his chest and replied that even though this situation had been recreated, she thought it was unfortunate that Sun would not recognize her, the one for whom he had entered the holy war. At the same moment, something clicked in Sun's mind and he guessed that she was the god of darkness. She put her finger to his chin and said that he found the answer faster than she thought, she called him very smart. At the same moment Sun pushed her hand away and with a serious face told her not to touch him. She moved away from him a little, but she still had a smile on her face, and she added that it wasn't time yet, but he would soon realize that she wasn't his enemy at all. She then spread her arms, saying that now that the tower had made such a mess, they should move on, and also since she had decided to lend him the power, he should cheer her up properly. Sleep starts to glow, the light even comes through the hole in his chest, and the god of darkness said that from the moment he opens his eyes, everything around him will change. Sleep was flying in the sky and many red swords were flying past him. Sleep started to look at these swords and then just grabbed one of them. Notifications wrote to him that the god of darkness was smiling while looking at him, and also allowing him to use the apostleship blessing given to him. The dream returns to the moment where the god of battle pierced his chest with his spear, and then he looked at him with an arrogant look and said that this was the price an inferior man deserved for daring to challenge the god's position. The spear dissolved from Sun's chest, leaving a huge hole there. The boys began to shout that he was dead, which meant they were now all doomed. The god of battle turned to look at them and said that he was fed up with them. The ground started to crack and a red aura spread across it, and the battle god thought that a while ago, a guy named Han Song Yun had used a magic shield so his power was greatly reduced. But now there was no one to protect them, so now he would finally destroy them. 
The battle god started to fly upwards, and the girl with blonde hair rushed towards him, shouting, Swordsman. And then some cloth and a katana flew through the air, that girl noticed it and was very surprised. A piece of cloth flew above Sen. The battle god flew higher and higher on his wings, and then began to regenerate his hands, looking at them and realizing that the body of the future apostle was unable to withstand the coming. One could see the discontent in his eyes that he had chosen an extremely weak body. The battle god hung in the air with his arms spread out, and the notification wrote that the coming of the battle god had been cancelled. That same apostle returned to his body and started coughing up tears all over. And then he calmed down, but he still had the look of a madman, for he had just felt the very power of the god of battle, and if the coming had been delayed even a second longer, he would have died of heartbreak. The apostle, hovering in the air and trembling all over, said that nevertheless, because of this he had received the god's grace, and his divine power was stronger than before. He started laughing furiously, shouting that he was now the strongest being under this heaven. As a notice suddenly appeared in front of him, where the god of battle tells him to stop telling lies, and quickly prepare to use the power of heavenly punishment, Zerhan started rubbing the back of his head and smiling awkwardly, saying that the god of battle had nothing to worry about, because now that they had dealt with the man called Assassin, the religion of darkness no longer mattered much. Just as suddenly, a huge bright beam appears in front of the apostle, which he is shocked by. This beam was as if it came from outer space itself, hitting directly into Sun's body. Serhan flew above the tornado and didn't realize what it even was. While the smoke was clearing, the notifications wrote that the exclusive effect of the Veil of Night had been activated, so after a while there would be a complete rebirth under the Veil, entering the state of apostolization. The dream rose up and began to fly, and the notification wrote that it was reborn. Three more notifications wrote that the qualities of the god of death were manifesting stronger, loudly announcing his presence, and from now on, he could release the death nature of his divinity contained within his heart, and all traces of the god engraved on the challenger Han Song Yun were completely removed. Sun was in some kind of dark armor, blazing with fire, and also notices wrote that he could now use divine keywords such as death, darkness, and immortality. Zerhin started shouting that this was impossible, after all, the coming of the god of darkness had just happened, but there were no apostles on their side after all. Sleep looked very angry and his helmet was blazing with fire. The apostle stretched out his hand toward Sun, shouting that he would tear him to shreds. A huge spear appeared right above Sun, which the apostle soon threw at him. Sun began to gather some magic in his hand as the spear flew at him, and with red eyes, he said the absorption command. That very huge spear was instantly absorbed right into his hand. Black smoke now formed around Sona. Zerhan made a very strange expression on his face, not understanding how this happened. Sun removed part of the mask from his face, and his gaze was full of emptiness. But then a spark lit up in his eyes and he said he remembered him, he was his enemy. The apostle began to fly away, leaving only feathers behind him. But the dream pulled out a huge sword, and while that apostle was flying away, he activated the divinity of death so that the qualities of the god of death reacted, and the nature of death embedded in the divine power intensified. Sleep pointed at him with a sword that was glowing all over and told him to die. Zerhan was instantly cut in half. All he could make were death sounds. Sung's sword made an arcing thrust that cut him, and Sung thought about how it was better than the clumsy sword Kai used by Namgung Hek. Song walked forward with a nonchalant face and exhaled, activating the more powerful effect of the serene mind power, and then rejoiced that his condition had stabilized a bit now. Sleep stood right in front of that corpse and thought about the fact that the problem was the coming of the god of battle. But Serhan is at a level where he could easily kill him and without any apostolization there. Sleep turned around and continued to think that since the body was cut in half, he had nothing else to worry about. He saw the mountains of corpses and thought about the fact that both camps had retreated for fear of becoming cannon fodder in the fight between the two titans. Sleep looked out and stood with his mouth open, continuing to think that he needed to find the men and join them sooner rather than later, and if the remnants of the forces retreated completely, he would have to sweat during the next battle. As suddenly right behind Sun's back, that chopped up apostle began to glue itself back together. The two pieces of the body stuck together and even the eyes began to move. And the god of battle was only thinking that even though this man was recreated, it was about his future apostle, so he decided not to kill him. His eyes then turned into the red eyes of the battle god. His hair turned red again and his teeth were like fangs, and the god of battle said that from now on he would grant him true death. Sleep looked at all this with a very angry look, for he realized that there were only 12 minutes left before the apostolization was over. The god of battle began to summon those very spears in great numbers. Sleep saw them right above him and became angry, for he realized that last time he was killed by just one spear, and now there were a large number of them. He then decides to activate all his possible skills that give him buffs. After applying them, he looked quite dangerous while holding two swords in his hand. 
The god of battle pointed his hand downwards, so the spears flew straight at Sun. They stuck into the ground, crushing everything behind them, and Sun just ran away from them in different directions. And at one point, a fireball flew straight at Sun's head, and he still managed to dodge it by jumping aside. Sun stopped thanks to his legs, but he was unlucky, because the god of battle grabbed his arms as soon as he landed. Sun couldn't land a punch, for his hands were in a grapple. The battle god looked distraught and decided to wipe him out. Sleep was very wary and covered in sweat from the battle. Just as suddenly, hands instead of wings appeared from the backs of the battle god. Those hands flew to attack Sun, and Sun called out to damn Chen Wu. And at the same moment, the palms and those hands from the wings shattered into pieces, causing the battle god to be greatly surprised. He looked up at Sun with astonishment, and Xian raised his sword upwards and Chen laughed, saying that he finally let him come forward. Just as suddenly he began to shake with fright. He saw what he had cut, it was arms made of wings. And in front of him stood the god of battle, who was clearly displeased with this behavior. So Chen asked that he was right now fighting against a deity whatsoever, what kind of crazy god was it that descended from the heavens on the second dozen floors of the tower, why did the difficulty level of the challenge suddenly skyrocket? Sun stood silently listening to him, but then replied that it was all a long explanation. And then he pointed his sword at the god and said that the most important thing was for Chen to use all the support skills he had in his arsenal. The sword started shaking again, saying that this was not a problem that could be solved with support skills, and then he noticed that Xian had undergone the apostolization procedure. Song looked at him and shouted at him to move more briskly, for there was no time for chit-chat right now. Immediately afterward, the god of battle cut off his arm and leg. Sleep turned his eyes on him, being frightened. And at this time, the god had already summoned some powerful magic that all shone with the brightest light. And he decides to use this magic, so it shot out a very strong beam, from which dust flew everywhere. Sun was able to dodge such a shot, and his legs and arms immediately started to recover and the sword said that he would provide all the power he could right now. After his words, notifications began to appear saying that a soul skill had been activated that made the mana level in the body increase. A skill that speeds up the thought process and a skill that strengthens the sword every second had also been activated. Xiang raised his sword up and looked at him in surprise and then smiled heavily, telling him that he thought Chen could only talk, and it turns out both the buffs and their ranks are surprisingly good. He instantly flew upwards from the blast, thinking that fighting face to face was still an impossible task for him. The battle god shot a beam straight at him, and he saw sleep fly beyond the clouds. Sleep hung in the sky and the sword told him that he used his head, that way he would be able to buy some time. Sleep turned on him and said that a deity had come, an adventuring had happened, so he should lay out anything that could help them in this situation, just the very essence. Sword startled at Sun's shout for him to think more vividly, but then replied that he should give him a second to think. Sun kept hanging in the sky and listening to what the sword was telling him, while the sword pondered aloud, saying, uh, let's see. Right? No, that won't work here. Yeah, this method isn't good either. At these words, Chin was generally taken aback and said to him, listen, uncle. But lo and behold, before Chin could think of what he could say, a battle god flew out in front of them. He flew at them with two spears and said that as he noticed, Chin had decided to go for a trick, but this time he would tear him into tiny pieces so that he would be unable to recover. The battle god flew at him with a scream. Song also responded by shouting that he was going to go crazy, but the sword thought and replied that he understood everything. Because after processing the information with his genius brain, he came to the conclusion that the current Song would never defeat this monster. Song flew away from the god of battle and shouted to Chen that it was too obvious information. And the sword corrected him, saying that he could not defeat the current one, but if he used the power of the god. Song immediately guessed, so a spark was burning in his eyes, and Chen continued to tell him to use the god power, although with some restrictions, but being in the state of apostleship, he can use this power. The god of battle threw his spears at Chen, and the sword said that it would signal him at the right moment, so first of all, by all means, he must take him by surprise with his space-controlling swordsmanship skill, he must remember that this is his one and only chance. Suddenly, the god of battle notices something that made him think for a moment. It is the fact that Sun has turned around to face him and decided to strike with two swords at once, as there is only one minute left before the apostolization ends. Sun strikes at him with the two swords, but the god of battle simply dodges them. Sleep looks at him with a disgruntled face. He kept trying to hit the god of battle, but the god of battle just dodged and laughed at him. And then, in another dodge, he said that Sung really thought he could hit him with such trivial swordsmanship. Song looked up and with a serious expression, he activated the sea-splitting white sword skill. Suddenly, the battle god's hair started to get sucked in somewhere, which made him surprised. And following the hair, he himself flew along the blue matter, this made him very scared. He screamed, because his wings were sucked in, but then he just grabbed the matter with his wings. Sleep was very surprised at his ability. God just ripped that thread. 
He held the piece of thread in his hands and said it was wonderful. Sleep was very surprised to see him grabbing these lines of magic, and the sword told him to get ready, for the god was about to attack. The god of battle threw a spear at Sun. Two spears flew right next to Sun and he was able to dodge them, then the god got closer to Sun holding two more spears. Sun realized that the distance was too close, so he was a bit confused. And so those two spears became on opposite sides of Sung, and immediately after they started sucking in his swords. Song held his swords for all he was worth and looked up, realizing that he was able to immediately copy the idea of the seven white sword technique seen once. Song began to tremble slightly and gritted his teeth, saying that he would not be so easily hit, for he would be able to break free from the vise by balancing the position with the white sword creating void. Sung was suddenly very shocked at the words of Chen who told him not to do that and then told him to take the blow. Sung was covered in sweat, not understanding what Chin was even talking about. The sword sucked inside the spear and asked Sung to trust it. The spear flew at Sung's head, and the sword asked him to just stand still. And at the moment of impact, a huge bloody dome appeared around Sun, protecting him. The god tried to pierce that dome with his spear, and as he struck it, he asked Sun that he really thought he could stop him with such weak abilities. Immediately after that, the dome shattered, the spear flew straight at Sun, and the sword signaled the signal Sun had been waiting for. The spear flew straight into his eye, and Chen explained that the moment it struck, he should use divine power, and that spear pierced through Sun's head. The battle god opened his eyes wide in surprise. After all, his spear didn't kill Sun, it just went through his Sun-activated immortality which blocked the inability to regenerate as well as instant death. The sword was pointed downwards and it said that the blood energy was not used to stop the enemy. The shards of that dome began to fly towards the god, for their purpose was to take the enemy by surprise and bind them for a while. They sealed the god inside the dome, immobilizing him. The god tried to break this dome with his hands and was very unhappy with the situation. Chin shouted that he couldn't last long, so he must smash this deity to pieces. Chin was very tired, and was thinking that because of apostolization, the consumption of divine power was extremely high, and now he could only use divine power once or twice at most. The god was closed in the dome, and Song decides to act, he swung his sword, throwing a huge wave of mana at the god, activating the divine death key, so that the sword is imbued with death that cannot be avoided. This wave hits the god directly and cuts off his head. The sword screams that it worked. That god's hands start twitching and then he just breaks the dome into splinters. Sleep watched this, and the sword said apparently it didn't work. The headless body spread its arms, saying that even though it was only a small part of its divine power, but did Sun really think that a body filled with divinity would be as limited as the bodies of lowly humans? Song used his time-stopping and double-strike skills. Therefore, he launched several more waves of mana using those skills. The god began to cover himself with his hands in shock. He tried to stop these waves with his hands, saying that he hadn't seen such a thing on the 13th floor. The waves flew one after another, and now they cut him into several pieces. Notifications wrote that he had passed the 15th floor of the Tower of Trials, and as a reward, he was given a protection bracelet of the Nameless God, as well as a hundred thousand points and an item of the Holy Beat of the Nameless God. Sleep was torn between two emotions, shock and joy, but he realized that it was finally over. Sleep flew straight to the ground, and upon landing, the entire ground around him crackled. He was notified that he had received the Resurrection achievement, increasing all stats by four units, and he also received the Nemesis achievement, again increasing all stats by 4 units. Sleep stood in the middle of the wasteland and read the notices that said that all skills were deactivated, and the mere Heavenly Demon Sword had decreased by 9.5%. He turned to his sword and asked if Chin was alright, but he didn't get an answer, so he stood there in confusion. Just as suddenly he was surprised by shouts from behind him, there was a girl who was angry at him, saying what does it look like now that everything is fine, all of a sudden he got into a battle with a god making an adventuring. The girl was fixing her hair, saying that luckily it wasn't a full-fledged adventuring, otherwise, both of them would have met death. And right after saying that, Song guessed that it was the same damn Chin Wu, his sword. Sung made a very surprised face and asked that he appeared to be a woman, but the voice was male. She was still fixing her hair and told him not to try to distinguish someone who had peeked in the Blood Demon Church solely on the basis of gender. Sun looked at her and said he wouldn't, but then he asked if she could have even originally taken on that appearance in the first place. Sun looked at his sword with a surprised face, and she replied that she couldn't have chosen the appearance originally, and she doesn't know what's going on here either. But then she looked at Sun and said that he had divine power without any trace of a god, and it probably had an effect on her, but that was just her guess. She then spread her arms out and started to act. Blood spurted out of her hands and her hair started flying in different directions. She said she couldn't hold that look for long so she decided to get down to business quickly. Sleep looked at her and asked what the business was, and she said with a confident face that it would be a blood feast. Blood began to gather from everywhere and flew straight to her. 
while everything was covered in blood, notifications wrote that this blood increased the level of the item. Also the skill of Zerhan's divinity enhancement was sealed there as well. Sun looked at it in surprise. Then they stood opposite each other and she said that the blood feast was used in her original appearance, now the effectiveness of the skills would be much higher. Sleep was surprised at this, and she started yawning, saying that in the future, Sun would definitely tell her why he suddenly started fighting a god, but now because so much had come up, she was overcome with drowsiness. She returned to the sword after saying goodbye. Sleep turned back around and then walked over to the body of the apostle that was chopped up as suddenly his fingers began to move. Song was very frightened by this, so he got into a fighting stance, thinking that shouldn't he have died, because earlier, the message about the trial breaking had definitely popped up. A small sphere began to fly out of that body, and then it turned into a huge eye. This ridiculous body tried to rise up, and Song didn't understand what to do in such a situation. It was obvious from his face that he was frightened, for he had never seen such a thing before this moment, remembering that the condition for successfully passing the test was to lead the temple to victory in the allotted time. But then he calmed down and just stood in front of it, realizing that he was now unable to do anything else, because the tower had decided that the test had not been passed. He remembered standing in front of the test god, and thought about how he had seen a message in the past that said that the test god had paid a significant amount of divine power just for the chance to talk to Sun alone. The battle god must have come down to earth after paying the tower a huge amount of divine power, but to continue fighting with him was beyond his strength now. That body was crawling towards Sun, saying that he would definitely kill him, and don't let him think that this is the end. Song looked down at it and said that after becoming an apostle, he realized one thing through his instincts, that those who gain divine power without any trace of gods are given a chance to challenge the god's place. He had beautiful wings on his back, and then he imagined as if he was flying from above the earth, and the sun was shining brightly on him. Then he glowed with a red aura and looked terrifying, pondering that meant the reason why the god of battle was so hostile to him was because he was alarmed by the possibility of a new deity being born. He turned over the sword in his hand and decided that things were now falling into place a bit. And Sun walked with that sword right up to that eye, realizing that the god of battle had even condescended to earth to kill him. He chopped that eye in the blink of an eye, and the god was telling him that he was going to make him regret daring to surpass the deity. Sleep looked very confident cutting that eye, saying that he kills those who consider him an enemy, that's all. Notification wrote that the heavenly sword destroys things that are hard to break, so now its level had also increased. While that eye was flying in half, it was telling Sun that it would definitely rip him to pieces next time. Sun stuck his sword into one of the halves and ordered it to devour him. His gaze was as if it was hateful. A black mist appeared around him, and a notification wrote that darkness was enveloping the specified target. A black fog went from his eye as well, and then some bright core appeared and the notification said that he had absorbed the spirit of future apostle Zerhan Nevius, increasing his skill by almost 8%. The blood mist went straight into Sun's chest, and he thought about how it was expected that he would get the spirit of the challenger who played the role of a mediator and not the god himself. But he realized that after all, he had killed him and not the god of battle himself. Suddenly, Sun notices something and decides to turn around, and when he turned around, he saw new notifications that wrote that the absorbed spirit is much stronger than Sun, so there is a power extraction going on, and just got a positive result. Sung looked at this with one eye, and then his chest started to glow and he received the instant step power that was sealed in Han Sung Yun's soul. He looked at himself in surprise and recognized that he could move to any point within his field of vision. He stood in the middle of the field and was surprised to find out that he could move anywhere. He wanted to go and check it out, when suddenly it texted him that the remaining time in the apostle state was zero seconds. Sleep opened his eyes wide, and then the time ran out, so all his armor started to disappear, turning into smoke. Sleep started falling forward with his face due to fatigue, and then he just fell down, and the notification wrote that divine words like death, darkness, and immortality just disappear. We are transported to some kind of soccer field with a lot of people running. It was a crowd of guys, and among them was Sleep. Some guy with blonde hair calls Sun to come with him. He just stands there and looks at him. The ball is kicked into the goal. Everybody's cheering, and then something terrible happens behind Sun's back. It's that some devil's hand crushed one of the guys. This really scared Sun, he was confused, so he just stood there with his arms spread out. The god of battle returned behind him, who had several arms, and Sun was caught off guard. A spark shone in his eyes, and he saw another arm fly right in front of him. It crushed another one of the guys who was screaming and begging for help. Sleep screamed at him very hard, but then woke up abruptly in his bed, also screaming. He then instantly calmed down, realizing it was all dream. Then he got out of bed and realized that it was a horrible dream, so also he passed out. Also thanks to the skill of cold reasoning, all negative emotions disappear. He started to walk out of some ward, and he was a little surprised. All the guys were standing in front of him, waiting for him to wake up. 
Everyone started cheering and shouting that he was their hero and the savior of the cult of darkness. The guy with the pigtail came up to him and started scratching the back of his head, apologizing for being so insolent all this time because Rainley had told him everything. Suddenly, among the people, someone called him an apostle. This someone was walking and trembling, saying that he was the true savior of the cult of darkness. This old man, the leader, he fell to his knees and asked why didn't he help them when it was so hard. Sleep stood silent, not knowing what to say. And then he took the old man by the shoulders and replied that everything had to be timely, for to draw out their apostle, he could not begin to act sooner. Sleep had a deceitful smile on his face, saying that after all their cult had won the holy war. The old man stood with his mouth open, and Sun asked him to wipe his tears. Song looked like a god, as bright as the sun, saying that everything was according to the plan of the god of darkness, and he only faithfully obeyed his orders. At the same time he activated the absolute charm skill, and the notifications wrote that the crowd had fallen into the status of worship, and because of this status, people's judgment was weakened and they keenly felt his presence. All the people were happy to listen to these speeches and called him an apostle. Sleep stood and read the notices that said that the god of verification was impressed and said that he had good deception skills, and the god of darkness smiled contentedly. Then, everything around him glowed, for Song had activated the faith absorption skill. People were reaching out to him, and so all the faith was pulled out of them, so enough gathered to create a new myth. Sleep stood there with a crazy smile, for now he would have another new myth. He then began to take off, shining even more, and notifications wrote that the first savior myth was complete, so it was being brought into his divine power. Then many more notifications appeared, it said that when using myth, a salvation effect will be activated, when he protects the weak, his skills will be enhanced, also when using him, a skill that enhances when believing from one of the religions will be activated. Sun raised his hand and said then he wished them all good luck, and at the same moment he jumped and flew away thanks to his wings, and all the guys looked at him. They were happy to see him, for he was their apostle. Sleep flew across the sky on his blue wings and thought about the fact that he had to go back to that place. After flying for a while, he spotted the place he should fly to. It was the portal to the waiting room. He landed right in front of it, and then walking into it, he said that he had never gone through floors for so long, he thought he could get attached to them. The portal glowed bright blue, and after he entered it, he got a lot of notifications saying that the message restrictions from the administrators had been lifted. So the Steel Blood Lord and the White Crane Sword wrote to him, saying that they were happy that Sun was alright and nothing had happened. Then he only went into the room only to see two more notifications where both administrators were inviting him into their domain. But he just sat down on the couch and apologized for making them worry, but decided to stop by next time. He sat there looking very thoughtful, pondering the fact that divine power used to just accumulate in the heart and could be spent on myths and skills, but a lot had changed. There was a black spot in his chest and then a dark red fire appeared on his fingers and Song realized that due to apostolization, he was a pseudo-god and could directly use divinity and it also started to darken for some reason. He squeezed his fingers and this divine power started to swirl around his hand, so he decided to test it by swinging and then just hitting the floor with all his might. Sleep was very surprised at what he saw. There was smoke coming from the floor, and he recognized that the lobby wall that instantly regenerates from any damage now just doesn't regenerate, or rather it does, but much slower. He smiled, finding this a rather interesting phenomenon, but then he remembered about the rewards for the 15th floor. The first one is the Nameless God's Defense Bracelet, which allows you to completely block damage that you can't dodge the impact of. The second is the Divine Orb of the Nameless God, which allows you to seal one of your opponent's skills. Song looked at this with a smile on his face and realized that since both skills are S+, they must be pretty strong. He then decides to absorb Zuran's soul, increasing his stats. Strength increased by 4 units, agility by 6, endurance by 4, strength by 7 and strength by only 3. Then one of his skills started absorbing, and the skill absorbed one of the bad ones, so Song got upset and said that considering all his efforts, it wasn't much, so he would use it as an offering to increase divinity. Then there were more notifications that wrote that they were extracting divinity from Zuran's soul, and the conditions for that were met, so the attempt was successful. Sun was very surprised by this, so a spark shone in his eyes. Then a bright light began to shine in his chest, it was that divinity, and he realized that his divinity was greatly enhanced. But then, with a nonchalant gaze, he decided to look at all the tasks. A huge number of tasks appeared in front of him, as many as 87. Sun was a little taken aback by the number of tasks, but then he realized that there was nothing wrong with it, because it just gave him more choices. He stood there pondering which task he should take. Then he looked up and noticed one notable assignment. It was an assignment from a soldier of the fallen world. For completing it, he could impose an indestructibility effect on two items, and the condition for completing it was to make a choice he wouldn't regret. Sleep just remembered that he was thinking about how to repair his sword, after all, 
He was pretty well stressed out about his soul. He immediately clicked on accepting the challenge, considering himself very lucky. Three notifications wrote that viewing the challenge was forbidden to all but a few administrators. And then there were many more notifications saying that the time to complete was 48 days, and that the subject of the challenge was a warrior. Sleep finds himself on some sort of bunk and groans in pain. You can see from his face that he is in a lot of pain, as his whole body is aching terribly. Notifications wrote that his gear has been put away in his inventory and his strength has been reduced to 50 points. Sleep rises from his bunk and then immediately covers his mouth with his hand. He ran out of the room, falling to the ground. Suddenly some girl walks up to him, saying he's finally awake. Sleep standing by the puddle turned to her and asked what was going on, but before he could say anything, he felt a very sharp pain again. The girl turned to him and told him not to worry as she was about to call the others. She looked at him with one eye and told him to wait and then addressed him as Neil. Sleep was surprised for the reflection in the puddle was a different person. The reflection in the puddle was the administrator of the hero of the destroyed world who was looking at him intently. Sleep took his head and thought about the fact that he had become a character named Neil in this quest. And then he took a grip on his stomach, for his physical condition still left much to be desired. And also the main item, the Sword of True Blood, and all the armor are simply sealed and cannot be used. A cross hangs on them roughly speaking. Sion stood up, kneading his arms and thinking that although the pain was making itself known, it would be better to start by playing the role of Neil properly than to heal with Ashblood in the blink of an eye. Sleep looked at his items, the blindfold and the gloves and was glad he had bought them in advance. The blindfold would help him spot enemies nearby and the gloves would help him adapt to the situation faster. He thought about the armband, that in particular would be a very useful feature of this armband. His team stood with a smile on their faces and said that he had finally opened his eyes, and the second confirmed his words by saying that a miracle had been performed, and it was a great relief, which was to be expected from an apostle. Sleep waved them off and smiled, realizing that he needed to act as normal as possible. The blindfold then said that it had managed to detect enemies near him, so he took hold of his eye to see why the enemies had been detected so quickly. He started looking around, not realizing where the enemies were. Then he tilted his head and the guys asked what was happening to him. But the arm men wrote that an exclusive auto-detection effect was activated, so enemies in the user's field of view would immediately glow red. And his entire team was glowing red, and they were all naively asking if he was okay. Sleep looked at them in surprise and realized that all his comrades were traitors. Then they were already sitting in the chamber and Sun looked at them with one eye, thinking that it was clear now why the quest settings were oriented towards psychological difficulties. They all sat in front of each other and Sun continued to ponder that for starters, it didn't look like anything strange was going to happen in the tent. He eyed everyone suspiciously and thought that luckily, most of his skills remained in working mode. The man with the green long hair started to say that Sun had apparently lost his memory. Then the guys all looked at him and listened to what he said about not being able to remember anything, who he was, and why he was lying there. The girl raised her head and said that the consequences were worse than she thought, and the green-haired man replied that in the end it was like that. The girl stood up and started to say that they didn't have time, so she decided to explain briefly that Neil was a warrior, and the only apostle of the Dragon God's Church, carrying on his shoulders the mission to save the world. She recounted that they all traveled together to defeat the Demon King. Neil stood with a sword pointed at that Demon King, and the girl said that Neil was very hurt then. And then she closed her eyes and tilted her head, adding that that's why he lost all his memory. The Demon King looked pretty creepy, he was all red and had horns, and the girl continued the story, saying that the Demon King serves the Demon God. They plan to summon an incarnation of the Demon God into this world, and if that happens the world will end. Sun looked forward with a serious look, summarizing that in this world, only a warrior under the protection of a god could kill the demon king. He imagined Neil standing in the void with his sword, and with that he had to force Neil, who had been riddled with battle, to join the campaign, and he would have to face all kinds of enemies until he got to the demon king. He imagined absolutely horrible monsters that were very ferocious. They were riding in the wagon already at sunset and talking about just how Neil had already come to his senses, and she had covered all the nuances, the rest they should discuss on the way to the demon kingdom. They were still riding the wagon in the middle of the forest. The guy with the blonde hair turned to Sun, asking what he had lost his memory for, and then pointed to himself and asked that he couldn't remember his name either. Sun, sitting up and looking at him replied that he couldn't remember because of the severe effects of the fight. The guy with a smile on his face introduced himself as Elaine Nix and also asked him to stop the respectful speech. Sleep started to doubt something, so he looked into everything. And the man with green hair said that maybe it was his memory loss, but he was calmer. And then the man also with a smile on his face introduced himself as Zerp Denier and asked to be called just Zerp. Elaine's stomach began to rumble with hunger, and the man smiled and said that even when the world was on the verge of destruction, his stomach clock was going full speed. 
and then he started pounding on the carriage, calling out to that elf girl, calling her Daisy, saying he was hungry and they needed to hunt animals. The three of them left Neil at the carriage and went into the woods, telling him to rest. Then they threw him a dead rat, saying it was his share. It was already late night outside, and a huge carcass was roasting over a fire. Sleep was looking at that rat and the guys were saying that Neil was so broken that he couldn't act as a warrior of salvation, so the others could point the finger at them, saying they had chosen the path of scoundrels, but they weren't wrong. The guys roasted wild boar on the fire, saying it was the only way to save the world. They were all gobbling up this delicious food, talking about acting in moderation, they need to get Neil to some man. Their conversations could be heard throughout the forest, and they were saying that Neil was no longer a warrior, but just a tool to save the world. Sleep sat in a tree and overheard their conversation. He looked at them with an angry look and thought that maybe he should just kill them all, but then he started shaking his head in different directions, saying that he shouldn't. He then began to stare at something and thought that he should not forget that there were certain conditions that needed to be met to pass this test, and if he acted in a hurry and something went wrong it could make things more difficult. He looked at the three who were eating deliciously and realized that he could easily kill them all, even with this condition, but he had a lot of time to spare, so there was no need to hurry. Sleep sat in the carriage and for a few days they went straight off to hunt as soon as the opportunity arose. Sleep laughed at them, because they were going hunting and this sick body wasn't even given enough to eat. But as soon as they left, Sleep jumped into the sky with a satisfied face, for now he could rest in peace from them. Song was walking through the forest, thinking that at this distance, he would not be in the sight of his comrades. Suddenly he turned around, for a huge shadow appeared above him and surprised him. It was an enormous cat, which intended to eat him, and already Sun was sitting on his paw and taking a bite out of it. He was very happy about it, chewing it he thought its meat was like chicken. He remembered holding the dead rat and realized that his body currently had no problem with physical activity even if he didn't sleep or eat, but eating rat meat for a few days was a hard task. He also recalled them banging pots at night and called it a childish prank. After tasting the cat, he headed back to the ward. His gaze was very stern, realizing that he now needed to take the initiative, and then immediately activated the ash blood skill, which completely healed his wounds and was very happy about it. Sleep walked out of the forest and approached the wagon, and the guys were already sitting there, they were all disgruntled, and Sun replied that he was just out for a walk, and they had the hunt over much earlier. Daisy got up from her chair and walked over to him. Notifications wrote that the enemies were closing right in on him, and Daisy looked angry and said that he felt bad, so he might have trouble going it alone. Sleep stood there scratching his head and said that he had been in bed for days and was bored, but in her mind she was probably annoyed that he was out of control. Suddenly Zerp reached for him with a trembling hand, asking how his body had recovered so quickly. The old man grabbed his hand and was surprised, and Sun replied that he had been resting for a few days, so he recovered quickly, and then with a smile on his face said that it was quite funny that Zerp said he didn't specialize in healing at all. Sleep looked at him with a look as if he had uncovered their deception and asked him how he had realized what changes had happened to him with a single glance. Zerp immediately began to tremble and did not know what to answer, and then Elaine simply interrupted them, saying that they had enough to talk about, because now they were within easy reach of the kingdom. They were all sitting already in the wagon and Zerp turned to Sun and looked at him with a frightened look and asked if all his memories had come back then. Sun looked away and said that the memories didn't come back, and mentally realized that those memories didn't even exist. Just as suddenly the whole wagon shook and the boys got a little scared. Even the horses started bucking and squealing. They all got out of the wagon and looked up. There was a huge tower with some kind of spikes between it, and the notice said that they had come to the demonic realm and the more they were there, the more they were subject to spiritual exhaustion. Daisy turned to Sun and said that now they wouldn't be able to move around in the carriage, and so they no longer had a way to take care of him. Sion replied, no, which made Daisy very surprised. Sun had a bright smile and eyes saying that he liked it better that way. This huge tower was a demonic realm, a place where not only demonic energy that could drive most living things insane with a single breath. All those monsters that Sun represented were there, and they are also capable of cutting a hundred people like a grain of sand. A huge number of fighters died there, and those who had gone through a great deal said that no one could survive there. They all stood right in front of that tower and looked at it. Sun was a bit surprised too, so he asked about this realm. Elaine turned on him and asked him that didn't he remember what it was, and then Zerp started to carry him some kind of sword and then held it out and asked him to take it. The sword began to unwind and Zerp said that this sword was as dear to him as life, a holy sword. Sleep looked at this with a bit of disbelief. The demon grabbed onto a tree, and following him were a large number of more of the same demons. The administrator looked through the portal at what was happening there, and pounded the table in anger, for he thought everything would be alright, since it had been a long time. His teeth gritted with anger, for back then he needed the support of his comrades. 
He remembered how he could barely hold that sword, he realized he was weaker than anyone back then. The administrator pounded on the table, asking himself if anyone would have supported him. Just as suddenly, he opened his eyes wide with surprise, for he saw Song running to attack, a trail behind his eyes. The administrator thought back to himself and sees Song running calmly with a smile, this upset him. Sion held onto his sword and activated his gauntlets, so now it's easier for him to adapt, and also now his mind isn't fogged by the tower. The monster started attacking him, and the monster ran to meet him. The guys looked at it and said that even though he had lost his memory, his character was still the same. Elaine was displeased, saying that it would be hard for him to deal with them alone. They all stood with their weapons, saying that they should just make a show of support. And Sun just attacked the monsters with that sword, calmly cutting it in half. The guys were shocked to see that he was able to cut it. They were so confused that they didn't even realize how it was possible. More and more monsters ran at Sun, and then he decided to use one of his skills, so a ball of light appeared above his sword. Sun swung his sword and then sent that orb straight into the crowd of monsters. The ball flew straight into the depths of them, and then exploded with a huge explosion. All the monsters started to melt from such a thing and started screaming. Sun looked at this sword and said that this thing had incredible power. He had a smile on his face and said that he would be able to learn cool skills during this trial. The three guys were sitting around the fire talking about how even though Neil had lost his memory, their choices should remain the same. Daisy looked really angry. Of all of them, she was really the angriest, saying that he or she had given both memory and power to the dragon. Zerp replied that he felt as if he had spent decades on the battlefields. Elaine was very scared, not realizing how he could become so strong. And now the battle had already passed and they were all sitting around the campfire. Each of them enjoyed the soup, but in complete silence. Sleep eyed them suspiciously and realized that there was now an awkward silence. They were all eating the soup, and Sung pondered the fact that even though the battle had been successful, none of the comrades were happy about it. The old man's hand shook, and Sung felt that they were all feeling denial, tension, guilt, and anxiety. Sung began to gaze at them thinking that they were all just feeling negative emotions. And so, when they had all finished eating, plates left unwashed, they all went to their tents. And Sleep was lying on his bunk, he was lying with his eyes closed, but then he opened them abruptly, and he decided to fly away from them, he turned around to see if they were following him. He starts looking around and then he saw a huge mountain and decided to fly there. Sleep activates instant step and looks at that mountain, and the notification says that the recharge lasts for 10 minutes. Suddenly, Sun starts flying instantly, which freaks him out a little bit. Immediately he finds himself at that mountain and marvels at this ability. He looked at his hands with a smile on his face and said that he had covered a distance of about 50 kilometers in one fell swoop. He clenched his fist and stared at it, asking himself if such power was not a bit steep. 